Unbelievable. Well done, guys, girls. Um, take the rest of the year off. Um, yeah, after, <laughs> no, this, after weekend. this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet, Dave. Get back. No, no, no. <laughs> Wow, I can't believe that. Uh, that well, we were talking, and we, I saw the, I saw them walking out in fire suits, and thought, "Hey, yeah. really?" But yeah, there we go. Anyway, well, that was uh, the comparatively minimum delay. I think a few people summed it up. Not here. Not all heroes wear capes. Yeah, but they all... wear they wear SPRC shirts. You got it. Um, All the rest of the uh, guys and girls in Pro ET getting set. This may be their last qualifying it is, session. Yeah. It is it, yeah? Okay. Oh, it's going to set the bump. This is going to be fun. Yeah. Right, Paul Brown is the first out with the two-seater dragster. Your passenger, number one today, is a Doug Taylor from Wrexham. It's his 50th birthday today, so many happy returns indeed to Doug. He can't hear me, but uh, he'll play the live feedback a bit later on and realise, oh, yeah, I've got a birthday shout out as well. Uh, we've got five passengers lined up today. The last one is an 80th birthday present. Cool. <laughs> Goodness me. Wow. Got to say a big shout out to Stephanie Jane Rudd. Sent us a brilliant reaction video from Top Fuel yeah. last night. So, uh, yeah, we'll get that onto uh, Satellipod social media. So, Stephanie, thank you for that one. Really good one. We do like those. Sir, Paul Brown, your driver. Doug Taylor, your passenger. Straight, strong, no problems. Straight down Broadway. Eight flat, 166. Thank you very much indeed. Well done. Goodness me. Right, uh, this is Pro ET qualifying session number eight. The only other positive from what happened was it was the pretty much the last car last night. Because if that had been in the minute, yeah, anyway, it doesn't bear thinking about it. We're not going to think about it. So, Pro ET, go on. Bump session. Yay. This is it. So where Last are we? Qualified. Where are we at the moment? What we're talking about bump session is there's 32 spots available, but there are 42 cars, 41, big one, um, entered to race this weekend. So there are going to be a whole bunch of these cars not in eliminations, including these two at the moment. And they've got to get it done. Well, Dan Page is 38. He's in the Kestrel lane. Uh, I had a quick chat with Dan and Chalk this morning, uh, and they, they admitted that the uh, the problem with the car was the two idiots running it. Yeah. But I did ask if I could say that, and they said yes, that's fine. Um, <laughs> no, anyway, uh, they sussed out what the problem was, so this should be fine. I bet it'll run 990 now, anyway. Uh, up against Hans van der Speck from the Netherlands, trying to run 1052. He's just been breaking out, that's the problem for him. Well, the uh, little Vega didn't launch that time again. He's not going to be in. No, they're not, not going to be not going to be Well, there's the first two D and Qs, unfortunately. Both of these two, I think, are pretty safe. Uh, Mason Griffiths with the appliance trackster in the Kestrel lane. And Stevie Gates with Ziva the Duster. Well, fair to say he's uh, safely qualified, is uh, Stevie. Was your number one qualifier for a while, but then uh, got pipped to number three. And uh, makes Griffiths safe at number eight. Do you know what? It's always funny when you get that. Um, very good morning to everyone around the world, especially my little niece in Australia who's watching it with Dan this morning. <laughs> a very good afternoon, Bella, because obviously it's a bit later on in Australia. Patrick, I hope you're enjoying the coverage. help for those two. Mason stays eight and Stevie stays three. They went 973 and 920. Right, the Fulton brothers, Simon and Dave. They were both, they were both a long way off in that on that run as well, but it is forecast to be yeah. hotter than ever today. Talking of Australian shout-outs, we may as well say very, very good morning to uh, John Willard and his family and team down there. 
and uh, I bet they're going to be tuned in as well. So uh, hope you're all keeping well. So 9.58 in the Slick Tricks lane for Don't Lift Dave Fulton. Simon Fulton, though, is a bit precarious. He's only 30 at the moment. He's going to stay number 30. No improvement for either. Dave Fulton breaks out by five hundredths of a second. Uh, Simon, though, 9.13. Tenth of a second off. Okay, Chris Newson and Simon Innes. If you haven't been drag racing before, as we've said many times, what have you been doing with your life? The numbers that you see on the board at the finish line are their predicted times. They're trying to run as close as they can uh, to those without going too quick. If they go too quick, we call it a breakout. Um, but uh, 9.56 is the predicted time for the MG in the Slick Tricks lane. The Cuda in the Kestrel lane, 10.71. And then what they do, we qualify for a 32-car field and it's tournament-style eliminations later on today, actually, I think. Very much like a tennis tournament or similar. Oh. Well, Simon is 500s off, 76 on a 71. Chris Newsom breaks out, goes too quick by two measly thousands of a second. All right, John Turner not qualified at the moment. He's in the number 37 spot, dials a 9.30 for the Greenfish Barracuda. Dan Fulton, he's okay. 10.20 is where he is at the moment on his dial-in. He is number 21 in the qualified order. Well, they both go red, which means they left before the tree was green. Being qualified, though, it doesn't matter. Daniel Fulton up to number 16, 10.21 with a four. This is how close it is, folks. Everyone listening in around the world, check that out. He's number uh, 16 qualifier, and he's 0 0.014, 14 thousandths of a second away from being perfect. Right, Tom K not in the show at the moment. Lee Morris is in. Uh, problems for Lee Morris yesterday was the battery died. It didn't go flat, it just died. So they, they went out and bought a new battery yesterday. Oh, OK. And uh, so, yeah, in the car should be good for today. Well, he's points leader in the Pro-ET National is, yeah, Championship. Yeah, he was a little bit nervous yesterday until he uh, got in the show. Well, Tom K, though, number 34, uh, needs to go 05 or better, I think. Is that right? Hang on. Where are we? 32, yep. Actually, he needs to be 04. So Tom Kay needs uh, it 10.24. 10.28, Tom Kay will not be qualified. Has to hope that he gets in on the break rule as an alternate may be. Okay, Marie Mills. I'm surprised she's awake enough to uh, oh, drive the car good. after all the work they did yesterday on the funny car. Anyway, Slick Tricks Lane for Marie. Yes, we do have a lot of uh, ladies, women, racing and drag racing. We don't need no diversity stuff around here. Uh, we've had it for decades. So Paul Master looking for an 8.98. Marie, so he's looking for a 10.62. And now is the time that Paul Larson runs the line flat, which he did, darling, yesterday. That is just typical. <laughs> but a 10 a 78 there for Marie. Yeah, both of them qualified. Let's have a look and see who's not in yet. Uh, Liz Malcolm is number 31. That's not a comfy place to be. Uh, who have we... Oh, dear me. Sorry, mate. <laughs> I'll get there in a minute. Hey, there we go. All right, so Darren Huxley is... Right, we know Tom Kay. He's run. Uh, John Turner's run. Dan Page has run, Hans Van Der Speck has run, Pete Dodd we know is broken. Um, so, it's only. so it's only Harley J, uh, Darren Huxley, and then Doug McClure and Susan McClure. Uh, Susan McClure is on the next page, so yeah. Well, Liz Malcolm um, has been 0 4 off her dialing with the little dragster. Thirty-three for Dave Crowhurst and eleven oh three for Liz. No one moves. 
So, Vic Parsons. Had a chance to ch chat to Vic. Is he enjoying being in um, <laughs> yeah. Super Gas and Pro ET? It, he's just enjoying it. Because the car is what's working so well at the moment. Uh, he was chuffed a bit. He, he, he did, I'll, I'll admit it, he did get a bit frustrated because, you know, just parts, delays and everything, trying to get the car finished. But now he's got it. He's going, oh, what was I worried about? It, so, so pleased with the worth, car. Worth the wait, oh, then, yeah. yeah. It looks fantastic. Yeah, that's Vic Parsons out there with the Plymouth in the Kestrel Lane. Taking on Jess Bishop. We didn't see Jess much in qualifying, actually. If Vic can run that again in Supergas qualifying, I think he'd be quite happy. 992. Uh, but no help him in Pro ET as he dialed 981. Uh, Jess, 931 on that 25. Next up, it's a Watkins family shootout between Amy and Tom. All right, dial in for Amy. Is uh, just make sure there, 961. Tom 912. Which reminds me, very say a very good morning to uh, Del Boy and his girls. I told you I'd remember Derek. Actually, I didn't. I said I'd probably forget, but, you know, not as old as I thought I am. Or feel, which is a good thing. Well, wheels up for Amy, not so for Tom, which is uh, a little unusual. One thousandth of a second breakout for Amy Watkins. The car is definitely dialed. So, Dave Cherrett, Laura Bainton. Um. Let's have a, quick, let's have a quick look. Is she on there? She must be. Yeah, there she is. Uh, she's currently number 26, so quite safe now because there's not enough cars left to, to bump her yeah. out. Oh, look at the lights on both lanes. I know they're both red, but 005 and 004. So, uh, Laura. Nine on that 47 dialing. I think that Two does Yeah, moves her up a little bit actually to number. Yeah, from 27 to 22. Nicely done, Laura. So the bump is still Aussie. Yep. They like doing stuff like this, keepers on their toes. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Dave Rudd, your number one qualifier and the only person this weekend so far to have a perfect ET. You'd have thought we'd have had a few more, but uh, and the perfect light money is still up for grabs. Still going. That it's which is up, yeah, quite incredible. There have been many attempts at it. Fair to say, Dave um, likes his nickname, Mister Qualifying. He's going to get a whole. No matter what happens, even if someone pips him, he's going to get a whole bunch of qualifying points from this weekend. Up against Alfie Ran, who's 19. 9.11 and a 9.80 for Dave Rudd. No help for either, but I think Dave Rudd's still going to be a happy boy going into Eliminations later on today. Eliminations are... The, what, where are they today? Yes, Let's afternoon. Uh, Two o'clock for Pro ET. OK. And then Pro, and Super Pro follows that. Uh, junior Dragster, if 64 car ladder... Is it after that as well? My goodness yeah, me. It should be because it's an all-run field and we've got 33 cars. <laughs> yeah, it should be a 64 yeah. ladder. It still won't take as long as having 64 cars, no. but the ladder will work out. So it is six rounds of racing to get a trophy. Six. So Warren Watts and Nick Munkridge both very, very safely in the show. Nick this morning does a 10.11. For Warren, it's a 9.12. 9 
118 and a 10.20 with a zero. Right, it's a very quick shout actually uh, for Stu Doiney. Uh, if anybody in the pits has got a shifter cable minimum seven foot long, they've just done a warm up in the pits and it broke. Um, maybe the Super Pro guys may have one, but I'll read it again after that. Uh, but yeah, Stu Doiney and uh, the team desperate for shifter cable minimum seven foot long. Goodness me, what a thing to break. Simon Rickwood and John Dalrymple. Simon Rickwood stays for some way off actually this morning. There's been uh, quite a few runs that have been nowhere near this morning, which is most unusual for everybody. So Harley J Derby is one of those, quite unbelievably for me, not in at the moment. Uh, he's number 37. I think he's one of the last, uh, apart from Dougie McClure, oh, and Susie, who's over there, who aren't in. 0-4 on his dialing or better. So if a 9-14 comes up on the board in the Kestrel Lane or closer to a 9.1, he'll be around to race later. If not, he won't. Ryan Garrett on the other side with the fantastic dodge. He won't be in 8.80 for Ryan Garrett. Breaks out by 2,000. I think that's Patrick Pear's funny car. It does that like quite oh, a right. lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where he's pitted anyway. Yeah. All right, John Bean, number two qualifier. At that, the looks, that looks a bit oppressive. Can you, it looks bad enough standing there. Imagine being stood next yeah. to it or near it or in it anyway. <clears throat> Neil Watkins, currently number 11. Let's say John Bean, number two. Dialings for these two then, 11.40 for the pickup truck, 9.73 for the Mustang. Well, John's going to get there first, but he is. 9.79, 11, oh, 11 with a late breakout for Neil. And quite a few of those this morning already, actually, like a couple of foul the wrong side. Right, Susie McClure with the eye candy dragster. Darling of 11.20. Her first race weekend in the car. Going alongside Will Clark, 988, darling. Yeah, Will has had his, not had his normal clockwork weekend. Car a number of times hasn't made it to the finish line, which is really, really unusual because the little bike engine in that dragster is normally deadly consistent. Normally. He's safely qualified at number 24. 10.09. Well, oh, well, nicely done, Susie. 11.28 uh, on that 20. Goes up to 39. Not in the show, but that was a very, very good run indeed. That's a good effort for a first event yeah. trying to qualify. So, uh, Aussie Brown is actually on the bump, but... I Oh, actually, the Dougie McClure is still here and Darren Huxley. So just to be safe, Aussie needs to be eight, sorry, 10.89 or better in the Kestrel Lane, but not quicker than 10.85, obviously. Yeah, we've got to double up. Which... Yeah, Aussie Brown. That's uh, Simon Fulton, that yeah. one. But Simon's not on there, is he? Is he further up somewhere? Oh, it could be. No, that is him then, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So Mark Huxley safely in in the Slick Tricks lane. It's all about what Aussie can do to get off the bump. 9.92 and 11.02. 
Halsey Brown has a couple of nervous minutes to come with the next two pair of cars actually yeah. because Darren Huxley is one of those on the outside looking in at the moment i.e. not qualified um, he's in the spot behind Aussie but if he goes 11.59 or better he will be in safely in is your defending national champ Brett Featherstone best words ever on the back window there for Brett Featherstone thank you Santa Pod crew best in the world So Brett goes, 9.58, Darren goes, just misses, only just for Darren Huxley. Six hundredths of a second off, he will be a DNQ. So um, you can get into the show on the break rule. And by break rule, it means if someone that's qualified ahead of you is not, uh, is not in, what we, we have alternates. And obviously the first alternate will be the first one... Um, to get a tap on the shoulders to say, look, so-and-so is broken. Would you like to come take your place in eliminations? And they rarely, they rarely say no, <laughs> let's face it. Uh, so Ronnie Mercer, a couple of outlaw Anglias going at it this time. Ronnie is, oh, and Ronnie's number 30. Turns the gas on this morning again in the Kestrel Lane, 901. Dougie McClure, I think, is one of the last, if not the last, that could bump his way into the show. 10.38, anything 10.42 or better, but not quicker than 10.38 will be enough. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Well, Ronnie is long gone, predictably. 9.03. For Dougie? Nah. Unfortunately, quite a way off with a 10.76. Yeah, Ronnie moved up to 30 to 26 then. So that is Pro E.T. Dunn. It's uh, racing now for the uh, rest of the weekend for them as we go to Super Pro E.T. Chris Parker. Good morning. In the town. Good morning, mate. So, the same concept, i.e. predict your time on the scoreboard at the finish line. Run as close to that number as you possibly can. We have 32 cars for 32 car field, so no one will be bumped. However, qualifying is murderously close. It's unbelievable, isn't it? So, Dave Russell, 899 again this morning in the Slick Tricks Lane with the supercharged Blamange. Uh, Kieran Ashley, though, as well. Very interesting. That 753 number, by far the quickest he's ever dialed. Yeah, be interesting to see what he wants to 60 foot this time as well. It's 60 that 60 foot was yesterday was just blisteringly quick. Well, especially for a turbo car, because yeah. turbo cars don't leave that hard. That went, yeah, 105 again to 60 yeah. foot. That may be quicker than 753. It is. 748, still consistent car. Finally, the ET matches the speed. Hundred and seventy five miles an hour through the strike for Kieran Ashley. And uh, Dave Russell's team very happy, I think, with a nine point one oh at one fifty two. Just to give you the run order as well, folks, after Super O we've got Junior Dragster, Super Gas Street Eliminator, uh, and then Super Comp, uh, and then we're on with our first pro session of the day. We have two of them, we had two yesterday. We're gonna see what we can do to uh, ramp up the noise and the speed as the day wears on. Day so, the slick, slick Tricks Lane, um, current number one qualifier, Tom Atkinson. He's 14 ten thousandths off his dialing. Which means there is a little bit of room. There's a room. tiny bit of room, Not but it's very little. Uh, going up against Colin Morris in the Kestrel Lane. Colin with the Camaro in at 13 at the moment. Eight forty-nine for Tom on a forty-eight. What a great run that was, and a sixty-eight and a sixty-seven for Colin Morris. They're killing it this morning. That's really good. Doesn't improve their qualifying. Time. It just shows how tight it is and how wonderful this track is to come out after all of that, all that work and still be able to run within 100th, first run out in the morning. With, with no issues Amazing. at all. 
But the most important thing as well, I may restate this throughout the day, but the most important thing is that you've got two even lanes as yeah. well, especially if you're going racing. The man himself's in the house. He is? Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. So it's going to be AC Bell in the Kestrel Lane, 8.70. Now that 870, um, he's absolutely destroyed that on numerous occasions over the last two days, isn't he? Yeah, just clipping in. Yeah, Pete Brown having a device. little bit of trouble with Hans device, I think. Hans device is a is great innovation. I, it, yeah. It, it changed the way it, a lot of people. Uh, makes you feel real comfortable in the car. What it does is it sort of connects everything together from your back to your head and all that. So if you have an accident, unfortunately, it keeps everything in the right place. So let's see if AC Bell is going to go 8-4 again. He's right beside Mr. Brown. Now he goes 75. 8-4-2 for Pete. Breaks out by 500, but uh, I don't think they're bothered about that. They feel very happy with this. I wonder if Ron's got new tyres. Um, <laughs> not now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ron Bartlett with the uh, fantastic Sweet FA Anglia in the Slick Tricks lane. This time he dialed 795, which is pretty much where the car's been the whole time. Having nitrous on this is shaved like three tenths of a second off the easy T, but that's not the whole story. It's completely changed the car, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it launches very differently. Um, Ron likes it, but he knows that it's probably a better bracket car without the nitrous but he's still desperate to chase that number so Ron's yes dialing what he's dialing and, and but he would be more than happy to break out if it went into the low 780s well the other thing you've got to say as well that little Anglia out there in the Slick Tricks lane I'm not quite sure what size engine it came with it now has a 584 cubic inch big block in there which is around about, it's not far off nine and a half, nine and a half litres. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say ten, but yeah, not yeah, far off nine and a half litres. So it's the engine is at least ten times what it came with from the factory. Ten times. Think about that for a second. Uh, taking on Daniel Giles, who can he run another seven forty? He's kept the nine the same the whole time. Well, Ron's car launched straight. 41 with a 7 again, yeah. Absolute round of applause for the Giles and Hartley team. Out of six runs, I think, five of them. I'd be really surprised. Uh, that's Bjorn Holtberg, everybody, from Norway in the Chevy wagon in the Slick Tricks lane. Thank you very much, Steve, for the entertainment, sir. I would be amazed if anyone anywhere on the planet has actually, in six runs run their dial-in bang on five times and only a hundredth out the yeah. other. Yeah, that um, is the spread, you know, the, the window that that car's in is so tight. Um, they've got such a good race car for, for let's hope race day. Yeah, today. I was going to say, let's hope it does continue into race day. So yeah, uh, beyond Romer and Holmberg, Holmberg, sorry, keep saying that, my apologies, um, from Norway with the 57 it's an estate. Should we call it a station wagon? Nomad? Uh, Two Nomad? Nomad ish? Possibly, yes. Possibly, yes. Uh, he does 8.98. It is a hell of a long trip to come down from Norway. Uh, a good couple of days travelling, uh, whether you drive and get the short ferry from Dover to Calais or, or Calais to Dover, even, or you take the long one from uh, Gothenburg to Immingham. It's still a real trek. Thomas Hass as well, spent a couple of days in the car getting here too, from Switzerland with the Valiant. A30 and a 902. A 
I'll tell you what, Bjorn Holberg could really be the spoiler in the pack. He's been right on, even though he's qualified number 12, that means nothing to play today, does it? Yeah, it's uh, when we get so many qualifying runs, the field gets so tight that it isn't necessarily a really good indicator, indicator of who's What's got a good happen. race car or not. Yeah. Well, you can tell because the ones that have been consistent, yeah. but the trouble is it, that can all go to pot on the tree. Obviously. Oh, yeah. I mean, or, or when you, because in qualifying, you run it all the way through to run on your dial in. Nobody backs off just in case they break out. No one. No. So when it comes to racing, though, they will. And that oh, just yeah. Well, uh, when, we, when it comes to racing and the tree becomes staggered, yeah. um, you really want to win by as little as you dare win by. Because yeah. that gives you the least chance of breaking out. Correct. Which sounds like a bit of a strange thing to say, but we know what you're yeah. talking about. But yeah. get to the top end, be in control. Colin Miller's dialing, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 6.95 for the Flying Viper. It won't be 6.95. That's the first time he's had side shake all weekend. They really stepped it up to try and run the number. Andy Thetford, though, with a great-looking run with the Black Pearl. Eight flat, 173 miles an hour. The crew do deserve a massive round of applause for that. Loads of issues over the weekend. And uh, it all came together in the last qualifying run. Well, Colin Miller thought, you know what, I'm just going to go for it this morning. It is re I always think it's so funny, especially with bracket racers, that they, they are, it is bracket racing, so you're supposed to be consistent. But the, um, they just can't stop the urge to go fast, no. can they? <laughs> no, everybody wants to go quick. They, they do. Um, but at the same time, to be completely fair to Colin, yeah. that car does normally run in, it has run plenty yeah. of times in the 60s in uh, Outlaw Anglia. So, Callum Twinchat with the King's Topolino. Immaculate looking small block race car. Callum's number 20, Mark Bailey's number 8. Again, the, the positions don't really mean too much at the moment, uh, but they do when it comes to pairing them up to race later on today. So, Mark Bailey, 8.74, Kestrel Lane. and an 896. Callum, that has big implications for who he's going to race in round one. He was number 20, yeah. which means that he would have got the number four qualifier, I think. Now he's up to 15. He would race, potentially, depending on how the rest of it goes, number 31. Mm. Which is, I'm not going to say it's easier. It's not as challenging. It's not potentially it, as challenging. It should be not as challenging. It should be not as yeah. challenging. But it never really works like that, does it, when it comes to retro racing? So Bob Doyle with the um, ever-moving dial-in on the Datsun. They've gone for an 872 this morning, which means it'll be an 850 in the Slip Tricks lane. Alan Dibwell, currently number 10. I would say we're not used to seeing Alec Alan qualify at number 10. However, such is the tightness of the field. He's still got a great race car. Yeah, he, he, you know, we had this chat yesterday with him and he, he was more than happy that the race car's good. It will do everything he wants it to do. And he's out there to just make really good, consistent points this weekend and keep his lead in the championship. Consistency is what it's all about. Although that won't do a lot for his head going into eliminations. A red light by 006. 771 with a 4 and an 867. He'll be fine, he'll just stick another 10,000 in, right, in, his, in his right thumb and it'll be fine. Is that how you do it? Oh yeah, you're right, you're right, 10,000 on your thumb. And then, and then <laughs> well, that's how it works, yeah. is it? Yeah? yeah, fair enough. But what we do have to say, I mean, I just want to explain as well, once again, um, out there on the racetrack, we've got Lee Huxley in the Kestrel Lane from the UK, taking on from France the Dubois family with that immaculate, immaculate Pontiac car, which looks for all the world like a pro stocker. 
It is not. It's a six-second super pro car. But there is a big difference between bracket racing in the US and bracket racing in the UK. Yeah. Just tell us the difference. So when we go fast bracket racing sort of at this level in the States, everybody would be using a delay box. Which is? Which allows you to react directly to the top bulb. So when the when the tree counts down, yep. you can actually effectively leave the starting go, line. Yeah. You let go on the top bulb, right, and then you hit the throttle. Yeah, and the rev limit and the two step and the and the trans brake are still holding from when the button was pressed in because it's delayed. So, but it, that's preset. Yeah, yeah, and you preset the amount between the top bulb coming on and the car. Leaving. A lot more like it this time for Patrick Dubois with the fast door car. 6.90 on a 6.96. Yes, he broke out. But he got off the start line with that tie shake. 8.93 for Lee Hatsy. Really nice number. That was with a 7. He didn't improve. State number 9. But yeah, anyway. And here in the UK, the difference basically is that we're not allowed to do low boxes. So we leave on the bottom bulb. However, so, however we do that. And... and we can... With delay boxes as well, it's not just... So basically, you react when the tree... Because the tree will count down exactly the same increments every time. Yeah. So what you do is you leave on the top bulb, yep. but this is another added wrinkle. If you think you've done it too quickly... Yes, you can then add extra to the delay time or take less from the delay time with two buttons on the wheel. So if you think you've... Basically, if you think you screwed it up... Yeah, which you can actually is the worst thing you ever do. All the best bracket racers will tell you the same thing. Yeah. Do not bump down. <laughs> well, basically, you shouldn't have screwed up. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If but you, then you know, if you think you've gone too early, you've yeah. that's it. You're done. So what what I, what I'm alluding to anyway is what they do here with bracket yeah. racing, leaving on the bulb, no electronics. Yeah. Leaving on the bottom bulb, no electronics involved. Most people do still use trans brake, the same thing, so yeah. that locks the car on the start line. You bring up the, the RPM and let go of the button, and then it releases all the power through the trans and does its thing. So Jack Brewster and Pete Waters, your next pair. Jack with the big door car. <laughs> well, you gave it a pedal to get it away from the wall very nicely. Pete looking for 7.8, he goes 85. Jack goes 8.16 at 173. Again for Jack, good confidence for the It's not a dragster bird out. I might have said that a few times yesterday, but my goodness me. It amazes me that he... he ma I know it's got huge amounts of power, but it amazes me that he manages to get that amount of wheel speed yeah. out of the burnout box to keep that going doing that it's all cubes that isn't yeah it? i think like you said yesterday yeah. yeah so anyway what i was alluding to is yes what they do in the states is still bracket racing it's still really really good however it tends to make it closer at the top end it does but so. but there's le less of the human element in it well if you like it's just a matter of do you do you want that consistency on the start line mm. is that part of the competition um it's not doing anything for you but reacting to a bulb directly rather than reacting to a bulb and putting a delay in your head is always going to be more accurate. Yeah. Because the machine's doing it, your brain's not. Humans really react to a stimulus. That's what we're good at. I.e. Yeah. I.e. flashing amber lights. Yeah. All right, so Fabien Dubois with the very big block dragster in the slick tricks line. 721, that'll work. Now the thing is, Fabian. Fabian is less than two hundredths in his qualifying time off of being perfect. Yeah. He's and the number seventeen qualifier. Yeah, he's in the bottom half of the field. <laughs> Which in itself is pretty amazing. But he would, as things stand, unless things jiggle around a bit more, have the number one qualified Tom Atkinson in round one later today, if things don't move. Big if, I know. Big if. So, two guys that can shake things up. 
Scott Hauser, Kestrel Lane 739 and 685 for Nick Good with the supercharged rear engine dragster. Uh, they can't shake things up because they're already ahead of him. So uh, Nick is currently number six, Scotty number 11. Well, it looks like Angel Romero is not going to be making this run, unfortunately. Our friend from all the way from Spain very kindly packed the weather in his suitcase and trainer and brought it with him. Do that again. Yes, talking about that delay on the start line thing. Scott's actually got a really long throw trans brake button that he's now designed. So he actually lets go of the button and the button. Oh, look at those lights as well. 022 for Scotty. Double 06 for Nick. And a 684 with a 6 breaks out by 4. Bow. And Scott Hauser predictably doesn't move with a 100 second off. Yeah, so when Scott leaves go of the button, yeah. he lets go, and the button has a long throw on it. So the time it takes for the button to come out and make contact yeah. actually delays the reaction a little bit. So is Just it, a little bit. Is, it, is it because Scott, he thought he was too quick? Is yeah. That he's, is that what it, it is? Well, yeah? most, most of the cars that are running lights or quicker will always leave the light. If you leave on the bottom bulb, yep. they will always leave too quick. Right, okay. So everybody in that situation is trying to put a delay in the brain. And Which doesn't really work. Like and that, doing does things it? like, you know, and, and trying to change the car up a little bit so the car reacts a bit slower and all that stuff. So, one question I'll be meaning to ask for our next, our next pair Joe Kelly, Kestrel Lane, uh, and Mark Corso. Now, Joe Kelly at the moment is the number 16 qualifier, so he would be in for a race with the number 32 qualified car as it stands. Mark Corso. Uh, a bit higher would be in with uh, yep. a car that's close to the dock. What difference does tyre pressure make to reactions? Um, we could we could alter the reaction of the car quite a bit on tyre pressure. Really? Uh, not, you know, I mean, we're talking thousands. Okay. That we could we could change it probably a couple of hundreds. Just and from tyre pressure? Yeah. Oh, Joe, oh so close. Funny enough, to a perfect light with the 001. 8.21 for Mark Corsell, excellent stuff. 8.92 for Joe and 8.92. Oh, that was Yeah, yeah, that is quite interesting that you can uh, alter it that. Is that something you ever do or not, as the case may be? Um, we, we sort of have done, but the problem is that you want to keep the tyres in, in the window yeah, for what, the, what you want the car to do. So it's a very difficult thing to, to choose to do. You don't want to change the, how the car's doing other stuff down track. Yeah, of course not. Um, and, you know, you get too low and the car start moving around at the top end and you don't really want that. No. So, Jack Williams with that uh, supercharged Nova. The only colour for a race car is matte black. Yes, it blends into the racetrack, but it looks cool as, well, fill in the blank at the end of that one, really. Yeah, yeah matte black cars are the only way forward. Ask Freddie Fagerstrom. Um, taking on Matt Peters with the big block Chevy Dragster. Matt is currently number two, Jack is 25. So if Jack runs close to his dial in, that might shake up the order a little bit as well. He's run 779 a few times. 85 this time and breaks out for Matt. So Jack Williams on day 25. Now the only racer so far to have resisted the urge to try and go quick all the time is Billy. He's gone back to race mode as opposed to yay mode. You see what I mean? Well, I think they were, what they were trying to do was get the get a handle on the 760 more. Mm. Um, you know, they've, they've they've run 760 in that in the 760 class now um, a few times, um, but they're still looking for data on that. But they decided that actually it's that warm. The DA is so high this weekend. 
they're unlikely to come across it again. The car doesn't want to run 760 anywhere. It's mm. not quite... So they're not going to learn enough. They're basically. not going to learn enough, so it's better to go back and <coughs> do what they normally do, run in Super Pro mode, tell the nitrous, let the car do what the car does. And it's not like they've got... Uh a terrible race car running the numbers anyway. There we go, yeah. 8.35 and a 33. That moves Billy up to number 20. So whoever's number four qualifier is going to have a big ask him that way. <laughs> Super Pro qualifying session is a wrap for the 2023 Euro Finals. Chris, pleasure as always, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very indeed. much. And I'll um, see you later for racing. Indeed. Round one is scheduled for around about half past two. We will see how that shakes oh, out. Hopefully. I've got to melt on the bank for a while. <laughs> it would be nice if we melted away as well, wouldn't it? It'd be like the easy way to lose weight. Great, wouldn't it, mate? Thank you very much indeed. Pat. See you later. Shut up. To see the dragster, it's Paul Brown once again. Passenger this time is Katrina Lane uh, from York, celebrating a 60th birthday by having a go in the back of the two seater dragster. Uh, we've got five passengers lined up today. A very low eight or possibly even high seven second pass coming up. Over 165 miles an hour. And uh, usually they had a couple of spots available for this weekend. And as soon as I mentioned it, within about 20 minutes, they went. So uh, people always good. Thrill ride experience here with the two-seater dragster. Coming up next will be uh, Lucas Oil's junior dragster qualifying session. Their last qualifier, which will be number session number eight. That's, whoa, 791, 168 mile an hour pass there. Yeah, respect to the team for that one. Uh, very, very nice way for Katrina to celebrate that 60th birthday by having a two-seater passenger ride. Right, Lucas Oars, Junior Dragster, your next class. Their last qualifying session. So you got your number seven qualifier, Liam McDonald. When I say number seven, he was 006. But then the top 12 have had 00 lights. Ridiculously tight qualifying in a junior dragster. That is utterly mental, it isn't is it? Phenomenal. Uh, Atham is currently number 21. Good to see so many people here uh, on Saturday. The uh, final qualifying day here at the European Finals. Good crowd here yesterday, witnessed a phenomenal night session as well. And no help for either. Ethan goes red with the 0-3, Liam an 0-5 the right side, but he'd already had a double O. Girls, Lara Bartlett, she appears in the Kestrel Lane, and it's Jacqueline in the Slick Tricks Racing Lane. Lara currently number two, Jacqueline number 17, but there's only zero one of a second between the pair of them. going to creep into stage. The tree will count them down. Hopefully they'll get greens on both sides and they both go red, but they've already qualified well, so they really had to try hard. 0-2 for Lara, 0-4 for Jacqueline. 
Uh, so obviously no improvement for those two. They stay put. Uh, don't forget the juniors run to the eighth mile, not the quarter mile. Right, has uh, we get the next juniors up to the line. Ah, it's only going to be one of them. Right, we've got our Santa Pod team in position to go for a little wander at. Uh, well, they're going to be starting at the top of the banking, but also we have some of them going into the grandstands as well. So you want to listen out for this one. Um, they are going to be randomly giving out flags. And you think, well, hang on a minute, what's going on here with the flags? Basically, we're giving out flags for various countries that are represented in the world of Pro Mod. And when Pro Modified come round as a race class, we want you to wave the flags for the countries, for the drivers that are represented in those pairings. Uh, it's obviously if you get, uh, for example, uh, Mickey Gilquist comes out, or Freddie Fagerstrom, you wave the Swedish flags. And if you get Bobby Wallace, you wave the flag for the UK and stuff like that. So we're going to give out some flags on the grandstand and on the banking. Uh, they're just randomly given out. We haven't got a huge amount of them, but it just gives a bit of an international flavour to the event. So uh, that's what's going to be happening. Our crew are sort of on the banking, and uh, they'll be dishing them out in the grandstands as well. Uh, but you can wave them in any class, but what we'd really like it for is uh, Pro Modified. So uh, just look out for the, uh, the Santa Pod team giving out the flags. And then there will be another part to that as well as we get ready for Tom Peters and Grace Smith. And they both go red as well. Tom goes 02, Grace goes 03, so they're going to stay put at 16 and 15. Right now then, in Pro Mod, if the driver from the country of the flag that you've got, don't forget, hold on to your flags, if the driver of the country of the flag that you've got wins the event, if you email a photo of you and your flag into the uh, Santa Pod team at boxoffice at santapod.com, don't worry, we'll give you those details again later on. And uh, we'll give you a free ticket to the national finals. How about that? Absolutely brilliant idea. Uh, the numbers are limited for each country, so not everybody's going to get one. So uh, that's basically what we're up to. We're, pro we're promoting the national finals. We're promoting waving flags. Basically just making an international feel to the event. Ellie Mae Brown with the Mystic Junior, and it's Harry Peters with the Raptor. Ellie Mae is currently number 22. Harry is 29. And also watching the juniors, uh, Lorraine Large sat at home. Lots of big shout out to Trev and, of course, the Peters family. She's at home watching the live feed nursing a poorly hip. Oh, Lorraine. But he's down there. Lorraine sends her love. <laughs> 004 reaction time there for Max. Uh, Trev just walking off the line there and uh, he sends his love back to you, Lorraine. Frankie Kent, Max Taylor, your next pair. As the, uh, the Santa Paul team go for a little bit of a wander, dishing out flags. But uh, all will come clear a little bit later on. But if you get one, hold on to it. So Frankie Kent currently number 28, Max number 13. And uh, Max, is, well, Max and the team have really been up against it this weekend. More Steve than the rest of the game. Uh, oh, double O one red for Max. So that's how tight that was. Uh, Frankie goes red, but an O four. But I tell you what, another one in the Kent dynasty. Out there racing, really, really good to see. All right, next pair coming up to the line. That's uh, Teddy Howe uh, in the number five spot in qualifying, going alongside Daniel Weir. Both staying off the racing line is pretty much as far as they can.
And that's an 09 light for Daniel, an 08 for Teddy. So they're going to stay put. They've all been killer all weekend long. So they stay put. Daniel stays four. Teddy stays number five. Emmy Crondwell and Eva Davis. Emmy currently number 12 with a double 09. Another one of the uh, double O runners. Uh, Eva Davis currently number 20 with the Mayhem Junior. All star crew, of course. <laughs> Right, going to be a solo then uh, for Emmy. Not quite sure what's happened to, uh, to Eva. But uh, Nick spotted something, wasn't happy. Red there for Emmy. You see visibly moved before the tree. Uh, so she's staying at number 12 for the time being. So look out for the Santa Pod team uh, dishing out flags out there. I can see, actually, I can start to see some of the flags being waved actually uh, on the grandstands. Various countries, yeah. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Don't forget waving for your the country. And we will actually we will say which country they're from in Pro Mod as well. So because some people that's going to be know. an excellent part of the Mexican wave, actually, yeah. isn't it? I think. <laughs> so who's, Ted Sullivan, Freddie Taylor, who's got the fastest flag? Double O two red for Freddie. Ted O six the right side. But Freddie already had a double O light anyway. So uh, twenty four is the position at the moment for Ted. Freddie. Not really So yeah, we are going to be running a 64 car elimination ladder a bit later on today. Um, for oh, this Jackson. is their last qualifying session actually uh, for the juniors. They will follow Super Pro this afternoon. Right, so uh, it's. Uh, Kai Cooper. He is your number one qualifier as well. That 0030 Molly. Let's get a really good one in here, the last qualifying session, but they'll all be racing. So, point one two and a point one one. Molly Openshaw actually might move up a little bit uh, off the uh, the last qualified spot. Yes, yeah, she does actually moves up one from thirty three to thirty two. So, Mackenzie Love, Kestrel side of the racetrack, currently number three, and Emily Moore. Kenzie, he's another one of the kids of the double O light, so an 06 isn't going to move him up. And then Emily Moore with a point one four stays. There she is as well. So as I say they will all be racing next time you see him. At the moment they're qualifying. Uh, what a 
uh, <laughs> a session that was when, uh, when Chevy Checkett turned up. She'd missed all the qualifying on Thursday, got one run in yesterday, and on that one run, she went 004. And uh, she was your number four one. That was an moment. absolute drop Brilliant. the light moment. It's like, uh, yeah, I've been in school, so what? Yeah. Uh, taking on Jake Cooper in the Slick Chicks Lane. Very morning. Very good morning to Em and Letty, I'm sure, are watching up there, either on the bank or on the grandstand somewhere. Oh, down there. How do I spot you? I mean, like, you are literally the two smallest people over there on the bank, and I manage to spot you every time. <laughs> morning, Letty. Hope Big Sis does you proud again. She's still number number four qualifier with that 0-4 light <laughs> off to the trailer. And Letty's only got another year and a bit to wait now before she uh, comes out to play. <laughs> <laughs> Very frustrating that she's got that junior dragster at home pretty much ready to go. She can't, run, can't drive it yet. Well, just to, just to wind them up, they, they do bring it to the track with them sometimes as well. <laughs> uh, 03 Red for Chev that time. Not going to help, obviously. Uh, Jake Cooper does stay on in the 33 qualified spot, I should say. Uh, Supercomp into the pairing lanes, please. Supercomp, please, into the pairing lanes. I wonder how I knew how to say that. I love our new screen. So, Neve DV. And uh, in the Kestrel lane. And Damien Redshaw. Now, Damien only in the number 26 spot at the moment. I say only. It's because the Redshaws are normally right up there. Well, it's Chris Redshaw's birthday today. Many happy returns indeed to the dad of the operation down there. Oh, Rich has made it down on the start line this time. Well, sort of. Yeah, but uh, just need to uh, spot something on the track just past the uh, half track. It does need a little bit of attention. So, yeah, they're just, uh, they're just making 100% sure. Yeah, those, uh, those folks you see out there, the wall jumpers, as we call them, in the Slick Tricks lane, there is a whole team, obviously, of marshals here at Santa Pod. There is, uh, you can obviously physically see the guys on the start line. However, obviously, we have pit marshals. Uh, they have uh, marshals in the staging lanes as well to coordinate. Basically, is to coordinate everything. Um, and they have what we call spotters, which uh, those guys you see out there on the track, they check out every single time a pair of cars go down the track to see if there's anything on the racetrack just to make sure it's safe for the next pair. Also, at the turnouts, there are three turnoffs past the finish line. There's one just past quarter mile, another one about halfway down, and the, the last one, obviously the last turnout, right at the end. And um, they are all in radio contact with each other. So if any car or bike comes around the corner at the top end with any sort of fluid or problem, they can radio back to everybody on the start line and the spotters just to check in whichever lane they just ran in, just to make sure. And that is what's happened just there. So obviously there was the last car down that lane, which I can't remember which one it was actually. Was it Jake Cooper? Uh, possibly, yeah. yeah. Um, but then it could be from one of the fractionally early ones. Um, but, uh, you don't know. Yeah, they, they will uh, they get those checked out. Uh, but whilst, it's, uh, whilst you can hear me down there, Chris. Chris Redshaw. Happy birthday. <laughs> I don't think you heard it a moment ago because the engines were running. But uh, many happy returns, mate. Have a good day and uh, hope the lads give you uh, uh, proper respect and go to bed early and do the washing up and all the sort of things you should do for your dad. All the things that kids don't do all the time, I think is what you're trying to say, wasn't yeah, it? That's right. Behave for a day. Oh, yeah, actually, right. that, I love the way that's a present. Actually, yeah, behave. Behave for a yeah, day. That's, that's the one. <laughs> well, I, have that I have that conversation many times with my kids, which is like, which is like, um, uh, why, why are we rewarding them for just eating stuff we've given them? Is this, no, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, you know it works. Yeah, Barn Levy, it's his birth today as well, one of the uh, Outer Anglia racers. Uh, I think that's about it from the uh, drag racing world that, uh, that I've got here. Uh, oh, no, Robert Zorn's birthday today as well, so many happy returns indeed to him as well. So, yeah, just some concentration on the uh, Slick Tricks lane. Don't forget, uh, the Santa Pod crew, I don't know how far they've got, uh, but they are dishing out the flags at the moment. This is just a little wave of the flags, just to see how far they've all got. Oh, quite a few on the grandstands on the banking as well. 
Yeah, there's quite a few flags being dished out over there as well. So just to give a bit of an international flavour for Pro Mod. Uh, but you can use them in other classes as well. Whilst it's gone quiet, let's just go through this so you don't understand what's going on. Uh, obviously, wave the flags in support for the driver of each respective country that you have got. Bit of fun, just creates a bit of atmosphere and support for each race. And we would encourage you to post on your social medias what flag you've got and who they're supporting to for a bit of viral publicity. And further to this, if the driver from the country of the flag you've got wins the event in Pro Mod, you can email a photo of you and your flag into Santapod at boxoffice at santapod.com and you'll get free ticket to the national finals in two weeks' time. So everyone's basically trying to grab Swedish flags now, aren't they? Well, I think. it could be an Estonian flag. Or it, it could, could be, be a, a British flag. It could be, or it could be a French one, or it, it could, could be a be Swiss anything. one, yeah. or a German one. Who knows? Who knows? So, uh, but uh, yeah, it's a bit of a fun. And obviously you're promoting the, uh, the, the national finals as well. So, uh, great waving last night by everybody on the banking and on the grandstands with their torches last night. That was uh, really, really good. A uh, bit of an unrehearsed one, that, but uh, it, it worked, worked rather well. It yeah. was uh, quite good and everybody appreciated that. And uh, it also went out on the live stream as well. So, uh, yeah, that was a bit, good bit of fun, that, last night. Um, thanks to Luke for saying get everybody to wave the torches and then we started orchestrating it and it was even even better so that, yeah we, we did enjoy that last night absolutely that so and we also have uh, got to say too uh, we have action on the drag racing or the drag strip which is what everyone's pretty much come for and the live action arena shows today the first yep. one's in half an hour is that right yes 11 30. okay so um where are we saturday yeah live action arena yeah, 11.30, and then later on today, 2.30. So, oh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, we've had a slight change in the run order as well by the looks of um, what the race director's just updated us with. We were due to have Nitro Funny Cars at the start of each session. However, um, they have been moved to after Top Fuel, I think, or after Nostalgia Nitro Funny Car. So the way it shakes out is we've got Super Gas to run, Street Eliminator and Super Comp uh, when the track is ready to go. Uh, then we are on with our first pro session of the day. Going to be kicking off with Fire Force 3 against Firestorm. Two jet funny cars going side by side as if we need to be any warmer. I'll tell you what, <laughs> when I stood down there last night, that was warm. Right, I mean, OK, it's hot out there anyway, but my goodness me, anywhere in the vicinity of those, it was really, really hot. Uh, and then we go to Comp Eliminator Pro Modified would be up next. Top Methanol Pro Stock Car and then FIA Top Fuel Dragster for qualifying session at number three. And then we go into all of the FIM bikes with Pro Stock Super Twin Top Fuel Bike and Super Street Bike and including the Junior Drag Bike Cup as well. And right at the end of that session, we have the ever amazing Graham Sykes with the Steam Rocket Bike, which if you were here last night and you hadn't seen it before, um, I, I talked to a few guys up there in the, uh, in the field last night uh, camping who said they'd never seen it before, but what a machine. And it is a oh, fabulous, amazing. fabulous, fabulous piece of engineering. So the track crew are doing their usual thing out there in the Slick Tricks lane. Unfortunately, all too usual this weekend. But it is what it is. It's also very unusual to have for any junior dragster to uh, have that sort of issue. But there we go. I don't know about you, but you just get so many messages you get on there. No, you get them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another, another birthday, actually. James Roden has said it's uh, Nathan's birthday today. And he's going to be in the thrill ride today, actually. That's a good point, actually. Uh, Paul Brand sends me a great list of uh, people that aren't going out with the two-seater Frankster. So, uh, look at that. that. Many messages this morning already. Yeah, Nathan is uh, your third passenger. <laughs> I told in the you, two -seater. you get them all, not me. <laughs> no, it's his 33rd <laughs> birthday today. And uh, James Rowland's uh, just passing on his uh, birthday wishes. So, uh, any happy returns indeed to him today. Uh, the Griffin family are mid track on the banking. And uh, that's from Rob. Very uh, good morning to all of you over there as well. So, yeah, just going to be one of those great days. Um, don't forget to get your race weekend program. It's £5. It's available in the pod shop. The first pod shop, or the main one if you like, is, uh, is in the pits. Around about half track. 
but also you've got the, uh, the cafe there as well and the garage. Uh, the secondary unit is in the catering area, and then the third pod shop is up past Live Act Arena next to the Med Centre, so that's where you'll find those. Also, the latest event merchandise, including special European Finals t shirts, are available. Uh, also, the Slick Tricks racing merchandise, all the other Santa Pod stuff as well. And in the garage, you've also got VP uh, goodies in there, uh, Gas Monkey t shirts, a Lucas Oils products, Draper tools. Uh, Old Hall Performance VP, uh, they're, they're all up there, and Draper Tools and VP have actually got um, representation up there as well. Draper Tools have their own stand, and Old Hall Performance are here with uh, the VP Racing Fuels. So plenty of uh, stuff to keep you entertained and uh, have a look around there. Also, let's not forget all of our traders, uh, a huge variety of uh, traders that do appear here, from t-shirts to garden ornaments to paintings. Ian Guy, the artist, is here actually. Mm. Uh, some brilliant, brilliant artwork available from him. And also Blackett Photography, they've got their studio next to the pairing lanes and uh, they capture all the images of all the cars and all the bikes that race here. And uh, their studio next to the pairing lanes. Paula spends most of the time in the studio. Ian is out there taking all the images. So there are various packages available, be it printed copy or digital copy. There's Potland Blackett Studio. Uh, they are the resident photographers here at the Santa Bob Raceway. So when we're racing again, the only thing we don't have, oh, there we go, is a, it's a starter. <laughs> it wanders back out onto the start line. So it is Neve Devi and Damien Redshaw, take two. Do you know, that's the only thing about events like this, that I would, I would genuinely love to go around and buy lots of T-shirts and, um, and check out all the stuff in the trader area, but when do we have the chance? We don't. Uh, Andy Gelder, please come to Bankside VIP as soon as possible. Andy Gelder, I'm sure you know who you are, sir. Please come to Bankside VIP as soon as possible. That's a message from down there. So, even Damien. Uh, Neve is currently 19. However, to get to the, into the top 16 it is a 0.16 or better. Oh, 36, 36 yeah. yeah. I don't think that's going to improve no. our qualified time, but that's, uh, sorry, position. However, it's a real good start. Yeah, stays 19, Damien stays 26. Damien with a very uncharacteristic point three. Not had their usual clockwork weekend, unfortunately. Probably had to uh, eat Dad's birthday cake already. And, uh, <laughs> try, trying to hide the fact that he'd uh, taken it. <laughs> Slowed him down. So, Richard Wilcox. Uh, Richard is very, very unique in the world of drag racing uh, in the Kestrel lane. He, we have many drivers that double class in uh, different, like Super Pro and Super Comp, that kind of thing. Not in juniors. I think he's the first one, possibly worldwide, to double class in junior dragster and junior drag bike. So you will see him out a little while, uh, in a little while, qualifying for junior Drag bike too. Well, I think he's the number one qualifier actually. Oh, six light there. He was already qualified number six. That's not a lot of moving going on in this session. Point one nine for Lola. Ian and Dave checking the Chinese takeaway menu for tonight to uh, get their order in. <laughs> well, hopefully they don't need it. It seems that the races yeah. are feeding them all yeah, the time the at the moment. Yeah, doing a good job of that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well done to Terry Newton, who went shopping for them last night. Well done to the Prairie Tea Barbecue Squad that uh, delivered food to them as well. And uh, all the offers of support for uh, our track. Got a real late night last night and an early morning. Right, how, sorry, Harry Redshaw, Harley Cursell. That was good. That was very good. Harry is going to move up, I think. Probably not into the top 16. Up 19. to 19. Wow. Uh, Harley with a real good 0-2. Guess what? That doesn't improve him. Oh, it's 
So, Eva Davis. We had the Mayhem Junior. Yeah, front tyre pumped up. I think that's all that was, ah. actually. And 04 light as well. Nicely done at this late stage of qualifying. Absolutely. Sets them up nicely for today. One very quick message as well from Kerry Bygrave. Um, so can we thank Pete from Nitro FM? He is a legend, is Pete. Um, uh, from everyone in the media room of lending him the fan. It's made all the difference. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Pete. Luke Mugridge and Ada Cassisi. Ada's already had an 01 light. She's number 18. <laughs> Sorry, easy, it's, crazy it's world. not funny, is it? It's just <laughs> like... So this is uh, their last qualifier, this. Uh, they have their eighth and last qualifier. They've been here since uh, Wednesday setting up and been here Thursday doing five rounds of qualifying. And then we got uh, some uh, well, junior presentations in the pits later today. Well, tonight. That was close. Yeah, but it was a 0-2 red, unfortunately, for Luke Mugridge. I think they're going to stay put. Yeah, they will. Ada with a point one three. So, we're going to pair up a 64-car ladder for Junior Dragster for later on today. It's going to be fun. Morning, fellas. So, we move on with uh, Tony Morris, Carburetor's Super Gas. Uh, I had a message from Dave Gibbons this morning. This morning. Uh, Tony and me wish all of our TMC customers the best of luck this weekend, especially Tony, Tony Morris, Super Gas. Uh, Dave's back home now. And like Tony, we're watching from the comfort of his workshop, possibly air conditioned as well. So, uh, best wishes to everybody in Supergas from Tony Morris and, of course, the one and only Dave Gibbons. All right, first day, going to be seeing. Uh I'm, I'm staggered. I've just been, thank you very much indeed, Simon, for sending me that. I'm absolutely gobsmacked. I'll get to that a little bit later. It is just unreal. All right, what Jasmine that, Tunstall, you Stephen Raffle Trap, your first pair. Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, oh, Colin, homework. Homework, <laughs> homework on, on Saturday morning. So, 990 is the magic number in Supergas. Stefan from Holland. Jasmine from Hemel Hempstead. Nine ninety six is a pair. They both stay put. Actually, uh, Stefan doesn't improve. Yeah, I'll, very, I'll, I'll get back to this later. But uh, I've just been sent the, the track grip measurements, uh, the keg measurements. Thank you very much, indeed, Simon, uh, for the Euro finals. Obviously, it's warm. We don't need to. Be, we don't need to know that. But the track measurements, considering all the work the crew have done, are virtually identical in both lanes. There's nothing in it whatsoever. That is incredible. Uh, John Giles, Andy Harrison. Andy Harrison is currently number one. As I lose Colin for the next five minutes, well, he, <laughs> he works out the ladder for. Is that Super Pro? It is Super yeah. Pro, isn't First it? pair that I wrote down: Tom Atkinson, and Joe <laughs> Kellett. Tom and Joe, is yeah, it? Not Tom. Okay. <laughs> a good one, that. And what you see happen here is they leave the start line on full throttle. But they have what's called a throttle stop. The cars can run quicker than 990, but it's 985 and 93. They set the throttle stop to slow the cars down a little, and then full throttle comes back in, and away they go to hopefully the 990. Wayne Hiscock, John Turner. Wayne Hiscock in the Kestrel Lane with that really cool looking Chevelle John Turner with the Greenfish Barracuda so I haven't had a chance to catch up this weekend John I've been busy insulting you from up here as opposed to in the pits obviously just kidding mate hopefully we get a good 9-9 nine -nine this time actually looking at that John hasn't put a run in in super gas yet 
Ray goes 974. John goes 961 at only 119 miles an hour. Uh, well, there we go. John Turner is your number 18 qualifier in Supergas. That will be a 32-car ladder later on today. Okay, Tim Moore. Kestrel Lane. Stu Morris. Uh, current points in the National Championship are somewhere on my desk. However, that somewhere is proving elusive. There we go, found them. So, Supergas at the moment, I think, is led by the Morris boys who are out there in the Slick Tricks lane. Stu Doyne second, Pete Creswell third. Good run for Stu Morris, 994, no improvement. 10-11 for, uh, for Pete Moore. A little way off where they wanted to be. Okay, Mark White, otherwise known as Chalky. In the Kestrel Lane, ably assisted by Mr. Dan Page. Taking on the one and only Don't Lift Dave Fulton. With the Nova. Colin said back on Thursday if the Nova wasn't running the numbers, he'd go home and get his other race car. But the Nova behaved. Well, Mark White still a couple of tenths off. 9.93 with a five for Dave Fulton. That was really good. Okay, Pete Creswell, who is number three in the championship at present. Going up against Vic Parsons, who is new to Super Gas. He's one of the uh, top-end lifting club. Sounds a bit strange, but I know what I mean. <laughs> I mean that works. Basically, he's got no throttle stop. Uh, the car is a Nostalgia Super Stock car and a Pro ET car. So what he has to do is get to a certain point on the track and lift. Yeah, compared to Pete Creswell, who you'll visibly see lose all power about the tree. There. There. To the point it actually drops the front end <laughs> yeah. down, doesn't it? And he gets it back about now. Oh, he's going to go back. Oh, oh wow! Vic Parsons up to number three, 990 with a five. Why has he not tried super gas before? There we <laughs> go. Well done, Vic. Uh, the big difference as well, though, is Vic Parsons in both Nostalgia Superstock and in Pro ET. Sportsman. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is heads up on a pro tree. The difference is, is the ambers um, are on for different periods of time. So sportsman tree, the tree counts down to a green and the time between each amber is 0.5 of a second. With a pro tree, all the lights come on at the same time, then the green, and it's 0.4. And to get your brain able to leave on both lights is not an easy thing to do. No. Well, Paul Marston uh, did actually roll through stage and got a um, got a red. That was ten thirty with a zero. Uh, a nine ninety nine for Dave Cherritt. and that super gas qualifying done as well, I think. So top speed automotive street eliminator. What a class this has been this weekend, with the odd few incidents for good measure. Well, my main one, obviously, which we'll get to in a minute. First up is Joe Stevens. Stevens? Stevens. Even. Even Stevens. This car is lovely, but I do miss the stiletto. It's, uh, yeah, the stiletto was kind of, well, it was it, cool, it, wasn't it? Yeah, it is what it was. <laughs> it, was every, it was everything that drag racing is, which is stuffing a massive engine into a car that it shouldn't <laughs> be in, frankly. Uh, Rob Carter, oh so close with Percy the Passat to cracking the sevens. He's, he's going over 170 miles an hour. He's been in the 8.0s. He's nicely shallow stage as well, so he's going to get a good run up. Oh, 1.17, 60 foot for Rob Carter. That is stellar for a streetcar. And it is Yay! 798. 171 miles an hour. Put your hands together for Rob and the team. Your first ever seven second run with a Passat. Well, it's only downhill from now on towards the 60s. <laughs> well done to Patricia. That 60 foot is terrific. Yes. 1.17.
for Rob Carter. I think that's just as about as much as you can get out of a street tyre. Mm. Yeah, um, 10.27. Uh, for Joe in the other lane. That didn't actually change the qualifying order. That just meant we got five cars in the sevens now. Rob Slater, Kestrel Lane. Uh, and Nick Hale with the BMW. Now, Rob Slater's car leaves softly, but then that twin turbo big block kicks in. 862. 167 miles an hour and a 10.73 for Nick. These cars are street driven. If you haven't seen them before, they run on uh, treaded tires. They have no wheelie bars or anything else as well, which is mainly the limiting factor. No wheelie bars and treads really mean you can't launch quite as hard, but then all the power comes in down the track. They are going to be going out on their cruise. They do a 22 odd mile cruise around the countryside and fill up and fill up with fuel. And they do uh, what's known as a hot start. So obviously the engine's been running for a period of time. It's to prove they really are street cars, which they are. Tony Higgs in the Kestrel Lane. We're looking for a seven-second run from Tony. We haven't quite had one this weekend. What we've had is 180 mile an hour plus speeds. No. Issues with the bump box, I think that was. Well, it's another good-looking run from Tony, but he won't get a time because he left before the tree ran. Ricky Hale with the big pickup goes 10.86 at 125. It's, it's it's a struggle to explain how quick that truck actually is because that's a 10. It's so quick. The thing is, too, uh, I think if you well, basically pair it up with a Lamborghini and see what wins. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Or like I know it's world renowned the uh, Nissan GTR. Yeah. Quickest car in the world off the line, is what everyone says. And that thing would freight train it. Absolutely. <laughs> Al Williamson, great to see Al back. We didn't see him for a majority of yesterday. Um, 8.45 has been his quickest run so far. Uh, there's a pro charge big block in that immaculate looking truck in the Kestrel Lane. Taking on Al McSweeney, who I do think ran his quickest run ever, or very close to it yesterday. Over 180 miles an hour in 7.5 seconds from a Volvo 162. Um, he made a lot of new friends uh, out there in Sweden this summer. He went to their Street Week event, which is epic. If you ever get the yeah. chance, uh, check it out. It, it's, it's just an amazing, amazing event. Al with tire slip. Sorry, Al Williamson with tire slip. Al McSweeney, meanwhile, is long gone. Even quicker, 7.51. 186 miles an hour. Do you know what? With the quickest ET in Street Eliminator this being this this weekend being a 7-3. That's the you win, you can win that on the tree. Uh, you got it. Okay, two more turbo cars. One with a small block in there, and a young man behind the wheel who's impressed everybody that comes across him. That is Mark Sheridan. <laughs> of course, I was just going to say <laughs> Elliot Dave down here in the slip tricks lane. That's Dad Dave giving him the thumbs up. Elliot, this, far, this weekend has been in the 8.50s. He went 8.55 yesterday. Mark Sheridan is currently in at number two. I think that was his first run of the weekend, the 7.45. Mm. But... Well, they, interestingly, with uh, Elliot's car, it came out when it first debuted on the, uh, the block treads. Yep. Which is a bit more like a slick tyre. And they basically did it because they thought it looked a bit better. But now they got, they got bored of making it look good, nice and decided to make it go quick and put the radials on it. Updated the forelink in the back, and that's where these times have come from. So the twin turbo Kuda of Mark Sheridan blazes the tyres off the start line, expertly pedalled. See, if this was a race and race there, that's a cracking race. Look at the extra times as well. Oh, speed, ladies and gentlemen. 8.30, 204 miles an hour. But for Elliot, 8.50, 159, touching, nudging 160 miles an hour. Well done, Dave. Did you see those reaction times? Oh, ones. Both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, if that was a race, that would have been Mark Sheridan at the stripe. Just, I mean, the finish line cam must be amazing because he had 40 <laughs> miles plus, 40 yeah. miles an hour plus on Elliot at the finish line. Okay. Last car in Street Eliminator, I think, will be Vicky Smith. Yeah, watch the replay on the live stream. Look there at Mark Sheridan just blow past Elliot. Elliot probably thought he had the handbrake left yeah. on, but, um, <laughs> you know. I know for a fact Ellie was putting it in the car going, I've got him, I've got him, I've got him. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we did mention it before, the limiting factor on these cars is the street tyre. So what happened there was Mark Sheridan and the team just gave it that bit too much off the start line. You have to hit it hard, but not 
too hard. No. And it's a very, very fine line indeed. Yeah, so whereas with the slick tyre, you've got the window of wheel speed. Yeah. With the radial tyre, you've, you've got to shock the tyre to get into action, but if you shock it too hard, it just slips. And it's either a hit or a miss, and if you miss, you have to slow the car right down um, to basically get the tyres to rehook, which was what Victoria found out yesterday. That was good. Mm. And sideways. <laughs> so, Vic, Vicky Smith with that amazing Buick. Oh, a pro <laughs> better burnout there than, uh, you know, in the burnout box. Anyway, yeah. just too much power too soon is the very short version of what happened there. That car runs booming speeds over 170 miles an hour. Uh, it will be very, very quick when they nail the tune off the start line. So the last class before we go into our pro session will be... Supercom 8.90 is the number they're all looking for. So it will be the slingshot taken on. Oh, another slingshot again. Andy Clifford with the snow tires machine. As I said before, 8.90 is the number. Both of these guys have got the struggle of slowing the car down. I might say that's Clement the Y in the uh, Slip Tricks Lane, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, at main event, he was having a whale of a time dipping his car into like the 8.3s. Um, he's not been doing that this weekend. He's taking a little bit of power out of the car. Um, Andy Clifford, regular member of the 8 second zone now. Took him a little bit of time to get there, but he's there now and he's um, happy there. Pleased to say I've done all my homework. <laughs> I'm ready for marking. <laughs> <laughs> no, the reason why I have to do the homework is uh, when we get the ladders, if it's a 32 car field or bigger, you have to write all the names in because uh, yeah. there's not enough space to do it. If it's a 16 car, then yeah, the other names fit into the, into the printout. Uh, obviously, I need it for uh, commentary notes. Good matchups coming up in two Grand Prix. But this is Andy Clifford. Clifford. Well, Clement's a long way out in front. He's definitely going to get there first. I can see him slowing. 893. Good job there from Clement. Does that move him up? Yeah, number four. Nice. And, but Andy moves up from nine to six. But that nine flat. Yeah, he slowed down a bit too much, did Andy? That one. <laughs> a couple of weekends ago, and he'd have been chuffed with a nine flat. <laughs> yeah. Now, you've driven a slingshot. I have. How much did you enjoy that? Now, uh, this is a very quick question, actually. Junior Dragster, obviously, you sit in front of your engine, the slingshot you sat at the back. Mm -hmm. Forget about the performance, what do you prefer? Slingshot. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, uh. Don't get me wrong. There's a very good reason why the engine's behind you. Yeah. Right? However, it's... You, as a driver, you can see things going on. So if you've got like a quick fuel leak, you can shut the car off. If you've yeah. got a little oil leak, you can shut the car off because you can see it. Yeah. Just got to ignore the fact that... Um, and you like to see everything that's going on. Yeah. yeah. And if it goes bang, I've paid good money to watch that engine explode. <laughs> you want to... <laughs> that's a good point. You want to see that. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, one guy that um, could break out by a country mile. He already has <laughs> this weekend. Uh, he's knocking on the door of a seven. <laughs> Steve Field with the black pig too. Going alongside Paul Hudson, who is in the number two spot with an 8.909. Steve has tried to get him on the right side, went 9.03. <laughs> but they're just too busy having fun. Yeah, 8.08 I think he ran yesterday, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, absolutely brilliant. They were so happy with that as well. I did catch up with the pits at about... Half 12 last night, I think. Well, it's, it's, it's odd because Steve does this ever so often. He, he lent to like a bracket class and still trying to slow it down. A lovely launch again from Steve. Yeah, you can already see the car start to wiggle, so he, I think he will be probably back it off. No, no, no. Oh, yes, he has. A oh, 83 he tried. Close. Only 119 miles an hour at the strike compared to 168 for Paul Hudson. Gives you a difference of how cars accelerate off the line. Well, it actually shows you the difference between having a, having a throttle stop and not having a throttle yeah. stop. 
Yeah, so the reason these cars run throttle stops and don't just build a car that runs 8.90 is because there is actually an advantage by being the faster car. Well, the advantage being you can see your opponent the entire time and it doesn't come blazing past you at the finish line. Yeah. So, number three in the qualified order at the moment is Leah Callet, 8.92 is where she is. Uh, Steve Hudson, number five. At 8.93. Yeah, so this you'll see it here as well. Steve Hudson's car is built to run 8.90. It does run 8.90 flat out. Um, but Leah in the other lane will have about 20 mile an hour on him at the finish line. There you go, throttle stop release for Leah, and then she'll chase him down. They should get to the finish line around the same time. 893, 889 break out there for Leah. So Steve Hudson does move up a spot there, but Leah stays put. Ah, oh, the thrill ride dragster is uh, back out. Oh, it's the third time already for them today. They've been real, real busy. So we do know that it is uh, Nathan's birthday present in the back of that, well, whether he treated himself or whether somebody <laughs> bought it for him, I don't know. Uh, but uh, many happy returns indeed. 33 today. I'm just looking around the corner behind us and I can see Chris Todd's got his bonnet open. But of course, there's no engine there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see why that is in a second. That reminds me of... Uh, John on the start line one day at a VW event. Oh, he yes. bent down and had a look underneath the front of the car for an oil leak. No, no was just laughing there. their heads off because the engine's at the back. <laughs> Never forget that. John O'Shea, the legend. <laughs> so, Paul Brown is your driver. Nathan Ring is your passenger. He's from Trowbridge. 33 today. Good to see Paul's woken up as well. I one light for him. How about another? How consistent is this car? It's phenomenally good. 802, 166 miles an hour. And, uh, no doubt Nathan will be uh, playing that back through. Uh, the live feed replay when he gets home. So, uh, hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, if he does, you can, you can actually hear a faint scream as he goes up the track as well. <laughs> <laughs> right, we are getting ready for Comp Eliminator, which will lead us lovely into our first pro session. Uh, Comp have moved to, to uh, the front of the pro session now. Uh, it is uh, Q8 for them. Uh, the I think it's their last qualifier. Have they got another one later on? Uh, no, they do have two more. Um, so, yeah, this one and the final one. And then it will lead us into our pro session. Good and proper, but just prepping a few things. Getting ready. What is potentially going to be the hottest day of the year? Can't believe we're saying that in, in September. September. Uh, but the forecast was uh, 33 degrees today. Uh, it goes without saying, folks. Sunblock. Make sure you've got plenty of it with you. Um, keep yourself in the shade as much as you possibly can. And uh, just a, a, a polite reminder to everybody: if you've got umbrellas on the uh, on the banking. Uh, just be aware of people behind you. If you're at the top of the banking, no problem at all. Uh, but just be aware of the people around you. Don't sort of put it up too high uh, to obscure the people behind you at their view. They've come to enjoy it and they don't want to be watching your umbrella instead of the racing. So just bear that one in mind. Uh, keep it low is, uh, is basically what I'm saying there. But here we go before comp. It's the jet cars. Now that is Firestorm. Roger going with Helen out front. They stuck under the tower and I couldn't see them, to be honest. But they're there, they're now. I was looking around, where did they go? And they're underneath the tower. Going alongside Rog is Martin Hill with Fireforce number three. 
We forgot to ask if anyone's been here before and seen them. Oh, yeah. I need to look out for them. It's fine. You'll know who they are because they'll jump out of their skin in a second. No, they won't. Tame. <laughs> it's only tame for you because you've been here a while. Yeah, part of the furniture now. <laughs> <laughs> So the bodies go down. The support vehicles reverse round the back of the tower. And we see Richard back out the front of Fire Force and Helen out the back the front of Firestorm. Here we go then, side by side, jet cars, your viewing pleasure. Say, that was brilliant. Roger and Martin. So it's a thousand foot then. All our jets. Firestorm and Firefalls. Roger Goring a long way out in front, goes over the line to a 5.14, 240 mile an hour. Outstanding pass there from Roger. Uh, 612, 189 there for Martin. But 240 mile an hour at 1,000 foot. And he launched so hard that the camera that faces up the track <laughs> actually tilted up with Santa. <laughs> <laughs> we just got the Santa instead of anything else on, the, on that live feed picture there. <laughs> but there we go. Firestorm crew going to pick Roger up from the top there. Well done to all of them and, of course, the Fire Force team as well. So a nice introduction into our pro session. Obviously, two pro sessions today. Mm. Uh, it's qualifying session number three for all of our pro classes, but it's obviously qualifying session number eight for Comp Eliminator because they were here on Sportsman Day having their qualifiers, but then they shift into uh, our pro sessions for yesterday and today. Right, you'll be happy to hear it does get a little bit quieter. Um, only for a moment. <laughs> yeah. Give you time for your ears to recover before we... We burst your eardrums again. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, just a little bit of concentration on the track. Uh, the, the tractor will just go out there, just do a little bit of sledding. Dave's out there with the glue as well. So there's a tiny bit of track preparation to do before we get uh, ready to get everything done. Uh, Dow's gone down on the start line as well. I am oh, right, he's there. I am right here. Yeah, I love the way, I love the way you're surprised. Well, no, I just, just, I just started saying something and then I heard you switch the mic on. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, it's, it's almost like we rehearsed this, isn't it? Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen on the banking, very good morning. Everybody feeling good on this beautiful Saturday? I'll take that as a yes. Thank you very much indeed. Everybody in the grandstands too. 
It's good to see the grandstand absolutely packed as well. So uh, how many of you have been here for the weekend? Hands up, the whole weekend. Yeah, they're the redder people that you're going to come across today, I think, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, we're about to go into pro session or qualifying session for everybody number three. Uh, the last couple of days have been fun, challenging, hot, tiring, I think is probably the, you know, maybe, maybe the order anyway. But we're going to go with comp very, very shortly indeed. And then right after them is pro modified qualifying session number three, which I know an awful lot of people, uh, one of the reasons people have come this weekend is to see all the pro mods again. So has everybody got their flags? Okay, so let's have a, let's have a quick show of the English flags. I got that wrong. They're the United Kingdom flags, sorry. They're not an English flag, are they? UK flags, yep, there we go. Got a whole bunch of them. Uh, next, we're gonna do the Swedish flags. Anyone got a Swedish flag? What a bunch of traitors, right? If you see them, <laughs> if you see them, clip them around the ear. Just kidding, anyway. Um, have we got any Estonian flags out there as well? Who's got the Estonian flags? I can see one, I can see a couple. Fantastic stuff. Um, Dutch up next. Anyone got a Dutch, fa uh, Dutch flag? One, two, yeah, there's a whole bunch of you out there as well. Um, where else are we going? Switzerland, that's an easy one. It's a little cross. Yeah, we've got quite a few of the Swiss flags up there too. France, French flag. Especially after yesterday in the rugby. Sir, that's your shirt, that's not a French flag. But I get the sentiment, I really do. Um, so French flags, have we got some French flags? We have, excellent stuff. And uh, anyone got a German flag? Anyone brave enough to raise a German flag? They are, excellent. Okay, I think we're all set. So the last bit of track prep out here uh, on the racetrack again, thank you a million times over to ab ex absolutely exemplary, exemplary track crew. Um, no one, no one works harder, but that's one of the reasons that this racetrack, this place, that's why all the teams that you see from around the world come here to race. It's because they know what they're going to get when they come here. They just get the best of the best. Uh, the track prep, the crew, everything that they do at the events is just top notch, second to none. Uh, so they know they can come here, they can run their car or bike as quick and as fast as they possibly can. And um, yeah, anyway, just you get the idea. Just remind everybody, going back to the flags just very briefly, um, don't forget if your country's flag wins the event, i.e. if, uh, like say, a Swedish driver wins and you've got a Swedish flag, send a photograph of you waving your Swedish flag or whichever country that you've got that wins the event, send a picture of you with a flag to boxofficeatsantapod.com and you'll get a free ticket to the national finals in two weeks' time. And also just fill up uh, social media with it as well. It's not a bad... Um well, yeah, you just have to be rooting for whoever's flag you've got. I think yeah. that the Swedish flags are going to be in short supply now, but you never know. It could be a UK <laughs> flag. It could be a Dutch flag, actually. I mean, the only pro mod car that's won an event this year is, guess what? That pesky orange car again, isn't it? <laughs> it is that pesky orange car. Can anyone beat him at the last race of the season? Just a very quick security announcement, actually. Uh, is an apology that they've disturbed us, but we've still got to get these things done. There's a silver El Grand, registration number A10 LEJ, parked on Family Camping Road. Uh, can you please go and move that one? Thank you very much indeed. So, uh, once again, our track crew, my goodness me, have they worked so, so hard this weekend. They always do. But they never uh, stop. They, they've raised... It, levels. Even during normal times, when yeah. uh, when everything normally goes to plan, they just work, they work their backsides off. But this weekend uh, has unfortunately been exemplary. So uh, last bit of work going on, and we should be ready to go with Q3. So the class that you're going to see first is Comp Eliminator. Comp Eliminator in the UK is just a fantastic mix of different cars. Um, it's a class run pretty much around the world, but we've got our own version of it. We have front wheel drive cars in there. We've got a couple of classes and a couple of designations that are, shall we say, a little bit different to, um, to everybody else, but that's not a bad thing. <laughs> not a bad thing at all. Uh, what it is, is the size of the engine you have and the type of car, you have to cert run a certain amount of weight per cubic inches. So in the US, if you watch comp, like you probably watched comp at Indy last week, did you, Tom? I did. You did. Yeah, me too. Um, and um, it's, so basically it's horsepower per cubic inch of weight. And um, that's why they favor small block cars almost exclusively in the US, isn't it? Yeah, uh, you could, 
It's surprising, actually, because basically, when Cobble Eliminator started, everyone ran big blocks and things like that, which means all of the indexes have been dropped and dropped and dropped because it runs on a success-based handicap, which is a term Colin used at the start of the year, and I love it. Basically means the faster under your index you go, the lower your index becomes. Um, so because everyone's used big blocks at the start of it, all them indexes have been ruined now, so they're all experimenting with different things. Six-cylinder engines are actually very popular now in the States as well. Oh, sorry, I, th I thought I was talking no, to Daryl no, then, but he's, uh, <laughs> he's got distracted the by great, Keith. <laughs> the great thing about comp, any car can race in it yeah. because there will be a designation, there will be an index for whatever combination you've got. It's making whatever combination you've got a competitive one. Yes. So, yes, you're saying, and you're dead right to say it, the smaller the engine is more favoured pretty much everywhere else. Um, I mean, looking, I, I've got to pick on Nick Williams's car. Um, because it's only 350 cubic inches with mm. the supercharger. That is quite a small engine in that car. And also the weight of the car yeah, as it's well. it's a heavy car. It's a heavy car, but it works really, really well. And uh, yeah, so you, you could have a big engine in something really heavy and have the same index as something with a small engine in a small car. Yeah, exactly <laughs> that. Exactly that. Um, but it was... Um, it's good to see the Super Modifieds. Yes. You know, all of those cars that uh, used to run in Sumo. Um, they were, had an initial index of uh, 7.99, pretty much where it is now, to be honest. Um, but the, yeah, it encompassed the Sumo cars because they could go 0 0.5, 0 0.6 under. And it was a natural home uh, mm. for them when they, they didn't have enough numbers. And it's worked out really, really well. Yeah, in fact, you see one of those today, um, Rob Smallworth. Rob yeah. And he's been running really well. Yeah. And uh, let's not forget Jordan Payne, he's not racing this weekend, but he'll be back okay. uh, at some stage. Um, he's concentrating on Korea, I think is the thing, and then obviously there was a parts shortage as ah, well. Okay. So uh, yeah, Jordan uh, will be back at some stage with, uh, with the Corvette. Yeah, I think the best thing to look at would be Chris Todd's Fiesta and um, Kev Jenkins' Fraudster. They run the same class, both DD-80, which basically means it's a small engine, it's a small car, it's got a turbo in it. However, they couldn't be more different. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good description, actually. Uh, just, I'm looking at the live feed at the moment, sorry to change subject, uh, but the uh, team Maximum Lock are in the live action arena at the moment, so the full show going on over there. Uh, it's only just started, so uh, you've got the track as well as live action arena running. And Daryl, I think you are ready to take the call. Yeah, absolutely. Just while we've got a couple of moments before uh, this process starts, I'd like all of you to put your very warm hands together, very warmly indeed, for the CEO of Trackback Racing, the boss here at Santa Pod Raceway. Everybody, Mr. Keith Bartlett. I want to start this probably not quite how you think. <laughs> okay. Three years ago, COVID. I hated it. I hated being at home all the time. Did you ever think you'd see the place like this again? Yes. And how gratifying is it to see the place like this again? Fantastic, but I knew we would do it. We lost several, I lost several million pounds in COVID, but I had no doubt within two years afterwards we'd get back to where we are. No doubt at all. Because obviously being a live, uh, a live sports event, you're not allowed crowds, you're not allowed people, no one was allowed to travel. It, was, it screwed everything up, needless to say. Um, this is just incredible to see. I, honestly, it almost, I'm, almost, I'm quite emotional about it because I really hated being at home all that time, not being able to do what we wanted to do. How did you get through that? I was very lucky, I own a racetrack, so I could come along here and play with race cars on my own. I had an absolute ball of a time. Yeah, but obviously not being able to run events, lose money, was a bit of a kicker. Yeah, it was tough, and it was very hard working with all the environmental health departments. They were quite stringent. Uh, we managed to get around that. We, uh, I think we had several thousand more than they thought we'd got, so it worked quite well, but it was tough. It was a very tough period. It affected the races, and then Brexit, you know, we've had real trouble to get everyone over, and I don't want to, we've had to work hard to get this field of cars this weekend. I'm, I'm lucky, they're all my mates in the, in the pits. That's all my mates who race cars. So and you've, you've now given them the best race track, race track they've had all year, possibly any year, to race on to. I think so. 
I think so too as well. Uh, track crew, as always, absolutely exemplary. All the staff here. Um, it's just, it's an awful lot of hard work, but when it comes together like this, with all these beautiful people here, it's all worth it. Yeah. I would like to ask all the spectators, how many of you were here last night for the night show? Was that fun or what? More to come. Uh, definitely, definitely more to come, but thank you. We've got to go in just a second because the track crew are coming back out. We're on the comp eliminator, but honestly, for me, for all of us fans, thank you so much for keeping this place going because I can't imagine life without this. No, nor me. And on that note, uh, I know I say at every single of event, but with all sincerity, if we didn't have all of you turning up and all the great support we get, we wouldn't be able to do this. And I find it's fantastic. It takes me hours to walk through the pits because I get stopped by spectators, and that is just brilliant. That means everyone's enjoying it. So on behalf of me, supposedly at the top, and all the staff here, thank you very much. We can't do it without all of you coming. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Keith. It is the greatest car show in the world. It's the fastest car show in the world. And it's just about to kick off now with Comp Eliminator, followed by the one and only Pro Modified. Yes, indeed. In well, fact, you, I can tell it's nearly Pro Modified because Dick's come up here. <laughs> Well, Hello. No, it's because we got it's, we got aircon. He wouldn't be there <laughs> otherwise. I'm staying here for the next round to promote as well. He just wants to hang out with the cool people in the cool place. <laughs> <laughs> right, absolutely drop dead gorgeous Brickfield Autos Beetle of Phil Norman down there, Doing alongside the Fiesta Rue of Chris Todd. If you have a chance to walk around the pits, make sure you check out this beef. It is incredible. Also, have a look inside it. And look, he's painted the inside of the roof with the flame work and everything. It's like the Sistine Chapel. It's just beautiful <laughs> in there. And uh, yeah, yeah. When, he, uh, when he prepped it, it was uh, on a rotisserie, so he actually mm. oh, wow. painted it that way. I said he should have been in a hammock. And, uh, that, that is the greatest comparison for a race car I've ever heard, Colin. A Hands Sistine down, Chapel. Comparing yeah. a Beetle to the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> Top no, it's just the well inside done. of the car on the roof. Oh, okay. Please look at it. It's beautiful. Well, I saw the purge of the nitrous. I've not seen that before this weekend. So you see the index is the ball. That's their times to beat. Chris Todd won't hit a 780. Oh, bog off the line. For both of them, actually. So this won't be what they were hoping for, but Chris Todd's still under power. Yeah, no improvements for either of them. So next up, Mr. Boost himself, Matty Davidson. Uh, Simon Crowley with the trailer green, trying to do a burnout, but the car just not behaving itself. Uh, again, one of the great things about Comp Eliminator in the UK is that we do have indexes specifically for front wheel drive cars. And that's the index on the board up the top end, 9.20. Quick check underneath Simon Crowley's car. Hey, Ian having a good old look. He's going for an oil change, I think. <laughs> Oh, there's a piece of rag hanging down. Uh, well spotted. How did he Jeez. spot these things? Oh my God. Uh, it's, it's his racetrack, and <laughs> yeah. no one is allowed on it unless everything is yeah. perfect, obviously. So good luck to both of these two. Uh, the quickest of the two so far is Matt Davidson, hoping to get towards the eight. Yeah, car died instantly for Simon Crowley, but a lovely looking run from Matt Davidson. Not seen this car move that quickly this weekend before. He's going to go 9.34, 156 mile an hour. And that will jump him up quite a bit. I oh, know it won't. Moves about one, moves <laughs> one about spot. One spot. Well, <laughs> he's improved his ET, which is yes. always the most important thing, isn't it? So, your next pair, what a great matchup. Uh, an escort from the UK, or a fraud, a fraud escort, um, taken on. A 19, is that a 70 or a 70 and a half, Kamara, that one, Colin? 70 and a half. So 
So, Dan Williams having a great time in qualifying. Uh, is he number one or Nick? I think No, Nick is number one. Nick is number one at the moment. Okay. Um, he's got to run as far under his index as possible. However, he's very, very adept at that. Look at that for preparation. I've just seen him wipe his brow in the car mm -hmm. with a towel before he goes into stage. <laughs> <laughs> So they're looking to go as quick or as far under those indexes you see on the scoreboards as they physically can. Forza has been as low as 7.2 seconds. Dan has currently qualified with a 10.61. He's suffering from the air this weekend, and it seems it's an actually aspirated car. Huge wheel stand, though. Forza seemed to bump through stage, so this isn't going to be a representative run, but yeah, that, that was quicker than an 8.2. Dan goes 10.71, no improvement for him. Well, unbelievably, Luke Stevenson has a race car. Hey! After lots of, um, well, yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> he's in the Kestrel lane with the front wheel drive Golf. Taking on Spencer Tram, who I think is number two in points at the moment. He's going to need a little bit of help to catch Nick and a bit of luck going his way as well, and possibly some good races too. Looks a bit smoking from the exhaust, so every now and then. Yeah, got to take Spencer on his way. So a solo for Spencer. Wheel spin it looked like then. Yeah, unfortunately Luke being pushed back. 708 at the eighth mile for Spencer. Tram goes over the line. 1133, 114 mile an hour. Yeah, the, the weather really affects him. What we're talking about is the air density and the altitude. Uh, because it's a lot warmer and muggier, the water grains displace the air, the oxygen, which means that for normally aspirated cars, they love oxygen. They need oxygen to breathe, effectively, like we do. And if there's not as much of it about, it does affect the horse now. Yeah. Uh, it's the uh, benefit Nick Williams has got this weekend, considering the fact he's supercharged compared to the other super stockers, which are fighting at the top of the field. So, side by side door cars from the UK this time in the Slick Tricks Lane, the Dirty Dog 55 of Rod Smore. Been chipping away at it, I think, into the 760s earlier on this weekend. He's got a lot of good runs under his belt this weekend, and a lot of data as well, which is good to see. Also, Brendan Clancy, who is your 760 heads up champ for 2023. Back into Comp Eliminator, running the Nitrous and trying to run quicker than the 7 flat. Yeah, that's going to be a tough ask. He's, he's, he's more than capable. Um, suffering with tyre shake this weekend, though. The healthy purge of the Nitrous. Hopefully, we'll see a pair of low 7 second runs. Is Brandon Clancy is on an absolute flyer. 720, 188 mile an hour, and a 772, 175 for Rob Smallworth. Brandon Clancy only moves up to the number eight spot with that. Well, I think Brendan, I don't think he ran nitrous that time. I still think that was normally aspirated. So if he does turn the gas on, hold on. Yeah, so that shows you a bit more about how. Uh, Yeah, it shows you a bit more about how Comp Eliminator works, because even though Brandon was the faster car of that race, if that was an actual matchup in eliminations, he would have lost. So Andy Nichols with Layla. The Honda? Great name for a Honda. Looking to nudge into the eights. He hasn't been there so far this weekend, the car well capable. Taking on your number one qualifier, Nick Williams, with the uh, Williams brothers, Copo Camaro. I'm sure if Colin's listening, you can tell us what Copo stands for as well, can't you? Central Office Purchase Order. Which is obviously a great name for a car. <laughs> 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 
That's the best launch I've seen Nick do all weekend. Just hovers the front wheels. 828, 164 extends his lead. <laughs> and a 913 dips under the index for Andy Nichols. That moves him up to the number seven spot. Well, some great runs. Looks like Luke's going to be tagging on the back of the session. Whatever the problem was, it was uh, quickly rectified. Uh, another one of these front-wheel drive cars. Luke's just in this class for a bit of track time, a bit of fun. Oh, no issues. I think it sounded like gearbox issues then for Luke. Well, he's in a gear because he is driving up the track. He will get a time. And he will be qualified. He will be qualified. Absolutely that. A lot of hard work gone into just doing that. He's also building another, uh, another purpose-built car for Comp Eliminator, a dragster, which is what he ran before because he wants to run quick and fast. Yeah, well done, Luke. Get it down there. The Unicorn Solution is the name of that golf. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so is that Comp Eliminator done? It is. Right. OK, if you were here last night, you got to witness one of the greatest shows we've seen in a long while here at Santa Pod. Pro modified was. qualifying for both FIA and Motorsport UK coming round underneath the tower. Also, down on the start line, I'll try and grab a word with him when we can as well. You may have seen on the Santa Pod feed and everything else as well, Mr. Carl Cox has been testing his brand new car here. He's not racing this weekend, but he's down here on the start line checking out the action in Q3 for Pro Mod. Now so, an, go on, sorry. I was just saying, Mick Payne is fired up. He's in reverse, actually. Hang on, there no. we go, he's found first. Issue with these cars is the selector for the Lenkos is very finickety. Now, this is his first ever run with this car, so, you know, he'd be forgiven yeah. if it, it didn't go completely to plan. I'm sure it's nice burnout back up and launch and then uh, take stock from there. But this car is absolutely beautiful. Supercharged duster. It was turbo the last time we saw it. Well, he got enough tyre spin to get the tyres warm, which is always a good thing. But yeah, this car used to be a twin turbo duster um, when it was driven, run and raced by Chris Isaacs and Spencer Tram. But Mick bought it yes. and has stopped, mm. <laughs> unfortunately. Well, whatever the problem is for Mick, it is a massive learning curve. I love that phrase, honest, with all of these cars. Running a supercharged engine is hard working up, but running it in a door car where you've got suspension, you've got all the other things to um, play with as well. It's very, very hard work. It is very hard work. Yeah. So just, just give us a brief idea, Dick, if you can of just how many variables there are in a Pro Mod car. Just before you do that, just a quickie. Uh, Luke Stevenson's crew, I know you've been working flat out trying to get that car sorted. Uh, he needs collecting from the top end, please. So Luke Stevenson's crew, if you could go to the top end and tow him back to the pits. Thank However, you. I've got another take on that. If you're sick of the sight of him and don't want to see him for the rest of the weekend because he's made you work too hard, <laughs> leave just him leave him there. Yeah, exactly. Why not, why not do that? Why not do that? Anyway, Dick, you, we were just going to say the amount of variables with a Pro Mod car are almost endless. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, are. running a big supercharged Emmy is hard work as it is, yep. but just everything under the car, they look like cars, but yeah. there's a space frame chassis, there's suspension, there's all sorts of things to change, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. these cars need suspension, that's in the rules, um, different than a Funny car, they are all solid, and that brings uh, well, extra handicaps, of course they're running with about the same horsepower as the Funny cars do, the, the alcohol Funny cars, of course, so we all, you have uh, different variables. Uh, how you call them, different things in, let's say, uh, the tires, the clutch, if you run a converter, and well, on a track like this, it's so good, and it, you need all the horsepower you have to leave the line. Normally, you will take out uh, a lot of uh, ignition to lower the horsepower, to leave the line, to not go up in smoke, but here, you need everything you got to, uh, to leave the line right with some wheel speed, wheel spin, actually. Well, on the subject of how difficult these cars can be to run, uh, I'm just going to give a quick shout-out to Kev Slafford and his crew. I know they're on the bank somewhere watching. Uh, unfortunately, they can't make uh, the rest of this weekend a lot of damage to the uh, forelink and the rear axle on the car after the bizarre hmm. uh, situation we saw last night. Yeah, well, Kev did a great job saving the car, yeah. let alone oh, anything yeah. else. So, uh, yeah, Kev, retirement, yeah? 
Again. Just, just, yeah, no, <laughs> not yet. I not did yet. actually okay. bump into Pitts last night. I said, oh, I'll see you at Easter. And he goes, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, dear. Okay, so we have the uh, the black and white goblin from Sweden in the Kestrel Lady. He made a really good first qualifying run yesterday. Unfortunately, the shoots didn't come out. He ended up in the field. Both of these two, Matt Eriksson is qualified. However, at the moment, Andy Robinson isn't just yet. No. Don't forget, Swedish and British flags, everybody. Come on. Show me those flags, please. Thank you very much indeed. All you Swedes are still traitors, by the way. Definitely. <laughs> And there goes another hat. <laughs> the, the, the hat flew off again. That was this Bowser. time. Bowser's. <laughs> Seriously, though, yesterday that was yeah. fantastic. It just. <laughs> what we're talking about here is when uh, when somebody's got uh, a nice baseball cap on. Uh, the exhaust from these cars points straight upwards, and when they nail it for the burnout, it is capable of sending that hat probably a good 20 foot in the air. Which yeah. Well, I think yeah. that cleared the gantry, that one. I'm not sure where it <laughs> So, at the moment, for Andy Robinson and the team, uh, this is not where they want to be. They're not in the show at the moment. The bump spot, I think, was a 6.3. Was that right, guys? 6.36. Yeah, OK. They're well capable of running that, definitely. However, they've got to get the car from A to B. Matt Serickson did yesterday a great opening run with a 5.9, but then the chutes didn't open, and he had a trip into the field at the top end. There's a little bit of repair work gone on the front end. You might have had a chance to talk to him, did Yeah, I did. Um, well, while pushing, uh, uh, pulling the car out of the, the sand, uh, it was still in, uh, in gear, so that, uh, well, kind of destroyed the, the transmission, the first gear. So they had to open it and, uh, well, change the ratio, but not the they don't have the correct ratio uh, like they, they wanted to have, in, in like the one they have in, in round one. So the first gear is, is different now. LG said it's not a lot, but it's not ideal. But the rest is just the, the bodywork and a lot of cleaning. The dust and sand was everywhere. Here we go then, Mats Eriksson. That's all three gears for Andy Robinson. He will be qualified with a 6.04 and a 5.90 for Mats Eriksson. Obviously Quicker first, still. Yeah, first gear didn't obviously play him that much. No, no. Very, very quickly. Come here, Bowser, just quick, man. Um, how much of a relief is that? I mean, a 6.01 is probably not quite what you wanted, but at least it was to the finish line with the shoots out. Um, yeah, when it gets to Saturday morning and you're not in the field, you've got to get from A to B. Um, we've had a terrible year, Steph said yesterday. Um, it's just not gone right. Everything. Brake pad fell out last night. Oh, that, that was? Yeah, he, just lo he lost the brakes after the burnout. You can't predict half of this stuff. Tire shake just kills everything. Uh, anyway, uh, good luck for the rest of the day and keep doing it for Britain. Thank you. No problem at all. Okay, Matt Eriksson, did he move up with that run, by the way? Yeah, uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, yep. Matt's went up to number three. Uh, Andy Spock's in at number uh, 11. Buck Spock now 6.24 with a six. So, folks, let's see those British and Dutch flags, please, if we can. Thank you very much indeed. Yay! <laughs> Easy on the enthusiasm for the Dutch flags, though, if you don't mind. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's OK. That's all right. Hey, look, this is, this is our house. I'm sure I'd get the same kind of hat if I came to stay. So Absolutely. <laughs> and I'd expect it, of course. <laughs> I would, I would. Anyway, a lovely, friendly rivalry. So who's on the bump now, Colin? Sorry. Oh, yeah, that's a point. Uh, it is John Webster. With uh, a 620. 624 with a 6. Not qualified is Peter Kuhn. Wally Strobel, Dave Smith, and Nick Payne, of course. And yeah, David had some uh, strange issue yesterday evening in the uh, in the night race. Um, we made a burnout, came back, and then the engine just died, or actually the complete car died. Now this was his first run at night, so the first time he used his taillights, and so there was a short circuit in the taillights that cut off the whole car. Oh wow! It killed the whole car. Yep. Another one of those million ways for things to go wrong. <laughs> yeah. Right things, yeah. So Wayne Nicholson, currently your number 15 qualifier. I don't think he's safe on the number 15 spot, so he's going to be looking to improve. David Vector safe in number four, but I'm sure 
he'd rather see a number one in front of that. Yeah, he needs the points. Lots of tyre shake of Wayne Nicholson. Straight as an arrow. Yes. Well, that's a big two. improvement for David. 586 at 242. That'll be the number two spot, I think. Yep. yep. Uh, for David. Where are those Dutch flags? Right, can we all put them in the bin now, please? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> that was excellent, excellent. Uh, Wayne Nicholson with the first, well, tie shake issue I think we've seen. Still went 691 at 207. I've got one more chance to improve it. That is a 580 race car, but a uh, real nice number for Dave. Yeah, believe, it, believe it or not, but David's car is still on the safe side. He really? only, yeah, he's now only working on the first, let's say, 60 to 100 me 60 foot, 100 meters. And the rest of the run, no timers, no lean outs, no igni ignition curves, nothing. Well, that's why he's number two in the championship. He's had a great race car all summer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't like to remind him of that whole shot lost back at the main event, but that was race of the year. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I seem to remember your, your response to that because <laughs> we were at the airport and I texted you what happened. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, Sweden and Germany this time, please. Who's got the Swedish flags? Quite a few of you. <laughs> Uh, it's a big ask for Walter Strobel to qualify, let's be completely honest. Yep. Uh, his PB is in the 6.6s, but the bump is a 6.2. Yep. Four tenths of a second in drag racing is, is as good as half a lap in a yep. Formula 1 car. Yep. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but we still not, we credit to him for trying to get into the show, uh, making the best of what he has in the Kestrel lane. Up against Europe's quickest nitrous car still, Roger Johansson. And it's great that Wally is here, that he makes the, uh, the effort to come over all the way from Germany. We can never have enough promo cars in the in the list. Never. So both these cars run a Chevy style engine. Yep. Obviously that's a lot more efficient for Roger Hansen with the nitrous. Uh, yep. Bit more unorthodox with the blower on top for ProMod. Yeah, well he, he has the same uh, headers on it, like, uh, like a blown car. Same as Bobby Wallace has. Mm. Normally they run with, uh, they ran with the bull horns like the turbo cars do. But now they have the, the, the headers on it. It's better for the, for the airflow to go outside the engine. So into pre-stage then. Roger Johansson currently in at number 10. Only a 599 for him. Wally Strobel needs the run of the century to get in the field for him. Tire shake for Wally, no issues at all for Roger Hansen. A bit of smoke at the top end, oh. 6.03, 230 mile an hour. That's issues now. That yeah. looks like a lot of work. That looked like... Uh, I don't I, see shoots at Wally, who's only 90, 195. Oh, there, there he is, are. yeah. Um, yeah, for, that was a real good run for Roger, uh, but that looked like death smoke, I had so long yeah. right, at the top end. What was the uh, what were the numbers, Colin? Uh, 102 to 60 foot, uh, 395 to the eighth, 603 at the stripe. Yeah, kind of mid-range, to be honest with you, for them. I'm sure they were looking for an awful lot more than that. We're going to go and check the track in the Slick Tricks lane just to make sure there is nothing down there. Uh, Roger and the team. thing with nitrous engines, if you get the tune slightly wrong, because back in the early days of Pro Mod, it was all just nitrous engines, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And the amount of times that people burnt stuff because the tune was slightly wrong, if you get the mixture slightly wrong, it can have bad effects, can't it? Oh, yeah, it burns uh, straight to the pistons. Oh, and when they're the size of dustbin lids. Uh, give the teams a round of applause, please. That is the MSS team all the way from the west coast of Sweden. And Wally Strobel's team, too. Put yeah. it on the show for you here this morning. Wally's still having issues with the driver's door. It was flapping around again. Yeah. When he, uh, has a, he had a really big tire shake yeah. again. Uh, so next pair, you, you guys can see. So come on, you get the flags no, going. No, 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 we're, we're not telling you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it's not me that needs to know. It's everyone else. Well, we need, we need the... Uh, it's the Bel Air ah, and it, Peter Kuntz. Or is it the Bel Air on the solo, I think? Uh, oh, no, oh, no Peter, there we go. Peter Kuntz has started. Well, we thought Peter Kuntz had battery issues, issues that it didn't start in round one, but it was the charger that had the issue. So they thought that the battery was fully charged, but it wasn't. So that's why he didn't start. Well, it's going to take a personal best for Dave Smith to get into this field as well. He 
Dave is testing the rev limiter, and it worked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was the one that holds the hat, currently holds the hat record. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> that was, that was Well, dope. Bowser's made a good effort to match it, you know. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, Peter Kunk has been in the six zeros before, but that was with his old car, the Mad Professor 63 Chevy, if you remember that one. I'm sure you do. Um, I think his company is Shell and Transport, which helped a number of the Pro Mod teams. He is in the Kestrel lane from Sweden. He has run in the 6-1s with this car. That would get him in for now. Dave Smith's quickest is a 6.39. He's got to run a personal best by some margin to be around to play tomorrow. say neither of these two in the show at the moment. Peter is number 17, Dave is number 19. Peter Kunk can make the field. He's been on number, just not done it quite yet. I think if he has a clean run, because the run yesterday was nowhere near perfect, he was off the throttle for a little while too. Mm. So if he can keep it nailed from one end to the other, he will be in. He may even be in the fives, because he was pacing Bobby Wallace, who did run a five, in the other lane. That car is still amazing. If you look how low it is, yeah. it's just incredible. Oh. They both don't have a time now. They both went before the tree was activated, yeah, unfortunately. Well, they were, Dave was in stage, but he was just a little bit in stage. So we pulled the, the, the stage light off and on again. Well, the good thing is, the good thing is at least, at least for Peter Cook, they can get the car from A to B. Yeah. They know what it takes. They'll have the data from that one. So if they come back and repeat that later on the day, there's a very good chance. Yeah, if uh, it was that easy, uh, yeah. If it was that easy. <laughs> to re repeat a run. I, I, honestly, every time Peter comes to the UK and races here, there's always funky stuff that goes on, um, mm -hmm. which means that, which kind of ruins his weekend. I really hope the last run, it all comes together for him. Yeah. Yeah, we have one more round of qualifying to go, so. The bump spot can Yeah, yeah it sounds easy, doesn't it? Yeah. So John Webster's safe for this session. Peter Cook will go into the last, the last one, not qualified, I think. Oh, well, obviously neither will Dave Smith. Um, fair to say that that was a good one. Well, no, he pedaled yeah. it. But, yeah. um, that looked really good. It did look good. Right, yeah. Swedish and French flags for this one, please. The ultimate entertainer in the drag racing world is coming your way one more time in the Kestrel Lane. Ladies and gentlemen, get your Swedish flags out, please, for fun. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Still going. It's gone past the eighth, heading up towards a thousand foot, coasting there now. Come on, I want to see those Swedish flags. How many would love it if Fred won this weekend? He's only ever taken one ever win in Pro Mod. 2002 at the European Finals. The story is legendary. Absolutely legendary. Uh, he crashed the car. Uh, he crashed the car. They flew another door in, hand luggage on Ryanair from uh, Stockholm and um, patched the car back together. He qualified number two. He won the final as he went through the finish line in the final because the door gap wasn't quite right. The door blew out through the finish line as he took the win. The crew <laughs> were drunk within 10 seconds of him going over the finish line. And I am not kidding. I am not kidding. It was just a... Just, it will, I don't think it'll ever be beaten that weekend. It was amazing. It was amazing. He's got bigger rear tyres on the back end this time, hasn't he? Yep. Uh, yeah. He has the top fuel tyre now. What difference does that make to the car? Having just are there only a couple of inches bigger in diameter? Yeah, well, it gives you an, uh, almost an extra gear at the top end because they get so much bigger or higher actually when they uh, when they go round faster. Up against Jean Delamont from France. Well, Fred, Fred goes through with the 6.20, his quickest run of the weekend, 2.28. He is still in the show, but only just at the moment. Yep. Was that a pop from uh, John's Yeah, it was uh, all kinds of stuff. He, oh. had, he, he jumped the lights and he, he pedaled a few times and there were flames. 
Yeah, just didn't look good. Uh, there is a part uh, just past the Oh, thousand dear. Foot John's had more than his fill of that. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a couple of moments. If I could just borrow one man down here on the start line, if you wouldn't mind one of the friendliest people I've ever met. If you'd like to come out for it, if you wouldn't mind, Carl, that'd be great. Thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to put your hands together for not only one of the world's greatest DJs, but also possibly the most enthusiastic drag racer I think I've ever met in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Carl Cox, everyone. Well, proper Santa Pod welcome. <laughs> Sir, you've been here obviously a number of times before. Um, you've been testing your car. How has it gone? Well, at the beginning, it was a bit woeful because I did blow the bloody thing up to begin with, uh, which was very costly, as you know. These things are very temperamental if you, if you take off in the wrong gear. So instead of taking off in third, you've got to take off in first. Oh, was that what? Yeah, that's what happened. And uh, unfortunately, that bug jam, you know, I really wanted to pull it out and do some exhibition runs with it. But we got past it. We got a new engine sent over uh, at the end of that weekend. And by Monday, when I blew up on Thursday, we got it running again. And then I was basically just running the car down onto the eighth mile just to see if we try and get some good data from, from uh, 60 foot times to, to the eighth. And then eventually, the week after that, we we'll started going full uh, passes and then getting it down to the six one six O's and down to the five nines. I was very happy with that. <laughs> that smile, that smile tells it all. Uh, I mean, I did ask you before when we spoke about this, what's the better thing, sitting in a race car or playing to thousands of people? Your answer was? Uh, playing to thousands of people. <laughs> Obviously that one, yeah. I think you said something about letting the trans brake go as well, because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, you know, I mean, the thing is, you, know, you can't just jump in, uh, into one of these cars out of your Mark 1 Cortina, you know, 600 cross flow, and think you can basically go A to B, you know, over 250 miles an hour. You've got to work yourself into it. I've been basically running big tyre cars now uh, for the last 10 years, and been racing the cars in Australia to be able to begin with, uh, uh, when I started getting back into racing again, and then my hallowed ground was to come back here to Santa Pod and then basically start to uh, have my campaign in Pro Mod Racing um, for, uh, for me initially in the future of racing for drag racing. So you did, not a lot of people know as well, you used to come here if, when you were little, is that right? Or sorry, not little, younger anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, my first car when I brought down here uh, in the 80s was an 850 Mini. So if anyone can guess what, uh, what times I did in that, <laughs> uh, I'll give them a thousand pounds. But anyway, apart from that, it was how I started. I started uh, Run What You Brungs and I kind of came down here and uh, just wanted to go faster and faster and faster. And eventually uh, I went uh, pretty quick in, in a a three litre Mark I Capri, which I have now in the in Australia, running 680s at over 207 miles an hour. So that's kind of where I came from. It all started here, and 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 this is my home for drag racing from now on in. Is that right? Absolutely, 100%. My car lives here now. My pro mod lives here, and um, and I'm, well, I'm really want to support the, you know what's going on in the UK now. Um, I think I've got a, a, a real good crew, a real good support here from Santa Pod Raceway, and a good support from everyone that's here today as well. That's seen me do what I can do. Now, I think uh, for me, well, apart from me being a DJ for the for the sport for drag racing, I'm I'm in 110%. Well, that's isn't that fantastic news, everybody? Come on. That is so cool that you've chosen, you've chosen to do this. You're in a lot of different motorsports as well, aren't you? But I guess this is where your heart is. is that right? Oh, yeah, it's nothing like a beating, beating drum of a V8, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, combustion engines for me. Um, it's, it's all, it, what it's all about, really. You want to feel it, smell it, you want to see it, in a, and nothing, will, nothing was going to change that, nothing. So it's, it's obviously good that the hook was set earlier on in your life. But now you've come back here all these years later. Has the place changed? Has the racing changed? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the whole thing, has, the levels have stepped up so much since the 80s to where we are now. Keith's has done an absolutely an, an amazing job here. This is definitely one of the best, uh, uh, I would say, drag strips in the world. I've been basically racing in, in, in Australia, and, Australia and, and America. And when I come down here, you know, and I sit in my car and I see the Santa Pod sign at the other end. <laughs> this, this is it. I mean, if you can't run your numbers here, you can't run your numbers anywhere else in the world. I think it's a proper goosebump moment, especially when I remember somebody, one of the Swedish guys, posted a video and he was in the car and he just pulled round onto the track and it just sent underneath that feeling. 
<laughs> yeah, you, you, I mean, the thing is, uh, uh, how I started is how I, I think everyone should start. Just come down, run with your brain, bring your mum's car down, bring whatever you've got, and just basically feel it for, for what it really means to be a drag racer. Because at the end of the day, there's no other feeling like it once you really get going and you get yourself down to that quarter mile and you, and you get that little bit of paper with your drag time on it. There's no better feeling to know that you did that and no one else. And the other thing as well, though, the only child problem is it's slightly addictive, isn't it? Hence the fact you're here however many years later with a pro mod. Yeah, it's very addictive. <laughs> so what's it like, to us mortals that have never driven, what's it like in a pro mod car for you? What's the experience like from start to finish? The experience of being in a pro mod is like being pushed off a, off a cliff <laughs> and, and a cricket bat over the back of the head. When you let that trans brake go and, you, and, you, trans -brake go and you're doing like, you know, 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, 60 foots. There is really nothing else like that feeling. And you've got to keep your foot in it all the way through to the other end. Uh, that's some um, scary business. But at the end of the day, if you, know you, if you feel your car, you know your car, and you can, and you can keep your foot flat to the end. Um, seriously, apart from top fuelers, I think the pro mods are really nearest, damn it, to, to the best experience that you can get. Well, I'll take your word for that. <laughs> but, uh, but with it, I, I always used to liken the experience. Is if you can imagine sitting in your road car at the traffic lights and a juggernaut hits you up the backside at about 200 miles an hour, that's kind of what it feels like, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Nothing prepares you for it whatsoever. When I f uh, went into my first turbo car in Australia, I let the trans brake go. Yeah, I did a 1160 foot and then the wheels were up in the air. And uh, that was my first ever time in a, in, a, in a car that could do that in such a way. I asked the guys to to tame it down a little bit just so I can get out the hole a little bit more and then, then start to turn it up eventually but yeah I, I'm in you know the thing is about uh, drag racing I've always been into it from from uh, from the 80s I, I remember being here watching Americans race uh, Shirley Madowney back in the day uh, Snake Perdome um, all of those guys when they came over when I first started seeing those top fuelers come down here that's when I really started to have uh, such an affinity for drag racing even right back in the day. It's just an amazing story, and hopefully it will have a happy ending with you competing over here. Maybe even next year? Yeah, I'm really, fingers crossed, uh, that the FIA will allow my car to come in, and, uh, and if I can do that, and then I will be here uh, on, on the drag trip with everyone else for Pro Mods. That is absolutely awesome news. Um, lastly... Talk about the fans, some of the best in the world as well. It's great to see this place packed again, isn't it? Well, the UK just rocks for fans. I mean, look at it. It's incredible. Everyone talks about the US and how busy it is and how packed it is for the, for the drag race in there. It's just as good here as anywhere else in the world. And, and it's just beautiful to see it. So thank you very much to everyone that's come out. Even in this beautiful heat, it's fantastic to see. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Carl Cox. I told you he was enthusiastic about drag racing, didn't I? But uh, it's a pleasure to see him down here on the start line. Uh, Carl, thank you very much. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, go cool down a little bit. Thank you very much for your time, sir. I'm not the only one who wants to make a guess at what you're running the Mini for a grand, am I? Uh, you can have a go. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure it'd be good for it. I really am sure it would be good for it. So up the top end through the finish line, I'll just, obviously something did go pop in Roger's car. Not sure how long it'll be, but hopefully not too much longer. I'll go and see who else I can annoy quickly. But, uh, it, was, it, it wasn't Roger, it was uh, Jean Dulemont. Ah, uh, well, sorry, I beg your pardon. Well, good, mistake. No, good news is the crews have just got up. That's what, the, that's what the round of applause you heard were. So no issues for the drivers at all. They'll be going up there to collect the cars now. I'm trying to scout for you, Daryl. I can't see anyone behind. Oh, it's all right. Don't worry. I can, uh, I'm sure I can annoy somebody. <laughs> my, my mere presence does. It's great as well because it's like cockroaches when you turn the light on. They just scatter as soon as you come near them with the microphone. <laughs> um, very, very quickly, I just want to grab a quick word. I'm not going to... It's all right. Not on the start line. Just over here. Um, Torre, quickly. So yesterday, yesterday, um, I'm down here with the, uh, one of the crew guys from Lynn Floysvick's Funny Car. Uh, yesterday was a rough day for you, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a really rough day. Uh, we took the engine, the crankshaft went in four pieces, destroyed the block, destroyed everything. It, that engine was kind of brand new with new piston, new rods, new camshaft, everything. And it's supposed to be a soft, nice run on the first out. So what broke first? We are not quite sure. Uh, it could have been a crack in the crank, but we haven't found out. All the bearings that looks okay, so... But you've managed to rebuild. I mean, everyone's here, so I guess in the staging lanes? Yeah, we have another engine. So we built that up uh, yesterday and started up 
twice or three times today, checked everything, so hopefully it's okay. So if, everything, if this was easy, anyone would do it, obviously, but um, that's my way. I mean, you had issues with the truck getting here as well, didn't you? And now the race car is just, um, something's telling you, they're telling, trying to tell you something, I think. But I, I really do, I really hope it goes well today, most importantly. Sorry? I hope it goes really well for you today, especially after that. Yeah, thank you for that. No problem at all. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Yeah, that was the uh, the big oil dam we had at the top end yesterday. Lynn Floysbeck in the uh, funny car from Norway. Uh, absolutely destroyed one. Broke the crank in four places. Ooh, that's not good, is it? Oh, that's, it's I, more looked, I looked at it uh, and it's, you know, it's uh, well, one big mess. Everything yeah. inside that engine is absolutely destroyed. The worst part is, like he just said, it was brand new. Yeah. Like yeah. everything, the rods... Except for the, uh, the, the crankshaft. Ah, oh, the crankshaft was the only thing in it that wasn't. There we go. Well, unfortunately, parts in these engines do have a, do have a habit of replacing themselves if you don't replace <laughs> them. Yeah. Um, They'll do it for you. Yeah, we, I think everyone does that. I, I seem to remember a story once of someone going thinking, yeah, we can just get another run out of that, and the crank went, nope. Mm -hmm. No, thank you very much. Uh, the reason they have, I mean, they have a life cycle, don't they? Yeah. They um, yeah. Pro-Mod engines are a little longer lasting, if you like, than, than top fuel engines. Mm -hmm. But they still do have a life on them. What, how long do cranks, pistons, rods, everything, you know, what's the, what's the life cycle of a... Well, the, the connecting rods, they can no, not longer go longer than, uh, let's say, 15 to 20 runs. Is but that all? Yeah. Goodness yeah. me. Yeah, they're all, they, they go uh, 10,300 RPM over the, over the finish line. They shift at 9,600, so they make huge amounts of RPM, and the pistons are, well, as big as, I don't know what. Dustbin lids, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, yeah, they, they have a lifespan, same as the cranks. Um, if you over rev it or you go in the rev limiter, you, you will break uh, valve springs, um, and then if you are, are, have bad luck, the, the valves hit the pistons. So. And then it makes a real mess. Yeah, real, yeah, real mess. Yeah. So that's that's why these cars are actually so expensive to run because it's not just the cost of building them in the first place. No, maintaining yeah. takes uh, it's a hell of a commitment, isn't yeah. it? It's a, it's a it's an awful lot. And the last thing you want is unfortunately like that. You you don't want you want to replace it before it breaks. But the trouble is, it's it's kind of hard to do that because you look at it, you think, well, it's in one piece. Yeah, Why yeah. can't we do that? But it looks new. It they, does look new. Everything comes out new if you replace them in time. Otherwise, <laughs> they will look different. Yeah, exactly that. So um, we are about ready to go with uh, Pro Mod qualifying. The sweeper just right down the top end. I think this is going to be uh, an all-Dutch affair this time, by the looks of it. Again. Again. Um, I don't know who's first. Yeah, yeah. yeah Mark Mark's Hartefeld and Michel Toren or the next, uh, the next pair out. So these cars, both again from the Netherlands, we've got three top of the line cars uh, from Holland these days, which must be fun for you, obviously. Yeah, yeah, you get to support everybody. Yeah. Well, not only the Dutch teams, I support all the teams here with what I do. So. I think everybody knows how difficult it is and how much yeah. effort it takes, don't they, Dick? But yeah. uh, there we go. So Michel and Michel Turin is in the Cuda in the Slick Tricks lane. Michel only went 6-0. I'm sure they're looking to go a little bit quicker than that. Yeah, today. you can go 5 5.8 low, 5.81, I think, on my head. Well, the number one qualifier at the moment is 5.82 yep. for Jan Eriksson from Sweden. So let's see those Dutch flags before they come round, please. Who's got a Dutch flag? Have you all put them away? And of course not. I think they've all put... Oh, <laughs> I told you to put them in the pin. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> Here we go. Well, looks like Mark Hartbelt isn't making the turn. So he's got a backup. Yeah, he was down in lane two in the uh, pairing lane, so it's quite a tight turn to make it a pro mod. Well, those rods are definitely stretched in now. <laughs> uh, and also they've got, uh, for those technical fans of the sport, of which there are many out there, the, um, the combination in these two cars is a bit different from everything else because the, the tendency with Pro Mods, if you're going to run a Hemi, is to buy everything from the States, but these guys yeah. haven't done that. Have no, they? Oh, they have uh, the Dutch cylinder hats. They are built in, uh, designed and built in Holland at Porsten Roos in, in Dronten. And he also, they also do that for, uh, for tractor pulling engines. The, the mini rods run with, uh, with these hats and they are uh, working uh, very well. The, the, the tractor pullers, use these heads with uh, a dual magneto, so with two 
the spark plugs per cylinder, which is not allowed in, uh, in Pro Modified. Well, both these drivers in safely in the field. Mark Harbour in at number five, Michelle Turen in at number nine. A lovely 592 for Mark Harvell. Is Only that number nine? That's number five. Oh, sorry, five. Uh, number hearing. nine is a 596, which is Michelle Turen. Both these cars capable of diving into the 580s. Whether they'll do, a hit, whether they'll do that here, we're early to find out. Well, they both didn't leave hard. That's going to be the story of that one. 599, though, for Michelle, 239. 604 at 240 for Mark. They didn't. I'm, I'd be amazed if those 60 foots were sub one second. Yeah, they're both. Uh, well, they are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair enough. It yeah, just well, only mark uh, 0.98. But That's they they both drove through uh, quite a lot of tire shake. Yeah, just more paddle than anything else. It was what they could drive through. But still, uh, good runs to back up what they had earlier on. But there's still a lot more out there. I mean, if David went 586, that puts everyone else on notice that you know. It can happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It can happen. So we've still got, I think we've still got the same 10 cars in the fives as we had at the start of the session. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. But with one more to go. Everybody else now that's going to come round underneath the tower has been in the fives. No John Webster from this session unless he's further back in the uh, order. So Bruno Bader in the Kestrel Lane, Mr. Consistency himself from Switzerland. And from Sweden, the man who used to absolutely rule the roost in Pro Modified is Mickey G. So, Bruno had a really good start to the year, had a good time at the door slammers, had a really good time in qualifying back at the main event. He ran his personal best of 5.84. And then, unfortunately, his race against Jan Eriksson, I think, I think, which was in the semis, uh, he spun and shook off the start line, tried to stay with it a little bit too long and whacked the wall. I can think I can still see the mark, actually, over there around about 200 foot out. And I really didn't think that would be the end of Bruno's season, but apparently it wasn't that bad the damage. Thing. Yeah, well, he was back out a couple of weeks later in Tia. And one thing that shot me was not only was he back out but he was back out with a fresh paint job <laughs> yeah 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 that's bruno everything has to be neat <laughs> yeah you would not known at all they just they just hit the wall yeah and it wasn't the first time he did the same a uh, few years earlier but then he was uh, out for for quite a long time yeah well bruno Bada in at the number 12 spot with a 601 he will be looking to improve on that Mickey Gilquist in at number eight with a 596. Both these cars keep capable of going way quicker than that. Yeah, Mickey G, I'm sure, wants a 580 something. I think he wants a 570. He won't get it on this one. Lots of tyre shake. No issues at all for Bruno Bada. 0 0.97, 60 foot goes. 598. 236 mile an hour moves him up to the number 10 spot. And that is 11 cars in the five second zone. Ah, had Bruno run a five before? No. Okay, yep. my apologies. 598, still a tick off what he, uh, what he can run, but uh, still good for the conditions. Yeah, a tie shake for Mickey Gorkis. He just didn't have any, standing here looking at it, he just didn't have any wheel speed. Mm. Um, it didn't turn the tire enough. Mm. Uh, and that's why effectively ran over itself. And that was the end of that. Yeah. That's really difficult uh, with uh, conditions like this to get enough wheel speed. The track is so, so good, so sticky. Give him a cheer, everybody out there. Come on, everyone with Swedish flags, wave it at that little blue golf cart. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Of course they will. And uh, Bruno's team are going to be off up to get him in a minute, too. So, our next pair are fired up, I think. The old now 51 and Bobby Wallace. Wow. Jimmy Arlund and Bobby Wallace. Just very quickly, um, did uh, Andre Arnova's run yesterday stand? I think it did, didn't yes. it? Yes, yeah, yeah. Because I think it was just the, like the exhaust that blew the block over. Well, that's over, what I it? saw. That's yeah, how I saw it. The, I there's no tire track to go over the centre line. No, but at it's all. kind of impossible because the bullhorns go out the body on the side. Yeah. And then they go up pretty high. So. What? But it's impossible that the. I think. Yeah. Yeah, but if you was that close. Yeah, or well maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And plus the fact the draft of the car as well. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah.
Bobby with noticeably short burnouts as well. Doesn't seem to bother him. No. No, no. they just, all they do is do is scrub the tyres and warm them up a little bit, and that's all it does. Yeah. As long as they rotate a few times, like Dick says, they'll be absolutely fine. Bobby Wallace, I think, is the highest qualified UK car with a 595. However, there's a lot more in the tank of that Camaro in the Slick Tricks lane. Jimmy Orland with the old 51, sponsored by Summit. Tune by Magnus is out there in the front. It's cool to see this car back here in the UK. They love coming over here. But don't forget that Jimmy is a pro stock driver. And you see the guy, Peter, uh, opening uh, the driver door. They, those two are so good on, on reading the, the track and adjusting four links, uh, front suspension, everything. So that's really, really helpful for Magnus to tune the car uh, really good. Well, a few years back now, he, ran, he was the first blown pro mod car into the 570s. He went 578. Not so really sure the weather is there for the 57 this weekend, but uh, anything beginning with a 5.8, I'm sure will please them. Magnus did say that run yesterday was quite soft, but they wanted to go down the track to make sure they were safe, and I'm sure they're going to try and step it up. Both these teams are going to try and step it up this time around. So, Jimmy, your number six qualifier. Bobby, your number seven qualifier. 5.92 takes 5.95. They should improve. Little bit of tyre shake for each car, but they are door handle to door handle the whole way down. Shoots out early for Bobby at a 5.90 for Jimmy Orland. Moves him up only one spot to the number five spot. Well, I wonder why Bob, uh, Bobby clicked that early. That looked, looked beautiful, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, what were very... the short numbers, guys? 99, both of them, for the 60, for, uh, 260 to 265 in favour of Jimmy at the 330. The eighth, 388 for Jimmy, 398 for Bob. And then, as you say, at the stripe, 590, which is a 202 back half for Jimmy. And we know Bobby was off the gas at the stripe. Yeah, anything sub two seconds is stellar for one of these cars. And this is one of the cars that does it, everybody. So everyone with Estonian flags, now's your time. And Swedish flags too. Okay. It is Mr. Unbeatable in the Kessel Lane. Jan Eriksson and Andre Arno. <laughs> See what you mean about the bullhorns, Dick. Yeah. They go straight up, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Uh, but then it and might pretty be pretty high. It might be just the you know just the breeze of the car, whatever the it turbulence was. it creates. It was a great run, so uh, yeah, he deserved it. Well, 587. He's number three. Is that right? The way? Number uh, yeah, he's number three he's now number for three. David David Parkston. And your number one qualifier currently, Jan Eriksson, uh, went 582 yesterday. David's got the quickest run of the session for the 586 so far. Both of these capable of eclipsing that. Andre actually has a PB of 584, but that was a run in the pitch darkness from the cold a year ago this weekend. So, turbo car, first turbo car we've seen actually today. But Andre Arnover in the Slick Tricks lane, and the uh, unbelievable supercharged orange Camaro, orange Camaro. The Sundholm Welding and Sweden, your repeat Roy Mod champ, Jan Eriksson. Andres Arno has actually pedalled that. <laughs> wow. Oh, no one's going to improve on that one. The thing is, even though even though they might not improve their qualified times, they still want good A to B runs because they want the information for race day tomorrow. Um, they're going to run. Uh, this is one of the strange weekends, well, strange things about this weekend, is that they're actually going to have the same conditions all three days. Yeah for every round of their, every round of racing. Yep. I mean, normally it's a bit of a toss up on Sunday race day oh, yeah. for round one, yeah, because it's yeah. 10 o'clock in the morning, field of 16, and it's- Five degrees outside. Exactly that, <laughs> yes. Um, some people get it bang on, some people don't. That's always the ever moving. I know you did this uh, earlier this today, but if you know what happened yesterday on the track with the jet fuel, and you see those two guys and a lot of others who worked the whole night, to get the track up to standard as it is now, it's it's really awesome. I think they need a, a very big round of applause. Oh, they certainly deserve it. All of them do. And 
the fact that David just sent Lowy Tier around in the same lane says it exactly, all. Exactly, yeah. Says it all. We're on with top methanol qualifying round number three. Lynn Floysvik, young lady. I'll see you guys later. Thank you very much, Dick Dick. Young lady from Norway uh, is the points leader, but she had a pretty horrible start to her weekend. Oh, it was uh, not what they wanted at all. Uh, a lot of work in the pits getting this car back together. A oh, spare engine in the car, a bit mm. of drifting as well out there. Uh, Lynn Floydsvik is another one of those that used to race at Junior Dragster. Now she's on the verge of her first ever European Championship. However, the people behind her, Silvio Strouch and... Sandro. That's the one. Uh, are very close. They're within reach easily. Easy, easy reach. Lynn's got to have a fantastic weekend. She's got to repeat what she did back in May, which is win the event. Go further than they did and she'll be there. This car is a good, consistent 550 race car. Yesterday, it destroyed itself. She still went 574, I think it was, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty impressive that all the uh, methanol cars were, well, it's, the field spread is two tenths of a second. And 53 it, to 573. Obviously, there is a 0.21 difference yeah. between the funny cars and the dragsters, but nevertheless. But even then, the spread is all because Lynn, blew, uh, Lynn had issues at the top end. Yeah. Everyone else is in the 550s. Five five fives, yeah, <laughs> true. So, good luck to Lynn. What a run. That looks That's fantastic. beautiful. 555, 260 miles an hour, and a huge sigh of relief from everybody on the crew. Where does that put her in qualifying as well, by the way? That third. actually gets her into third. Very quickly, before you disappear, comrade. Um, well, sorry. After, after all the problems yesterday, that was beautiful. Yeah, we tried to do this, and uh, it was a lot of work yesterday. The engine is complete destroyed. The crank was in four. So, yeah, we put in the spare engines, and uh, let's see now. Just a little bit about Lynn. She's done an amazing job this year, as well as you guys, obviously. She, she's a really good driver. She does what she's told to do. And, uh, <laughs> Spoken like a true crew guy, yes. Yeah, yeah, she, she, she's brilliant because she gave us feedback, so we know what's, what's to do. Yeah. Well, she probably gave you feedback after the run yesterday to say, right, fix that, I'm going home. Yeah, she did, almost. <laughs> almost something like that. But anyway, you're number three qualifier at the moment. So let's see what happens in the rest of the session. Yes, thank you. No problem at all. That's Conrad Ree on the crew, on the team for Lynn. That was exceptional after yesterday. Not only that, Daryl, 5.53 with a three is number one. 5.55 with a zero, number two. 5.55 with a two is number three. Then you've got the methanol dragsters, 5.50 with a three and 5.50 with a six for the nitro. But, you know, <laughs> the field spread is 0 0.05, forgetting about... Uh, the handicap, but that, that is that's crazy. Uh, it's great. It's competitive racing. It's what top. Oh no, that includes the handicap. About. Sorry. Uh, with the handicap fed in, yep. uh, it's a five. Well, in effect, five thirty-one then for Sandro. Yeah, it's a bit more uh, than number that. one. Yeah. So, uh, but they're still all very close. They're all running really, really well. We've yeah. got two dragsters coming up next. The two different combinations that you can run in top methanol. We've got the supercharged uh, methanol car. Uh, for Engine Ghost in Germany, that is in the Slick Tricks lane, Silvio Strouch. And for Sweden, for Bill Sport, it's so cool to see him back here at Sandspod Raceway in the Kestrel lane. It is Mr. Tony Brinterson. Now, Tony, I've um, got a little bit of history with Tony. I ended up driving his old race car, his old top fuel car. That wow. ended up being my car uh, when it came into our possession. And this car is kind of, if you squint, it's kind of a repop of that car from way back... 30 years ago, would you believe, when he used to run in the ETFA. The only real difference is the big front wheels on there. But he runs an A-fuel car, which is uh, not supercharged, but injected on nitromethane. And these cars should run pretty even all the way down the track. He's run a season's best of 539, which was out in Tiep uh, a few weeks ago. So he does have everything there to be very, very competitive. I only made one run yesterday, didn't get to make the evening run for whatever reason. The first run in the morning, uh, it was a real nice run. Unfortunately, it dropped cylinders on the top end, but until that point, it was really, really good. You're going to need to go sub 
well, sub 5.30 actually to take the number one spot away from the funny cars uh, with the handicap as it is. So yeah, 5.30 or 5.31 might just do it, but to be, uh, to really put authority on it, it would need to be a 5.2 something. Well, Big ask. Well, Silvio is one of the two, well, two drivers that can challenge Lynn for the European Championship. He's only a few points away in number two. And quite honestly, he might even be in the lead if it wasn't for, well, a couple of things, but then ifs and buts don't win races. But out in Sweden, he was in the final and he would have had a bye run in that final round, but it didn't get run due to the uh, weather affecting it horribly, unfortunately. It was a really sad for all of our friends in Sweden that they had to call the race early. And also in Germany a couple of weeks ago, they had lots and lots of problems with the car shutting itself off. Um, the, like the auto shut-off system after he did a burnout. So more than a couple of times he got stranded at the top end and not able to race. Yeah, you wouldn't have seen it, but there was a lot of work going into uh, Silvio's car just a second ago. All the crew guys were reaching into the cockpit. Obviously, Silvio spotted something. They've got it all sorted now. The car's all fired up. But yeah, great work from all the crew guys then. So, Tony Brinson, there's a little sign up in their pits that says, beware of pensioners. <laughs> but that's not, I don't think that's up this weekend because Johnny Lag's not here. Just kidding. Uh, Johnny, if you're out there watching in, um, good luck rebuilding everything. We really miss having you here. I know you miss being here, definitely. And for Silvio, looking to go better than the five by himself. Yeah, so two very different combinations in these cars. A bit like what you've just seen in Lynn's car is what is in Silvio's Dragster. Screw blower Hemi with a clutch and two-speed transmission. Tony's car, injected nitro, naturally aspirated. No superchargers to be seen. Silvio Stroud, but they're side by That's side. That's great for Tony. 5.42, 262 miles an hour. They do look uh, pretty pleased with that. Um, give me 10 seconds. Very, very quickly, gentlemen. Um, Lars, yes. it's, uh, it's been 30 years since like a car looked like that with Tony in it. That was a really nice run. Yeah, we, we go back to the what we did uh, for many, many years ago, um, because we have problem with the uh, racetrack, okay. the computer, so we do like they did in the 60s, and it, it works. You do like you did with the 60s, that's a, that's a good idea. But um, you're gonna be competitive with this weekend as well with that number, 542. Are you looking for a little bit quicker than that, maybe? Oh, yeah, definitely. We want to go to 521, because that was the record we have here with the top fuel for a long, long time ago. Good stuff. Well, it's great to see all of you back, and uh, good luck this weekend. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Lars Theander, one of the original JTB team, when they all ran in top fuel years ago. They, are really, they really are a retro top fuel team, that lot. Well, it's just interesting to think about then. They probably run about the same numbers that they run now. Exactly that. Like he said, <laughs> 521 with the top fuel car was what they ran. Yeah. Now, this is quite crucial because due to the way that the points are allocated, whoever's quickest in the session gets three extra points. Currently at the moment, even including the stagger, that's Lynn Floysvik. And she wants to keep edging away from both of these two, specifically Sandro and Silvio. Depends on what Sandro does on this. They went side by side 550s yesterday. Uh, Johnny Oxer went 555 twice. Sandro went uh, 553, I think. And then uh, a busted run in the evening. Yeah, Silvio is your current number one qualifier with a 5.53. Johnny Oxer, 
555 with a zero keeps him ahead of Lim Floyzik for this session. One of my favorite sounds in drag racing is when these guys bring the RPMs up in pre-stage to make it go into stage. Shaking tie spin for Johnny Oxer, but Sandro is long gone. Uh, 555 and 262. <laughs> Looked like he had the shoots out early, but he must have been bang on the finish line because 263, I think, is top speed of the meet for uh, the methanol funny cars. However, crucially, crucially, I think it's Lynn that got the three bonus points because John, um, Sandro just there was a couple of thousand slower. A couple, only a couple, though. Still, great qualifying from all of the methanol cars. Uh, Johnny, unfortunately, just overstepped it a little bit on the start line, just broke the tyres loose before the Christmas tree, and there was no way he was going to improve his qualified time once that had happened. So, top methanol at the moment, uh, I think, is still going to be Sandro number one. Who's number two now, by the way? Still Johnny. Sorry, yeah, still Johnny. <laughs> uh, Lynn up to number three, Tony four, Silvio five. There must be thousands in it, though, oh, between it's, two it's and three. Oh, it's ridiculously tight. Um, is two hundredths of a second between first and third with the funny car suits. They're really, really tight. Well, talking of ridiculously close, FIA Pro Stock qualifying session number three for Samantha Racing CHM Machine. Simon Eckengren with the Dodge. I, can, I love this. They've got the ETs written on the side of the car, so they just remember. I'm not kidding, it's written in pen down here <laughs> on the door. <laughs> oh. Hot weather. I think the tyres might have dried off by the time he got from the burnout box out here to do the burnout. So, no such problem for Robin Noren in the Kestrel lane. Robin, this is a borrowed car. No, unfortunately, Simon can't strike the tyres for whatever reason. So what Pro Stockers do is they uh, roll through the water box, which puts water on the tyres. But with this being such a hot day and the fact that he's got to go, probably a good... 20, 30 foot, something like that, there's a very good chance they dried off. So when he went to nail it for the burnout, it just didn't happen. He's still number two qualifier at the moment. Let's hope for a great run for Robin Wren. All the people that support him out there watching in Sweden, keep your fingers crossed. Actually, if you're Swedish, hold your thumbs, because that's what they do. We cross our fingers, they hold their thumbs. Um, ooh, they do, that's not a joke. I did not know that. It's not a joke. Um, yeah, it, this car has actually won the European finals the last two times it's been here, which was 2018-2019. Robin would love for that to happen again. A couple of weeks ago, uh, back at Hockenheim, his uh, regular race car ended up in the wall, unfortunately, in the final round. Waving to all the fans out there. There's any Swedish flags up there? Come on. Show them some love. So, fingers crossed for a straight, strong run for Robin and Ren this time. Both times so far, he's been out of shape. Well, you can hear the tyre shake, but he's lovely and straight now. That's more like it with a 672, 205 miles an hour. I think after all the work, the grief. Put your hands together for the whole team. What a fabulous, fabulous effort. They were actually planning on coming straight here from Hockenheim, leaving the car here, but because they crashed it, they had to take it home, borrow a car, put all their stuff in that one, and then make the long trip all the way back again from Sweden just for this weekend. So, Stefan Enrud, Mike Malmgren. <laughs> well, both actually started their burnouts noticeably a lot further back, just in case, I think, after that one. So, these two are number one and two in the championship, but there's hardly anything in it. It all comes down to race day and racing tomorrow. Michael Malmgren in the Slick Tricks lane has been in pro stock for 30 years. 30 years. Before that, he used to race in Comp Eliminator. Uh, he had a killer altered as well in Comp. And I think when he when he actually went pro stock racing, he took the engine out of the altered because it was a pro stock engine, put it in his first pro stocker, which was an old, 
was very successful with it back when, uh, back in the Panasonic days, if everyone remembers that. Stefan Enrud, who is a uh, big time American car dealer in the suburbs of Stockholm in Sweden. Apparently, you need to see his collection and his garage and everything else too. He's all got, he's actually got an all UK crew. That's Rob Stanley out front, Comrade out the back, and uh, Ian Hart wandering around pensively too. So where, what did these two run yesterday? I think Mike was number one. Yeah, uh, Mike number one, 668. Uh, Stefan, 671, he's number three. So what you what you can gather from all this, ProStock is, uh, is very much a manufactured horsepower class. They all run exactly the same stuff. It's who can engineer out the quickest run. But a lot of the time, it's all down to the driver's left foot, i.e. the clutch foot on the start line on race day. What have they got for us here? Whoa, lots of tyre shake for Marco Malmgren. That was huge. Stefan goes, set 6 yeah. seven, zero. No improvement, but... Quick of the round, three mm. points. That's what they'll be thinking about. Nice job. Yeah, bizarrely, he improves by a hundred, but stays put in the qualified order. So you got 668, 669, 670, and 672. That's four how it hundredths be. of a spread between the four cars. So Simon hanging out the side of the Dodge. Put your hands together for him, please. Once again, long, long way to come. They've had a good weekend up to that point, but I'm sure they'll be back later on today to run quick. Uh, Simon, go and tell Michael to put more horsepower in it. That's probably what it was. Just needed a bit more to get the tyres going. I'm just kidding, of course. So we are about ready to line up our next class, which I think will be FIA Top Fuel Dragster. So you're not anywhere in a viewing area. Now is a very, very good time. I think the viewing there. areas are pretty chock. I think they are anyway. <laughs> uh, that's Stefan Enrod's crew, everybody. Give them a cheer as well. That was quick run of the round, which may, may be the difference come tomorrow afternoon. You never know. You never know. So yeah, coming up next, I do believe, and uh, Mike Malgren's team as well. Uh, not quite what they were looking for. They've got one more run to nail the setup for tomorrow. But like you said, Colin, it's still unbelievable. They're within four hundredths of a second yeah, of each other. Yeah, All of them, lot. aren't they? All of them. That's how it's. That's how pro stock's supposed to be. That's exactly, exactly how it's supposed to be. Nothing in it whatsoever. Uh, and the exciting thing for us lucky people watching, it means it's all about the driver's left foot. Who leaves the start line first? Gets very, very nervy on race day, especially at the European finals with the championship at stake. All right, it's a full-blown nitro session now because you've got uh, Top Fuel Dragster, you've got Nitro Funny Car, and then Nostalgia Funny Car to follow. So uh, it is going to get very, very loud indeed. Uh, Daryl, I think we should find out. Any first-timers here this weekend? Put your hands up if it's your first visit ever to a drag racing event. Here's a few. Boy, oh boy. Uh, you're in for an absolute treat. Um, Nitromethane, the fuel of gods, is what gives these cars immense, immense horsepower. 0 to 100 in less than a second. You see the orange markers at 1,000 foot out there. That is the race distance for our fuel cars. And they are capable of going over 300 miles an hour. And that was proved yesterday when we had a run of 3.86 in the dark. Absolutely phenomenal from uh, Ida Zetterstrom. They are the fastest land-based accelerating vehicles ever. And uh, they are here to win championships, to entertain, but not only that, it's just one of the most earth-shattering experiences you have had. You don't hear these cars, you feel the noise. Funny you should say that, because that's what I was just going to say about <laughs> the fact that... Well, no, this is, this is one of the more bizarre, not side effects, but one of the great facts about drag racing, is that we, we had some feedback from some people that came who were, who were blind. So they can't see anything, obviously, but they said it was the most amazing experience because they could actually feel everything that went on, like nothing else in the world. And obviously, if you guys and girls out there have been before, you know exactly what's coming. Uh, if anybody did put their hand up that hasn't been before, well, you, <laughs> anyway, yeah. you're about to find out. So rolling around underneath the tower are the first pair of FIA Top Fuel Dragsters. If you look towards the finish line, you can see the two orange blocks up there in either lane. That's the 1,000 foot, the distance that they race to 
and they'll be qualifying to here on this beautiful, beautiful sunny afternoon in the UK. These are the quickest and fastest accelerating vehicles on the planet. If you were here yesterday, I did a talk through a top fuel car and how it works. So you've got a good idea of what you're about to be looking at. These cars, each of them, each of them, 11,000 brake horsepower, 11,000. So that's 22,000 horsepower on the start line when they nail it. Now, if you work out how much is in a Formula One car or anything like that, this, these two cars are genuinely more power than a Formula One grid in each, in just two cars, just two cars. Uh, each cylinder on these cars produces over a thousand horsepower. Um, nitromethane is drag racing's magic ingredient, obviously. It's very, very oxygen rich and it makes its own horsepower. That's why we love it so much, obviously. Uh, when it's put into the engine under force through the supercharger, it makes one hell of a noise and a hell of an acceleration as well. So if all you folks are uh, in the grandstands in the back, you can see me standing down here. So I'm standing here by the lights. When they come into stage, you see the first bulb lit. That's where my foot is right there. Then just about eight inches in front of that is the full stage. When both of the cars are in that position, which will be about there, there we go, uh, the starter flicks the switch, they leave the start line, but the timer doesn't start until they break the next beam, which is quite a bit further in front. That's the timing beam, and that times them from here all the way up to there. Now, talking of timing, they accelerate from zero to 100 miles an hour in less than one second. In fact, about 0.8 of a second. That is how long it takes them to get from the start line there. So if you see just past where the VB sign is, there's that little marker in the middle. That's actually the 60-foot marker. They will be doing 100 miles an hour from there to here. On a good run, on a good full ball run like Ida Zetterstrom had last night, eighth mile up there, they will be doing 280 to 290 miles an hour in just a nip over three seconds. They really are the eighth wonder of the world. They are the most fantastic spectacle in all of motorsports. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Top Fuel Round 3. So, go on, go on, sorry, go on. <laughs> Your first pair. The same words. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we, we both had the same train of thought as well. Uh, the ending to that song as well, that's Fueled by Metallica. Uh, I'd like to change the words to uh, to quench my blood with nitromethane. Not that I've said that a few thousand times before, but hell, it's true. Oh, we have uh, oh, a big old fuel leak from yeah, India's car. Uh, India's car, sorry. The car's still running. There you go, Carl can pick it off. The car will push back behind the start line so Duncan can make his run. Oh, now is the worst time for the car to lock the cup. So it would be Duncan on his own. Uh, Duncan hasn't had a good A to B run this weekend. Let's hope that Rune has sucked it out for this one. The car is the car that Anti Horto won the championship with a year ago today. So he's got the pedigree and Duncan definitely has as well. He was European top field champ back in around about 2017, I think. That is not a great place for India to be sat. If I was sitting in that car, I'd be seething by now. What I mean by that is having to watch the guy in the other lane go fly past you. So the bolt is long. That really did rattle the tyres and then they went into spin, the revs shot up and Duncan had no choice but to back out of that run. Yeah, that was a, a big paddle out there before 60 foot. Um, once again, put your hands together for the Monster Energy team all the way from Switzerland. Indy Roback is in the car, she can hear you, and Urs as well. They haven't had their normal clockwork weekend so far. 
They're always only one, ra one away from it, though. Let's put it that way. So, uh, yeah, Duncan with big shake before 60 foot, makes the first turn off. And uh, India went over 500 kilometers an hour a number of times out of hook, and I've just not had the same kind of weekend here in the UK. So your next pair will be two Rooney Field cars, one and two in the championship. That's going to be how they uh, finish up. Just that, where um, India's car stopped, just a little bit of a uh, concern from our track crew there. Uh, also, a very good morning to Phil Evans down, sorry, good afternoon to Phil Evans down there. Uh, really good to see you. Got a guest with him down there. Uh, Daryl, I don't know if you can sort of head over to see them there. But, of course. Um, you've be, you've uh, told him I'm coming now, though. Yeah, That's no, just it's the okay. Worst thing it's you all right. Do. Just, uh, it's dreadful, just man. catch up uh, dreadful. with uh, with the Phil. tractor. Yeah, the tractor's just going out in the uh, in the Kestrel line. Yeah. Um, Sorry about this. You didn't expect this bit, did you? No, um, if you'd like to... I, I don't know your name. I do apologise. Uh, I'm Daryl. I've been doing this a while. And you are? I'm Matt Endine. Um, I'm here today um, as a guest of Philip. And um, I actually represent uh, various committees on Motorsport UK who sanction bits of what is happening today. Um, and this is my first time, uh, certainly in the middle. I've been to Santa Pod many times, certainly in my youth. Um, and it really is a um, mind-blowing experience here um, in the middle. Um, I don't think I have the words in me to describe quite what it's like. Do you know, the funny thing is, years and years ago, I, I used to race one of these, and years ago, I, I'd spent all my life trying to explain to people what it felt like. And one day, I was sat in, a, my, my sponsor had, uh, one of my sponsors, he got an open office. He was trying to explain to all the people in the office that had never been what it was like to come here. And... I then suddenly the penny dropped that for the last 25 years I'd sounded like a total idiot trying to explain to everybody what the experience is like just because simply you can't explain it. I, I quite agree. It is, uh, I said to Philip just after the run, I was literally blown away. I could feel myself being blown back and yeah, it's, it, it is just mind blowing. It's one of those things as well, it's quite funny, obviously top fuel reaction videos are viral all around the world for very, very good reason, aren't they? Yeah, you can see, yeah, you can see why, because, and I think it's interesting seeing the teams with their video footage that they're using to learn and then adapt and, you know, uh, control the car better. Um, so yeah, it is, I, I'm still not really got the word to describe what it's like. <laughs> so I'm not going to keep asking you, don't worry, it's fine, it's fine. But I know that's of no use to you or anyone else there, but uh, yeah, it is uh, something to be experienced and I would recommend it to anyone, uh, especially if you're watching online, you've got to come here and see it and feel it. Because you do, it's not just hearing it, you feel it. It's definitely, I always say it's the most rock and roll version of motorsport, and I think it is without being rude, because it's, it's just louder, faster, noisier, more violent than anything else. So we've got two more top fuel cars coming around. Both young ladies, both used to race in junior dragster. So obviously other forms of motorsport have diversity programs. I always say this, we don't need one. We have it already. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting because drag racing has a long history of, um, or not quite equal, sadly, but you know, a lot of women who often do better, especially on the reaction times. Um, and you know, a message out there: yes, you can start in junior dragsters, but also other more grassroots stuff. You can start competing from age 14 um, in, you know, effectively an MOT write-off car. Um, and that's some of the work I do, and Philip does on the committee work we do is, is trying to encourage more people into the sport um, because it is. You know, great fun, and I've you know spent nearly my whole life in and around cars, um, and yeah, it's um, it be great. As if by magic. Thank you very much indeed. Enjoy the rest of your experience. Thank you very much indeed, Phil. So here we go with the next pair. Again, I wasn't joking. Both these two used to race in junior dragster. One of them is now European top fuel champion. The other one is going to finish number two in the points. Suzanne Callen for Slick Tricks Racing in the Slick Tricks lane. Taking on Eda Zetterstrom for Edelbrock, KW Parts, M Strand, the Island of Orland. Who is your new European champ? In fact, she's undefeated in rounds of racing so far in 2023. So, Ida, needless to say, is your current number one qualifier with that belting run last night in the dark. She went 386 at only, only 307 miles an hour. Suzanne hasn't had a clean shot down the racetrack yet, but 
As always, I'm sure Runa has something in his magic box of tricks to get the car from one end to the other. Yeah, just the need to rock that car a little bit to allow it in reverse to, reverse to be engaged. But uh, now Suzanne bringing the car back behind the start line. Well, both these ladies have been in the 3.8s. Well, that's fact. Ida is your European record holder with a 3.7 second pass. Seven plays a 4.65, but they were both well and truly on it. Off the line, 0 0.85 to 60 foot to a 0 0.86 for Suzanne. Uh, 2.18 to 2.23 at 3.30. At the eighth mile, though, 3.12, 257 uh, for Ida. 3.42, 1.95. Suzanne was, uh, well, she had pretty much wheel spin a lot of the racetrack there. Uh, but both of them off the gas at the strike. 4.07 for Ida. And Suzanne, 4.65. Hands together, please, for both teams. They got a lot of work after that one. I think I saw flame from both of the yes. engines. They were both eating themselves up in the last half of the racetrack. Uh, just seemed to break traction a little bit towards the top end. Something you don't normally see, but again, it's over 30 degrees. Uh, even with this fantastic concrete, concrete racetrack and all the track prep, uh, you can still overstep the mark slightly if it's not quite right. So anyway, Eda's still number one qualifier. Uh, don't go anywhere at all, folks. We've got Nitro Funny Car round behind the tower going to be coming up next. Very, very interesting story in this. First of all oh. is your number one qualifier. Go on, Colin, sorry. No, no, sorry. I was just going to say, your number one qualifier at the moment is Patrick Pears with that stonking run, absolutely storming run last night. He went all the way through, well, to about half track anyway. He did have to lift because the car was drifting over, but it was a thing of beauty. He's your number one qualifier. Kevin Kent, though, on the first run yesterday, sheared a titanium shaft in the rear end just before half track. And when he sheared the titanium shaft, guess what? The wheel fell off. And because the wheel fell off, it pitched the car completely sideways. He did manage to hang on to it, get it going back in a straight line again, pulled the chutes and slowed it down. But unfortunately, uh, it did damage the car. So they have made a Herculean effort overnight. He very kindly asked, or very, uh, very kindly asked, uh, the boss of Santa Pod Raceway, Keith Bartlett, that at Santa Pod Raceway actually do have a fuel funny car with no engine in it, sometimes for displays and everything. It's a legal race car that Kevin has used a couple of times before, and Keith didn't hesitate very kindly to say, yeah, Kushkan, borrow the car. So they put the engine, they put everything in the car, swapped it all over, worked till God knows what time this morning to get it ready, and Kevin is there in the lanes ready to go. I went past the team at half midnight last night, and they were almost, you know, wrapping up for the night. They got the job done. And I said, well, you know, what's next? He said, well, put it this way. If it wasn't for the curfew, we'd be warming the car up now just to making sure everything was ready. That's how keen they were. But, uh, yeah, total respect for what that team have achieved overnight. They've done it before, and uh, they did it again. They now, don't want to, though. <laughs> no. Now, the bizarre thing is, Kevin Kent did qualify yesterday with a 526. He kept the car in his lane, but because he swapped cars, that run is now annulled, and he's sort of back to square one. So, uh, yeah. However, however, uh, he will run in this session. He will oh, get yeah, time, yeah, so uh, there's every, every chance he will be qualified. The tracks are just doing... We haven't got much of a clean-up to do. It's just a little bit of sledding by the looks yep. of it. The fuel funny cars will be running over the same distance to 1,000 foot. Number one at the moment is Patrick. Uh, and Steve Ashdown and the team as well. I've got to say a big up to, uh, to Dave Bryant and the whole team. Steve Ashdown, that must have been a monumental amount of work yesterday. That was, that was a lot as well. They've made it down for this round of racing, actually. I'm just going to endeavour to find out what they did yesterday and what they've done to get ready for this round of racing. Yeah, well, interesting. When you were speaking about it, then it actually came up on the replay on the live stream. So those oh, of you right. who tuned in at home, you've just had a first eye view of what happened yesterday. Very, very bizarre. But what the other th I had a good chat with Kevin last night, and 
uh, you know, obviously he well didn't actually realise what had happened, but uh, thought he just had a, a flat tyre. Didn't realise that the wheel had actually departed company. Did his best to try and keep the car in his lane, and then he had a thud at the back of the car, and he honestly thought that Jason had gone into the back of him, but oh, it was right. actually his own wheel <laughs> that had bounced off Jason's car, then hit his car in the shutdown area. Um, so, well, yeah, that was really, really odd. Uh, bizarre moment for, for Kevin yesterday. It was just a complete sensory overload, I think the best way to describe that. Well, but it was nice of the wheel for it to come back again. Yeah, it was try, <laughs> tried to reattach itself, but missed slightly. So there is a big, big scuff mark uh, on uh, the side of the Gladiator funny car. Uh, but fortunately, no other damage uh, to uh, the Gladiator car. And, of course, uh, Kevin Kent's team uh, absolutely worn out. But uh, they were still buzzing, to be honest, uh, getting everything sorted out and ready to take part in uh, qualifying today. Well, it takes a special person to drive a nitrophonic car, but it also takes a special kind of person to put themselves through crewing on one mm. as well. Yeah, absolutely out outstanding. Um, Funny Car has been a story throughout the year. Um, I, w I said it yesterday, I'm going to say the same thing again today. Uh, but uh, Bug Jam is a big, a big event. It's one of the biggest lifestyle events here at Santa Pod, along with Ultimate Street Car. And Nitro Funny Car opened the, uh, the qualifying sessions. And the very first car that put the run in was Steve Ashdown with a brand new set of rear slicks on the car. And he did his burnout and he just kept going and going and going. The point didn't click. Lee, who goes out to reverse him, thinks, well, where's he going? And Luke and I are in the tower, and uh, Luke was going, yeah, 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 screaming. I'm going, he hasn't got the fuel for this. No. <laughs> and it was like Uber for Lee to go and get, <laughs> yeah. to go and bring him back. And anyway, he got the car back to the start line got it all lined up and then all I just kept thinking he has not got the fuel for this he just hasn't got enough fuel uh, has he got a long range fuel tank is he a tanker that stopped on the way to top him up <laughs> I mean, there's all these bizarre thoughts going through your head but he came back and he launched it and I thought he, he's, he, he's got to click it early he did uh, it was still a phenomenal launch he did everything right uh, and talk about judging it right they got the car back to the pits there was a gallon of fuel left in it and knowing how much these things consume, that's less than half a second's worth of fuel. Yeah. So uh, that was absolutely amazing. And uh, hero status was achieved straight away for Steve <laughs> like, like he already needed it anyway. And then Kevin Ken did it. Well, he did his run and <laughs> set that European best 4.1 over 290 miles an hour. Um, just one of those standout moments in uh, UK funny car history. Well, it looks like they're going to be rolling around about now. The tractor is, hopefully... Go on in, stop, reverse, there we go. Makes me know what I, look, know what, look like I know what I'm talking about. I've just been around and uh, had a quick chat with, uh, with a couple of people around here. I'll tell you what went on when they do come around. Actually, they're coming around now, so yeah. I might as well explain it right now. So first of all, we have the Gladiator Funny Car from the UK, Mark and Jackie Hawkins. I had a quick chat with Mark before this run. Uh, and uh, just asked Mark quickly about what happened at Bug Jam. And he said, well, it did, it's one of those ones where it didn't look that bad. Um, he said there was a flash out of the side, which is not unusual. He said he probably put, put his head gasket out or something like that. Uh, got back, dropped the oil pan. One of the crew guys said, uh, Mark, the crank's in bits. And uh, yeah, they've broken the crank <laughs> on that run, which, which is like, it looked like an innocuous flash. These things do, they're not famous for holding together, let's put it that way. And um, yeah, he did the crank on that run. He's going to be taking on Steve Ashdown with the Undertaker Fuel Funny Car. I just caught up with Dave Bryant very quickly just to find out what happened yesterday. And he said on that run yesterday, uh, where, it bang, where it bangs about 100 foot out, it was because the drive shaft broke, sent the, sent the revs through the roof, and uh, it did, it torched one of the heads, it did the burst panels. And I said, well, that's not quite as bad as I thought. He said, oh, yeah, it was only half past three this morning. I went, oh, sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> Forget I said anything then. Again, having a chat with Steve, it was the coupler um, had moved, uh, which uh, caused uh, the, you know, the drive shaft uh, to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> disengage, <laughs> yeah. Disengage, yeah. yeah. The thing is, these cars are actually, one thing a lot of people don't know is these cars are effectively always in gear. The only thing that takes them out is the, uh, the clutch pedal, 
like on most cars. But yeah, there's no way you, they're in gear the whole time unless you've got your foot on the clutch, which is why they tend to lock up at the top end and uh, can be quite hard to move when the clutch is hot, but there we go. So Jason Phelps for Mark and Jackie Hawkins with the Gladiator and Mr. Steve Ashdown, the undertaker himself in the Kestrel Lane. I've got to mention the British Drag Racing Hall of Fame at this point, and massive, massive thanks to uh, Steve Ashdown and Ashdown Bulk Hall, you know, Ash Steve's companies, uh, for, uh, for supporting the British Drag Racing Hall of Fame. It's hugely appreciated, it really, really is. And uh, we look forward to seeing Steve. And of course, everybody else coming down to the uh, gala dinner in November. The details are in your race weekend program. You can go online, book tickets, come and join us and uh, celebrate this year's inductees into the British Drag Racing Hall of Fame. So, you saw in the top fuel cars, but they are in front of the drivers. The drivers sit right behind these 10,000 plus horsepower, well, A-bombs basically, um, with a fiberglass or carbon fiber these days, body draped over them of generally a late model American car, Toyota Celica in the Slick Tricks lane for Jason Phelps and a Dodge in the Kestrel lane for Steve Ashdown. Um, one of the popular, one, one popular uh, discussion going on always is that modern funny car bodies don't look really that good and uh, the paint on them is always quite boring. I completely beg to differ, especially with these two cars. Something like Tom said yesterday, you don't see in the US generally, uh, they're all sponsored, which is for good reason, because they take a lot of money to run. But these cars both have names, and they both look absolutely fantastic. Someone's idling very, very high out there. I think that might be Steve. Yeah, it is. He's trying to get the car stopped. Lee's running after the car just to try and, there we go, close the butterflies a bit and bring the RPM down. He doesn't want to be stuck out there and have to roll off the end of the track like he did the other event. Oh, big leak from Jason's car. That does actually look like fuel, not oil, but whatever it is, it means that something's not quite tight enough yet. It's evaporating before my eyes, actually. So Jason Phelps won't be making this run. However, Steve will. Yeah, sometimes there's a little bit of fuel out in the overflow, but that wasn't an overflow kind of spill. That was much more like something loose or a fitting that didn't quite stand up to the job. indicating to Steve that he is on a solo here uh, as the uh, the drivers always need to know what's going on on the other side of the racetrack as to when to stage the car so uh, Steve has that information now he knows the track is his for this run uh, around at 6.74 yesterday it's 4.40 that will give him the number one spot they all want to run the numbers here All of our funny car drivers have been in the four second zone before. But Steve would love to get a real strong number here if he can. So turns the fuel onto the high side, moves into stage. Makes a move to the centre line, but he's got it covered. Ooh. That was real close to the centre line. He just clicked it off in time, but that was a good looking run. Um, give us some short numbers quickly, please. 0.92, 60 foot, 345 at 229 at the 8th. That's my fault for being caught on the wrong side of the racetrack. Dave, quickly, very, very quickly, mate. Um, well, finally, finally, third time lucky. Yeah, finally. Thank God for that. It made it from A to B. Uh, it looked like a really, really nice run. It was hiking the front wheel. Steve did a, looking at the tracks as well, Steve did a really good job keeping that in his lane. That's what steering wheels are for. Yeah, but they weren't on the ground. <laughs> no, that is true. No, he's good at that. He knows when it's gone too far. So, no, I'm, I'm really happy with that, and I'm sure Steve will be. So, And it's in one bit, it looks like. Well, yeah, that's always a bonus with these cars, isn't it? But uh, the, the real good thing about that, 454 at 203, that's the kind of numbers you're looking for. If that goes from all the way through the finish line, that would be where you want to be, I guess. Yeah, if it goes the short way round instead of the long way, it should have been like a low 40, so 
yeah, that's about where we need to be. That's the idea. Well, excellent show, sir. Congratulations. And um, well done to that very, very hardworking and exceptionally good-looking team, apart from Lee. Well done, guys. <laughs> well done, guys. <laughs> Do you know what? Steve was only seven hundredths off a personal best on that run, so... Uh, well done indeed. Sorry, I didn't let you get the short numbers out, mate. Go on, carry uh, on. I did. Uh, oh, sorry. 0.92 to 60 for... That's really good. And the eighth was 3.45 at 2.29. Yeah, that was on it. That would have been a real good, maybe even a 4.20, something like that, yeah, which is yeah. uh, pretty much well, it's not far off record pace, actually. That's, uh, that's good to see. Undertaker team, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, well done, gang. They do deserve that, definitely. They do deserve that. Yeah, I'm surprised how long Steve was able to hold with it. It's a testament to how good this track is. That is 12,000 horsepower he's put down on the centre line. Uh, yeah, do you know what? I was standing on the other side, and like what Dave said what, about the steering wheel, well, I do sort of agree. However, it was absolutely marching as the clutch was coming in, and yeah. the front end was not on the ground. <laughs> wow. It was dangling the front wheels. I don't think Steve had an awful lot of steering input till he finally got off the throttle around about half. But uh, that's still a really good, encouraging number for that team. You can't imagine the amount of hard work it takes just to do that. I say just to do that, but uh, it's pretty incredible. Uh, another guy I want to quickly catch up with while we bring the next pair around, very, very quickly, Mr. Martin de Hassa. Uh, it's okay, don't worry, we're not going to do this quickly. I just want to know, uh, yesterday uh, I saw a picture of the rod from your super twin. How on earth did you do that? Well, and matter of fact, it's the second time already, so... <laughs> yeah, we had it before, but uh, yeah, it was an unpleasant surprise, and... Uh, well, we worked all night with the crew, thanks to them, everybody, and uh, we just fixed it in time. And another miss set this, uh, this morning, but started it up and ready for Q3, so hard work pays off. Just to know what I'm talking about, everybody, Martin rides a super twin bike with a V-twin with uh, very big connecting rods, and you split the connecting rod down it from one end to the other. Like splitting a log for your fire with a wood. It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, unbelievable what power. Uh. Yeah, the aluminium rods are supposed to be stronger than wood, but there we go. Um, good effort getting back today. Good luck, sir. Thank you, and uh, nice to see the big crowd uh, in, the, in the warm weather. So. Hey, look, it's in the UK. That's what we love to do, mate, what we love to do. Mike De Haas, everybody, thank you very much. Right, Jason Phelps, the whole team, you're going to get to look at Jason's beautiful face in his hands. Keep your hands over your face. They don't want to see you. They really don't, honestly, Jason, honestly. Give him a cheer, folks. Once again, you cannot believe the amount of effort, time, grief, all the rest of it that goes in to run in these cars. Not a small amount of money either. So, the last pair, I think. Patrick Pears from Sweden, uh, who still is, I think, number one, Colin. He is, yeah, 440. Yeah? Okay. Uh, however, he was off it around about half track last night as well. That car is an absolute animal. It will be European record pace if he can nail it all the way through. He's in the Slick Tricks lane. Gonna be taking on the one, the only, Mr. Kevin Kent now in the Santapod Raceway Dodge Funny Car. Like you said, Colin, Kevin did qualify yesterday, kind of. Yeah, went 5.21 on that uh, three-wheeled run. Um, but obviously, because of change of car, the, uh, the run is DQ'd. Well, yeah, he's the world's fastest trike, definitely. But yeah, it, what he did was the, um, the shaft that goes through the axle, which is made out of titanium, he managed to break it. Seriously. How? You know, that's the kind of thing that you hardly ever, if ever, see. And Kevin didn't really enjoy it either because he spat the wheel off the left-hand side of his other race car uh, and he was following it through the track. So this will get him qualified in the other car. Now, the only thing for Kevin is I don't think he's ever had a real good A to B run in this car. But if anyone can... The West End team can. So, Patrick Pears with the Speed Ghost team from Stockholm in Sweden. If you Google funny car motorway burnout, <laughs> right? Good point. Google funny car motorway burnout. That was absolutely not Patrick. Absolutely not Patrick. But it's still bloody funny anyway. Um, he is over there in the Slick Tricks lane. Going against, like I said, Kevin Kemp for the San Pod Raceway Fuel Funny Car. Best protest about... Uh, well, just brilliant. Best protest hands down, I think. Yeah. <laughs>
So the bodies come up. Final checks are made underneath the vehicles. Just quick scrub of the tyres for Patrick's car. Well, amazingly, this is the same engine in Kevin's car that was in it yesterday. So they swapped everything over, which is, you can't say what a Herculean task that is. And he's now set ready to go out to qualify again. So all fingers crossed for these two drivers. One of them wants to go through and try and tackle the European record. The other one wants to just get into the field. Well, once again, Nitro Fuel filling the start line and the tower as they both go into three stage. Nitro, funny car, your second pair. Well, Patrick double stepped it off the start line. I'm not sure whether that was shake related. Kevin gets in the show. Yeah, uh, a really nice launch for that car. He drifted a little bit right, but not too bad. Uh, 583 at the stripe, 554 for Patrick. I'm not sure why Patrick actually double stepped. I'm just going to have a look at the tyre tracks. No, nah, they're pretty good, to be honest with you. Um, a little bit of paddling, which is quite normal for a fuel car, but nothing out of the ordinary, nothing, uh, nothing that bad at all. So he's still number one qualifier at the end of that session. Yeah, it was a 0.93 for Patrick to the 60 foot. Um, it was a sub one second also for Kevin in a, a car that he hasn't driven for a little while. Nevertheless, both in the show, um, Patrick retains that number one spot for the time being. Kevin, number four, with that 582. And hilariously, they'd beat him round one if they stay like that, but yeah. uh, we'll have to wait and see. So we do have a little bit of scrubbing to do somewhere up there. I don't think it's going to be that much, though, because they did look pretty clean. Yeah. Until well, they Patrick went. just going through the first exit. Okay. Uh, Kevin will be going off the final exit right at the top. How did he get all the way down there? there put your hands together fabulous monumental effort they are getting pretty sick of doing it but they keep doing it anyway <laughs> and uh, Patrick Pears team as well still your number one qualifiers trying to going to be trying for a real good strong A to B run I'm standing here, down here as well looking at uh, Steve Ashdown's tyre tracks and he was no more than about three maybe four foot from the centre line from 330 onwards that's, that's amazing. amazing well one thing you've got to remember as well is the tyre tracks are essentially the middle of the car, the headers come out past that. So he would have been even closer than that to the actual centre line. OK, we do have one more car. Uh, the tractor is out there waiting. I'm not sure exactly what we need to do. We're just going to wait and find out. We do have uh, our team in place, ever vigilant as always, checking out to see how long we're going to be. Well, one thing I've just noticed quickly, Darrell, you're saying about not only in the States do not have the names on the sides of the car anymore, they're all basically... Some do, but... You know. Some do, but most of them are, well, as you say, big, big sponsor teams. And they've all got the choice of three bodies, which is either, you, what, you've got the Toyota Supra, Dodge Charger, or the Ford Mustang. Well, over here, all, they're all different. No two bodies are the same. Very good point. Oh, there, are, there are a couple of Dodge bodies, but they're not the same one, are they? One's, no. uh, one's a more modern Hellcat, and uh, Steve Ashdown's is... Uh, is a charger from, well, well, it's not that old. Well, there's actually three Dodge bodies now. <laughs> yes, good, good way to be anyway. So the tractor and the scrubber are going to be out there in a slick tricks lane. What's that, from about 3.30 on, something like that. Maybe not even that far by the looks of it. Yeah. But it shouldn't be too long uh, at all. I'm just going to endeavour to find out how long it will be. Kevin Chapman is suited and booted. Uh, he's not been told to get out the car, which is always a good thing because it means that it shouldn't be that long. All right, just a few uh, bits of uh, housekeeping from upstairs. Uh, I've been, uh, we've been saving this one, actually, because I wanted to make sure these two people were actually uh, tuned in. Uh, Samuel Lul and Viva Lul are tuned in. Um, they, they are together this weekend, brother and sister. And uh, last weekend, they very sadly um, lost their father, who was a big, big drag racing fan here at Santa Prod Raceway, uh, Peter. And um, they just wanted uh, a shout out uh, for their dad this weekend. Uh, I said I would try and do it when you were both tuned in. I know you're watching now. And uh, uh, thoughts are with you guys this weekend. And as, as you remember your dad, and obviously uh, another member of our drag racing extended family uh, has, uh, has left us. But uh, thoughts with uh, Samuel, Viva, and of course, all of your families this weekend. Well, thank you very much indeed, Colin. It looks like that was the, uh, the shortest clean. 
we wow. could ever hope for. Yeah, it looks like they are ready to go. Um, this is a, back on. Sorry, one more request. A uh, good mate of mine, John Turner, has says, can we turn the three big fans on and <laughs> turn them towards <laughs> the banking, please, and crank them up? It is extremely hot out there. He's described it as horrific. <laughs> it is the hottest day of the year. Um, well, we've switched them on. Um, but I don't think we can turn them round, and I don't think they're going to rotate fast enough, but we try. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm sure, you, I'm sure he's right. Uh, as I've said many times before, it's much better to be too hot than soaking wet, let's put it that way. So, yeah, it is a very, very warm day. We do feel your pain. However, we don't sympathise with it because this is what we want to do, and this kind of weather means we can all day, every day at this event. So the last funny car is going to be Kevin Chapman. He did come to the line and run last night. I'm not sure why he got shut off. Also, good to see Bob Jarrett back in the house doing the tuning for the team. Uh, Kevin's PB will actually qualify him number one if he can run anywhere near that, but just getting his feet again in the Thermarec car. Engine idling a little higher. That's one of the reasons the crew guy stands out there at the end of the burnout, just to make sure that the throttle blades are closed enough. So it brings the idle down so they can get it in reverse. Good to see the Turbo Reg team back in action there with Kevin Chapman. So, there is a computer connected. Shows the RPM and everything to the crew sheet. That's unplugged, or it's about to be anyway, hopefully. Because they don't need it on the run. There we go. No, it's all up to Kevin, good luck to him. Like I said, not sure how far he's going to be going down the racetrack. But let's hope for a good, safe, strong launch at least for Mr. Chippy Chapman. Well, you could clearly see from behind it anyway, dropped a cylinder as soon as he hit the throttle. Still goes 606 at only 111 miles an hour. Uh, but the, the problem, I'm just going to explain really, really quickly. Uh, the reason that the headers on these cars, they're called zoomy headers, because they look kind of zoomy, and that's not a joke, is that uh, the reason that they curve round and face upwards is that the exhaust or the pressure that comes out of the exhaust is a big part of the downforce on the cars. And it produces a good two tonnes of downforce when that V8 Hemi is actually running on song. Now, what happens is, what we just said, drop cylinder, it means that one of the cylinders wasn't firing properly. You could clearly see that because all the fuel comes out of the pipe instead of being burnt in the engine. What that does is it effectively drives the car. They're, they're almost impossible to drive with a dead cylinder. What it means is, is you've got X amount of downforce on one side, but you've only got three quarters of the same on the other side, and it pushes the car in the direction of the drop cylinder. And that's what happened to Kevin that time. He really did a good job keeping it off the centre line. Hands together, please, for the Thermareg team. Yeah, that's a good base respect. to start yeah. everything from. So we've got Nostalgia Nitro Funny Cars round behind the tower. Don't go anywhere at all, if you can possibly help it. Just to give you short numbers for Kevin, actually, it was a 0.97 uh, to 60 foot. But as you say, he was slightly rattling the tyres and... Uh, he was pulling him over towards the centre line, eventually got it off the, off the gas, ran about 200 foot out. But uh, nevertheless, uh, a real good, strong launch for Kev. So you're about to hear the cackle of nitro cars again. The difference between what you've just seen and this is that uh, those were full bore, modern big show nitro funny cars, twin mags, big fuel pumps, big superchargers, capable of monster ETs and speeds. 
what you're going to see now is basically the way it was a good 40 years ago or so, something like that. Uh, they run a single, single mag, or distributor if you prefer. Uh, they run a nostalgia style body, smaller fuel pump, but they are no, by no means any less fun, exciting, and great to watch. First pair around by the looks of it is going to be, indeed it is, Tony Betts with Venom in the Slick Tricks lane and Tim Garlic with Apache. Now, these two have had some brilliant races this summer. Oh, okay. I think final of the main event, wasn't it Tim that won it on a hole shot? Yes. Was that right? Yeah. Um, so he was out ET'd by, uh, by Tony, but his quicker driving uh, drive, uh, start on reactions, that's the word I was looking for, um, got him the win. He went 6 0 5 yesterday. Tony was a little off pace in the mid sixes. Hopefully, hopefully, he can step it up this time round. And as well, last night in the dark, Tim Garlick's head of flames were one hell of a spectacle bellowing out the side of the Apache funny car. side all the way down Broadway and it is a 606 for Tim Garlic just a hundredth slow than yesterday Tony Betts moves up with a 626 at 233 that was a bit more like it for yeah. Tone uh, <laughs> really really quickly John really quickly um, uh, a little bit off the usual pace yesterday any idea what the issue was yeah oh, okay and you solved it Hopefully. Hopefully. There we go. Quickest interview as ever, as always. Thank you very much well, indeed, sir. John Wright, crew chief for uh, Tony Betts. I always like to keep it short with John. Well done to the Apache team. That's another 6 0 for the bank. Yeah. And they're still number one qualifier. And uh, actually, just to confirm uh, that Tim Garlic is the Nostalgia Funny Car Points champion this year, he did that in qualifying. And you're saying about Tim Garlic having a good year. Let's not forget, he won Drag Stouter against Nick Davis in the final of the Nostalgia Cannonball. So he has had a phenomenal year. Well, and it's well deserved as well. So we've got Wendy Baker down for this session. We have a four car qualified field. This is car number five. Uh, if Wendy Baker, what's the bump spot, Colin? 738. Seven, okay, no Andy Raw around there this time, unfortunately. So not sure, not sure where Andy's got to. But this is Wendy Baker with the Mustang funny car. Gonna be going alongside Paul Harris. He's fired up, the body is just coming down on the monitor. So the inimitable figure of Mr. Dave Wilson lurking round there. Paul Harris is going into the wrong lane. Yep, there we go. He's just coming round. Uh, and he was going to go, oh, oh, look at this, cool as you like. He's still going to go through the water box. <laughs> so brilliant. Trick moves with a fuel funny car. Well, that would still be enough for a burnout. I don't think the right wheel went through the burnout box. But yeah, he was coming full on round to go into the lane and then went right left hand down a lot. So helping out Wendy Baker, the... Uh, the inimitable figure of Mr. Dave Wilson lurking in the background. Well, I say lurking, he's standing right there on the start line. So, when his first runs of the season, actually. Uh, yeah, she, one of the drivers who made the trip over to Hockenheim, uh, but issues when she was out there, so could not make a pass. Fingers crossed from her and the team. 
Now, if you remember from the program that you found yesterday, uh, the one with Dave Warren in, um, Wendy was in there as well, because that was her debut year in Manson Old Langston. Yes. So, waiting patiently for Paul Harris to complete his routine. Coming forwards now, Paul Harris, 6.40, currently number three spot. Wendy Baker looking just to make a pass. Anything quicker than a 7.38 and she will be in the field. What a lovely looking run for Paul Harris. 663, 196 mile an hour and unfortunately issues there for Wendy Baker. Well, that was another great six second run for Paul Harris. He's been living in the sixes so far and uh, just keeping it nice and safe going down the racetrack and he will be qualified number three at the moment. Uh, Wendy at the moment is not the uh, unfortunate position of number five with that 11 second run, but good to see the Mustang out on the racetrack after so much grief all through the Without shadow of a doubt. Yeah, so we've got uh, FIM bikes coming up next with, uh, we're going to kick off with Pro Stop Bike. And uh, my goodness, I've got better looking from down here. Definitely. Yeah, anyway, they're, they're, yeah they're... and more interesting. Well, that's not difficult, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Mm. Oh dear, no, we, uh, we'll come to our guest in a moment. Uh, we had Dale Leakes earlier on this year and uh, very, very well, entertaining. Funnily enough, Dale actually said to me he was going to be here today and maybe up for Top Fuel Bike too. So I'm sure Dale's floating around somewhere. I'm not in entirely sure Neil and Dale will be a great combination <laughs> to have up there, but, you know, we could always try. Yeah, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's bring in. Uh, we are joined. We wished he was down on the racetrack, but uh, a big incident and a huge moment for Neil in, uh, at uh, Tierp uh, prevented him from taking any further proceedings in racing this year. But we are joined by the one and only Mr Neil Midgley. Neil, a very, very good afternoon. A bit of a warm one. I bet you're sort of in a right way, please you're not stuck in leathers, getting ready to run uh, and come into a nice air-conditioned tower. Yes, just been down in the pairing lanes and seeing all the lads down there with the leathers on. I was not missing it from that point of view. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, obviously wish I was out on the track, and yeah. but unfortunately it's not to be. It's really, really good to see you because I didn't know, well, didn't know when we were going to catch up with you next, but uh, uh, it is so good to just uh, have you back here. Um, I saw it's not the view that you wanted. <laughs> I know you wanted the view from downstairs uh, on the bike as such, but uh, um, time to reflect on what happened. We've looked at all the data, what I can remember, the accident and all that, and it's almost like a perfect storm. Uh, I was going slightly to the left and pulling over to the right, so I was leaning off the bike a bit on the right-hand side, but nothing unusual. I'd shut the throttle a little early because of that. I'd reached forward to grab the rear brake, but wasn't really pulling the brake on, and then I remember thinking, press the parachute button, which is my left thumb, um, because there are a couple of bumps in the shutdown area, and that will stabilise it. And the next thing I remember is, that arm came off the handlebars, and because I grabbed the throttle all the way round, it's difficult to keep it shut. So with only my right hand arm on the handlebars, yeah. it went back on to basically full power for another 1.8 seconds. Ooh. So. Yeah, we don't quite know what speed it was doing when I finally came off. <laughs> uh, luckily, I can't remember too much about it. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, thankfully, I'm not so bad, so... Well, yeah. that's the best thing that you've said. It's really good hearing the story, but the saying you're not too bad and you're here uh, is, uh, is just testament to... Um, also, the safety as well. I mean, obviously, you are fully equipped with all the right safety equipment that you can have on yourself, because obviously, once you get thrown off the bike, it's just you then. It's, uh, it's tough. It's oh, tough. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen my crash helmet or leathers because they were sent to the hospital for <coughs> my evaluation, but I believe the crash helmet was pretty well smashed where I hit the wall. Mm. The, the leathers saved my skin. There's, there's no damage through the leathers, yeah. but they cut the leathers off because I was unconscious to mm. check me out. Yeah. But, yeah, the bottom line is all my safety gear did the right things. I'm here. That's, yeah. that's what I can say. All right, that's the important bit sorted out. How's the bike? <laughs> well, actually, um, because I'm the only one who can drive the race rig, uh, the bike got put back into the race rig out in Tiep, 
And then one of Rickard Gustafson's crew drove me and the rig back to Rickard's workshop. And the rig stayed there up until now. So the plan is to actually go out there in a week's time and drive the rig back home myself. Oh, fantastic. Oh, brilliant. Uh, well, we're going to hear a lot more from you as we get through uh, the bike sessions. And, uh, and to add a little bit more colour <laughs> and a bit more craziness to the commentary, we do have Dale Leakes that's joined us in the tower as well. Dale, uh, good to see you. Yeah, do looking you guys? Looking hot, mate. Looking hot. Uh, is it not you're looking hot, but well, you're yeah, looking overheated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. So thanks, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that was a quick retract of yeah. uh, a statement, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Looking overheated, well there we go, but uh, Dale, good to see you mate, yeah, uh, you. welcome back. Um, again, uh, wish you were out there as well. Yeah, well, I got busy here this year racing over in America, so can't have the bike in two places at once, True. but uh, yeah, when you come here and uh, you haven't got a bike with you, it, uh, it does make you miss it a little bit, so... But you've been catching up with all the other bike racers as well. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, any, anything that you uh, you like telling us a little quiet secret? But what, come, on, what what have you got in the locker that you're not telling us at the moment? What, what, what you, what's your plans for next year? How quick can you go over in the states? Are you going to race in Europe next year? What, what's your plans? So the quickest I've gone so far in the states this year is a 404 over the eighth. Yeah. Um, Stuart at the moment with the European record. The European record was done with a 405. So we're both on the same gear in. I would like to say that, you know, we could have a hustle with each other with that performance. But at the moment, I'm concentrating on racing the eighth over there. Okay. So we don't know what it's going to do out the back door. Um, but it will be a big number. And, uh, and when I get to the eighth, racing over there and I shut off at the eighth, the quarter mile looks so close and the job's done. It's like, oh, I just want to hold it on, but I'll, I'll get nothing from it because yeah, there's no yeah. timing ticket after that. But yeah, uh, yeah the hard bit's done in the front half. And uh, yeah, you, you know, it, it's, it's up there with European um, record performance at the moment. We're going to lean on it again next week. It's the last, uh, well, next week, a couple of weeks' time, back out to Maryland. And uh, that's the last one of the XDA Championship for me. So we're going to push it and see what we can do. And then what are you going to do in the off-season? Because obviously uh, well, we've got the national finals the week after here, which uh, is obviously the, the last round of all of our bike and car classes. And we've finished racing here. You're saying that's your last trip to the States this year? For yep. that, for, uh, for the well, bike? I might possibly go to the Manufacturers' Cup. We're going to see what, oh, so what that was class we're running. So we may, but, uh, we may run the Man Cup in November, but yeah. uh, we'll see. We'll just see how it goes. And uh, So that may be the closing of my racing, maybe this next race that we go to or, or the Man Cup. Now, will the Man Cup still be eighth? Um, well, that all depends. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> <If> <laughs> we know we're on court there. So, the, um, so Pro Open got shut down to um, the eighth because tyres were coming apart um, in the back half when, when the Pro Extreme bikes were running the full quarter. But there is always a chance that, you know, if I ask the permission of it, they can turn the lights on for the backboard and we can go out the backboard if I choose to do so. So we'll see how we get. I mean, I want to concentrate on my front half. Uh, drag racing is won and lost in the front half, so mm. you get that right, and the back's given to you for free. Well, knowing you're the ultimate thrill ride seeker as well, um, I suppose, the, the, you know, the first half of the track, the eighth mark, as you say, where it all is, if you want to go, how can I put this? I'm not saying the second half of the track is boring. It's not, but all the excitement is in the, in the eighth. There's isn't? nothing left to do than sit on it. Yeah. I mean, we've got six gear changes in 3.6 um, seconds at wow. the moment. So I'm, in, I'm hooked sixth gear, in 3.6 seconds. I've got no more gears to go. It is just ride it out and keep it straight. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so well before the eighth, I'm actually in top gear, and we've got a long top gear to go out the back door. But uh, it's, it's got 230 mile an hour gear in, and I'm doing the eighth for about 183. So, um, yeah, it's got plenty left in it in that gear. But if you listen to Stuart go down there, when, uh, when he changes into sixth just before the eighth, that back gear just sounds like it's punishing that engine. But, yeah. But, uh, that's how they're geared. I mean, you must literally just have, if you're literally just clicking a finger, really, to, or thumb to, to Yeah, to so straight, gear, yeah. straight off the shift button, uh, straight off the two-step button, onto the shift button, and then bang, 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 bang. Yeah. You know, so it's that quick. Uh, and you've got to hang on at the same time yeah. with your arms trying to be dislocated from their sockets, <laughs> uh, which, Neil, <laughs> you experience as well in a different way because of the sheer amount of power yeah. uh, that the fuel bike gives you. I mean, that must really try and uh, extend your arms way longer than you were born with, you know, the ones that you've got. <laughs> that, that's it. I mean, I, I understand what Dale was saying, but on a fuel bike, it's the second eighth 
which get scary and you're working on is they, they don't stop pulling. Mm. That, that's the big difference. If a fuel bike is still pulling well over a jig all the way down the run, and then you've got the wind, it's a heavier bike for steering. So the second half of the track is when we're really working. Yeah. But Dale, um, you, you, would you have, have you ever ridden a fuel bike? I haven't. On not a yet. Quarter? Not yet. Right. I haven't ridden a fuel bike. Okay. Um, but I'll never say never do anything. Well, no, I know you wanted to get hold of Eric's rocket bike. Yeah, I know that was yeah, on that, your shopping list at one stage. But, <laughs> 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 but no, really good to see you both here as we get ready for FIM Europe. Mike <laughs> So, Martin Newbury and Jerome Rougemont from France. And uh, no, Jerome hasn't got a number on the board yet. Uh, Martin, number three at the moment with a 7.46. Uh, he is capable of going way quicker than that. But it's literally a case of getting all your ducks in a row. But extremely hot conditions out there for all of the bike riders. Uh, especially when they're wearing the black leathers as well. It just soaks up the heat, just makes them all very, very warm indeed. Yeah, Jerome did actually put in one run, well, tried to, unfortunately stopped on yeah. the racetrack, so I'm guessing a lot of work between then and now to get it ready for this qualifying session. Well, both been pulled over to the left, but staying in their lanes, 7.49 for Martin Newbury. Uh, no improvement what he'd already run, but Jerome gets an A to B run in 8.42 at 147 miles an hour. Which the crew look very happy with, yeah. which uh, when you come all the way from France... Aspen and Noble and Martin Bishop, your next pair. Yeah, we worked out the Bishop's been in pro stock. I reckon he's been there for about 25 years, actually. He was definitely on the entry list 22 years ago. I think when he started in, it was two stroke, wasn't it? <laughs> he, he, he did have a two stroke, two stroke pro stock. Is that right? I'm yeah. pretty sure he did, yeah. Yeah, that, it was a two stroke heads on a uh, four cylinder bottom end. Yeah. Is yeah. that right? F fast my gas, built. Goodness me. Legends, but yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a hard way to go fast, that does, <laughs> but there you this go. This class is a hard way to go fast, the whole class, you know, it's, it's pure engineering, just screaming the engines. Good looking run from the Bish, but is it going to be an improvement? Nope. No, it's an 8.05 at 170, and Aswin an 8.84. 152, yeah. Uh, Martin has been into the low sevens, one more. And he's been around in post up a long time to do it. So these two are the last two from France. I always think of this guy down here. He is the kind of guy that would be very successful at pro stock bike racing in America because he's small. He is like a jockey, isn't he, uh, Bertrand Maurice? He's a very, very slight guy. I think he's probably only about five foot three at the most. Probably weighs, I don't know, no more than 10 stone, I don't think. And why is weight critical in pro stock bike, fellas? It literally is just a, the power to weight ratio that they've got to get down. They all get a weight break. Um, they want to be as close down to that weight break as they can possibly be. But if you can actually be under that weight break, you can then put that weight to bring you up to the weight break in the right place. Okay. So the smaller you can be and go under the weight for the class, you then get to position the weight where the bike really wants it. Because you don't see a lot of big, tall, or um, what's the word I'm looking for, beefy pro stock bike riders <laughs> in America, do you? No, they're, 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 all, uh, they're all racing snakes, a lot of them, aren't they? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. Because you get an advantage of, if you can get that body weight down, you can then put the weight exactly where you want it. And that's what makes the difference, because it's all so close. Everything is so, so close together. Yeah. Um, but this guy's, done a, this guy's done a great, great job so far this summer. Bertrand Maurice. And he's going to be the champion. Um, we're missing Georges Leomont from this qualifying session, actually, unfortunately. Because Georg with the V-twin Buell, it was good to see a Buell back here again yeah. yesterday. Really good. So Bertrand, his quickest run so far. 
is the number one qualifying run of 7.28. Well, that was pretty. That was a 108 60 foot, which is just about all you want on a pro stock bike. That is also the quickest run of the weekend, 724, 183 miles an hour. Now, there are lots of bikes in the different classes that do have a lot more power, but it's yeah. just the way the pro stock has put them down that makes them go that quick. Yeah, I, I think the first few feet, they are the quickest moving, you know. They, they just get up and go and yeah. slam on the bars and off they go. And like you said, it's all about the 60 foot with pro stockers. Yeah. Um, if you, they can get off the line, then that's kind of job yeah. done, really, isn't it? So we have Super Twins up next, the class you were, well, I was going to say, not involved in for a long time, Neil, with the supercharged well, bike, yeah? I've still got it at home. Have you? Yeah, yeah the, blown, the blown twin's still in the garage. There was some thought about riding it in a couple of weeks' time, but I'm just not fit enough. Really? I'm sure Colin's not doing anything that weekend. Colin? No, I'm yeah. Might a little bit busy up here. Uh, I might be as well, don't <laughs> Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to ask that one. No, 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 I know. <laughs> Well, Martin de Haas, I had the uh, pleasure of speaking to him quickly down there on the start line earlier on. Um, managed to split a rod. I mean, you guys have seen lots of things. Yeah, oh. that was carnage. He, he destroyed that motor yesterday. It wasn't very nice, but they've obviously got it rebuilt. I put a spare engine in a nice rod, the, long, the length ways, top to bottom or bottom to top, however, you know, it's hard to know what went wrong first, isn't it? That was a bit brutal. So Martin de Haas looking for a good run. He hasn't got a time on the board at the moment. Love the explosion, in a good way, of course. That's a really strong run. 674, 183 miles an hour. Put your hands together for the team from the Netherlands. That was lots of work. I mean, Neil, you've had your fair share of uh, rebuilding those motors, haven't you? Or the V-twin. Oh, the, yeah, the, the blowing twin was a lot of work keeping it running. Yeah. Uh, I didn't actually do rods very often. Chris Hannon, when he was running it, we, we bent two rods into the engine. Yeah. That sort of damage. But that's V-twin racing. Yeah. It's not that unusual. No, where, whereas with your inline four top fuel bike, it was probably one of the most consistently reliable machines yeah, on the planet at that performance. Yeah, it, it is. We had a bit of engine trouble last year, but over the last five years, that has been the most reliable fuel bike that's run in the numbers. Without a doubt. In the interest of fair reporting, I don't think Rickard was too far behind either. No. But that just shows you that just shows you what having a well-tuned machine does. Oh yeah, there are, I, I strongly believe that the level of uh, top fuel racing in Europe is um, is right up there with the level of it in the world. You know, there's there's only a couple of people um, abroad uh, in the states that are near the performance of these guys, and then everything else dwindles away. So. You know, they're, they're on the world stage even when they're racing out here. And here we have Marcus testing a new Mickey Thompson back tyre that was stolen out of my trailer last week. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I, I hate to say this out loud, but I don't think you're getting it back. Yeah. Will well, it that's be what he said. Oh, my word! Wow. The quickest normally aspirated V-twin run in Europe ever. Actually, the quickest ever outside North America. 6.11, 207. You've lost that tyre. You've definitely <laughs> lost that tyre. Goodness me. If there was anyone that was going to do it, it was going to be Marcus. I, he's so consistently well, fast. We, we kind of wax lyrical about the whole team. Well, I say the whole team, two of them, uh, when you're up here before, Dale. Yeah. But again, world-beating performance yeah. on something that his dad came up with in his workshop is just yeah. bonkers. And in this weather to run that quickly as and well. And he rides it so clean, so neat, he makes it look so easy to ride. I, I had a good look, look round it at the top end when he came, uh, came round the corner. I was going to say came off, probably the wrong turn of phrase at the moment. But when he, when he came round the corner at the top end, there's loads of really neat little tricks and things that they've done with it to help with the aero, to help with the way it flows. The fact that both of the uh, exhausts from the cylinders are rooted on either side to help with the downforce and all of that. Yeah. It's all of that package together yeah. that just helps it do that. I, I, can't, I still can't believe anyone hasn't copied that. I don't get it. I don't get why nobody 
else in the world. These guys do it with the fuel bikes. You use downforce and, and, and yeah. lean back. And but, but, but there's things like, that's the only quick bike out here running carbon fiber wheelie bars to save weight. Yeah. And I'm actually talking to them about having a pair for them when the bike's really built. Good. It's, that's good to hear. But I mean... I'm <laughs> I do mean specifically for V-twins with the riding position. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing oh. else like that no. anywhere. I've never seen anything like you it. Know, he sits on it like a pro stock bike. Uh, 100%. It looks like a long pro stock bike. It looks like a nitro pro <laughs> stock bike almost, <laughs> isn't it, really? So, two supercharged four-cylinder machines. Sorry, one, three, one, four. Nearly got it wrong. <laughs> Rene van der Berg completely destroyed the engine. Did you guys get to see anything of what was let off? It was nasty. It burst out the side and uh, oiled the whole of the racetrack. It was, uh, it was a bad one. Good to see Rene out here today. Up against Al Smith. Uh, your good friend Al Smith, Neil? Yep. Oh, you yep. know Al really well? Well, both of my friends, that's the good thing about the class. It's a very friendly class to race in. Yep, everyone helps each other because you all know how damn difficult it is to do, basically. Great looking run for Al, keep it going sir. 6.29 at 2.16, not quite as quick as he'd been, but again, after all the grief, I'm sure they'll take that. 105 to 60 foot, 409 at 184 to the eighth. And a real nice clean run, 6.29 at 2.16. Uh, Rennie was a bit off pace from the hit, 1.15 to 60 foot. What you said about uh, top fuel bikes as well, they're really hard to get moving, aren't they? But you don't seem to have that problem. Well, <laughs> I've got the fastest 60 foots in the world of any top fuel bike. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, so bear in mind you're on the second quickest bike. That might not be too far <laughs> off. But, but, um, <laughs> but at the same time, yeah, because they're so heavy, why, why is it they're so difficult to get moving? What is it about the package that makes it difficult? It's also that... It's the way the fuel systems work. Now, if you look at the turbo bikes, they're spinning the engine hard on the start line. Okay. And so, so the pro stop bikes, but the blown top fuel bikes, they're at tick over. So when you hit the throttle, you've got to get the fuel pressure up, you've got to get the fuel spray right. Yeah. There's so many things that have, and they're because heavy they're, bikes, and there's a lot they're to from get idle. moving. Yeah. yeah, and to get them shifting. So. Back in your room, Dale. Two yeah. funny bikes, two great funny bikes as well. Yeah, so we've got Kawasaki um, Turbo in the right, and the Suzuki Hayabusa in the left. Um, Eric's been pretty fast, but um, Mike Ollie is, is progressing with his bike quite well, and uh, we'll see how they get on. Well, he's been in the 60s, which, as you know, can take a while to oh, get there. Oh, definitely, yeah. Great looking run from Eric again. Does he ever put his foot back on the peg? I, I reckon he, he gets through boots like anything. He's tiptoed <laughs> on them at all time. Not 6.5, it's not bad. No, work. That's pretty much what he ran yesterday. 6.58, 1.95. Good run for Mickey Olli. Uh, 6.93, very similar kind of speed as well, 1.94. Yeah. So you, you blokes have both ridden these bikes. Um, I mean, to anyone looking at it, why would you not put your feet back on the pegs? I don't quite follow the logic of I, I leave with my feet on the pegs and I do the whole job <laughs> with my feet on the pegs oh, I don't want them anywhere else I, yeah. don't, I don't know I'm, I'm the same I, yeah. I, yeah the first thing is I get my feet back on the pegs yeah. you, you can use pressure on the pegs to steer the bike I think I think Eric's is a is a habit because the old chassis that he had the way that it sat him on the bike and everything like that he'd done it for so long um, I just don't think he can get it out of his head but uh, he seems to get it doesn't, up, right? it it doesn't make any difference does it, it? Works it doesn't for seem him. to anyway yeah <laughs> Right, if your name is Neil Midgley, look away now. That's another one of my big tyres. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. He, he had one as well. <laughs> <laughs> so basically... I'm the only one with tyres left, so they've all got my tyres on there. <laughs> That's what happens when you leave your trailer at his <laughs> workshop, isn't it? He raids it. <laughs> That's not great. So, uh, so if these are both on it, you will see that the, you know, the funny bike may well stick with him to the eighth. If he gets the whole shot on him, it's the back half when the fuel bike may pull past. But uh, all depending on what they run, if he gets out the hole, it will look like you know, that he may get a bike length on him. Hopefully, mate, uh, hopefully that might even stick all the way down. The funny thing is that the guy in the other lane spent ages on oh. a funny bike, yeah. in top fuel bike. And... Uh, 
the stew that nicked the record off it. Oh, yeah, I, without a doubt, uh, Rickard was the funny white king of Europe, you know. No, nobody For was as consistent time. as that man. For a long, long time. Until he gave in and built a fuel bike, which is what we're waiting for Stu Crane to do. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Rickard might not even catch him. What a run for both of them. 6.37. At 2.14. <laughs> He'll be happy with that. Quickest run of the weekend, and it looks like it's in one piece, which is the most important thing. Uh, rather off pace for Rickard, though. 6.3. Um, he, he hurt a piston yesterday, and they okay. found a small problem in the fuel system this morning. So whether he hasn't cured it all until I go down and speak to him, I don't know. But... Well, Stu Crane is going to frame that timing ticket because he outran Rickard on the fuel bike, <laughs> I think, on a full run as well. So what, just, just very quickly again, Dale, what's Stu trying to do with that machine? I mean, that, that's phenomenally quick for that kind of bike. So the ultimate goal, obviously, Billy Vose is the fastest man on the funny bike in the world with a 6.05. The ultimate goal would be to surpass Billy with that. Um, what was his short time numbers on that? Is well, I was just going to say, I don't want to make your day worse, but... You know what you said? You run as quick as 404. Yeah, so four, you went 403. 403. So, so you know kind of what yours might run if it went out the back door. So t t technically speaking, he, he's lost a little bit in the back half there. To go to 403, he didn't have the mile an hour. So usually Stuart would be over 181 mile an hour um, with a 405. Okay. So he's lost a little bit of mile an hour there, which hasn't given the punch out the back door. But um, with a 403, he, he could be down in the 618, 617 sort of range. So I think he'll be looking at that back half now um, to it's, improve it, on that. It's probably weather conditions aren't helping. The, yeah. There's not a lot of air out there for these sort of engines. Yeah. Well, we're just going to have a quick um, clean in the Kestrel Lane after that run by Rickard. Yeah, I've got lots actually for you here. Where you go? Um, I've been messaging one person in particular. His name is Chris Hannam. Don't know him. No, you never heard of him. <laughs> right, OK. No, he's, not, he's not famous enough. He, he, no, 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 no. <laughs> he messaged me to say, never thought I'd see the day that you get Neil in commentary. Well done. Uh, so I basically replied, so Chris, cheers, Chris. He's actually pretty good at it. <laughs> he says, I know I'm watching it laughing. So, uh, yeah, uh, very good afternoon to you, Chris. Well, uh, Chris, Chris's only job is having a lot to say, and you're surprising <laughs> him. So, you know. <laughs> Uh, we have uh, obviously a lot of work to do uh, in the cash trade. The other thing that I have just picked up on, um, we've had some programs added into the tower over the course of the weekend. Angie Woods and also we had some from Dan Page from the John Morton uh, collection of programs that he had. And I've got one here from the European finals 19 years ago. This is the 2004 program of the European finals. UEM drag bikes. Neil Midgley representing GB. The two-time ACU funny bike champion is always a threat to the big guys on the fuel bikes. Midgley runs consistently in the high sixes at 190 mile an hour, plus best figures of 673 at 198. In the past, Midgley has reached the semi-finals. That's 19 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's about time I retired. No, 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 no. no. How long did your British record stand for? It was ridiculously long, wasn't it? I don't know. It was a long, long time before the funny bikes came back and... Uh, and, and took the record, but Neil Neil's name was up there for a long, oh, long, time. long, long time. It's once, as, as we all know, once that racing's in your blood, you just cannot get rid of it, no matter what you try and do. And uh, but uh, it's, I've got to say thank you, obviously, to Angie Woods and also to uh, Dan Page for dropping these programs. I think it'd be a really good source of information. Guest comes up, and go, let's go back, see how far we can find them. But uh, uh, obviously, you've been racing well before uh, the uh, the 2004 European finals. When did you actually start racing? <sighs> I'm not sure. Um, Super Street Bike would have been my first really competitive bike, and that was probably 89, somewhere around wow. then. Wow. I was British champion that year or the year after. Yeah. Well, it's, that, it's, that just goes to show you, it's, it's just never left you. I mean, I can't believe a 24-year-old lad like yourself has been <laughs> racing for all this length of time. <laughs> but no, it's great. Um, so, similar question, actually, Dale. Um, can you remember your first uh, journeys down the quarter mile or two uh, wheels? 2008. Right, so we've yeah. got to find a little bit of a later programme uh, <laughs> for you. Right, but uh, no, that is really, really good. Um, <sighs> I'm just, I'm just so chuffed to have you guys up here, actually, because it's added so much uh, colour to the commentary. Um, 
I can't wait to see what you're going to perform next, Dale, when you go over to States. We do watch what you do on the social media because you do yeah. like almost post after, after every run, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, give a bit of feedback so guys at home, because the coverage isn't that great out there. So, uh, yeah, just give everybody at home like, the heads up on what we've been doing. But um, we will lean on it at the next meeting. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll go for it and see what we can do. Yeah. Well, whilst we're gassing away up here, we've got Dan, the man who can, down there with a T-shirt cannon. Um, he's just going to fire some T-shirts into the crowd. And uh, don't forget, we have still got Super Street Bike uh, to come up next. Uh, another qualifying session, and their penultimate qualifying session. Of course, all of the uh, other bikes that have just run, they've got one more qualifier to go. And obviously uh, in the uh, second pro session of the day. So Dan the man, he's down there with that T-shirt cannon. You've got to shout real loud if you want a T-shirt coming your way. Now Dan will point one direction and ask you to cheer. Grandstand, cheer if you want it coming your way. Or on the spectator banking, you've got to shout like mad if you want it to come your way. So Dan is uh, standing in the middle, literally by the Santa Pod boards in the middle of the track. We're going to fire one over. Watch out in the trader area behind the grandstand, just in case he gets it all wrong. Oh, fumble. <laughs> That's right, just looking at our uh, track team, there is a fair old amount of work to be uh, done out there, actually. As when you see as that many of them. Uh, that's pretty much the whole quarter mile. Right, you've got a cheer on the banking if you want it coming your way. Where's it going to go? Wave like mad, if you can. Right, Dan's going to fire one in. Eyes peeled to the front. Whoa, where's that gone? It's truth. Uh, that was obviously uh, a lot of pressure in the canister to fire that one that far. Uh, probably ended up in the fairground or on, uh, on the roof of Sasha's diner around the back there. Oh, Dan is wondering which way to go. You've got to cheer like mad if you want it to come your way. Oh, yes, the, the grandstand... A cheering like mad. They want it to go their way. The people on the banking are all woken up as well. And that's oh, about four rows from the top. Watch out on the uh, the banking as uh, Dan is going to fire one in. He's staying pretty close to the centre line now, actually, as he realises that he's got a fair bit of uh, extra pressure in that gas canister that powers the T-shirt uh, the cannon. And that's gone just past halfway up the banking. Right, time now, 2.15 in the afternoon here. Uh, 15 minutes time, it will be the second of the two live action arena shows this afternoon. So 15 minutes, uh, live action arena will start up and you've got Terry Grant, Lee Bowers, uh, Podzilla is around there. And uh, you know, we'll obviously the monster trucks there and Team Maximum Lock as well. Watch out on the grandstands, here comes one your way. Right, so Dan is now actually walking over to the back. Oh, no, he's actually going to fire one in the grandstands low. They still went up to the top of the grandstand, even almost being over the, uh, the wall on Bankside. He's making his way up about 200 foot up the racetrack now. Mm -hmm. 
You got a cheer. One's coming in. Didn't even see where that went. Uh, we've had requests that you go to half track, Dan. I know it's a bit of a sponsored walk, but uh, people on the banking at half track would like a T-shirt. Dan going to drop one into the ground. No, he's he switched around to the banking. So Dan's going to drop another one into the grandstand. The thing is, though, he's, he's just a silhouette of a man out there at the moment because the sun is so bright, we can't actually see where he's actually going now. The sun is actually glistening off the racetrack. So uh, quite difficult to see where he's going. But uh, oh, they're going up to around about 3.30 blocks now. Pretty much the end of the grandstand. Still going to file them into the uh, spectator banking. Meanwhile, our track crew is still working on the Kestrel beer lane to get that ready for continued action here at the European finals. It's like the race track itself is good. It's a shut down area now they're just working on. Another one coming into the grandstands. Wave like mad. Oh no, he switched round. He likes confusing us. Is he gonna go? Yeah, he's gonna go bank side, I think. He's he's crouching down. He's gonna fire one in now. There it goes. Didn't quite see where that landed. The projectile made its way into the crowd somewhere. Too far away to me to see where it actually... And he's run out of ammunition. Oh, Brett, I am sorry, mate. Once again, so near yet so far. <laughs> but there's Dan the Man Who Can with the T-shirt cannon. Oh, I think he's got one. Has he got one left? No, drop another one in. This is his last one, I think. Which way is he going to go? Okay, he's out of ammunition. Give Dan the man who can a cheer. Well done, Dan. Well done to Dan. That is a hot day to be doing that. Mind you, it's a hot day being on the spectator bank, and we appreciate that. Uh, very, very warm indeed. It's got to be north of 30 degrees this afternoon out there. Um, our actual weather app says it's actually 30 degrees. I bet it feels warm because that's 30 degrees in the shade, don't forget. So if you're in direct sunlight, obviously a lot warmer. Uh, we've got all of our Super Street bike racers tucked in behind the tower. They've just parked up there to try and stay in the shade. That is the pure reason uh, why they are there. And then obviously we've got the uh, junior drag bikes around the back as well. Just for a moment, I just want to give the airwaves over to Nitro FM 96.2. We will be back with you very, very shortly indeed as uh, we get ready for the next part of our afternoon here at the European Finals. It is 96.2 Nitro. FM.
Beautiful, 555, 260 miles an hour, and a huge sigh of relief from everybody on the crew. Where does that put her in qualifying Third. as well, by the way? That Third. actually gets... Lots of tyre shake from Silvio Strange, but they're side by That's side. That's great for Tony, 542, 262 miles an hour. They do look... Uh, pretty pleased with that. Um, give me 10 seconds. Shaking tie spin for Johnny Oxer, but Sandro is long gone. Uh, 5.55 and 262. <laughs> Looked like he had the shoots out early, but he must have been bang on the finish line, because 262, I think, is top speed of the meet for uh, the methanol funny cars. However, crucially, crucially, I think it's Lynn. Well, you can hear the tyre shake, but he's lovely and straight now. That's more like it with a 6.72, 205 miles an hour. I think after all the work, the grief. Put your hands together for the whole team. Whoa, lots of tyre shake for Michael Malgram. That was huge. Stefan goes, set 6.70. Yeah. No improvement, but... Quick of the round, three mm. points. That's what they'll be thinking about. Nice job. Yeah, bizarrely, he improves by a hundred, but stays put. So the Maltese long. Oh, that really did rattle the tyres, and then they went into spin. The revs shot up, and Duncan had no choice but to back out of that run. Yeah, that was a, a big paddle out there before 60 foot. Um, once again, put your hands together for the Monster Energy team. Four oh seven plays a four sixty five, but they were both well and truly on it off the line. Point eight five to sixty foot to a point eight six for Suzanne. Uh, two eighteen to two twenty three at three thirty. Turns the fuel onto the high side, moves into stage. Makes a move for the centre line, but he's got it covered. Ooh. That was real close to the centre line. He just clicked it off in time, but that was a good-looking run. Um, give us some short numbers quickly, please, Point gents. 2, 60 foot, 345 and 229 at the 8. That's my fault for being caught on the wrong side of the ice track. Dave, quickly. Very, very quickly, mate. Um, well, finally, finally, third time. Nitro right. Funny Car, your second pair. Well, Patrick double stepped it off the start line. I'm not sure whether that was shake-related. Kevin gets in the show. Yeah, uh, a really nice launch. Okay, bikes, we are back with uh, qualified session number three, Super Street Bike. 12 bikes looking at a bump spot for an eight bike filled, I do believe, subject to confirmation. However, there is no bump spot on the gantry, which is normally a good sign that maybe all run. So, Christian Yads and Ricardo Grower. Do you know what's really what's wrong with my eyesight? I'm standing up here, probably eight foot away from that monitor, and I can read that one better than that one. <laughs> That's really not ideal, is it? Anyway. So, Christian's currently number nine. I'm not sure that's going to improve him either. He tested on Wednesday and went 680s a number of times. 741.88, 7.63 for Ricardo. Actually, that moves him up one spot. That is an improvement at 122. So these bikes on a street tyre. Neil, any, um, you've ridden a lot of stuff as well, haven't you, over the years? Well, let's say I, I started on Super Street Bike. Okay. But in my day, we didn't have all the electronics. So I had a 1500cc, not a bike. And it was born, it was a ride, it had to ride it. These nowadays have got so much electronic control, it's sort of like a different sport. 
I'm not saying it's easier or worse, but it's more down to the tuning yeah. than the rider. I was just going to say, out. so uh, official folks, Neil Midgley called Super Street Biker Riders a bunch of wussies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, brave man, brave man. Oh. No, that was me putting words in his mouth. And I think actually, anyway, uh, just kidding, of course. Uh, Eric Gruber, we haven't seen Eric or Clements Rallier here for some time. Oh, uh, fuel injected ECU's changed this class, didn't it? You know. Yeah. Seven thirty-four. Excuse me for Clements. One hundred ninety-one miles an hour. Uh, he'd actually run uh, previously. My eyes have gone. Yeah. Seven, actually, that was his quickest run. Excellent stuff. Sorry, chaps. Yeah. So, there, are, there, are there many different combinations still in Super Street Bike? Or is there? There's like only really one way to win, which is the turbo methanol route, is it? Yeah, not yeah. I mean, if you're at the top of the game, it's turbo methanol, um, ECU controlled, and uh, you know they've they've not got a control tire, but the tire to run now is a Dunlop. That has really changed the performance. And what is amazing is the terminal speeds that you're seeing up on them boards. By the time the centrifugal force has grown in that tire, it has a contact patch of around about an inch width uh, going through that back end. That's what amazes me. And it's not a, lot, not a lot to start with either. It's like the palm of your hand, pretty it's much. It's not, but it? the tyre pressure is low, so it sits down, squashes the tyre. It's all absorbed within that suspension to get that to work. Um, and that's where these bikes really, really, you know, go. So, so um, Al Morrison Jr. has been 230 miles an hour on a contact patch, like one square inch, pretty much. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. My God. But we used to see the grudge bikes in the States would run with no board switched on and big betting and everything like that. They used to run with a seven inch slick um, in a grudge bike. Now they could still do that now, but nobody does it. They're all on these tires. Really? Because these are the mile an hour makers. You know, okay. if you've got less contact patch up the top, but you can still get grip, you're going to make mile an hour. You've got less friction, you've got less traction. So it is slowing them down with lots of grip. Is that right? Well, yeah. So with a bigger yeah. tyre, if they have a bigger tyre. Yeah, without a doubt. So. My goodness me. Morgan's Lynn, Ross Morrison. Morgan's absolutely overjoyed yesterday's first full run of the season, I think he said. Back into the sixes. We're the 698. 702 has been Ross Morrison's best. Can they both plug it in the sixes this time? Good looking launches for both of them. 117.60 60 foot for Ross Morrison. And a 7.30 at 187 at the top end, not quite what he was looking for. Morgan's unfortunately, uh, another busted run sadly. And that's what I'm talking about. Back, back in the day, you'd have been happy with a 117 on a bard bike, you know. Um, so the way that technology's moved on, the suspension has moved on. That's um, real quick even for a super street bike. Yeah, yeah, that that's, is, that's really hauling. So two of the state-of-the-art bikes from the UK. Jake Michelle in the Kestrel Lane and Steve Venables in the Slick Tricks Lane. Both of these capable of taking the number one spot, which is currently 6.72. 1.20 to 60 for Jake. 6.76, 216 miles an hour, very close to his personal best. And he's now your number two qualifier, actually. 7.09 rolled out the throttle early for Steve Venables. Yeah, he was a little bit behind Jake at every increment down there. So Al Morrison went from number one yesterday. He's now down to number three with a 6.77. It's phenomenal. Six, uh, 677, 676, all that. To be number two, um, if you'd have said that a, f a few years back, you'd just be laughing, you know. That's, that's well, absolutely. Steve ran the first six, didn't he, at the, at, uh, at the, at the European finals. I can't six remember what 66. year. Uh, no, sorry, six, oh, the oh, first six, six, nine, six, first six second pass, round, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Al Morrison Jr. looking to take back the number one spot at the Kestrel Lane from the guy in the other lane, Daniel Lentz. These two have been head-to-head -head all season. One of them is going to go home with the European Super Street Bike Championship. That's a beautiful looking run for Al Morrison Jr. 6.75 at 2.19. Uh, Danny sloughed the start a little bit, but see, was still at 6.24 at 2.22. But Al Morrison Jr. reclaims the number two spot from, that Jake Michelle just nicked from him. Yeah. So, uh, fantastic side by side racing. So, what made you go from, uh, Neil, what made you go from Super Street Bike onto where you are now, Top Fuel Bike? Well, I went, I went from super street bike to funny bike. Okay. Um, really, 
back in the day, th th there was a lot more people making those sort of progressions that it was seen that a slick and wheelie bar bike was a higher bike than the street bikes. However. But <laughs> as I say, in those days it was, that now it's not. If you speak to most of these super street bike riders, they say there's the it, ultimate yeah. class and you can't really argue with that with what they're doing. I'd love so, to see personally what one of those engines would do in a slick and a wheelie bar bike, but from what you said, it may not be any different, well, really, or much different. Well, that is pretty much Eric Ricard. Yeah. You know, that, he's is that super, right, yeah? yeah, it's super, super street set up there. The engine's the same, the turbo system's the same, so yeah. So, junior drag bike, Richard Wilcox and Alia Lester. Richard is actually your number one qualifier, looking for 9.54, goes 9.43, racing over the eighth mile, qualifying over the eighth mile, I should say, for eliminations tomorrow. So, we've just got a couple more of the bikes to go. Um, I know you're a big fan of the juniors, Dale, um, especially the junior yeah, drag bikes, obviously. Yeah, the beginning, the beginning of the uh, journey for them guys, isn't it? You know, me, we're, we're getting old. So, um, Speak for yourself. So, in the future, you know, the, the, these will be the, the names <laughs> on the top fuel. I think, you'll like, street bikes. I think you'll only ever quit when you run out of bones to break. Mm -hmm. like it, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, a good friend of mine once said, I've, I've, stopped riding, I've stopped riding trials bikes because I've got no more organs to donate to medical science. I think I've <laughs> run out on the damn things, which is kind of unfortunately true. Yeah, he was a bit of a... Anyway, never mind, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, <laughs> Harry Isaacs and Jackson King this time round. Harry looking for 13 seconds. They're trying to run their dial into the eighth mile. The actual eight mile mark is the second block of those two at half track. 13.33, 13.25. No improvement for either of them. Yeah, he was nuts. He, he, went, he went to a quarry and then complained because he had to pay for an air ambulance because he, he, he took a flying leave off of one of them and didn't actually look before we... Yeah, whatever, anyway. Sounds like... That was the first time I ever met him on crutches, that was. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think he was ever off for years after that. Anyway, um, PJ, if you're listening, I hope you're doing well and you're still intact, mate. <laughs> So, Liam Morrison and Anouk Bergerin from Hemskirk in the Netherlands. Last couple of pairs of bikes before we got two-seater, uh, jet cars, and then we're back to sportsman racing, folks. For a little while, obviously. Good-looking lead for Leah, point one zero. Twelve oh nine. And uh, 14 0 2. Actually, Anouk moves off the bump spot. She moves up to number six with that run. So, your last pair with the juniors. Uh, just before more, we move on to two for, to four wheels, I beg your pardon, which I know will be no interest to you, fellas, no. of course. <laughs> no, nah, there we are. As Jerry Collier once said to me, and the stage names in Oakland, I'm cars of a bloody shopping. <laughs> which I think is probably sums up the mentality of most bikers quite well, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone would agree, of course, but, yeah. you know. It's the way it goes, isn't it? But thank you very much for your help, chaps. And, uh, yeah, no, thanks. And Neil, okay. it is, it's amazing to see all of Neil Midgley um, in one piece. That was... Um, yeah. Yeah. Horrible. Just not good, obviously. Well, I, I was knocked out, so I didn't... You didn't know other about people it. Had it worse. Chris <laughs> Hannan, we phoned up. He actually had it worse <laughs> as my crew chief because he was going down speaking to the medics and they wouldn't talk to him. So I was out cold on the track and... That's no worry to me. You were having a great time, weren't you? Uh, well, Alia Lester gets into number eight with that one. Holly King up to number six um, with an 8.29 on a 20. That was a really good looking run for Holly. Yeah, I was just going to say, if you're completely, um, well, if you're completely out of it, you ain't bothered about much at all, are you? Let's I face mean, it. I half remember the run, yep. and then I remember waking up in hospital. <laughs> I'll tell you what, most of Dale's days start. Sounds like, like a good, really sounds like good weekend. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, there we are. so Dale's rubbing his hands together going, where do I sign no, up? It's, it's where do I sign After that accident, it's great to see Neil up here and like he is. I mean, the people out there in the crowd can't see, but you wouldn't know this man fell off a top fuel bike a few weeks back. And, uh, uh, and and that's the most important thing. Metal can be refixed as, as much as it does hurt. And that's the pocket, but uh, you know, it's good to see Neil. As <laughs> Well, I think you hurt yourself more falling off a ladder than he did falling off oh, a yeah. bike, done, didn't he? Yeah. I've done all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you haven't got if you haven't got a limp, we think it's the wrong bloke. Yeah, yeah, something like I've that. I've done all right. This time, touch wood. No, no, <laughs> don't, don't, don't. You still got one more race to get to, mate. Don't worry. It's not usually the racing that does it; it's the other stupid <laughs> stuff between. So. Anyway, thank you both very, very much indeed. Yeah, just before you guys go, go. Uh, I just wanted to ask you one thing. Um, Graham Sykes with the steam bike. 
Uh, he's actually coming up very shortly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so he's going to be tucked in behind the. Oh, but you can't. Please stay there. So please yeah, stay yeah. for the steam. Oh, bike. Yes. Did you get a chance to watch this at all yet? I oh. have not seen it in the flesh. Neither have I. No. It's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, the number that he ran last night was just absolutely jaw dropping. I mean, he's in the low sixes, and to coin a phrase, he runs out of steam at the eight. Well, it's a totally different way that he's doing it to yeah. what Eric reco um, uh, Eric um, used to do it because. Uh, Eric would use uh, hydrogen peroxide where he's using just super heated water. Yes. So just, he's heat, just heated water. Just water. Yeah. yeah. I did have a theory on that, which because he's a Yorkshireman, that he was boiling it's the kettle, kettle one day and thought, ah, <laughs> brilliant idea. But uh, oh, he didn't seem to like that idea too much. But anyway, um, two seater rides. Not sure who's in there this time, Colin. I think this so. is the fifth run of the day, actually. Uh, I've actually lost track of how many uh, runs that he's done. Uh, now, actually, that's his fourth one. That's Ashley Eckersley from Bolton. It's his 50th birthday gift, that one. So, a uh, really good way to enjoy the birthday there. So, yeah, we do have the uh, Fire Force team down here. And I'm just looking around the corner to see where... Um, I'm sure Graham's around there. He's uh, where he is as such, because he does have the mothership. They've the probably not done, no, Neil, they've not done this because Graham's coming around here. Mm -hmm. uh, the last time I come up here, Fire Force was uh, coming underneath, and unless you've sat in here while Fire Force is going, it's, it's more petrifying I than sitting yet. on the bike. It's horrible. Oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Drag racing, the gift that keeps yeah. giving. Yeah, dear me. <laughs> Dale Leak's afraid of jet cars quote. <laughs> yeah, dear me. What, um, what I will say about the steam bike, I've been looking at all the short numbers and everything in it. So Amazing. everyone's seeing the board that's going on, the, the number that's going on the back um, uh, across the quarter mile. But actually, he is, coined the phrase, all out of steam before he gets there. So it's actually the eighth mile that I'm looking at, at the numbers he's running, and they're getting phenomenal. You know, they're getting faster. I, I, faster I think they're now on. as quick or just quicker than the fuel bikes. Yeah. I, think, I think he's now maybe He's about just, on it. He's about, about there. Per, Yep. Same as me, or a bit That's quicker it. over the eight. Yeah. 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 However, it does run, can't keep saying that, but runs out of steam um, just before the eighth mile. So the speed drops off slightly. The ET obviously doesn't because it's got no, um, it's got no drag. It's not, wheel, it's not wheel driven. So it doesn't slow down. There's no mechanical deceleration at all, yeah. anything like that. So as you get uh, Martin Hill in position with Fire Force number five, the Jet Dragster. And. Uh, Martin being very, very busy this weekend indeed, obviously running the two jets, Fire Force 3, the funny car, and of course Fire Force number 5, the jet dragster. This has been very, very low fives, uh, but uh, not bizarrely, um, what Martin really, really likes with this car is a bit of a headwind. It just helps the jet to suck in more, en more uh, air which uh, gives it more thrust, which actually makes it go faster. Um, rather bizarre thing, you would normally say that a headwind would slow things down, but actually gives it more power, which actually does make it go quicker. So Martin is in position, and the Fire Force support transit van, uh, that alone has now become legendary. Uh, we have an event up here called Transit Mania, and uh, uh, that van actually is uh, part of uh, you know, the, the Ford crowd, if you like. But uh, it's the jet that everybody here has come to see. And uh, as I say, we are not far away uh, for having, hopefully, Graham Sykes come around the corner uh, with the steam bike. So Martin is just getting himself set, just having a look at the crew down there. We just need to attach what I like to call the umbilical cord. I have got a full breakdown on how they start this thing up, but I'll tell you what, they're already there. So as Richie takes his customary position out the front of the jet. And I say, uh, Dale has experienced this up here before, but this will be uh, Neil's first experience of a jet car up in the tower and literally as soon as he does the first half and burn apart I reckon he'll put the head specs on because <laughs> you realise it's quite loud. You can't hear us at all at the moment because he's got the cans on. <laughs> There you go. 
And as if it's not warm enough, uh, <laughs> it's, someone's just turned the heating on up in the tower. This is what you need, a bit of extra heat on a day like today. just to bring the car up to the line. Here we reach your wave, because here goes Martin Hill, Fire Force number five, to a five second run when he gives it everything. How about a 547 at 285 miles an hour? Not bad at all. To say the least. Anyway. Well, they're just getting on board the transit and uh, they'll go and collect from Martin, collect Martin from the top end. There goes Richie. And as, uh, as they go by, give him a bit of a cheer. Or a lot of us here. Now, again, I don't know if you see guys have seen how he does, does this as well. It's not like uh, it's not like Eric just pushes the bike out. The five horse team, everybody. We have got Graham Sykes coming round from behind the tower with a steam rocket bike. Now, have you ever seen a vehicle be brought to the start line quite like that before? That's how I want mine brought to the start line. That'd be great, <laughs> wouldn't it? Really, really good. Well, it's all about the. Um, so he can't take it, I was talking to him yesterday, can't take it much further than about seven or 800 foot because the vessel he's got with the steam to, uh, to make the steam isn't big enough yeah. to take him any further than that. But he wants to be, his goal is to be the first steam vehicle over 200 miles an hour. Now, if he gets to the eighth mile in 3.71, I think the speed was like down, 176 miles an hour. I'm pretty sure he was probably doing 200 mile an hour before he even got there if yeah. you know what I mean um, the other thing that was really impressive yesterday his 60 foot was a 0.95 yeah. it actually almost looked like it took off and the way that it releases the steam it's almost like there's a proper boom as he lets it go and lets all the pressure go and then well I was going to say it's a rocket from there on in yeah. so I think um, I had the details yesterday Colin I'm not near them at the moment so yours are more in depth than mine actually um, they I've are indeed totally different they are uh, indeed I might got. need my glasses as well sorry about that all right Thank but you. one thing I can tell you before Daryl tells you about the bike is the mothership itself uh, again that is a complete piece of engineering from Graham himself it started life unbelievable unbelievably as a hospital bed that's where it actually came from. There is not much. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why that's so funny. No, but it is. It's what me. started as a hospital bed. There is only a few pieces of the mechanism in the middle that's actually original from the hospital bed. The rest of it has all been adapted and machined and designed by Graham. Yeah, it's, um, it's a work of art. It's, it's just a, a complete engineering masterpiece. I'm sure uh, the two gentlemen sitting to my left will be... Um, yeah, on board with that. So it started out in 2012. Uh, it's called the force of nature because obviously steam is a kind of natural product. Um, heats the water to 250 degrees centigrade and a pressure of 40 bar, which is kind of like a lot anyway. Um, and the bike pushes against the saturated steam throughout the run, which is 60 times denser than air. The water expands at a rate of 1600 to one and pushes the nozzle away, propelling the bike forward. Paradoxically, 
The more water heavy the bike is on the line, the faster it will accelerate as the G-force acts on the mass of the water. Uh, it pulls somewhere between 3 and 4 G off the start line. Again, something you chaps are probably fairly used to, I should think. Um, it, 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 again, his, a cool, well, like when I actually was sent this, this is all the information on the bike, his quickest 60 foot was 1.32. It's now, yesterday, he went 0.95, 60 foot. His quickest eighth mile then, well, anyway, yesterday was 3.71, I think, wasn't it? Something like that. It is just a work of art. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the one, the only, Mr. Graham Sykes and the force of nature, Steam Rocket Machine. I was speaking to Graham about the bike, and he was saying, like, that obviously, the amount of water that they use, they, they're losing 25 kilos of weight every second across the run as well, which obviously helps with improving the run. Um, but he'll get to a certain point with, like you said, the vessel that he's got on there that he cannot go no more because of the volumes. Now, there's no actual build-up. There's no pre-thrust. There's, no, there's nothing at all. We literally just wait for Graham to give us a nod of the head, and then we'll give him the traditional Santa Pod 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 countdown, and then you shall go at the top of your lungs. You really do. Okay, so everybody's going to step back. It will just be steam coming out of the back of the bike. And so we wait for the nod from Graham Sykes, and we'll count him down. Well, uh, another quick fact as well. It takes four to five hours to heat 100 litres of water to operating temperature to make a run. So not a quick turnaround and a lot longer than a kettle. But there we go. So Graham positioning himself in stage. Hopefully we're going to get the thumbs up in a minute. We will give him the countdown five to one. And then when you yell go, boy, will he go. Okay, okay here we go then. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Oh. Out of steam way before the eighth mile. <laughs> oh my goodness me, that's 60 foot. 0.91 to 60 foot through the finish line. 6.30 at only, only 161 miles an hour. 0.917 to 60 foot. 2.36 to 3.30. His quickest ever to the eighth mile. 3.63 at 176 miles an hour. But you can see where he was out of steam before yeah. the eighth mile. It is phenomenal. It almost jumps off the ground. It as does. It, lays. it goes it boom, is. such an explosion as it goes. Neil, what does that compare to, uh, that eighth mile time compared to the fuel bike really on song? So that's a 3.6. That, that's, that's quicker. I'm, I'm not sure what my quickest is, but mine, I think it's a 3.6. Seven four something like that, but I'm doing 211 mile an hour. Yeah, and uh, pulling. Say, yeah. yeah, but you say he, he's running, he's out of path there then. Yeah. So, so now he's running a quicker 60 foot than I run. Yeah. So basically he's he, he's now quicker than the fuel bike up to the point where it runs out of power just before the eighth. Yeah, that is mad. It's phenomenal with water. <laughs> with e eco-friendly eco-friendly <laughs> drag racing how does that how does that work hey okay. um, but yeah no, that was absolutely fantastic for graham um I'm, the only thing is i'm not entirely sure how much quicker he can take it with what he has in place on the bike at the moment but it's still nonetheless unbelievably impressive well, it's a long winter isn't it so. yeah if you get the <laughs> winter is long summer is short so, make a bigger uh, vessel that's the one but uh, anyway they're just going to go and uh, clean the water off the track it gives it a nice wash actually probably cools it down slightly uh, too yeah but it won't take long because that water is evaporating already because of the sheer amount of heat out there the hottest day of the year and that water is not going to take long to clear away at all now we i think we can let our guests go and you can go and get hot outside now but I'm cheers guys <laughs> we really really appreciate you coming to see us in the tower thank yeah, you very much thank back you. at q4 if you feel you like to uh, it'd be good to see you guys again but thank you ever so much Adine. and uh, Neil, really, really good to see you. Uh, Dale, you're always welcome, you know that. Thank so you. We'll see you guys again Thanks. later on, hopefully. I'll tell you what, there's, it ain't going to take long to do this. Uh, just a, a respite in the tower for just a moment. But when we come back, we will be continuing uh, with Pro ET Eliminations round number one. Nitro FM, if you can take it away, we'll be back with you very, very shortly indeed.
So our guys are quite like those turbines even more now. The box is actually getting a little bit louder. Not much. <laughs> I was going to say, that was brilliant. Roger and Martin. So it's a thousand foot then. For our jets. Firestorm and Firefalls. Roger Goring a long way out in front, goes over the line to a 5.14, 240 mile an hour. Outstanding pass there from Roger. Oh, bog off the line for both of them, actually. So this won't be what they were hoping for, but Chris Todd's still under power. <laughs> Yeah, no improvements for him. Yeah, the car died instantly for Simon Crowley, but a lovely looking run from Matt Davison. Not seen this car move that quickly this weekend before. He's going to go 9.34, 156 mile an hour. And that will jump him up quite a bit. The air this weekend, and it seems it's an actually aspirated car. Huge wheel stand, though. We also seem to bump through stage, so this isn't going to be a representative run, but yeah, that, that was quicker than an 8-2. Down goes 10.71, no improvement for him. <laughs> Lovely launches. Brandon Clancy is on an absolute flyer. 7.20, 188 mile an hour, and a 7.72, 175 for Rob Smallworth. Brendan Clancy only moves up to the number eight spot with that. That's the best launch I've seen Nick do all weekend. Just hovers the front wheels. 828, 164 extends his <laughs> lead and a 913 dips under the index for Andy Nichols. That moves him up to the number seven spot. Oh no, issues. I think it sounds like gearbox issues then for Luke. Well, he's in a gear because he is driving up the track. He will get a time. And he will be qualified. He will be qualified. Absolutely that. A lot of hard work gone into just doing that. He's also building another uh, another purpose-built car for Comp Eliminator, a dragster, which is what he ran before because he wants to run quick and fast. Yeah, well done, Luke. Get sit down there. The Unicorn Solution is the name of that car. The point. Lots of tie shake of Wayne Nicholson. Straight as an arrow. Yes. Well, that's a big improvement two. for David. 586 at 242. That'll be the number two spot, I think. Instantly tire shake for Wally. No issues at all for Roger Hansen. A bit of smoke at the top end. Oh. 603, 230 mile an hour. That's issues now. That yeah. looks like a lot of work. That looked like... Uh, I don't see shoot shit. Oh. They both don't have a time now. Mm. They both went before the tree was activated, yeah, unfortunately. Well, they were... Dave Washington. <laughs> Well, Fred, Fred goes through with the 6.20, his quickest run of the weekend, 2.28. Well, they both didn't leave hard. That's going to be the story of that one. 5.99, though, for Michelle, 2.39, 6.04 at 2.40 for Mark. They didn't... I he won't get on this one. Lots of tyre shake. No issues at all for Bruno Barda. 0.97, 60 foot goes. 5.98. 2.36 mile an hour moves him up to the number 10 spot. And that is 11 cars in the... They should improve. Little bit of 
a tyre shake for each car, but they are door handle to door handle the whole way down. Shoot out early for Bobby at a 5-9-0 for Jimmy Orland. Moves him up only one spot to the number five spot. Well, I wonder why Bob, uh, Bobby clicked that early. That looked, looked beautiful, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, what were the short numbers, guys? 99. Lots of tyre shake for Bobby. both of them. Andrew Zanov actually pedalled that. <laughs> Oh, no one's going to improve on that one. The thing is, even though even though they might not improve their qualified times, they still want good A to B runs because they want the information for race day tomorrow. What a run. That looks That's fantastic. beautiful. 555, 260 miles an hour, and a huge sigh of relief from everybody on the crew. Where does that put her in qualifying as well, by the way? Third. That actually gets... Lots of tyre shake from Silvio Strauch, but they're side by That's side. That's great for Tony. 5.42, 262 miles an hour. They do look uh, pretty pleased with that. Um, give me 10 seconds. Shaking tie spin for Johnny Oxer, but okay, Sandro so is long this gone. Is what it's been all about. Uh, 555 <laughs> and 262. Two and a half days qualifying. Looked like he had the shoots out early, but he must have been bang on the finish line because 262, I think, is top speed of the meet four. It's eliminations uh, round number one, where we take him from a field of 32 with four alternates, believe it or not, down to 16. Now, we assume that all 32 qualified cars are going to make it. If not, uh, Darren Huxley. Tom K, John Turner and Harley J are the alternates. Let's see if any of them appear. Right, first pair. Tom Watkins taking on Ryan Garrett. Now, earlier on, when they've been qualifying, you've just been seeing numbers appear on the scoreboards and they both leave the line together because they're just trying to run the number. Now, it is, in effect, like a handicap. Tom Watkins dials 9.16, Ryan Garrett dials 8.80. You sort of think, well, that's not that fair, is it? But if you consider that Tom's side of the tree will run 0.36 of a second before Ryan's side of the tree, the idea is whoever gets to the top end first will win as long as you don't go under your darling. But it doesn't oh, matter red. That, yeah. if you go red, which is basically what Tom has done. So it's an automatic win for Ryan. He goes 888. So it is Ryan Garrett that is through to round two. That's There's a couple of other things about racing that will uh, take you out of eliminations. One is the red light, and the second is crossing the centre line or clipping the wall. Third being beaten is, is uh, <laughs> the third actually if you go into the blue area oh, just yeah, off the start course, line yeah. or deep stage uh, not you're yeah, taking deep stage and pro et not a problem uh, you super can yeah is that right it's, it's, yeah, only, it's only the super pro, classes like super classes that you can't uh, super cast are super comp yeah super pro you can as well but yeah. the best so, are the ones with the pro tree where it's an advantage dave fulton and john bean darlings 953 979 the blue mustang will go first and dave fulton will try to chase him down this is a race then, so green light on both sides. Whoever gets to the strike first without breaking out will win. And it's a double breakout. Ooh. So whoever breaks out by the least takes the win, and that is Dave Fulton breaking out by less than a hundredth of a second. Well, over the strike by 0 06 first in the slick tricks lane. So Dave Fulton was very, very brave not to try and take the strike. However, a 0.19 reaction time probably had something to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> Right, Nick Muggridge and Laura Bainton, your next pair. Just a quick little dragster in the Capri. Yeah, just a quick change of dialing on uh, Nick Muggridge. I think the dialing on the board is not what he wants on the. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, okay, never mind. So, Nick going into stage. I think that might be for a bit of wriggle room, that 10.19. Yeah, maybe. The car can go quicker than that, even in this heat, it still can. 0.31 difference on the tree between these two. The Capri going first. 
And of course, this is Cutthroat Racing. You lose, you go home. There's no more racing for you this weekend. Three. She didn't need to cut it that fine. I do hope she lifted. I don't think she did by much, but Laura Bainton, yeah, she takes the win. Nick with uh, gear selection issues there. But Laura Bainton into round number two, so she'll be racing tomorrow. Next pair, it is Simon Innes. The crazy race of Barracuda. And it is the Blitzkrieg Falcon. How good is it to see this car? With Simon Fulton. Driving it in this class, he dials a 9.15, 10 at 74. So there's a big gap between these two as they lead the line. The other thing we don't do in commentary is read out reaction times on the run itself. It could be an advantage if the driver's listening with uh, radios. Which sounds funny, but they actually do do they it. Do. <laughs> Double breakout. Simon Fulton takes that with a 9.13 to a lose out 10.72. That is in the hundreds difference between them. A much better light, actually, for Simon as well. He did get there first by 0.7, but they both broke out. But Simon broke out by the least. Yeah, I think this is going to be the tail of the round. A lot of breakouts. Dalrymple, Jess Bishop. 10.04 plays a 9.32. Oh, good job, they both get the green. Well, oh. a double breakout again. Oh, look at the breakout for John Dalrymple. 9.89 on a tele five. that was huge. Uh, so Jess Bishop takes that. She runs at 9.31. Yeah, that's a... Uh, well, it's more than a breakout, that, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, but only by 0.2 at the stripe, and then that's a reaction time difference. Yeah. All right, Mark Huxley with a can-do-2 reborn Toyota Corolla, dialing in 9.95. Funny enough, so is Simon Rickwood with the boss and over. Oh, wow, so this is going to be a heads-up race? Heads up to 9.95, do not break out. Tree will roll up. That will roll down at the same time. And Simon Rickwood goes too soon. He puts a cherry on the tree. So it is Mark Huxley. It's round number two. Only just as well. Look at that, though. Simon Rickwood went 995 and 95, and he was just 01 red. Yeah, fortunately for him. Curses. Uh, yeah, that's going to be one of the words he'd be using. Well, think. we've had two of the Fulton boys into round two already. Are we going to make it three out of three with Daniel Fulton with a fiver dialing in 10.25 going up against Aussie Brown with a Camaro 10.90. So three quarters of a second difference on the tree. Aussie just... Uh, there's also a thing called courtesy staging. The top bulbs are lit, so Daniel will wait for Ozzy, and then they can then both go into stage. You don't have to do that. No, it, but, but it's, it's, it's polite. Etiquette. That's why it's called courtesy staging. Yeah. Oh, Ozzy goes red. So it's three for three for the Fulton boys. They're all playing tomorrow. Eleven with all the zeros for Ozzy, but Dan Fulton here for race day tomorrow. And that is all the Fulton boys, as I say, into the second day. So, Mr. Qualifying himself, Dave Rudd, your number one qualifier in the Slick Tricks lane. I'm sure Harrison is watching his granddad from somewhere, willing him on to a round win as well as a number one qualifier. But he's got a tough ask in round one. Warren Watts actually saying that anyone who qualified is going to be hard work, uh, aren't yeah. they? Uh, so Davis to this afternoon dials a 9.80. Um, he was dialing only 9.72 all the way through qualifying, and he ran that number perfectly, absolutely perfectly. He began first by just over six tenths of a second, and then the Camaro in the Kestrel Lake. 
So Dave Rudd is quite high up there in the championship points. Warren Watts goes red. It will be Dave Rudd through to race tomorrow. <laughs> I'd say Steph down there doing the daughter dance. We have lots of dad dancing going on, not much. Well, I, I liked her reaction when she looked back going, well, does that mean we win? Yeah. And then, <laughs> oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, yes. There right. is a lot of disbelief, though, when you win, if you, you know, anyway. Yeah. But that's, uh, that's great news for Dave in his championship. Right, this is big. Number one and number four in the national points chase meeting up in round one here. Oh, not many nerves, are you? And oh. Amy is the better qualified car. Coming into this, she qualified five. Lee Morris qualified number 21. Had battery issues all weekend long. Had to go out to a local battery. So, it's all about the dialing. It's 9.64, place 10.30. The green E-type will be leaving first. But whoever wins this is going to be making lots and lots of points. Oh, and it's a red light for Lee Morris. The national championship points leader out into round number one. That is going to hurt. Well, and he put himself out in round one. Amy was a bit late with the point two one. However, she'd probably seen the red yeah. in the other lane. Just wanted to make sure she didn't do the same thing, although it would have mattered because... Uh, well, that is big, though. That really yeah. opens things wide up in the championship chase. Well, considering Amy qualified five and Lee uh, qualified uh, 21, so that's 160 points difference, plus 100 for the round. That's 260 points. Amy has pulled back on Lee. So that brings her up to 2,300 points. Lee would have got the qualifying points, so yeah, she's about three rounds behind Lee now. Uh, yeah, but importantly, second, second and third may go through, so exactly it's all going to change. Junior Dragster into the lanes, please. Junior Dragster, please, into the bearing lane. And there's another red light this time to Dave Crowhurst. 0-2 red. Brett Featherstone, he's going to take the win here with a Nova. And a 55 and a 54, just to put an exclamation mark on it yeah. for Brett Featherstone too. Okay, Liz Malcolm. I think Liz was, oh, she wasn't on the bump, she was number 31. Well, both of the, it's, it's, it's amazing the, the way that, uh, because qualifying was so close, first round matchups are not the round the matchups you expect to see in round one, let's no. put it that way. So Liz with a 10.98, 9.78. Dave Cherry with the dog. Pretty sure anyone in the top 20 odd for qualifying, that's just luck at that point. Uh, it's another red light, Dave Cherry gets one, so it is Liz Malcolm that goes into round oh, one. So only, only by 009 for Dave Cherry. Only three hundreds off for Liz Malcolm that time round. Seven oh one. 10.98. Uh, 9.05 dialing for Ronnie Mercer means that more nitrous is being used down there again in the Kestrel Lane. Up against Chris Newsom. Uh, Chris was number 10. He was the high qualified, believe it or not, and I'm not being rude here. Uh, it's just that Ronnie Mercer races week in, week out, doesn't he? Mm. All around Europe, too. Very, very good and experienced indeed, but Chris done a great job in qualifying to outpace the little Anglia in the other lane. And Chris Newsom goes red. I think the moral of the story in this round of racing is don't pick the right-hand lane. I was just going to say that. Because it comes with a red light. <laughs> oh, 05 red. Breaks out, but it doesn't matter. So, Vic Parsons already threw in, uh, well, qualified well with Super Guest, sorry, here in this round of racing in Pro ET against Neil Watkins. Two uh, very, very good racers, also not only racing Pro ET, but uh, Nostalgia Superstock as well. As for next weekend, uh, rather bizarrely, we have a carryover semi final and final oh. of the lifestyle. Nostalgia Superstock race uh, mm -hmm. that we didn't get finished at the Mopars. 
That's, do you know what? That's one of those things I don't know why he doesn't we can't do it in the national often. championship, yeah. but because it's a lifestyle one, that's what they decided to do. So yeah. they're all, all four cars are going to be here, and Vic is one of them. Excellent. Yeah, hot rod drags next week, national finals week afterwards. Then that long, horrible winter thing. Yeah. Oh, staging duel. Nobody wants to go in. Ah, Neil goes in. Vic goes in. 11.41 place, 9.84. A green light in both lanes. One slightly better than the other. I don't think we need to tell you which one it was. Yeah. 11.46, Neil Watkins uh, takes that one. Uncharacteristically late there for Vic. It's one of those sort of yes-no moments. It's like, should I move? Oh, yes, I should, and now I'm late kind of things. Okay, Paul Marston and Marie Mills. Uh, if you don't know, Marie works on the Undertaker fuel funny car, and she does the clutch on the car, and she hasn't got enough to do. So that's why she races in Pro ET as well. I'm, of course, joking. Well, Grace Rofe down there, who is with crew with Marie, also works on the Undertaker car as well. So... Uh This will be a really good race. In the flight. And it's Marie Mills who takes that 10.87 to lose that 9.22. Off pace run there for Paul Marston. Car didn't launch the way it should. Uh, but it is Marie that will be racing tomorrow. Another one of those thousand and one ways to lose, I think. Two pairs to go. Mason Griffiths and Will Clark, the two dragsters. Bizarrely, uh, my two neighbours in the pits this weekend. <laughs> Got one either side of me. Oh, and it is Will Clark who goes red, and it's Mason Griffiths that is uh, going to be taking part in racing tomorrow. Oh, and on 9.18, didn't matter, he knew he got the race win. Right, you're lying there. Stevie Gates. Alfie Ratton. So all 32 cars that qualified made it into round one for elimination. So unfortunately, the alternates didn't get a look in. Yeah, Tom Kay is down there waiting. Unfortunately, he didn't get his chance didn't to slot in anywhere. No. Well, unfortunately for him, not for everyone else yeah. who did actually qualify. Nine oh seven plays nine sixty one, so it will be the duster leaving first. Another pick and choose one at the strike, and that's Alfie Ratton by zero four goes nine twelve on that nine oh seven. Uh, Stevie Goats nine sixty six on a sixty one, but it is Alfie. That goes into round two tomorrow. Yeah, five hundreds in the bank off the start line was yeah. pretty much the deciding factor in Match that one. Matchups for round number two. Dave Rudd takes on Jess Bishop. Amy Watkins and Ryan Garrett. Uh, Alfie, you just seen go through, taking on Neil Watkins. Brett Featherstone taking on Liz Malcolm. Dave Fulton taking on Ronnie Mercer. Laura Bainton taking on Simon Fulton. And if Dave and Simon both win, it'll be your brother matchup in the next pair. Uh, Mark Huxley taking on Marie Mills and Mason Griffiths taking on Dan Fulton. Now this is where, because Tom Kay's not running in competition or qualifying, it will run bang on the dialing. Well, 1029. Uh, 600's on, but still uh, not a bad job at all. So on the run order, Colin, I think... Um, on, well, it's a super pro or junior dragster, but uh, the lanes look a bit empty-ish at the moment. Uh, and that's right, they are. Completely empty, apart from one vehicle, uh, which is the other alternate, actually. That's uh, Mr. Huxley. Yeah, we have called Junior Drag, so they should do. They're probably all at the crossroads sorting pairings out. They're probably not that far away yeah. at all. So uh, don't go anywhere, everybody. We've still got a packed afternoon to come. Uh, while we have a, a brief, quiet moment, um, just want to say a very good afternoon uh, to Jamie Enverdod, who I think is in the crowd somewhere on his own. Mel sent us a message and said, say hi uh, from... <laughs> from the wife and the kids. Hope you're having a lovely day out on your own, Jamie. And um, everybody out there, hopefully staying hydrated, staying cool as much as they possibly can. Yet the juniors are on the way down, so we're not far off. Um, have we got a run order, Colin, just very quickly? I don't know where it went. 
There we go. Thank you very much indeed. Yep, sorry. Cheers, man. Sorry, so, right, no work. problem at all. <laughs> so, where we're up to, obviously, we just had Pro T round one. We've got Super Pro to go uh, and Junior Dragster 2. Uh, they're on their way down right now. But then we are straight away after them. Let's have a quick look. Not far after that. We're due to go into uh, our second pro session of the day, starting off with the, uh, the jet cars again. Uh, and then uh, Comp Eliminator, Pro Modified, Top Methanol and everything else too. So um, lots of really good quick fast, um, fast stuff to come your way. We're hoping to have uh, a parade of the Pro Mod cars at the end of qualifying today as well. So please stick around for that too. Uh, and then it will be on to elimination to absolutely everybody tomorrow and whoever else is left in competition. So just for a couple of moments, Nitro FM, if you wouldn't mind while we uh, collect our first round pairings for both Super Pro and Junior Dragster 2. And not far away is that round of racing. All right, Callum has just messaged Sorry. me if we could just put a shout out for Tim. Um, Darren, your friend, is looking for you. Uh, he's, he's basically says, having a bad time, what a great event. Uh, Tim, if you could have a shout out, please. Um, Darren has got his meds and he'll be waiting by the starring lane, uh, which is the staging lane. So he's around there somewhere. So, uh, Tim, if you can uh, sort of head your way over to the, uh, the staging lanes area and get in touch with Darren. Thank you, Callum. Still wait for cars to appear in the lanes, and uh, unbelievably, I am fairly up to date on, uh, on various messages. Um, I'll tell you what we'll do: just to uh, give the airwaves over to Nitro FM 96.2 just for a moment as we uh, gather race vehicles in the lanes. But don't forget, we've still got another full-blown pro session coming up uh, later on. Well, not that far away actually, so uh, we could still got that to come. So Nitro FM, you can take the airwaves just for a sec. We'll be back with more action here at the European Finals.
Pops are back. He's going to get a fair bit louder now. The party continues the uh, same show for fun. It's number five. Short blips just to bring the car up to the line. Here, Richie, a wave because here goes Martin Hill, Fire Force number five to a five second run when he gives it every. How about a 547 at 285 miles an hour? Not bad at all. To say the least. Anyway. Well, they're just getting on board the transit. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Oh. Oh. Out of steam way before the eighth mile. <laughs> oh my goodness me, that's 60 foot. 0.91 to 60 foot through the finish line, 6.30 only, only 161 miles an hour, 0 0.917 to 60 foot, 2.36. Two. The idea is whoever gets to the top end first will win as long as you don't go under your darling. But it doesn't oh, matter that, yeah. if you go red, which is basically what Tom has done. So it's an automatic win for Ryan. He goes 8.88. So it is Ryan Garrett that is through to round two. That's going to go first. The day four will try to chase him down. This is a race then. So green light on both sides. Whoever gets the strike first without breaking up will win. And it's a double breakout. Ooh. So whoever breaks out by the least takes the win. And racing, you lose, you go home. There's no more racing for you this weekend. Doesn't break out. Ooh, oh, ten selfie. Could be an advantage if the drivers listening with uh, radios, which sounds funny, but they actually do do they it. <laughs> Double breakout. Simon Fulton takes that with a 9:13 to a lose out ten. Oh, John, they both get the green. Oh. A double breakout again. Oh. Look at the breakout for John Darwin. 989 on a telephone. And Simon Rickwood goes too soon. He puts a cherry on the tree. So it is Mark Huxley. It's round number two. Only just as well. Look at that though. Simon Rickwood went 995 and 95. Have to do that. No, it, but, but it's, it's, it's polite. Etiquette. That's why it's called courtesy. Stage. Yeah. Oh, what he goes red. So it's three for three for the Fulton boys. They're all playing tomorrow. Eleven with all the zeros for Aussie, but Dan Fulton here for race day tomorrow. And up there in the championship points. Warren Watts goes red. It will be Dave Rudd through to race tomorrow. I'd say Steph down there doing the daughter dance. <laughs> we have lots of dad dancing going on, not much. Well, I, li I like to have points. Oh, and it's a red light for Lee Morris, the national championship points leader out into round number one. That is going to hurt. Well, and he put himself out in round one. Amy was a bit late with the point two one. Exactly it's all going to change. Junior Dragster into the lanes, please. Junior Dragster, please, into the bearing lane. And there's another red light this time to Dave Crowhurst. 02 red. Brett Featherston, he's going to take the win here with a over. He does get to 55. And a 55 and a 54, just to put an exclamation mark on it yeah. for Brett Featherston. 
Uh, it's another red line. Dave Cherry gets one. So it is Liz Malcolm that goes into round oh, four. So only, only by 009 for Dave Cherry. Only three hundreds off for Liz Malcolm that time round four. And Chris Newsom goes red. I think the moral of the story in this round of racing is don't pick the right hand lane. I was just going to say that. Because it well. comes with the red light. <laughs> 05 red. That already breaks out, but it doesn't. Vic goes in. 1141 place, 984. A green light in both lanes. One slightly better than the other, and I don't think we need to tell you which one it was. Yeah. 1146 nil. Oh, and it is Will Clark who goes red, and it's Mason Griffiths that is uh, going to be. Taking part in race nine twenty seven or nine eighteen didn't matter. He knew he will be the duster leaving first. Another pick and choose one at the strike. And that's Alfie Ratt by zero four goes nine twelve on that nine oh seven. Uh, Stevie Goats 966 on a 61, but it is Alfie. So live action arena going on um, on the other side of the spectator banking. We've got a very quick and a very special presentation uh, for a gentleman that's been coming here for an awfully, awfully long time. Now, he doesn't know we're going to do this as well. So at his age, before anyone says it's not Keith, right? It's the man behind him, actually. It's not for, it's not for Keith. Wander out here a little bit further, if that's OK. Uh, Keith Bartlett, uh, the man coming out here, John Wells. Uh, just say a few words about John. Hello everyone. Norm normally I'm always talking about what we do here and how well we've done things or how well and the support you've all given. But this particular little introduction, this man next to me, his name is John Wells. He's been coming here since 1966 when it opened. John is our oldest standing VIP customer. When I bought Santa Pod in 1996, John was one of the first ones to become a VIP guest. It's now 2023. He doesn't miss hardly any events, and it's his birthday today. So we would like to all say our best ever special VIP guest, shall we just give John Wells the biggest, best VIP fan and guest we've ever had a big applause on his birthday. Uh, now... Ex-top ex fuel racer and hero of Santa Pod, Barry Sheevels, very close friend of John's, couple of words from Barry. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'd just like to reiterate what Keith said. I've known John, well, not since 66, but close on. And uh, in his early days, he always used to be in the pits with all the uh, fuel teams and everyone else. He's just a really, really lovely man. He's a drag racer absolutely through and through, and this is the best thing that could ever happen to him. And, and I, I just want to wish you a very, very happy birthday, John. Just a couple of words from the man himself, John. That is seriously, that's some kind of record. Be, been coming since 1966, is that right? Has it, has it changed a bit or not? Yes, a little bit. <laughs> Certainly have indeed, yeah. Yet I can remember uh, vividly sitting in my old Zephyr beside the track right at the top there when they had the first meeting, just beside the track, watching the cars go up. And now when you come here these days, I bet that obviously the change is massive. In you and the track, obviously. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Every time I come, such a wonderful experience. That's the most important thing. And it obviously really keeps you coming back as well. Yeah, we will indeed. And my family, we all love it. Yeah. Thank you very much for spending it with us, with all your family and your friends as well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much indeed. No problem. One very special day, sir. Congratulations. 80 years old. Been here, right, coming here since 1966, every single year. 
Uh, we wish him many, many more happy years up here too. We're about ready to go with round number one of Junior Dragster. I'll hand back to Colin up in the tower. Thank you very much. Helps if I put the microphone in the right place. Thank you ever so much indeed, Dal. That is a wonderful little presentation there to John. I you say he was here back in 1966. I was one year old then. And obviously I did not know what drag racing was and uh, sometimes I still don't. But that man has seen everything that's been up here. He's seen all the changes over the years. He's seen the performance levels from way back then to where they are now. And uh, I can imagine if you got him chatting in the pub one night, he would not stop him. That would be one heck of a conversation. So it is Junior Dragster for Lucas Oils. He's going to be your first round eliminations coming up. And then it will be Super Pro ET there, making their way down into the lanes. And then we're going to get ready for our second pro session, or the bump session, if you like. Uh, it is qualifying session number four. So here we go. Eliminations for the juniors. The winners will be taking part in round two. And the losers will... Uh, they're not going anywhere. They're going to be staying here. We've got uh, some junior presentations tonight. And... Uh, they're all budding stars of the future, so they want to see their heroes race throughout the course of the weekend. Right, your first pair. Harry Peters, Max Taylor. Max will be leaving first, 9.62 with the Black Magic Junior, and it's going to be Harry Peters trying to chase it down, 8.27. Uh, I think the dialing change. The thing is, though, the sun is so bright, it's glistening off the track, and it's very difficult to see. Yeah, 8.21. A green light drag race between Harry and Max. Now Harry's going to try and close Max down. Here comes the finish line for the juniors. It's the eighth mile. It's a breakout for Harry Peters. He got there first. He overtook Max, but he went too quick in doing so. He broke out by less than a hundredth of a second. So it is Max Taylor that goes into round number two. Next up, Frankie Kent's first ever race here at Santa Pod Raceway. This is his first meeting. He's been qualifying so far, but this is his first ever race. And he's going alongside Emmy Crundwell with the Violet Haze as uh, the first opponent for another West 10 junior dragster. 12.13 for Frankie Kent. It's a junior stock dragster. 9.22 for Emmy. That's a junior modified. So green light on both sides of the racetrack. Frankie Kent looking to stay in front. Amy Crumwell trying to try and get round stripe but no it is a win for Frankie Kent gets there first so congratulations Frankie Kent first ever race win Emily Moore with the Miss Hyperactive Junior Dragster 9.11 is the dial in for Emily uh, Gray Smith with the Boost Monkey Junior 8 flat so Easy one to work out. 1.11 second different on the tree. And it's going to be a very colourful dragster in the Kestrel Beer Lane that will be going first. Again, green light on both sides of the racetrack. Looks like Grace has got a nose in front, but can she do it safely? Yes, she does. 8.05 takes the race win there to lose that 9.74. So Grace Smith in the turn round number two.
Eva Davis with the Mayhem Junior going alongside Teddy Howe with the Junior Stock. 12.73 uh, dialing for Teddy, 8 flat for Eva, 4.73. That's a big, big gap in the Juniors. Uh, basically, it's an age related thing. Uh, when you reach the age of 11, you can go up to a, uh, a Junior Stock. Or was it 10? I can't remember. Uh, but when you reach the age of 14, you can go into a junior modified advance. Uh, you can start your junior career at age 8. So Teddy gets a green light. Eva's got to be patient. Oh, but Eva goes red. She goes too soon. So it is Teddy Howe that is into round number two. All right, next up, I think that's Daniel Weir. And oh, that's right, it's the two Daniels, Daniel Todd and Daniel Weir. 9.20 plays, 8.15, 1.05 second difference. He's going to be the Dragon Slayer leaving first in the Kestrel lane. And then Daniel Weir trying to close him down. Yeah, qualifying is one thing. Obviously, racing is that much different. They qualify based on reaction times, but when it comes to donations, all that tends to go out the window a bit. Oh, it does indeed. Daniel Weir goes red. Daniel Todd is through to round number two. Oh, three red there for Daniel. and Ethan up next. Uh, Richard Wilcox qualified in number six spot. Ethan number 22. It doesn't matter about qualifying anymore. It's all about the racing in front of us. Ethan's going to be have to be the patient one. 8.13 as Richard will be going first with an 8.75. Winner faces Daniel Todd in round number two. It's not going to be Richard Wilcox. Unfortunately, he goes red by 0 3. Double 0 2 on the right side, though, for Ethan. So imagine Daniel Todd in the next round. Well, Richard Wilcox, obviously, he's still number one qualifier in junior drag bike. Luke McGridge and Lola Bell Kent, your next pair. Eight oh three place nine oh nine. Lola Bell going first. So are we going to be two for two for West Ten Motorsport in the juniors? Or is Luke McGridge going to continue in eliminations? It's a green light race. So this will be sorted out at the stripe. Don't forget it's eighth mile. And it's a breakout for Lola Bell. She got there first, but she broke out. So it is Luke Mugridge that goes into round at number two. Thomas kept very busy down there as he's running around looking at both cars. <laughs> That's Harley Corsell. Uh, he's great buddy. With Bandit One going alongside Jack Taylor. 
Well, fair to say, Jack has had a monumental weekend and take make all the qualifiers. Actually, he broke a crankshaft this weekend in that junior dragster. Only seven hundredths of a second difference on the tree. Eight flat for Harley, seven ninety three for Jack. The winner of this gets a bye in round two. It's just the way the ladder works out. And it's Jack Taylor who goes red, unfortunately, so it is Harley Corsell that is gonna go into round number two. A huge amount of effort from uh, the Taylor team down there trying to get uh, Jack back in action, and they succeeded just, uh, just fell short on the first round of eliminations. This is number one, Kai Cooper. And number one qualifier gets a bye into round number two. It's just the uh, odd number field. It's an all run field in Junior Dragster. Always has been, always will be. And don't forget that is a national championship where it's not an un all, not an all-run field in a junior drag bike in FIM competition. So a few people are asking questions on that, but it always has been all-run field in junior dragster in national competition, but in FIM Europe it is a bump spot. That's why it's not an all-run field for the bikes. There we go. Kai Cooper books his spot in round number two. Liam McDonald, your points leader, and uh, racing all over the place these days, all around Europe. And as Daryl said, I uh, haven't seen home for a fair, a fair few weeks, I should say a couple of months. Going alongside Ellie May Brown. 8.20 the dial in for Liam, 8.01 for Ellie May. side of the tree running first race on and at 8.33 for Liam McDonald takes that win to lose at 8.23 for Ellie May right the first of the slick tricks cars this is Lara Bartlett going alongside Ada Cassisi well we just see number one in the points chase go through Ada Number three coming into this event. Tough customer, though, with Lara Bartlett with the Slick Tricks Junior. She qualified number two. That doesn't mean anything anymore. It's just to set the pairings and give them extra points for whoever qualifies higher up. Each, each place you are qualified higher up is worth an extra ten points, and that all counts towards the national championship. The Darlings, 8.06 for Lara, but leaving first will be Ada with a Again, a green light drag racing and it stripe it is a win to Lara Bartlett. 8.08 on 8.06 dial. Uh, she goes into round number two. Both of them with zero lights as well. Really good on the tree. But it is Lara in to round number two. Damien Redshaw and Freddie Taylor, your next pair. Winner of this gets number one qualifier, Kai Cooper, in round number two. Green light drag race, but Freddie, I think, has already got Damien covered. Yeah, he's pedaling. Pedaling. Yeah, eight fifteen takes that win safely there. Well done, Freddie. He's going to be taking on Kai. Well, that was a mad rush. Woo! Need to. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot to close the door. There we go. 
Oh, my bad. <laughs> All right, Jacqueline Bartlett and Jake Cooper, your next pair. Well, we've had one of the Bartlett Slick Tricks racers through. We've had one of the Coopers through. We're not going to get both both teams through. One of them is going to fall here. Jacqueline Bartlett qualified 17. Jake qualified 33. 908 will be leaving first. 812 will be chasing. So that's Jake leaving first. Jacqueline doing the chasing. Stage. Jackie trying to rock the car to go forwards. See the car moving around side to side. There it goes. And that's a win for Jake Cooper with his best light of the weekend. Oh, one zero. Uh, Jacqueline Bartlett, uh, only 400 off a darling, but it is Jake Cooper in to round number two. And the young lady who needn't have bothered for the qualifier this morning, but well, she only needed the one, came in uh, for the last run on Friday, went straight to the number four spot with a 004. That was seriously impressive, taking on Harry Redshaw. Harry looking for an 8.31, Chevy looking for a 7.94. Of course, she, these are both the JMAs, so the quickest of the class. Harry's going to leave first. I think this is Chev's first race chasing someone as well. So about 0.4 of a second between them on the tree. See if you can spot it. It's just about one light. Well, Harry's ahead to 3.34, but here comes Chevy. At the stripe, give me neck and neck. Goes to Chevy with a 794 on a 794 dial in and an 03 light on the tree as well. That's going to be seriously hard to beat if you can keep yeah. that up. Well, Harry left on a 02, but uh, Chev drove around. The wind margin 019. That was a cracking race. Race of the round, to be yeah. fair. So, Neve need, Devi need with the winningest car in Junior Dragster. Um, How many championships has that car won? I think it's about seven. Wow, that is, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. Uh, Luke Fulton won a championship with it. Jordan, Jordan Payne, Payne. Billy Everett Billy. won a load of events but didn't win a championship. And then Jordan, uh, Joe Kelly Joe won Kellett. all of the championships in it. That's impressive. But he's te she's taking on Mackenzie Love, who is a seriously, seriously good racer. I know this because he retired me. <laughs> so Neve looking to run a 9.31. Mackenzie's got to wait a couple of seconds before he goes. He's looking for a 796. Both lights are green. Max is there chasing her down. Does he get there first? Yes. Eight flat on a 796. Win margin, 0-3. In fact, Neve got there first, but broke out by less than a hundredth of a second. Actually, Mackenzie dodged one there, yeah, if you work it out. Uh, Neve was much closer to the darling, but just went too far under. Teddy Sullivan then. And Lena Wolf with the junior funny car. This funny car, I don't know if you've actually had a close look at it, it's a work of art. It's got a full carbon fibre floor on it to help with the aerodynamics. It's got the dialing board built into the side wings on the back of the oh, car. Right. It's got brake working brake lights. It's got so underneath as well, it's basically a junior dragster. Uh, it's got the same engine as Teddy Howell runs, same clutch setups, all of that. Same wheels, if, for example, um, just with a little funny car body on it as well. Interesting as well, compared to like a full scale funny car, is where she sits in it. So she sits actually in the middle of the side windows, so she can still look out the side and uh, drive top end if she needs to. She's looking to run an 8.60. Teddy's looking to run an 8.20. So once again, 0.4 of a second is about one light. Lena is going to launch first. Indeed, she does. Teddy's got the job of hunting her down. He's going to get there second. Lena goes 869 on the 860 dialing. 
Teddy Sullivan, 8.32 on the 8.20, so a little bit slower than they were expecting. Alina Wolf takes the win and will be racing again this evening. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Eliminations round number two expected to be the last class of the day. And talking about last, uh, this is the last pair. Tom Peters and Molly Openshaw. Nine flat plays 9.85. It will be Tom leaving first. Yeah, so these are two of the junior modifieds. They can only go up to 8.90. They are aged between 10 and 13. I've just answered the question I posed earlier on. What was the age of JM? I couldn't remember <laughs> if it was 10 or 11, so it's 10. Yeah. Oh, red light for Molly. Tom Peters will be taking the win. Oh, something's just fallen off of Tom's car, actually. I don't know what, quite what that was. Didn't look anything mechanical. It looked like a bit of bodywork or something. Maybe a timer to get out of his pocket. <laughs> but a 10.13 takes the win. Molly was close to her dial in. 9.06 on a 9.00. Right. As we move into Super Pro. Yeah. Uh Goodness, Chris is back up here because I've lost a ladder. Oh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't got a ladder, but I can guess. Oh, dear. So when I say ladder, it's the eliminations where we go from 32 car field down to 16. Actually, 30 cars qualified. Yeah. There is one bye in round number two, and we'll and explain that, will, that when it happens. Well, that will go to the winner of this pair. Yeah, spot on. Tom Atkinson was your number one qualifier. Joe Kelly qualified 16. <laughs> Both know how to win championships. Both really, really good racers, and it really is a pick and choose as to who's going to take. And this one's where it gets interesting with Joe and the throttle stop. Oh, yeah. Because Joe's got the faster car at the top end, but because he's using the throttle stop, he will leave first, Tom will leave after him, Tom will catch Joe, go past him, <laughs> and then Joe will set off after him again and hopefully <laughs> catch him at the top end. So, hopefully, all things being equal, Joe should be coming up on Tom as they go through the finish line. Well, essentially, Tom needs to treat this as the race where he's racing like a seven-second car because yeah. at the, when he drives the stripe, that's what it's going to be. Yeah. So the dragster will be leaving first. It will have a higher terminal speed at the top end, but you'll see why in a second. And the door car will be leaving second. We'll be chasing him down till about 3.30 foot, and then rolls will be reversed, basically. <laughs> well, they've got to pull green lights first. Which they do. So the door car goes past the dragster, and the throttle stop comes up. That's Tom. Tom all the way. I know one light to Joe's 07. Joe was close to dialing, but in effect, a whole shot win for Tom Atkinson. Now you're 54. And he gets a buy in round number two. That was a crucial one, that. Mark Bailey and Colin Miller. Right, back into the 760 dialing for Colin Miller. He had a bit of a, an experiment trying to run a six earlier, but he just got insane tyre shape. Well, we appreciate the effort, that's for sure. <laughs> He's always the showman, is our Colin. <laughs> well, the, the theory behind the run was the car is, gets a bit leery when it's not fully loaded. However, I think he also forgot that the car is more leery when it is fully loaded. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like that. That's, that works for me. Mark Bailey goes ready, it's Colin Miller into round number two. In fact, Colin Miller got away with one there. Mark Bailey was only 003 red, but by the virtue of his tree running first, means he loses that race, even though Colin went 0 0.2 red. Good job, it's not true start then, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crew celebrating down there, I can hear Lynn from here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
was a cracking burnout from the 57. I've not, I've not actually had been able to watch this guy run, but he's at the mall. <laughs> oh, that was a short one, but yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. He hasn't taken on Ron Bartlett by tall, has he? Mm. <laughs> right, Andy Thetford, what a weekend he's had. Uh, not going to go into every issue he's had this weekend, but he's uh, pretty much all transmission related in one shape or form or the other. But, uh, which resulted in uh, Phil Topping disappearing over to Essex to go and pick up uh, a replacement transmission. Oh, wow. And a uh, big clean up in the pits as well. And, oh, you name it, he's really been uh, battling all sorts of things. And uh, uh, aerospace connector issue as well. Um, plugs. It's just been a real, real battle for him this weekend. But uh, here he is in round one. He uh, got an eight flat in his last qualifier. 780 dial ended up number 27. But, uh, oh, yeah, we can hear you, Daryl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so someone's at the door. Nice. You'd have to be quick because they're running through them quick and fast. <laughs> oh, it is Andy Thetford that's going to go into round number two. A red light from the Chevy. Not a bad one. Oh, no. 8.99 was the darling. 8.99 was the run. But it was a double, double 05 red. Oh, that's painful. But a red is a red, and it's a race over at that point. As soon as that cherry came up on the tree, we're not going to see that wicked Chevy again. Yeah. He was red by the quarter of a blink of an eye. Mm. Yeah. So, Bob Doyle with the Z case. And Thomas Haas with the Valiant over this side in the Slick Tricks line. Thomas has dialed back a little bit. 8.31, maybe giving himself a little bit of room to rest the top end. Very even on the reaction times. He's off it, he's off the throttle, and Coast, a double breakout. He got lucky there. He was off the throttle quite a while before the finish line. He wins by 008 at the strike. Thomas Hass. Yeah. <laughs> that says to me, Thomas Hass had held three hundredths just as I expected him to. Yeah. <laughs> because he was still on the throttle at the top end. And this is this is when we'd usually say this is how it was versus how this is now, but the rear engine car has been around for donkey's years and the slingshot is virtually brand new. Thank well, you. We've I don't know got. If you turned your level up down there, but boy, that came through <laughs> booming. <laughs> no, no. <it's>, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think the whole of Bedfordshire heard that one. <laughs> so Daniel Giles with the Giles and Hartley dragster taking on Pete Brown with the Rebel Slingshot. The car in the Kestrel Beer Lane, one of the founding cars of Super Pro, and it's still around today. He will be dialing in something around the 7.3. And Pete with Slingshot will be dialing in something around an 8.4. So it's going to be about 1.1 second head start to the Slingshot. And Daniel's got the task of running him down. There we go. There the dialers. Oh, in fact, Daniel slowed down a little bit. 7.41. Well, he qualified with a 7.40, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. 
obviously the track's that good, it's probably dragging the, it down a bit. The car has run 741, 741, 741, yeah. 741, oh, 741, really? 741, 741, 741. <laughs> so okay. he's playing it safe with the 740. Yeah. <laughs> And Sorry, 741. 848. Yeah. I know in the last round, Pete ran an 849. So this could be quite a good race. Both drivers nudging in to the stage. There we go. Slingshot's going to leave first. Well, I hate to say this, Pete, but that was definitely green. Yeah, Jax is going to get him in the top end. Breakout for Rebel. Yeah, breakout for Rebel, 8.42, 155 mile an hour. Uh, nice win for Daniel Giles. 0.1 on the tree and 7.48 on the 7.41. That's slowed down quite a bit. I don't, I don't know if he was probably off at the top end, but I highly doubt it because I think Pete would have been a long way in front. Next pair then. Lee Huxley with the Dark Horse Mustang, taking on Ron Bartlett with the seven second Anglia. I can see an eight second dialing on the um, window. Things are very difficult to see from here, actually. Yeah. Uh, so we are having radio communication with the start line because we can't read the numbers because <laughs> of the sunlight. It was a hard problem to have, but we don't mind it. Well, we saw the weeniest purge of nitrous as well, so he's got it turned on for this one. Yeah, Ron dials eight or seven. Um, so the Mustang's going to be leaving first. Anglia's going to run him down. Ah, oh, red light for Ron Bartlett. Lee Huxley takes the win. An 01 light for Lee Huxley. And he goes 897 on the 895. 802 for Ron, though. Hell oh, yeah. Uh, Dan. Yeah. I think Pete was so happy because it was a really good run. 8.42 he ran. Yeah, Pete broke out significantly though. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think, he, I think he was also happy to race Dan. Yeah. Bell and Pete Walters coming at you very quickly. 874 for the door car, 785 for a pedaling Pete Walters who takes the win. Yeah, um, just to let everybody know, AC Bell, uh, he did a couple of runs yesterday with some nitrous for a bit of fun. Obviously, they don't all the qualifying they need to do. He ran some nitrous uh, for a couple of faster dial ins, but he's uh, back to running no nitrous there. But uh, probably wished he'd run it then as uh, Pete Walters takes the win. Pete Walters there, 005 on the tree, loads of room at the top end. Oh, I missed that. Whomping the throttle, had loads of room to back off. I think he used all of it as well. <laughs> yeah, shaved off two tenths of a second at the top end. And no doubt he probably would have dialed that back a bit to give himself some wiggle room as well. So now we've got Alan Didwell. Is this a competition, Byron? Uh, this should be Jack Williams in the other line with uh -huh. the Nerva. So issues for him looks like it and of course uh, it's an all-run field so there's no alternates to fill the position no got it so your championship leader gets, a gets run the lucky round. buy in the first round And 
responded, well, using the buy run to send a message, 772 on a 771. Well, you've got two Monotail Dragsters coming your way very shortly. One very, very, very quick one. Well, I suppose actually they're both quick. But you've got uh, Fabian Dubois with a 7.24 dialing with the Milwaukee Dragster. Taking on Matt Peters with the Lucas Oil Dragster in the Slick Tricks lane. He's looking for a 7.62. Now, this, this, this is a race you'd more expect to see in the States. Yeah. When it comes to um, things like Super Pro and Top Dragstar. Two American built cars, an American race car chassis in the uh, Kestrel lane, and a Ben Worthy chassis in the uh, Slick Tricks lane. This is the kind of racing you'll see where drivers will be looking over their shoulders at the top end, waiting for the guy to come past him. They'll be looking at each other just to go into stage. Well, Fabian's pretty much caught him at the finish line, or at eight miles, sorry, but at the finish line, takes the win, 7.37. He was probably backing off at the top end. I couldn't quite hear it because I've got a yeah. very noisy van underneath me. That was that was one on the start line. Also got a very noisy Nick Good under, underneath yeah. me as well. That was, uh, that was Fabian with no 61 light against Matt Peters, 0.18 light. Yeah. He doesn't need to do his burn out over the start line. And this, I guess, will be the longest work of the day. Yes. Because I think so, Nick, yeah. is, Nick is the Nick good in the... Uh, yeah, fastest slick tricks, the slowest, isn't it? Yeah, in the Slick Tricks line, the quickest car. And Dave Russell, the slowest car in the class this weekend. One of the coolest, though. I love that van. So... It's a great way to go, race, isn't it? <laughs> the Marina van looking for an 8.99. That is the class roof. You cannot dial any slower than that. Taking on Nick Good, who's having to wait there for two seconds. But it's a red light for Dave Russell. Nick Good effectively now has a buy run. He would have seen the red light. He's probably going to keep his foot in over the finish line. Goes 6.87. For a nice round win. Nick actually went red himself there as well. Ah, lucky. I wonder. Nick, 11,000 spreads. <laughs> so, Jack Brewster with a 7.90 dial in, taking on Colin Morris. He's got the 8.64 on the board with the Morris Boys Camaro. Jack Brewster had a very good run. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what event it was, but he was racing in the 760 heads up class and he went deep into the sevens. This car is capable of a lot more than a 790, but just taking their time, setting the car up, trying to get it right and leaving a bit of room hopefully yeah so the Camaro is going to leave first by about a second well I'm definitely not giving anything away there that was a 1.1 second reaction time for uh Jack Brewster, Colin Morris would have seen. Yeah, Colin would have seen over his shoulder that the, there was no car chasing him down at the finish line, so he's probably backed off to a 7 or an 8.72. Nice win for him, though. And I think this is probably going to be quite a good race here. Two door cars, but two very good door cars. This is the kind of race you'd expect to see in the States in uh, top... Sportsman. 
to the Okay, Portsmouth. just to let everybody know, the Santa Pod crew are out there once again. It's going to be a pro session coming up very shortly indeed. Uh, we have our flag. It's a flag deals, if you like. They're giving out the flags uh, going into the grandstands and also going along the bottom of the banking this time. So uh, get ready to collect your flag or be handed a flag, I should say. Are ready for pro mod and uh, the other stuff coming up in Q2. So look out for the Santa Pop team. So in the Castro line, Angel Romero, all the way from Spain. Yeah, lovely to see him over here finally. He's been racing all around Europe, and to be fair, he's been putting on one hell of a show. He's been showing us how good he really is. I think he went bang on all day Thursday. Um, he qualified actually in the number four spot. Uh, Patrick Dubois with the Milwaukee uh, Pontiac. Looking for a 6.90. Oh, but a red light for Angel. What a shame. In fact, uh, Patrick went red by 0.1, but... As we've been saying, the person who goes red first will uh, unfortunately lose. And if your tree runs first, that's just the risk you take. I think that with Patrick. Patrick saw the red and left. I just went. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm. But he's been here now. He's proved us how good he is, and so he has to come back. That is the rule. <laughs> good point. Good point. So, Keir Nasty having a dream weekend down into the seven fours. Finally got the combination right in the Dragster. Uh, he's had new torque converter, he's had a brand new gearbox, trying to get the setup dialed in to try and make it so he can actually build the boost. The issue was happening before was he was leaving with no boost, so he would pile the boost at the top end and he'd just dip into the seven to over 170 mile an hour. But now, 752 is the darling. Oh, he goes red. Uh, Callum Swincher in the other lane is not an easy competitor. Goes on a 7.63 for Kieran. Oh, no, no. Decided that one. Well done to Callum. Right, Nancy Smith, pin your ears back. Could you please go and meet Liz Smith at the pod shop, please? Nancy Smith, can you go and please meet Liz Smith at the pod shop, please? Thank you. So, Scott Hauser was supposed to be racing Darren Pert. Um, we haven't seen Darren for quite a while. No uh, issues for Darren in one of the rounds, so they unfortunately have packed up. Not sure if they've left yet, but their um, their pits were looking a bit sad this morning. And by, that, by sad, I mean without race cars and gazebos in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, fire run for Scott Hauser, the one man who you probably don't want to give a fire run to. He'll take it, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, I would just start, try and take it away from it. Nice O3 reaction time. Go. Oh! Look at that. Forty-two with a nine on the forty-three. <laughs> <laughs> and this will be the last pairing of the round. Mark Cassell and Billy Gain. Billy having a wonderful summer, racing absolutely everywhere he can. Racing in all different classes as well. He raced in uh, Pro Street in um, Sweden, which is what we'd call 760 Heads Up. Got a new PB for himself, 761. Nice PB to have when you run in a 760 Heads Up class, yeah, isn't it? Mm. That's nice. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll take, go with that. Yeah, taking on Mark Cassell with the slingshot. Had a really good save at Hockenheim in the final and the first thing he did when he got to the top end apologize for lifting yeah oh well obviously <laughs> <laughs> so mark looking for an 825 billy looking for an 835 so he should all things going well launch 0.1 of a second before mark billy without the nitrous ah. back to bracket racing man So Mark brings the car into pre-stage. Billy brings his car into pre-stage as well. So 
Mark chasing him down, chasing him down, gets there, but no. 8.23 breakout and 8.36 on an 8.35 diner for Billy Gain. 0.4 on a tree for him as well. Steve, I know you can hear me. Uh, Mark was asleep, uh, point 0.2 on a tree. <laughs> yeah, once, the, once Billy had gone to the top end, yeah, we can Mark say was it. Math mathematically ineligible for the win. Yeah, Billy was racing a race that Mark unfortunately wasn't a part of. So that sets the matchups for round two, Connie. Uh, yeah. Um, thing is, though, because of uh, various other things that are going on, I missed three of the pairings. So who won between Alan Didwell and Jack? himself? Oh, Alan, Alan Didwell by yeah. Yeah, there was a by run. Jack uh, okay. didn't make it. Uh, Matt Peters and Fabian Dubois. Fabian. Uh, Matt Peters. Uh, Lit. Lit. And uh, Lee Huxley and Ron Bartlett. Uh, Lee. Lee. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, right, that gives me the pairings then. Tom Atkinson gets the bye. Uh, Billy Gain takes on Andy Thetford. Daniel Giles and Alan Didwell. That's a toughie. Uh, Pete Walters and Thomas Hass. That's a tough one as well. Um, Fabian Dubois and Lee Huxley. That, well, they're all tough. They're all. Yeah. Nick Good taking on Stuart Morris. That's very tough. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Dubois and Scott Hauser, the two dragsters. And. Uh, Callum and Colin wrapping things up. Colin Miller, that is, and Callum Swinchat. Ooh, that'd be nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thank you for the heads up, Daryl, when you talk to me in the tower and you say all these weird things to me, to my face, <laughs> and I won't have a clue what you're on about, but now I will. <laughs> Oh dear. Jets. We've got a couple of jets for you. We've got uh, Fire Force 3 and Firestorm getting through. <laughs> right, Daryl. Daryl, just quickly give him a slap on the wrist for me for being asleep, will ya? <laughs> So, Martin Hill and Roger Goring. Firestorm takes Fire Force. Yeah, and between the two of these two, uh, it's Rog that seems to be getting the march at the moment. Uh, really, really on form and uh, really, well, just getting their first on their pairings. Those of you that I mentioned this quite a few times, I'm going to mention it again. Look at the live stream pictures for those of you that are watching at home. I know everybody that's here basically goes home at the end of the weekend and goes and has a look through the live feed on uh, various media and things. But uh, those of you that are tuned in wherever you are in the world, phenomenal pictures here from Santa Claus Raceway. The two jets, Fire Force, nearest to you, Fire Storm furthest away. Bird out there doing the track prep, getting uh, everybody ready. Yeah, shout out to everyone who's watching in on the, on the live stream, wherever you may be. In fact, actually, let's do that. I'm going to load up the live stream on my, uh, my phone. And everyone, if you're watching in from the live stream, drop a message from where you're watching from. I'm intrigued to see who's watching from where. I know a couple of people watching in from Scotland, Wales, Ireland, all of those lovely people's places around here. But whereabouts are you watching... Far away. I wonder if you've got any Americans or Australians watching in. I'm sure we will. Well, bearing in mind that's uh, well, silly o'clock in the morning in Australia, but uh, that's four o'clock. Good friend like John Willard always tunes in, so there's no reason why nobody else can't. 
Um, it's uh, good morning to everybody in America. It's afternoon here in the UK, and it's uh, in some parts of Europe. It's approaching the evening. It's uh, half past four here at the pod. So in some parts of Europe, half six, half seven. So cars just now moving forward. Or well, support vehicles just uh, moving out of the way. And uh, yeah, everybody's sort of getting into their cars, making sure they've got uh, everything ready. Um, just looking to see who's coming around the corner first. I've got a feeling it is going to be uh, Spencer Tram. Uh, the Dirty Dog 55 is just being pushed forward. That's uh, Rob Small with you've got Brendan Clancy also uh, at the front of the lanes as well. Luke Stevenson, uh, he's in the lanes as well, hoping that uh, he doesn't break anything else in the car. Um, it sounds like it was a, a human destruction, not a mechanical destruction <laughs> in the car from the last run. Did he nearly money shift it? Is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> we do. We do have. We do have strange moments uh, in race cars. One. One that I'm going to pick up on actually, and you'll remember this. Uh, Mark Turner in 760. Oh yes. Uh, with the Supra, he carries a, a GoPro on board, films a run, and then he posted the video later on uh, online. A uh, really, really good run in the car, but as he was getting towards a stripe, the steering wheel came off the spline <laughs> in his hand, yeah. and he's sort of like, oh, what do I do? But that was the weird part, though. But the great it's presence on. of mind was the car was still going in a straight line. He managed to put it back on. Yeah, that's what shocked me. And <laughs> managed to stop the car. That was unbelievable. So uh, Mark Turner actually crewing in top fuel this weekend uh, with uh, Runderfield Motorsport on Duncan's car. But that was uh, an unbelievable video. So, uh, yeah, strange things do happen. And the, the moral of the story there is, Luke, if it does come off, you can put it back on again. <laughs> Right, it is Spencer Tram coming around the corner first, and it is that Dirty Dog 55 Chevy of Rob Smallworth. Yeah, we've already got the long distance award for the live stream. Someone is watching in from the bank. <laughs> cheers, which, Neil. Which river bank is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, cheers, Neil, for letting me know that. <laughs> So, Spencer Tram and Rob Smallworth, your number three and four qualifiers. Well, you put it onto the live stream. I just get the messages. Uh, <laughs> I've got one tuned in from Canada at the moment. Uh, that is uh, Aidan Heatley Smith. Um, he's actually working on the top fuel car whilst watching the live stream. So, he's working on the top nice. fuel car in Canada uh, whilst watching the coverage from here. Right. I'm assuming that actually that would be Smax's car. Yes. So, uh, big shout. Uh, it could be, yes. So, big shout out. And actually, Aiden's going to message me again. Oh, Smax is next to me. Good afternoon, <laughs> Smax. Uh, no, morning, Smax, I should say. Right, thank you for letting me know that you're watching it from home on the live stream as well. That's not... <laughs> right. I guess that... I need to get this one out straight away. It's from our real good mate, Dave Swift, that would normally be racing in this class. Obviously not here this weekend. Just wanted a big, big shout out to everybody in Comp Eliminator. Uh, looking forward to racing in Comp again next year. Dave, we miss you, mate, and uh, look forward to having you back next year. So this is crunch time. Uh, it's, it's an all-run field in uh, Comp Eliminator, seeing as there are 14 cars now qualified. Uh, but points matter. Spencer Tram is, I'm sure, up there in the points race. Struggling with the air this weekend, but no problems at all for uh, Rob Smallworth. He's deep running good into the sevens now. So Rob disappearing into the distance. Aim of the game, get as far under the index as you can. Goes 775 on a 779 index. Spencer goes 1137. No improvement for him, unfortunately, but a good run in the heat of the day. A uh, good 0.3 under the index for him. All right, Luke Stevenson with the golf. This is only his second qualifier. And 
and uh, let's see if he can go quicker than the uh, the 18 second run he did earlier on when he was trying to break the car manually we tried to dismantle it on the run there we go their second gear that's third gear oh that's third gear now and the ET this time is a 16.59. He finds an improvement, but not in position. Stays 14, but well done, Luke. Good He's job getting down the track. for eliminations. <laughs> right, Phil Norman with that beautiful Brickfield Autos Beetle. It really is a stunning car going alongside Dan Williams. Now, I'm not sure if Phil is going to stop at the top end, but if he does, Daryl, you need to look inside that car at the roof. I've already mentioned it, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dan, number two qualifier. Uh, he's already run a 10.61 in the heat of the day. Uh, let's see what he runs here. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if he does throw up a little bit. It is extremely warm out there. And these naturally aspirated cars are going to be struggling to breathe. <laughs> a much better launch for Phil Norman yeah, there, actually. Yeah, it was much better, actually. Didn't bog at all. Uh, Dan Williams, long way ahead. He's going to go... 83, yeah. 24. Uh, a little bit of drop off in performance, but not as really is to be expected in this heat uh, from those two particular cars. Yeah, it's issues when you give them a night run uh, yesterday night where the air's a lot cooler. So, Chris Todd with the first Fiesta route, rear engine to Fiesta, Subaru engine in the back, taking on Brendan Clancy with the double nut Corvette ANA, a nitrous altered. First A stands for the fact it's got a big old engine in it. The N stands for the fact it's got nitrous, and the A basically it means altered, but it's saying it's never seen a production car or production line in its life. That is a purpose-built race car. You've explained that really well. You should explain the offside rule in football. <laughs> Don't, <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris Todd, 780 is index, Brendan's is 7 flat. Whoa. Whoa, Brendan getting it out of shape off the line there. Lovely run from Chris Todd though. He's going to take it all the way through. It won't be a 780, but it's going to be an 895, 153 mile an hour. The crew look chuffed with that and they should be. Okay, next up then, it is Kev Jenkins. That's the car that Chris Todd Cruz on. And going alongside your number one qualifier, likely to stay there, to be honest. This is Nick Williams with the Copo Camaro. Yeah, Nick running very far under his index. Index is 9.00. This car can run as deep as 8.28. Of course, this class runs on a success-based handicap system. So depending on your combination, depends on the index on the scoreboards. Uh, Kev Jenkins with the four-cylinder turbo escort index of 7.80. His PB is 7.2. Uh, it'd be very tough for him to get there this weekend. I love the way the way Camaro launches. It's so phenomenal. smooth. So the Camaro off and running goes 8.25. That's his quickest. Actually improves. And wow. Kev Jenkins, 7.64. His uh, quickest. Yeah, that was an improvement for both of them, actually, in the heat of the day. Very, very impressive indeed. One thing to note on um, the Copo is... <laughs> 
Yeah, one yeah. thing to note on the Copo is it's got charge cooling in it, yes. so it's got an icebox in the back, so the, the heat really doesn't affect it too badly compared to some of the other cars. It's why it can run so far under its index, even though the weather is not what's supporting it at all. That's one of the reasons why they bought a second-hand race transporter, so they could get some big, deep freezers in it. Ah. it uh, they have to carry quite a lot of ice. <laughs> 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 Talk about a full weight car, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, we can. It's ting, 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 yeah. So, Andy Nichols away well with the Civic. Play really well actually. That was a one two a one six zero sixty foot nine one one goes under the index. That was his best run as well. All of these drivers are improving really well in the heat of the day. It's actually is genuinely impressive. He actually moved up a spot there, two hundreds improvement, and just moved up one spot in the qualified order from seven to six. Well, by the looks of things, he actually leap leapfrogged uh, yeah. Terry Newton. Is that Terry Newton? Yeah. Nine one three. Um, well, it's a chance for everybody else to cool down at the moment. We've got Pro Mod, uh, but uh, we're just sorting the cars out in the lanes at the moment. The, uh, the turnarounds are catching a few people out, and uh, we've just got to get people into the lanes. I've only got one car in the lanes at the moment, so in effect, we are going on a break. But it is Pro Modified that will be coming at you next, and that will be followed by Top Methanol, Pro Stock Car, Top Fuel Dragster, Nostalgia Funny Car, uh, Fuel Funny Cars as well, and then, of course, our bike classes as well. Uh, but boy, oh boy, oh boy, what an afternoon of racing we've had and what an afternoon of racing we've still got to come. Uh, <laughs> it's a nice out there, mate. You're nice and warm. Black oh, yeah, shirt, yeah. black trousers, <laughs> doing everything you can to heat up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Costa back in the tower with us. Correct, yes, I am. Well, not too bad. Mick Payne is the first car out in a minute, and the reason he shut up is, well, that the kill switch in the back, it has quite a, a big lever on it, so it was just too heavy, and it switched itself off. So. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Roger Jonsson won't be here for the next round. There was a big plow pile of smoke behind him and there was a rocker arm broken while well, the bolts of the rocker arms were broken and that pushed uh, a push rod out of the valve cover so that was the smoke that, uh, the oil came on the exhaust not a big damage but they couldn't uh, get the, the, the broken bolt out of the head so they are changing an engine now for tomorrow morning no 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 not here no <laughs> mm. All right, just uh, one from me before we go into our last pro session of the day. Obviously, it is a very, very warm day and people are doing what they can to be in the shade. And uh, the umbrellas have blossomed even more now. Uh, but this is just a polite request. I did it earlier on this morning. I'm going to do it again now. Uh, you need to lower them as much as you can as to not obscure the view of people behind you. It's just a polite request. It's a courtesy thing. Uh, everybody has uh, come here to see a lot of racing and they don't really want to look at uh, the back of your umbrella. So I, you know, we're just looking at the live stream pictures now. It's, it almost looks like a beach of Brighton at the moment. And it's not even raining. Yeah, but uh, so just bear that in mind, folks. Uh, just 
you know, huddle under the umbrella. Don't have it high up. Just get it as low as possible. It just allows people that are sitting directly next to you or behind you a better view of the racing. So a polite request uh, to everybody that has got umbrellas there. It's hot for everybody. And uh, it would just be nice. One, go! Oh. Out of steam way before the eighth mile. <laughs> oh my goodness me, that's 60 foot. 0.91 to 60 foot through the finish line. 6.30 only, only 161 miles an hour. 0.917 to 60 foot. 236 to 330. His quickest ever. So the door car goes past the gate, so the drop comes up. That's Tom. Tom all the way. An 01 light to Joe's 07. Joe was clear. <laughs> I like that. That's, that works for me. Mark Bailey goes red. It is Colin Miller into round number two. And in fact, Colin Miller got away with one there. Mark Bailey was only 003 red. But by the virtue of his tree running first, means he loses that race, even though Colin went point two red. Good job, it's not true start then, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is Andy Thetford that's going to go into round number two. A red light from the Chevy. Not a bad one. Thirty-one, maybe giving himself a little bit of room to rest the top end. Very even on the reaction times. He's off it. He's off the throttle and coast. A double breakout. He got lucky there. He was off the throttle quite a while before the finish line. He wins by double O. Think shot's going to leave first. Well, I hate to say this, Pete, but that was definitely green. This weekend, but no problems at all for uh, Rob Smallworth. Deep running good into the sevens now. Go 775 on 779 index. Spencer goes 1137. Whoa. Whoa, Brendan getting out of shape off the line there. Lovely run from Chris Todd though. He's going to take it all the way through. It won't be a 780, but it's going to be an 895, 153 mile an hour. The crew look chuffed with that, and they should be. I love the way the way Camaro launches. So phenomenal. smooth. So the Camaro off and running goes 825. That's his quickest. Actually improves. And Kev Jenkins, 764. His uh, quickest. Yeah, that was an improvement for both of them, actually, in the heat of the day. So Andy Nichols away well with the Civic. Away really well actually. That was a one two a one six zero sixty foot nine one one goes under the index. That was his best run.
qualified with a 604 and a 590 for Matt Derrickson. Up to the point. Long to tie shake away Nicholson. Straight as an arrow. Yes. Well, that's He's a number big improvement two. for David. 586 at 242. That'll be the number two spot, I think. Instantly tire shake for Wally, no issues at all for Roger Hansen. A bit of smoke at the top end, oh. 603, 230 mile an hour. That's issues now. That yeah. looks like a lot of work. That looked like. Uh, I don't see shoot shot. Oh. They both don't have a time now. Mm. They both went before the tree was activated, yeah, unfortunately. Well, they were, Dave was his <laughs> Well, Fred, Fred goes through with the 6.20, his quickest run of the weekend, 2.28. Well, they both didn't leave hard. That's going to be the story of that one. 5.99, though, for Michelle, 2.39, okay. 6.04. For the second pass. Yeah, and he needs to run at least uh, 6.24 with a, with a 5 to be in the show for tomorrow. Yeah, I think that'll be a tall order from completely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brand new car too, Mick. Engine and combination is what he's used to, however. Takes a lot more than that to run a pro mod car. Hmm. Okay. That's a, a different burnout. <laughs> Well, he's not oh, on his own out there because... He's in the uh, wrong lane. Yeah. Uh, is he in the wrong lane or is Wally in the wrong wow. lane? Yeah, Wally's trouble down there. Oh. Well, Wally's going to back up and uh, change lanes very quickly. Oh, is he going to go in the same lane <laughs> as, as me? <laughs> that would be interesting. That's the second time today that's happened. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Another very oh, short nice. burnout. Nicely done. Let's see if Wally can keep his doors closed this one. This that time. would be good, but. Uh... Yeah, I think Wally's probably actually struggling to find the power to hit the tyre with. Yeah, well, then you can see he's lacking a bit of uh, a lot of horsepower. Yeah. Well, he, that does not mean he's not got a lot of it, just compared to the other cars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So Mick Payne with his first attempt with the Duster, taking on Wally Strobel with the Camaro. Lovely launch from Wally Strobel. No time for Mick, uh, Mick Payne, unfortunately. Wally goes 7.04, 198 mile an hour. One of his better runs for the weekend. Unfortunately, Mick... No, uh, no shoots for Mick. Oh, yeah, no shoots for Mick at all. Yeah, no time or speed either. He no. went before the tree ran. Oh. Oh. And uh, towards oh. siding uh, at the top end. He, I think he saved it, didn't he? No. 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 Did, Did he, he make, make it? it? Jinx. No, <laughs> I, thought, I thought he had. Oh. oh, wow. Round of applause for Mick Payne, please. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> Maybe he can lend your underwear. Yeah. <laughs> oh. No. He yeah, was. Great, great yeah. looking run, but unfortunately he left before the tree ran, so he's not going to have a time or speed, unfortunately. No. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget your right uh, just very quickly don't forget your flags ladies and gentlemen on the banking and uh, 
we mentioned about the umbrellas, try not to stand up as well. That's the other thing, as it does block everybody else. <laughs> Beautiful wow. burnout from John <laughs> Webster there. Uh, fair to say he's uh, he's in the 6-2 club at the moment, but yeah. he's the nervous racer at the moment. He's on the bump drop of 6.24. Uh, Peter, Dave Smith, uh, that's it. Yeah. Yep. So everybody with a Swedish flag, please wave it in the air. Show your support for Peter Kunk in the Kestrel beer lane. Let's see them. There we go. Right. Now, everybody with the, the Union Jacks. Yeah. Wave the Union Jacks for John Webster, please. Show him your support. Yeah, plenty of them. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so, John Webster is on the bump spot of 6.24. Uh, Peter is just behind him. Yeah, he was a bit, uh, uh, how you call it, not upset, but uh, disturbed by uh, what, what Dave Schmidt did in the in the pre-stage in the stage yes. light the build went uh, off and on and off and on so and then dave left so we all that, that's also why peter left so yeah there was no time crack, cracking run as well but yeah, it was no very time good very good run boys so fingers crossed for peter if he can make a pass he should get in the field the car is more than capable of it yeah. but john webster is also more than capable of improving his time yeah but that uh, wouldn't lower the bump spot well, it was by a hundred. <laughs> yeah, well, only Peter can go in. Oh, yeah, yeah. But who will be out then? That'll be Wayne Nicholson. So, spalling up the turbos. We're going to bump it into stage. Oh. Lots of tire shape with John Webster. A bit of an issue for Peter. Couldn't Kenny improve on a six? Yeah. No, so oh. close. No. 627, 229 mile an hour. Commiserations to Peter. It's a long way to come from Sweden and a valiant effort as well with a 627. A couple of puffs of smoke and yeah. flames down the track. It was not a healthy run. I can't no. believe I'm going to say this, but a 627 doesn't get you qualified in Pro Mod. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> not anymore. Unbelievable. Yes, he. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't hear what Mick was saying very much. They're very, uh, very quiet at the top end. We can hear you fine, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> right. Okay. Next up. At all. Uh, yeah, you did. But <laughs> an all British match up then with Wayne Nicholson. So everybody with your great British flags once again. Get your Union Jacks out. Show the support. So Wayne Nicholson. And of course, this phenomenal 55 Chevy. Dave Smith, Stranger Thing it's called. Wayne was feeling uh, a lot of vibration um, in his last run. So he was afraid that uh, the rear axle was broken. So they took out the center section, looked at it. Everything looks just very fine. And then they took the wheels off, put it on the, the balancing machine. And there was, well, uh, hundreds of grams of unbalance in the wheel, so they uh, they put the weights in, and hopefully it feels better now. That doesn't even also help you uh, to make a good run or leave the line. If you get the wheel speed, then it will uh, not be better. So 
So Wayne Nicholson, number 15 qualifier. Dave Smith currently in the number 19 spot, wants to get in the field. His run earlier looked strong. It looked like it could have got him in the field. However, no times for him. Again. Actually, very strange because the light came on. Good looking run for Wayne. 6.40, 2.17. Yeah. yeah, it's a shame for Wayne. Yeah. Uh, Dave he Smith, though, it did tickle the stage beam and then rocked back out. Yeah. And uh, didn't go forward again. Does he have a staging issue with the car? Yeah. What, what is it? Six seconds after uh, the, your opponent is in stage, in full stage? Seven. Seven it? seconds, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Wayne was a bit uh, uh, confused, so he didn't go in it. He didn't leave, leave in a two-step. And that, well, then you don't get enough uh, weight transfer on the car, and, well, you could see it, he, he shook the tires. Uh, well, I'm up the top end, ov obviously. Uh, this time around with John Webster. John, possibly not the run you're looking for there, but it seems like you've got a race car this weekend. At the moment, you are qualified too. Yeah, working towards it. Yeah, we shook on that run. We lost, obviously, the early qualifier, so we didn't get any kind of data for the track today but we're, we're building on the car every run anyway so it's a moving target but I was overall happy with the way the car responded went straight up the track just got to get rid of the shake and make it work better well major achievement this weekend just getting in the show so well done sir I appreciate it thank you very much no problem at all John Webster everybody back to you guys yeah we've actually got cameras at the top end now we can well, we didn't see you but we certainly uh, saw the two cars come around <laughs> that's all right that's that's the idea yeah <laughs> Well, so we have the bump spot set officially, and that's uh, 62468. So congratulations to the winner of some t-shirts and other goodies. Yeah. And here we go once again. It is. <laughs> I was going to say the man with the note that needs no introduction, but he stole the introduction, didn't <laughs> burn out instead. <laughs> he did it himself. <laughs> Just as a point of interest, there's one thing that I had been monitoring that was the European record bump spot for a 16 car pro mod field, uh, which was set at t in 2018, and it was 6.232. It was a one hundredth of a second ah. off that. That's too bad. If one car had gone quicker we would have the 15 matched spot, it would have been a, a European record bump. Yeah. With one, only by one, one thousand, ten thousand. Ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> but it would have been. So who are the alternates then? Well, as we stand at Peter, the moment, uh, John Peter, Webster. Wally Strobel, Dave Smith. Okay. Yeah, so this is when all the people in the uh, pairing lanes take a sigh of relief, knowing that they can't get bumped out of the field. They will be racing tomorrow. Yep. But that doesn't mean they're not going to try and get them... Uh, Three little bonus points. They have to step up, step up for tomorrow, because you don't want to meet uh, Jan Eriksson or David in, in round one. Not at all. So fast, ready. Been hanging around the 6.2 second mark. Addy Robinson with a lovely 6.01 earlier. Both will be looking to improve. Freddie, hopefully, deeper into the sixes. The five. Uh, well, the dream would get Freddie yeah. into the fives, but fingers uh, crossed. It's uh, it's a bit warm out there to do that, but stranger things happen. And Andy Robinson looking to go deeper into the fives as well. Oh, deep stage. Yeah, so that probably won't be a five from Freddie. <laughs> oh, big oh, boom! Supercharged burst panel go there, and it's a six seventeen for Freddie Fragerstrom. That's his quickest of the weekend. He's going to move up from fourteen to thirteen. But the burst panel going on Ali Robinson's uh, Camaro there. And the second that went, all the safety comes on and the parachute's automatically deployed. Yep, it's a great system. Yeah. So, uh, Freddie moves up to 13. Andy Robinson's going to stay at number 12. I'm going to try and grab a word with him when he cut and he comes around the corner. Very, he comes around the corner just as fast as he backs up. <laughs> <laughs> And stops within two foot of Dave Smith's car. Um, and Dave Smith's car's actually rolling backwards. Let me just put my foot. Sorry, Dave. There you go. Oh, actually, that's easy to hold, isn't it? Uh, Dave Smith, very quickly, mate, if you wouldn't mind. It's all right, it was rolling back towards Fred's car. Um, Dave, DNQ this weekend, but a massive effort by the whole team, yourself as well, just to get back this weekend. Yeah, it has been, we've been really struggling for parts, so we're just glad to be here this weekend, even though we haven't made Sunday. It is a shame, and uh, you guys doing it for the UK as well. Yeah, trying. 
Well, maybe you could get up on the banking like everybody else with your British flag tomorrow and support all the rest of the guys. I mean, Wayne's had a rough weekend and he just had the burst panel go on there. Um, it's been a rough weekend for the Brits. Not great, but we'll be back. I hope you are, so well done. Thank you. No problem. Your team are here now. Uh, if, I, if you don't mind, I'll take my foot out from underneath the wheel so um, it doesn't run back into Freddie's truck. <laughs> there we go. And uh, I am here with Fast Fred. Have I got a second, guys? Yes, you have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful stuff. So, yeah, it looks just let you know, Darren, as well. Actually. Got uh, 617. What was the speed? 228.9. Well, 229. Okay, Freddie, uh, 617. 200, 617, 228 miles an hour. No, I'm not pleased. I, <laughs> I'm thinking of a five second run, but it's better than before. So we, we're really pleased. Yeah, at, least you, at least you made it. The, the good thing is, you've actually made four runs down the racetrack this weekend every time you got to the finish line. Yeah, thank for uh, Michael Goldquist. He's the tuner, and he's slowed me down. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I didn't like him anyway, but I really don't like him now. Seriously? Yeah, he slowed me down, but it, it's, he saved me. He, I have a you know, one piece of engine. Just one, one engine. So, <laughs> what you mean is you've got to take it easy just to make sure you get through the rounds um, and then just slowly get quicker and quicker, a little bit quicker every time. Yeah, Michael is. Very great tuner, and then take me down so that I take it easy. Don't well, my engine, you know, if you understand me. I can't believe you'd ever take it easy, Fred. Lots of changes on the back end as well. Can you just show me what you've changed on the back here? Because there's a few things, isn't there? Uh, what do you mean, back end? So so yeah, you said 30, uh, 36 now, and we put a little bigger bubble <laughs> in, in the roof. <laughs> Not the roof, in the back end. So the pickup isn't quite as big as it was before. Um, well, the thing is that the speed isn't quite there yet as well. 228 miles per hour yeah. is still a little bit lower than you were before. Yeah, we had a garage door, we call it home in Sweden. <laughs> it's a very big front area and that's no good to drive fast with. But to be honest with you, any time you're here just makes it one of the best events of the year. So from everybody on the banking, I'm sure, thank you for coming as always. Thank you very much. And the crowd is fantastic, like usually. England. <laughs> it's, that's why you love coming. So uh, thank you very much indeed to uh, Freddie Fagerstrom and uh, the whole of the team. Back to you guys in the tower. I'm, I can see um, equipment rolling, so I yeah. presume that's not a good thing. Yeah, Andy Robinson, as you say, burst a, a supercharger, but uh, possibly dumped some uh, oil on the track as well towards the finish line. And there was a trail uh, just past the finish line where uh, Andy was slowing down. Actually, Goodness me. The team. They are working so, so hard this weekend. But uh, it's just these curveballs that keep getting thrown at them, uh, just making life very, very difficult indeed. Well, the thing is, too, that you've got, um, uh, you know, I think Steph, Steph unfortunately summed it up really well. It's just been a crap season for them. Um, I can say that because she said it. That's exactly what she said. But yeah. um, uh, what a big, big shame for Andy. So it's good to know that Mickey Gorquist is trying to slow Freddie down. <laughs> not that we want that, of course. No, he's not. Cool stop. Well, we do have Terry Grant that's just come out to entertain everybody over in front of the grandstand. So, uh, pretty much the world's premier stunt driver uh, strutting his stuff over there in front of the main grandstand. Um, Terry has been part of Live Action Arena for quite a few seasons now. He uses this as his, believe it or not, his training base where he tests out his uh, new routines and everything. Uh, he does go all around the world doing various shows. Um, and he also is... Um, does a lot of the stunt driving on the Bond movies and things like that. And uh, also did, uh, back in the Jaguar days, did a loop the loop uh, with an F pace, I think it was. He did e a corkscrew as well, didn't That's he? That's it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah why, would, uh, why would you? Yeah, well, because you can. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Luke Robinson. He's at home with his wife. Oh, yes, she's course, pregnant Luke, from, yeah. uh, from a twin and she's having a really hard time especially with this weather, and, uh, well, I wish all the best to you both. Yeah, just quickly, what you said about shout-outs, I've had a message come through, which is quite uh, a cool one, actually. Let me just see. Wait, wait for my phone to load now. Of course, now I've brought it up. Uh, it's from Joseph Harris saying, can you please give a shout-out to John Pierce for me? He's come all the way from California this weekend, wow. and even he's complaining it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> so, very welcome to John, uh, John Pierce. Sorry. Uh, I'm not sure I can spot you with all the sunlight coming into the tower, but yeah, welcome over from California. Well, wherever you are, 
uh, watching the coverage from here uh, from Santa Barbara Raceway, either be on the banking or the grandstands, or if you're watching it at home, I'm so glad that you joined us to uh, keep yourselves entertained and uh, having a, a good time. Yeah, I've got another message through as well from my mum, actually. I know my mum's on the bank out there somewhere. She says, can you give a shout-out to Leo, who's 11? Um, she's, it's uh, her little friend on the bank who's here with his dad, his brother, and his uncle. So, hello, Leo, wherever you are. <laughs> As Terry Grant comes down the back and actually starts to scare all the security guards out of the way as he starts doing... He's actually doing donuts around Lee Bowers, who's doing a burnout himself. That's quite cool to watch. Oh, we got both of them, have we? Oh. <laughs> this is going to get the crazy, nasty. The crazy twins. <laughs> there we go. Give him a round of applause as he rides past. Although I don't know how much you guys want to actually cheer for them because the more you cheer for them, the crazier they become. <laughs> Yeah, but the reason for this at the moment, we do have an oil down at the top end, which we're in the process of clearing up. And uh, as soon as that is done, we'll continue with uh, FIA Pro Modified Bump Session. Uh, but the, uh, the bump spot has now been set, so everybody that you're going to see is qualified. It's all about where they qualify and uh, the little extra points you get for being in the top three. So uh, that's basically what's still to come uh, in Pro Modified. But we'll let the stunt boys get on with what they're doing. I'll give a show of appreciation there for Lee Bowers. Uh, change of bikes for him this year. Didn't take him long to get used to these ones, though, did it? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's on Enfields now. Uh... Well, actually, after his... Um, he was out here entertaining you all yesterday, and then Super Street Bike started running, and he was sat on the tank of his bike watching Super Street Bike. <laughs> Don't blame him. Well, Live Action Arena has finished for the day over there, so they had nothing else to do. So, uh, good to see them coming around here to play. Okay, so Lee Bowers is out there. Terry Grant is uh, lined up, ready to go. But I'll tell you what we'll do just for a moment. The Nitro FM 96.2, if you can take the airwaves over as... Uh, there we go, yeah, Terry Grant now appears in front of the grandstand to start his side of the, uh, the stunt show off. And, of course, Lee Bowers continuing on the bike. We'll be back with you very, very shortly indeed with a bit of an update. I'm just going to find out uh, how long we reckon it is at the top end, but... Uh, Nitro FM, just for a moment, airwaves are yours.
Right, just to give you a little update uh, from the top end, we reckon about eight minutes, so call it ten to be round figures, uh, just for the top end to be clear. So we have heard from the top end, there's not too much to do. Uh, basically, oil just off the shutdown area, oh, sorry, into the shutdown area, so they're just dealing with that, uh, but less than ten minutes. So not far to go on this one, and uh, just a chance for maybe just to take a comfort break but when you come back, it will be the continuation of Chrome Modify. Just a reminder about uh, the umbrellas and uh, try and staying uh, as low as possible. Uh, if you want to stand up, stand at the back of the banking uh, so you're not obscuring everybody's view. That's one thing I'm pretty conscious of this weekend is trying to make sure that everybody can see all of the action and all of the track. Nitro FM, back to you. We'll take it back when we get ready to race once again.
Well, we're pretty much ready to get going. But before we do that, we need everybody to keep their eyes peeled on the roadways because we are looking for an MG key fob that's dropped off a car somewhere on one of the roadways or paths. Um, the reason is it's going to be somewhere from the pits to the main gate, we think, because this car has gone off site and uh, it was on the roof of the car. It's fallen off. And when they've reached the destination, they switch the car off, and it now they can't again. start it again <laughs> because the key's not with the car. So keep your eyes peeled for an MG key fob somewhere in a roadway or pathway at the track. And if you find it, please let us know in the tower. It will be of huge assistance. And uh, yeah, we really would could do with that. Please let us know if you find it. Here we go, Pro Modified. We continue the qualifying session number four. Nice side by side burnout. That's what we need. So I love these live stream pictures as well. Yeah, it's great. I'll just stay home next time. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't no, be the no, same no, without no, you to make yeah. fun of, Dick. <laughs> I think even if he wasn't here, you'd still make fun of him. Mind you, having said that, the pictures are so good, you could, could commentate them both. Oh, yeah. Yes. Just a bit of time quite delay a would catch bit you of delay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not, not too much. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you could do it, although we could do interviews with drivers. Yeah, but I won't. Don't bit worry. Bit so, um, at the moment, Peter Kunk is on the outside looking in. He's number 17. Yeah. Um, but I he not, can't. I'm not giving anything away to say he was not overly pleased at the top end. I don't know whether you saw any of that, but uh, he was but he will be first to turn it. So if anyone breaks, like you said, Dick, there's a lot of people with repair work going on. Jean de Le Mans, I presume, well, might be out. Do you know? Uh, okay, so here we go then. It is Michel Turenne and Bruno Bada, your next pair. The field is set. Well, the bump spot is set at 624. Nobody else can bump in. We All have right. got two five-second door cars here. They have run fives this weekend. The top 11 are in the five-second zone. Bruno currently number 10, Michelle number 9. Huge wander over to the centre line for Bruno Bada. Goes over the line to a 595, 239 nice. mile an hour. Um, probably not what Michelle was expecting with a 606. Good mile an hour though, 242. Yeah, looked very good to run. But the important thing for Bruno, who moved up from 10 to 8. Ah. And so far quickest in the round. I know we've got lots more cars yeah. to come, but yeah. uh, we, it's something that uh, Dick, you always reflect on. Yeah. I think to, I think position two through seven in the championship is up for grabs. The whole thing is just so mm. tightly packed with Pro Modified. As yeah, it is. is. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. It really, really is. So, well, comes John, John Erickson is out of reach, but only the, the number two and three spots, uh, yeah. th uh, two, three and four, are still to decide. All right, next up, it is that voodoo hemi of Mark Hartfeld. Against Mickey G, of course, Mickey Gilchrist. Don't forget your flags, the Dutch flag and the Swedish flag for this pair. So the big tea tray rear wing of the Voodoo Hemi of Mark Hartfeld. That's the uh, that's basically the tallest rear wing allowed in Pro. I was just going to say it's yeah. it's the only wing car wing that is allowed to be uh, over the the top of the roof. Yeah, because it was originally made like this, and it looks cool. A million years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, over fifty years ago, I don't know about a million. Uh, Michel Turin, uh, he is in the number ten spot. I don't think either of these two are going to affect that match. But no, we're just getting faster and faster as the pairings come through. Uh, Mickey G is number nine. Mark Hartfeld number six. Mickey G's in the bottom half with a 5.9 second run. Yep. 5.96. So 11 cars have qualified in the five second zone. Absolutely outstanding. But they are all going to give him, give it their, their all their best to well, move up on the ladder. Everybody wants to be number one, two, or three. Yeah, and it's those pesky little bonus points for qualifying yep. as well. They yep. really yep. do want those, especially yep. uh, the, the uh, well, 
in the top set. Expertly pedal from uh, Mickey Gilquist. Mark Hartvell, 6-0-0-237 mile an hour. Doesn't uh, improve. No. Uh, Mickey Gilquist pedaled it like he was going to get back on it and try and go for a full pull, but lifted shortly after. So I don't know if he spotted something. Well, I'm up the top end with Bruno Bada. 5.95 that time, Bruno. Was that kind of what you were looking for? Oh, no. I don't think it was so fast. 95. Can't believe it. What, it was that quick, yeah? Yeah, it was a hard, a hard run for driving down. The whole way, fish tailing the car. I think it was very close at the center line. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've still done very, really well in the championship this year. It's not been a great year with what happened back in, uh, back in May, but you're into the 580s. A 584 is going to be your, probably your quickest run this year. That's really good. Yeah, but I think we cannot go back in the 580s. I miss a part, it was broken, and this, that will cost me one tenth at least. One part cost you a tenth of a second? Yeah, it's unbelievable, but I have tried the last two races and always I lost more than one tenth. My goodness me, I'm not, am I allowed to ask what the part is or is my life in danger if I ask you? <laughs> no, it's a gear, a gear race that oh, they don't okay. get. Yeah. So that makes that much difference? Yeah, I haven't believed it before, but now... I have seen it. Well, good luck tomorrow, Bruno. It's always a pleasure seeing you here. Okay, what thanks was the, a lot. Yeah, see you tomorrow. What was the part he was missing? We couldn't hear it. A gear ratio. Ah. Yeah, Bruno. Bruno's known for talking loudly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was. It's part of the gear ratio. That's why it's a mate. Like you were saying before, Dick. Um, they're very sensitive. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that's almost overly sensitive. Yeah. I know three cars now who are running with gear ratios. They do not prefer. Uh, the old 51 is one, Michel Thor is one, and Mats Eriksson are the ones I know that are not running the, the, the their favorite ratio for this track, because they broke it. Here we go then. Not just takes supercharger, Jimmy Orland with the old 51, one of the cars you just mentioned running what the gear ratios they don't, they don't prefer. Yeah, well, for, for Jimmy it's uh, in the, the second gear ratio. Ah, okay. And, and the most important is, is first gear. Yes. Uh, and Bobby Wallace. Both qualified nicely. Uh, Bobby, your number seven qualifier with a 5.95. Jimmy Orland qualified fifth with a 5.90. Both will be looking to step up on this run. Crew climbing into the O51. They're going to give them the thumbs up. To move forwards, there we go. So, Bobby up to the blue line. Jimmy comes forward as well. shake. Jimmy Orland actually backed off because he thought Bobby was going to come into his lane. That made a hard move about 200 feet out for Bobby. Yeah, Jimmy had an issue. They were trying to fix it uh, after the burnout. But you could hear it, uh, it didn't go on the two-step on the ref limiter. So then it's all uh, useless to, to leave. Mm. And you all, that, sh that showed. Well, it's unusual for Bobby Wallace to have any kind of busted <laughs> run. But uh, up the top end with Mark Hartvelt. Mark was just saying, you thought that was a good one. You thought it was quicker than the 6 -0. Yeah, for sure. I, I thought a 5.9 or something. It was uh, no uh, tire shake, nothing. So it was straight. Uh, yeah. Well, you've had a really great season. Down into the 5.80s for this big old thing is really good. Yeah, it's a really fa good car, fast car. I'm really happy with it. Yeah. And uh, you're going into eliminations tomorrow with, uh, I think, 5.92 as the best. But it's still going to be great. And the good thing is the weather is the same tomorrow as it is today. So you know what, we, what you know what's going to, well, you know what we're going to deal with anyway. Yeah, it's still hot tomorrow, but we see what happened. Uh, I'm not, I think I'm the s on, the, on the sixth spot uh, still. Five. So, uh, yeah, we see. I do my best. Go on, Dick. 
Five, uh, fifth place. Fifth place, actually. Oh, fifth place. Even better. Oh, no, 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 no. Dick, sorry. Dick, oh, crossed, it out. Dick uh, crossed it out and changed it on the qualified order, yeah. didn't you? It is six. No, no. It, is, it is six, sorry. It is six, right? I didn't yep. know Dutch people couldn't count. Seriously. <laughs> anyway, it is six, actually. Thanks. Tell Dick, not me. It's not my fault, anyway. But uh, <laughs> anyway, it's always good to see you, and uh, good luck tomorrow, sir. Thank you very much. No problem. Mark Carver, everybody. <laughs> nice to everybody at home as well to see the faces of the men and women that drive these things and hang on to them as well. So back to you chaps in the town. Okay, so it is the Green Goblin. Not green anymore though. And uh, I can't believe the amount of work they put into that front end and almost getting it look like yeah. nothing had happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously he did well, go into the field on uh, his run yesterday, but a huge amount of uh, repair work and uh, got it done. And as you were saying, Dick, dust and written everything, everywhere 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 so literally i had to yeah. take that car apart completely but the, the blower was off but even the sand and everything was inside the blower so yeah. they were lucky that the engine was shut up if the sand goes through the blower in the engine then you're well, done so uh, that is uh max erickson he's number four qualifier at the moment with a 590 just ahead of him with a 587 andre arneva from estonia with the mustang do we have the Estonian flags here yes, as well? Yes, we do. I don't see them. We can't see them very well yeah. because the sun is shining <laughs> straight in our eyes. <laughs> but yeah, the flag of Estonia. Certainly got one with the uh, the crew chief. He always puts one in the car when he does his burnout. One turbo car, one supercharged car. And your number three and four qualifiers. It looks like much is a little bit pointed to the left from, from up here. Yes, it does look like that. Nod to tire shake for Matt shuts the car off. No problems at all for Andrew Zano, but he's going to power through. Will it be another 580? 593. 246 mile an hour. I thought that was a bit better than that. Yeah, well, it looked. It didn't look so quick. It was straight, but it didn't look so quick. But I had the discussion with David yesterday after his run. It was arrow straight. And it, then it doesn't look quick anymore. Yeah, but interesting fact there, uh, 1.99 back half. Oh, oh wow. So wow. sub two second back yeah. half of the track there, but the turbo cars. That's what the turbos do. do, yeah. yeah. Okay, fellas, I'm up the top end with Bobby Wallace, who is actually still the leading like for UK Pro Mod. Not your normal clockwork weekend, but you said you're saving it for race day. Yeah, no, it's not been normal for us. Um, not going on this year's, you know, this year's performance, but um, it's a chance for us to try new things. Um, and we've we've not had the weather like this this year, so it's it's totally different. The good thing is you're in there for race day. Uh, Five ninety five, still pretty stout, and uh, more of those whole shot wins tomorrow over the Dutch. What do you reckon? Well, that's the plan. Yeah, we always seem to pull it together on race day, so that's the plan. Well, keep it up, mate, because the only person that's actually beaten you so far this year is uh, Jan Eriksson. Yeah, yeah, we are looking for revenge at this meeting. Good man. Well, sorry, this year so far this year, obviously we still got two more race days to go. But uh, well, I mate, good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Back to you guys in the cell. Well, this is number one and number two in the qualified order. Can I just say hello to uh, Johnny Lindbergh, who's tuned in from Indianapolis. Hi, Johnny. Nice to know you're yeah, watching. Very good Enjoy. afternoon to Johnny. Uh, regular visitor at the pod back in the day when yep. uh, he lived in Europe but he's uh, yep. With now lives two funny uh, cars yeah hey, he's still tuning Johnny Ox's car this weekend actually is Johnny from, from there Hungary, probably yeah. Yeah. yeah so David Vector and the man you were just on about Yanni Eriksson undefeated this season he is currently in at the number two spot oh he's number one spot sorry yeah. there. That's, that's weird on yeah, the time screen there, isn't an it? Anomaly on the time Okay, so, Yanni Eriksson, not only is he undefeated this season, he's your current number one qualifier. David Vector, well, I'm sure we'll have something to say about that this session. The little points do matter, especially in the fight for second. Well, they're good friends off the track, but they just want to murder each other on the start line, that's for sure. They want to get to the other end first, even if it's just qualified. Your last pair in Pro Modified. <laughs> Tire shake for Yanni Eriksson, but he's driven through it. It's side by side. Yanni's going to get there first. 586 and a 585. What a side by side run that was. And another three points for David. <laughs> Great. And Short two points for, uh, for Jan then. 
Yeah, short numbers. David Vector, 0.96 to 60 foot. Jan was 0.98. Uh, 384 to 387. And then at the stripe, 585. Dave Vector, 586. Jan Eriksson. The field is set. Yeah, pro mod. Yep. Yes. Pretty nice time flips. Well, I'm up the top end with uh, Andre Arnover, who's actually quite happy with the 593. You said A to B was the most important thing for that one. Yeah, we changed quite a lot in the car because we were struggling with this hot weather. Wednesday, I got somehow 588, but now three runs, it was very hard. Does that mean Peter couldn't yeah. So if, um, well, you did go 587 yesterday, but that was, honestly, seriously, you were less than probably a foot away from, you know, like 20 centimetres away from the centre line when you ran that yesterday. Yeah, I, I was almost ready to pick the foot because I, I saw, is it coming back or not? But heavy balls, it's have to hold it if you want good time. Yeah, it, we were saying that, it's quite amazing on, on this racetrack, you can still hold the pedal down even though you're right on the centre line. Yeah, this is amazing, that's why I can do that. If you start running no, no matter where, they don't prep exactly till end of the track or side by side that good. So we know track is always here. You can you can hold and push a little bit harder. So it, it's good. Well, there's lots of Estonian flags up there on the grandstands and on the banking too. Let's hope they're waving tomorrow. Oh yeah, we, we do best what we can. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much for coming. Andrei on over everybody. Back to you guys in the tower. Okay, it's time now for Top Methanol, the last session for them. And I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Yes, Dick, fantastic. Good to see you. I know you've got a lot of people to catch up with in yep, the pits yep, this yep. evening as uh, they get ready for eliminations tomorrow morning. So the Bill Sport dragster of Tony Brinson down there. Whoa, straight into the tower <laughs> with the nitro. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> I thought you gone straight in my eyes as well. Woo. And for the first time that I can remember this weekend, the fans are on. And it's a tiny bit, a tiny bit of a headwind. Uh, probably about a two mile an hour headwind. It's not much. But at least the fumes can actually disperse a little bit better than they did earlier. Tony Brinson going to put it onto the high side. Little bit of tyre shake, no problem at all. All the way through goes 543, 262 mile an hour. And that's only good enough for the number four spot. He's got a bracket methanol dragster, well, uh, an A fuel car. He went 542 as his best, and he just went 543. Uh, on that one there, 262 mile an hour pass, but uh, well on there to Tony Bridgerson. Oh, they were, yeah, they were trying to step it up, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Up the top end with David Vector and Jan Eriksson as well. Dave, um, was that a 585 for David that time? Sorry, I know it was a couple of pairs ago. Uh, yes, it was, and so, he was quickest in the round. Yeah, quickest of the round, three extra points. Uh, you said you had your hands full in the shutdown area, though. Oh, yeah, it was, it was all over the place. Uh, I think I saw the left wall and the right wall almost, but uh, yeah, it's here, it's safe. You do that kind of stuff in the shutdown area. You've spun it out before. Yeah, twice, actually. <laughs> oh, well, at least you saved it this time anyway. But the good thing is you've got a really, really good car going into race day. Um, you've, you've picked up a lot of extra points in qualifying this weekend. Yeah, we did. We picked up, uh, I think, nine points, actually. Uh, still not enough to keep uh, Bruno behind me if he goes one round further than me. So, you know, it's, it's going to be exciting tomorrow. It's going to be great fun, isn't it? Uh, good luck tomorrow, and uh, it's always a great time when you're here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, David Vector, everybody. Back to you. So, Lynn Floysvik. Doing a burnout off to one side of the start line. Obviously, he doesn't want to ruin the surface. That's already down. And come here comes forward uh, Sylvia Strouch with the enemy. <laughs> So, Lynn, I believe, is currently your number two qualifier. Oh, no, number three qualifier, sorry. It's that tight at the top end. Well, it's 
it's <laughs> mad because the three funny cars are covered by less than two hundredths of a second. It is that tight. So Lynn in the fight for the championship with the man in the other lane and of course Sandra Bellio who's just pulling around the back of the tower now. All three of these drivers fighting to have the number one on their car next season. Interestingly, they've lifted the body on Lynn's car. They don't usually do this on uh, a methanol machine. Yeah, being cautious, making sure. However, they've been given the thumbs up. They will be moving forward. Combinations on these machines are identical. The only thing that does differ between them is the fact that one's a dragster, one's a funny car. On race day, the funny car would be getting a 0.22 second head start. However, this is qualifying, so they'll leave together. Silvio needs at least a five. No, no. Uh, it's going to be a solo for the dragster. There was an issue. Well, he needs at least a 5.30 to get the number one spot. Right in the wheelie bar on that one there. Oh my goodness me, it's a shame, had to click it early to a 657, 145, but Silvio carried those front wheels for at least 150 foot out there. Really did launch like it meant it. Uh, when I say launch, look at the 60 foot, 0. 0.88 for a methanol dragster. Just getting the replay on the, uh, the live stream there, well maybe about 100 foot out those front wheels are carried. But uh, that was outstanding, such a shame that the run didn't go all the way through. Well, talking of all the way through, I'm up the top end with Tony Brinson. We're just discussing the last time you ran here with the top fuel car. It is nearly 30 years ago. I mean, how's that possible? You must have been 10 years old then. Yeah, nine, I think. Oh, that's OK. That's not so bad. I'm sure they let you drive these at nine. Um, 5.43, 5.42 earlier on today. I know you were looking for a little bit more than that. Yeah, we were looking for at least a tenth more. But we have a problem with the control box now. It's broken, so we don't have the control on the air side. Uh, fuel side, sorry, fuel side. So we do that uh, the old-fashioned way, so we try to keep it up and see what we can do tomorrow. Well, it did pretty well, both runs. I mean, uh, Lasse said to me earlier, um, he, he did say that that's what you were doing back as, it used, back as you used to do it. But I didn't know quite that's what, exactly what he meant. Well, I think uh, it takes 10 years more. We started in 79, so... <laughs> Fair enough. Well, it was really, really good to see you here back at Santa Pod. I've got great memories of, uh, of you racing here from years ago. I'm sure you have as well. Won a few events here in Top Fuel as well. Oh, yeah. It's lovely to be back in Santa Pod. And all the crew, uh, crew, sorry, the crowd, the fans, all, everybody here is fantastic. So we love to be here. And now we have good weather. There's no rain this time. I know, it all stayed in Sweden, I think. I think that's where it was. Is that right? Uh, anyway, but <laughs> good luck tomorrow, sir. Thank you. No problem at all. Tony Brinton and everybody. Yeah, a little bit of uh, weight on track. Ian's just hopped into the tractor. Uh, I think you'll be able to see better from there, down there, Daryl. What's going on with the Silvio's car? I can't because I'm round the corner, mate. All I can see is a big hedge. Ah. Um, <laughs> well, big bank, anyway. I can, I can poke my head round the corner. The only thing I can think is the car might have locked up, actually. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, Ian's just heading up down the track with the tractor. Yeah, we can see uh, some marks uh, in front of the car. Actually, I'm looking in the wrong lane. I'm looking at uh, the, the marks where uh, Lynn was. In fact, uh, that's where... <laughs> there's me. <laughs> uh, Ian has just gone in the tractor to sled towards the start line oh, okay. in the Slick Tricks lane. I was wondering that. That's fact, uh, looking on the live stream, we can see Silvio's car now uh, being towed at the top end by the quad, and uh, that will be coming round the corner very, very shortly indeed, heading... Uh, around the corner to Daryl and the rest of the uh, top end crew. Well, the answer is, yeah, they're just towing the car off. Um, Silvio's team have come up to get him, but there's no Silvio. Um, <laughs> he's still out on the racetrack. <laughs> He'll be around in a minute, I'm sure. Yeah, both drivers poised and ready in the funny cars behind the tower. Sandro Bellio and Johnny Oxer. Uh, gave a shout out to Johnny Lindbergh, who's watching in at the minute. I think one of the reasons why he probably is watching in is because he's tuning Johnny Oxer's car this weekend from all the way out there. The one is a modern technology that you can tune these cars <laughs> remotely. Uh, I was, uh, I mean, I've been watching literally the tuning happening with, uh, with the cars in the pits and they just plug a laptop in, get the, uh, the dongle 
so it picks up the internet. And I can see them changing the graph. I just sat there watching it. It's just like, this is, this is amazing. <laughs> and then, you know, the driver sort of said, right, I want a bit more of this and this and that. And then the, the tuner just, just does it remotely. It's, it's incredible to watch. Oh, wow. So Personally, not... I have not got a Scooby Doo what they're doing, <laughs> but apparently it makes it work better. Uh, Scooby Doo is a professional term for having no idea whatsoever. Correct. Yes. So, side by side, funny cars. Sandra Bellio and Johnny Oxer. Sandro's going to be coming through first to do his burnout. In fact, that was pretty much side by side. I like that. So these two separated by less than two hundredths of a second at the minute in qualifying. 5.53 and a 5.55. Both of these guys, if they were racing last weekend in Indy, would have done a fantastic job. They would have qualified pretty well as well. Yeah, we talk about Indy. It is big go, as they call it. It's the US Nationals. It's the biggest, baddest drag race on the planet for the NHRA. Um, six days of racing uh, normally over 600 teams take part uh, they do uh, class eliminations for sports and racers and then they go into eliminations proper and a lot of that is done before the pros even come yeah. out and then the eliminated racers in the sportsman cafes then go to other racetracks whilst uh, so they can get a bit more racing in it it's, it's incredible uh, very fortunate to go to the US Nationals uh, four years ago and uh, I want to go back However, we're racing here at Sanderpod in the United Kingdom. Johnny Oxer and Sandro Bellio. Tire shake instantly for Johnny Oxer. Sandro Bellio's tire might not be representative. 569, yeah, he rolled yeah, through rolled slightly. It come, it's come up as a 1.0760 foot, but it definitely wasn't that. Yeah, the, but the, the car was moving and it tripped the red light by 0.27. Uh, that was almost leaving, the tree, leaving before the tree ran, so he was actually lucky to get an ET at all, but it was not representative, 569, 260. Uh, problems for Johnny. Just trickling through with a 1504 at just 44 miles an hour. I'm guessing I won't be talking to him in a minute then. Uh, well, certainly not Johnny, because I don't think he's going to make it all the way there. Yeah, well, he's, um, he's already off the drag, actually. He is, yeah, <laughs> first exit. <laughs> So, what was the problem? Tire shake again? Yeah, it looked like, in actual fact, if I just look down there, uh, you can see 460 it. foot, we can see the chatter marks uh, of those tyres just trying to fold over themselves. So, the track's clear already, well, and it is pro stock. Well, neither of them are here. Sandro's not actually, even with the 569, Sandro's not down the top end unless he's going push around the corner in a minute. I think he is, yes. Okay, fair enough then. So, FIA pro stock, last qualifying session. These little points are all, all important in this session specifically because they're so tight. Yeah, the whole field is spread by four hundredths of a second. Uh, on track, though, it is Simon Eckengren with the retro Dodge taking on Robin Naren. Robin finally got the car, uh, wrestled down the track in the last session this morning. Looking to improve on this session, though. Well, they'll both, I'm sure, be overjoyed with uh, six point six, anything starting with 6.6. .6, I think that's probably about, in this, uh, these atmospheric conditions, that's about all you can coax out of a normally aspirated 500 cubic inch big block engine. Simon Eckengren had, up until that run earlier today, had two great runs yesterday. The only car that got down the racetrack two times in a row. Mm. Uh, didn't get a burnout earlier on, so that's why they clicked him off. And uh, two busted runs for Robin Noren yesterday. Robin is in with a shout of the one of three in with the shout of the championship. Fantastic effort for him to get here this weekend after crashing the cards just two weeks ago, not even two weeks ago no. in Hockenheim. Uh, borrow his friend's car, which just happened to be his old car. And that car does know how to win on this racetrack. He won in 2018, 2019 at this event. Let's see what they can do. 
while they're both into pre-stage. Just got to roll those few extra inches forward to go into stage. No tyre shake at all. Simon's car moving over towards the wall a little bit, but he's reeled it back in side by side. 668 with an eight. Your new <laughs> number one qualifier by less than a thousandth of a second. That is insanely tight. 6.6886 is number one. 6.6892. That's six ten thousandths of a second difference between one and two. The only Rob thing you didn't say, fellas, was who ran it? Oh, uh, Simon. Simon. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So number one qualified by a thousandth of a second, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, did, um, how did it go in the other lane for Robin? Yeah. Uh, 672206. Uh, that was his... Uh, quickest run of the weekend, but he stays in number four. Yeah, this is all going to be about their clutch foot, isn't it? I'll catch up with Simon in just a couple of moments. I can only imagine just how overjoyed Michael is down there on the start line at the moment with that run. <laughs> I told you anything beginning with a 6 6 would be good. However, <laughs> can he hold the number one qualified spot to the end of this session? We're well, about to find out. First to, well, first to last is four hundredths of a second. That's just so tight in That's exactly how it should be. Yeah. Well, it could change. Mike Malgram. With the Pontiac. Actually, got a car name now. It's the Black Devil. And uh, Stefan Henry with the dart down there. So at the moment, uh, 668 with a 9 for Mike. And Stefan, 670. Well, Michael's just watched his number one spot fall in the same lane he's in now. So he knows it is possible. However, uh, all he's going to improve by is a thousandth of a second. If he can do that, he will be the number one qualifier. There's also the tricky task of the fact that Stefan's in the other lane who is quite capable of doing the exact same thing. If you ever stage the shallowest you've ever staged in your racing career, now is the time because we are talking tiniest margins now. in pre-stage there goes Stefan it's all about getting into stage just tickle those beams they're both good at it Stefan actually rolled in quite far but their door handle to door handle I think Michael might have a nose in front as they go over the line ah. 677 doesn't improve 672 for Stefan uh, no improvement for him so the field is set with Mike Malgram in at number two Stefan Henry at number three Simon holds on to that number one well talking of Simon I have a very happy young man from Sweden up here is this your first ever number one qualified spot as well yeah yes it is yeah, yeah. I think so um, but 660 it's by a thousandth for a second but that's what pro stock racing is all about isn't it it's always so so close um, you've had three fantastic runs down the track this weekend yeah well, this weekend has been really good uh, and the Prosto class is really tight and that's always fun. And 1,000 is enough. Well, 1,000 is enough for number one, but the whole field is four hundredths of a second as well. That, that can be all down to your left foot or someone else's left foot tomorrow, yeah? Yes, it is. You've got to be awake tomorrow. Yeah, definitely that. Um, do you think there's any more in it this weekend? Or that's probably the, about the best you can coax out of it in this kind of weather. In this area, it's six to eight is pretty good. Really good. Good luck tomorrow, sir. And it is great to see the Dodge back on top again. Thanks a lot. No problem at all. Uh, well done to Michael Shirkis as well, if he can hear this. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine how delighted he is at the moment. We're just waiting for him to get up here to the top end. I'll have a word with the other guys in a second. So, um, up next, folks, I presume is Top yeah, Fuel. It is indeed. Have we got yeah. a moment? Or Yes, you have. Yeah, you're fine. Fantastic stuff. So, the man who never ages, uh, Michael Malgren. Um, I think, did Michael go 72? Do you remember? No, no, he didn't. Uh, um, 77, I think, was yes, it? Yeah. Correct. So you got down the racetrack, Mike. 77, probably not what you were looking for. Um, what have you got to do tomorrow to, to sew it up? We've got to sort out the clutch. We have a major clutch issue this weekend, and uh, we just need to work on it. We made a decent run with the 68 yesterday. Uh, fried the disc and clutch, so we had to put in a new clutch. And now we fried it again, so we'll see what tomorrow... Okay, is it, is it the weather, is it the track that's causing you the problem, or is it just one of those th racing things? It's the whole package. I mean, it's very tricky, you know. So, uh, congratulations to Simon and Sjöqvist. They made a hell of a run, and just I guess they took my number one spot here with a couple of fouls. Uh, it is only a thousand. Well, that's what Pro Stock is, though, isn't it? It's, that's why we love it. It's always a thousandth of a second everywhere. 
Tough deal. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck tomorrow, and uh, it's always good to see you back here at Santa Ford. Thank you for coming. Thank you. No problem. Well, the glue bird is out there just putting down some more traction for our fuel cars that are going to be running uh, next. Uh, head of the lanes, it is Suzanne Callin with the Slick Tricks Santa Pod Raceway. Dragster just waiting patiently to go out there. Thumbs up from Suzanne as uh, she is a feature on the live stream at the moment, actually. Are they in place? Uh, no, they're still in the pairing lanes. Oh, OK, no problem. We've got, we got time then. Oh, we don't need to see that. Never, definitely don't need to see that. <laughs> Sorry, that's, um, that's Michael and the rest of the team for the Dodge turning up. Well, the other Dodge in Pro Stock is actually number one for once. Uh, I think that was a 72 for you. So at least you've had uh, some good runs down the track this weekend. You've got some good uh, data going into tomorrow. Yeah, it feels good. I mean, we, of course, we like to go faster than we did now, though. But uh, it's, it's, it's hot. We haven't had that much of experience to tuning a car on the track. The track is awesome, but you know the weather for us to get it down. Uh, you need to be soft to leave it good. Uh, then of course you need to hook up up there, and it's it's hard to find the right combination. So we need to practice more on this. So what have you got to do to sew it up tomorrow? Uh, we're pretty much around where we are now. I mean uh, we're close to the number one qualifier, and as you see, it's just a few hundred. So it's it's all going to be uh, set up by the tree, I guess. Very much. Only four hundredths between number one and number four. Yeah, so I mean, the clutch foot will be uh, the best weapon tomorrow. That's Your left foot is your best weapon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan Enrid, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Stefan, uh, going to go into race day. I'm not exactly sure. Is it going to be... Uh, who's racing each other in round one? Because it's number one against number four. It may be dodge against dodge. We have to wait. Uh, yes, I believe you're right. It is. Uh, it's, it's... Well, whatever. It's just going to be so tight because... I think, looking at the numbers, uh, it will be one loss on the start line, not at the stripe. Uh, reaction times are really going to make a difference uh, tomorrow. Got to be on your A game. It's one thing, as uh, Mike was saying about the clutch and uh, getting all the performance bit right, but if the driver uh, becomes the weakest link, if you like, uh, then it could be over before you even get going. Right, so the fuel cars are just coming around the corner now into position. And it is going to be Suzanne Kalin that's going into the Kestrel Beer Lane. And it is India Urbacher that will be taking the Slick Tricks Lane. Yeah, interestingly, I've just looked at uh, some of the members of India's team. They look like a uh, like media crew. <laughs> Always nice to see. And you're going to get a lovely shot in a second on the live stream of the, uh, the frog that's hangs on to the front of Suzanne's car, covering the intake onto the fuel tank. Well, I'm actually quite amazed that they're making this session because it looked like there were a lot of flames coming out the engine earlier on today. So the uh, Slick Tricks team had done a fantastic job getting it back together for this last qualifying session of the weekend. Yeah, very happy to see them down here. Just pulling the cars back into position now. Suzanne's into position, just getting strapped in. Well, well, when I say strapped in, she's already been strapped in, but she's going into race strap now. <laughs> yeah, there's a big difference between strapped in and uh, race strap. I can see India beating herself up in the car. I think she's just getting herself psyched up for the run. Gary Page down there as well, just uh, giving India that uh, shake of the hand. Dad Erzurbacher. My goodness me, has he got some tales to tell over the years on this uh, racetrack here at Santa Pod. But the legacy continues with uh, India. So just turning over Suzanne's car, getting it ready to be fired up. They do always turn them over before they fire them up. Um, that is normal. There you go, same on India. So any second now, Suzanne's car will be fired up. They'll give them the nod over to India. India's car will fire up. So uh, I think India's ready. Just, yep, thumbs up from both teams. Yep, so they... Uh Give each other the nod. So here we go then. Top fuel, the final session. First pair about to fire up.
Well, one burnout done. Here comes the second. So, India Urbaka, she's in the number two spot at the moment with the 4.51. Suzanne, a 4.65. Both of these ladies have been down this raceway in under four seconds. In other words, they have three second runs under their belts. They have both been over 300 miles now on this racetrack as well. But they would like to do that again now. Your number one qualifier is on a 386 with a six. That's Ida Zetterstrom, and she'll be in the second pair coming up very, very shortly. We know Suzanne has already cemented the runner-up spot in the FIA European Top Fuel Championship, but then we already know that Ida Zestrup has got the crown this year. But it's all about bragging rights, it's all about winning this event now. Any one of the four cars here can do it this weekend. Again, the smell of nitro coming into the tower, these fumes are hanging around here. But it's all down to the drivers now. They're both into pre-stage. Hang on tight, folks. A thousand foot top fuel qualifier. Beautiful looking runs. And it's a 396 at 297 for Suzanne India. Goes 422, 226. But both of them were eating themselves up on the runs there. Uh, ball of flame and smoke and everything that you could possibly imagine. Uh, from both cars on those runs, but uh, Suzanne gets one into the three-second zone. Ooh. Sorry, <laughs> she's going your way then. Uh, yeah, India looked like she's chucked some valves out of the exhaust halfway down the run, and then the thing just went boom. Well, even though you said there were flames from the cars, coming round the corner at the top end, Suzanne's car, um, steaming a little bit, but not on fire, which is always yeah, a good more, thing. Yeah, more of the flames are coming from India's car, to be honest with ah, you. Ah, fair but, enough, uh, OK. I don't think India's made it down to the last turn-off where we are at the moment. So what's that for, Suze? 396? Yeah, 396 at 297. OK, I'll try Only. to catch a word with Suze in just a moment. I'm sure they're checking the track right now. Yeah, well, both cars have cleared. Um, as you can see, well, as everybody can see on the live stream, actually, Suzanne's car has come round the corner, very close to where Daryl is. And uh, India's car has uh, taken the first exit. The first exit? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. And she went 422, jury me. Well, that was her, uh, India's quickest run of the weekend. Ah, Suzanne, uh, Suzanne wants to be interviewed, I think. That's what she just said. I don't know whether you, I don't know whether you saw that. I think, I think I was just being banned from saying anything to her. Not that that stops us. Not that that stops us. Anyway. Do I be brave or do I get murdered? What do you think, folks? Answers well, on the postcard. Actually, we have only got two top fuel dragsters in this session. Ah, okay. uh, the other two electing not to run or have issues or couldn't make it in time because now we have the two-seater dragster. Okay, well, what the two seat? If is the two-seater just coming round? Yep. Oh, okay. I'll wait till the two-seaters run and have a word with Suze. Okay, then. Uh, by that time, it might be safe. The fuel funny car after this, by the way, folks. So do not go anywhere. Let the burnout go on to the turn. So, Paul Brown in the driving seat. Colin's just having a quick look to see who's in the passenger seat. It took a while to scroll down through <laughs> all the messages. <laughs> uh, but this is Martin Gain. Uh, he is from Tame in Oxfordshire. Um, he is currently 79 years old. He is treated himself or he has this as his 80th birthday present later in the year. This would be quite a wow. cool stamp on his bus pass. Yeah. <laughs> You're never too old to go fast. Wow, that's incredible. 79. Yeah. Always the adrenaline junkie. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You can see him on the live stream there. He doesn't look a day over 72. <laughs> but he's, oh, he's really, that's the main thing. Godspeed, young sir. No doubt you'll be experiencing another 1.1 second 60 foot. And you'll be going well over 170 miles an hour at the finish line. The car shot off early in the other one, which is peculiar for this car. It never usually does it. Right, Paul was actually asleep then with a 0.1 light. 
Goes down to 7.999, 166 <laughs> mile an hour, and another 1.1 second 60 foot. Yeah, who who that, was in the car this time, fellas? Because uh, I'll try and get a word with them when oh, they come Oh, right, out. okay. So the chap is celebrating an 80th birthday. Oh, my goodness me, that'll he's, be good. He's 70. <laughs> well, I'll have a word with him in a minute when he comes years round. Old. Right, I'm up the top end with Suzanne, who is delighted to talk to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, 396. Nearly 300 miles an hour. Uh, it's been a long weekend, hasn't it? It really has been. <laughs> so it's about time we actually got somewhere. Yeah. yeah, well, it was. you still had a pretty good season. I mean, you started out the year with a speed record, and then it was all a bit shaky from there on, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we had a record for a whole whopping day and a half. Well, day, maybe, but went a bit downhill from here, but from now on, I guess. Well, this time last year, you won two events in a row. Uh, let's hope you can defend yeah. your European finals title. Yeah, I'll be happy with that. I'm sure you will. Suze, thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, Daryl. No problem at all. You could feel the love in that whole oh, interview. Oh, all the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Martin Gain was a passenger. Sorry, I didn't give you the name. Martin Gain uh, is your passenger, the two-seater dragster. But yes, we do have a bit of time. Uh, we have Nitro Funny Cars around the corner. They still need to come around and get into position. Um, so, if you, mind you, is Paul Brown still there, or is he, uh, is he heading back? But that's one thing I don't know. Just trapping our funny car pilots in, pulling those belts nice and tight. Yeah, the uh, Starline crew, well, I say Starline crew, Darren's down there, but Ian's wandered off. Uh, he's gone back into the barn, so he's obviously checking something or organising something. Um... That is Kevin Kent, as you can see on the live screen, getting strapped into the Santa Pod funny car. With his running gear and uh, his engine and everything in that car. Phenomenal work from that team to get that car turned around last night. As I say, they had finished uh, to just after midnight. Uh, and what they really did want to do was fire it up and check everything over last night. But obviously they couldn't do that until nine o'clock this morning. Uh, and that was a nice morning chorus when they did. <laughs> the place that never sleeps. And that has been the whole case this weekend mm. because it's been so warm overnight. Um, there was no badminton last night in Street Elimination. <laughs> so I was very disappointed. And I went up to book. I booked for court for quarter past midnight and I went there and uh, there was nobody there. Well, there's loads of people there, loads of Street Eliminator folks uh, hanging around. But uh, yeah, no badminton last night. Booked your court <laughs> and someone had built some pits on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. They actually get strapped in and then put the blast shield back over the drive. I, I've, I've not seen that before. Well, it's a bit difficult to climb around that. Mm. I was thinking that every time I saw it. <laughs> okay, chaps. Well, I'm just going to go and have a quick word with the, uh, the fellow that was in the back ah, of the good man. If that's all right, yeah? Yep. Back of the two seater, Paul. How are you doing? Okay. Well, sir, very good afternoon. Um, so, is this 80th birthday present? Was that, no, was that Father's Day thought? Okay. And over time, uh, my son Stephen um, looked up the right time and the right uh, day, and yeah, here we are. Well, so, considering you're 21, you don't look a day over 22. <laughs> how was how was the ride? Well, I was warned that there'd be a kick in the back at the start, and it was a kick in the back from the start to the finish. Okay. It just went on and on. It was exhilarating. A lot of fun? Great fun, yeah. I've looked forward to this for 60-odd years. When I first saw George Montgomery, Ohio George, at Blackbush in the early 60s with Tommy Ivo, Don Garlitz. Yeah. So it, it, it's probably a good idea you waited this long because the rest of your life, if you'd have done it before, the rest of your life might have taken a different path, I think. <laughs> you might have liked it too much. Well, I liked it. There's no doubt about that, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. And, uh, and again, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, most importantly. OK, and well, thanks very much to the uh, Santa Pod team as well. They've all looked after me. Everyone from the VIP to the drivers and crew of the car looked after me a treat. That's good to know. And I'm really sorry, I didn't catch your name. Martin. Martin. Thank you very much indeed, Martin. I'm Daryl. Always a pleasure. Okay. It's been a pleasure listening to you over the time, Daryl. I'm sorry about that. We all are. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you guys in the tower. Not only that, he has got a sub eight second timing slip that he'll get 7.9999 at 166.67 miles an hour. Which is probably what he was watching uh, Tommy Ivo and that dude down at Blackbush the first time he went and saw it. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
But I love the way Daryl said that. Good job he didn't do that quite a few years ago because your life path would have been totally different. I know exactly what he means. Um, His bank account totally would have been a lot smaller yeah, as well. About, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, at least uh, he's still enjoying well, it. Well, I've he's had conversations with race, many racers over the years. Um, I'm not going to name them, but uh, years and years ago, I had a chat with um, uh, someone that used to race in top methanol. And I said, how come you guys have never like run in top fuel? Because you've been doing this quite a long time. And they said, well, we did think about it, but we, we came up, there was one big problem with it. And I said, what was that then? They said, we'd like it. <laughs> right. uh, like it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Now, <laughs> that's not normally a problem when it comes to just about everything in life. This is one of the most addictive <laughs> things. Nitromethane, I love this. I love this saying. It's one of my favorite sayings. Um, nitromethane. Uh, is not only the most addictive substance in the world, it is the, most, it is the most efficient solvent. It dissolves bank accounts and marriages literally <laughs> overnight. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, it doesn't, but you know what I mean. It's, it's just one of those things that gets in your blood and uh, never leaves. Right, the funny cars are now just being towed around the corner into position. The first pair will be Kevin Kent and Jason Phelps. Oh, this should be a good one. I hope for uh, a good run for both of them, at least. John Smith, uh, who's crew chief for um, Kevin Kent, has got the data from that run earlier on today. Now, Kevin's run that car before. I'm not entirely John, sure John's seen it before, but um, they're the same kind of car, same kind of chassis, so it should be, fingers crossed. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, but it's got the drivetrain, it's got all the clutch system, the management system, everything else in it that uh, was in Kevin's other car. I did actually have a look at Kevin. Do you ever look at Kevin's car as well? Yes. Uh, yeah. Looking a bit sorry for itself sitting in the corner, like it had been naughty. Um, but yeah, he, he said that it was going to be checked into John Webster's, uh, made sure it's straight, most importantly, because the forces on these things, mm. especially when you put a bunch of weight or take, you know, one of the corners off, one of the wheels off, um, it's very likely it might be a little bent. But it can be straightened, uh, and I'm sure it can be saved too. Yeah, the more interesting fact, as you know well, Daryl, is the... Uh seeing the pair of rear wheels um, with their, well, I can only describe as their stub axles still attached, but the sheer breakage of that titanium shaft uh, just uh, make us believe it really does. Yeah, and the encouraging thing is um, that went on probably more, no more than a couple of inches below. Uh, nice. <laughs> because in a funny car, you have the, um, the engine sitting in front of the driver. They actually have their feet either side of the bell housing where the clutch is uh, the drive shaft runs it's not between their legs it's a little bit lower uh, and then the rear end in a funny car is mounted just basically just behind a driver's bottom if you like uh, and that's where it all <laughs> that's where it all goes on so yeah any sort of breakage like that you tend to think yeah. although they're still not as bad as front engine or slingshot dragsters where you actually have the back of your legs uh, and your bottom resting on the axle with your legs going over the top of the axle. Thomas will tell us about this, I'm sure he knows more about this than me, because you've driven one, haven't you? Was Mike's car like that when you drove it? Uh, yes, it was. Um, he also made me jump when I went through the finish line and the drive shaft cover broke. Oh, joy. <laughs> so you had all that spinning around going on, yeah? Oh, yes. At least you're here to tell the tale. So Jason Phelps' car is fired up. They're just firing up Kevin Kent's car, which takes light now. Nice long and slow burnout for Jason Phelps. Here comes Kevin Kent's car being pushed forwards now. Jason's actually coming back faster than he did the burnout. Uh, that, yes, you're right, actually. And coming quite a long way back as well. Okay, so both cars now back behind the staging beam. Jason Phelps with the Gladiator, the Hawk Racing Toyota Camry. 
towards Kevin Kent with the West End Motorsport. Not for Monte Carlo, though. He is in the San Juan money car for this one. So the body is down on Jason Phelps' machine. Body comes down for Kevin's car. They will be pushed up to the line to save the clutch. Yeah, 5.82 Kevin's marker at the moment. Jason's at the 5.58. The other two cars are in the fours. This is where these two would like to go right now. The old funny car here at the European Finals. The last qualifier. Synchronized, literally, they uh, <laughs> they left the line together. They clicked off together. Both had 0 0.9760 foot, and uh, well, 622 the end result for Jason, 580 the end result there for Kevin Kent. So was it tire shake or anything related, or they're just supposed to lift at the same time? Uh, it, it, I can't see no any tire real shake. Real tire shake okay. marks out there, to be honest. Well, I'm uh, gonna have a chance to bit, ask them. They're yeah. coming down here. Oh, good stuff. That's good. I know it is good. We were just saying that. They don't normally uh, make it all the way till the end uh, unless they have a full ball run, but I think I can hear a whirring behind me, so Ooh. it's always a good sign. Well, by the looks of things, neither of them have made it all the way down. The mile and hours are actually they? very got, low. Uh, Kevin literally just taking the top end corner, and I think Jason might be at the... Uh, yes, he is. Jason taking the second exit. And, uh, yeah, Kevin has come round the corner. Yeah, Jason, any, uh, they, they will do anything to avoid me, mate. They know I'm down right <laughs> at the end, <laughs> so they turn off as soon as they can. Yeah, Kevin Kent coming round the corner with the Santa Pod Raceway Funny Car. I'll try and catch a word with Kevin. He's had one hell of a weekend, um, <laughs> as he almost always does even when things go right. So there we go. Well, we've still got three funny cars to go. Uh, Steve Ashdown and Patrick Purs are lined up. I'm just having a closer look at the uh, the headers on Patrick Purse's car, and I can really see what you said yesterday, Daryl, about how they are like dragster headers. They're big, aren't they? Big G and swoopy. Mm. Yeah, they're very, very different. Um, it's the style of headers that they uh, they favour in the US now because um, they're a bit more they're laid back and a little more straight up for just maximum efficiency, basically, and to uh, help the car thrust forward. So I'll catch you with Devin in a couple of minutes after this bet. So both cars are alive. The body coming down on Steve Ashdown's machine. That was Steve Ashdown. Here comes Patrick Purse. One thing I've just noticed on Steve Ashdown's car, the explosion he had yesterday has obviously cracked the windscreen. He's got it all stitched back together and it will it, it is all safe, but yeah, bearing wounds from the explosion he had last night. Well, another thing I've noticed actually with uh, the other type of car is Lee is kept very, very busy when he uh, gets the car to come back. So the red to see that a little bit high. The lead goes over and just closes those button ties to enable the revs to drop to allow Steve to get the car into reverse. But a uh, well rehearsed team, well rehearsed routine. So it is Patrick Purse who holds number one spot in qualifying at the moment with that 440. It's only Steve Ash now that can get in front of him. And they are going to be one and two, but which way around? Steve Ash is going to have to go quicker than 440 to get to that number one. Well, both of, these, both of these drivers have been on parties that are better than those runs 440 and 454. However, they had to quit them early because they were both hugging the centre lines on both them runs.
drifted over towards what actually tapped the wall for Patrick Pears. Uh, that run won't stand, unfortunately. Neither of them will, actually, because uh, Steve Ashdown wiped the uh, eighth mile blocks out. Yeah, luckily they both went the same way. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, the tail of the tape at the top end, 436.232 and 464.205. Uh, but just having a look at the replay here, Steve Ashdown hits the uh, eighth mile blocks and uh, Patrick Purse kisses the wall on the left-hand side. We still do have one more funny car. There. I'm not forgetting that. But, uh, my goodness me, that was a run and a half in the fumes. I don't know if you're feeling that, <laughs> well, but, my goodness me, I am. They're actually uh, making their way around the corner, so I will get to have a chat with Steve Ashdown at least. So Steve got the blocks at the eighth mile, he did he? He did, yeah. Oh, OK. What did he roll through to? 464.205. Well, that's, that's kind of the run he was on earlier as well, so I'm just going to try and catch up with, uh, with Kevin, really, who's taking his frock off at the moment. Um, yep, up the top end with Kevin Kent. Kevin, my old friend. Well... Once again, well, you've had a hell of a season until this weekend, and now you've had an absolute hell of a weekend, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, the car's come out of bug jam, first out of the box, set a record, run a good number, and then come to this meeting, and then we lost a fucking back wheel, excuse me, but lost a back wheel. Well, you can swear about it, mate, because obviously it was, a, it was a very big moment. I've got to say, you did a fantastic job of saving it. Yeah, thank you very much. I think it was more luck than, than judgment, if anything. But uh, I got back and said to the crew, this ain't fixable. We ain't got the space for this. There's only one option. They all looked at me and walked away. Because <laughs> they knew what was coming. They knew what was coming. They already, I'd already agreed it with Keith. Well, Keith agreed it. And then, uh, yeah, it was to the workshop. And get the spare car out. <laughs> so yeah. this this was a car I think your missus was supposed to be driving at one point. Is that right as well? Yeah, that's right. We put this together for Shelley. Um, she didn't like the view because it's a completely different view from this car to the Monte Carlo or the Mustang. Basically, if anyone, the Mustang, the windscreen's right in front of you. This car is like someone's put you in a boot. So it, it is a bit daunting. I don't mind it. It's, it's, it's okay. I prefer the, the Monte Carlo, the style and the Mustang. But... This is what you got. Beggars can't be choosers. Well, the good thing is you've wrapped up, for, for you guys as well, you've wrapped up the championship already. So you didn't have to do this. W what makes you go to all this extra effort on weekends like this? Do you want the right version or what? No, the no, real, just... the right version, I'd open a German Nitro and I didn't want to write Bartlett a check. <laughs> <laughs> well, quote there from Kevin Kent. So, um, <laughs> but also... Because you love racing, I guess. Yeah, you're damn right. I mean, we come here to win, you know. It's, uh, the crew work hard all, all through the meetings, and I don't like going home early. Well, hopefully you won't be. Good luck tomorrow, mate. Next car is fired on the start line, and, uh, and a fantastic effort, as always. Nice one. Cheers, Dale. All right, thanks a lot, Kev. He's great for a quote, isn't he? <laughs> He's great. Yeah. I love him. You bet. <laughs> all okay, funny so car drivers are certifiable. Right, we have one more Nitro Funny Car to come in this session. This is Chippy Chapman. High RPMs after the burnout. No doubt the crew guy will be leaning on the butterflies to drop the RPM so we can get into reverse. There we go. And the reverse is engaged nicely. So this to get into the show, basically. Yeah, anything better than a 5.80. Yeah. team spotted something uh, towards the back of the car looks like there could be a slight issue that uh, yeah the team basically has spotted there so not quite sure what they found yeah the car's making some very peculiar noises as they're trying to lean it out 
Well, folks. Uh, actually, I have spotted what the issue was. I think it was the left parachute. Oh, um, goodness me. The cable had come out, uh, but they had the safety in, but the cable itself wasn't. Oh, that's lucky. So, uh, yeah, very, very well spotted by the crew there. Um, so, obviously, shut the car down on a safety reason. I think right, folks, I do was. have the very best looking man in funny car which is saying a lot let's put it that way um it's, i'm being nice to you for james come on, come on, yeah yeah uh steve ashdown up the top end steve that was on another stonking run actually yeah it's just just the driver's driving like an idiot well, no, no no you can't steer if the front wheels are in the air because i said that to dave on the run before you know you were down the center line and you did a great job hanging on to it do it yeah we can go just as you say he's yeah it's hard work to try and keep these things in a straight line at the best of times but you ain't got your front wheels in the air just you makes it twice it. as hard. <laughs> yeah, you cannot do it, can you? But at least, well, it's a lot better day today than it was yesterday. I mean, God, you guys, you guys again. Well, these are, you know, I know all the teams are great, but I would, I really wouldn't do this to nobody else. I've got the, you know, from my point of view, the best team going. They work their socks off every weekend to allow me to do the easy job. Well, reasonably easy job of trying to steer it and uh, let me live my dream. Well, that run earlier today and, that, and this run too as well, um, it was really marching. It was good numbers. Um, it looked, I mean, Dave looked pretty happy, which is saying something, obviously, but no, it, it, was, it was doing what it was supposed to do, wasn't it? It actually was, yeah. We are getting there. As I say, since last, you know, this time last year, when it all disappeared, and uh, it's a completely new car, completely new setup. I mean, I mean, literally everything is new. Um, and it's just getting to grips with it all, you know, all this data that Dave had, all the sort of knowledge that he had, all the old stuff, is it, thrown it up and gone because it's all new and it's all, we've had to get the youngsters involved because me and Dave are dinosaurs and we've got computers and it's just like, you know, I can't even work an iPhone. And uh, there, yeah, we've got me, me son and uh, young Jay to pad, you know, the old ta that way, tablets and things like that that sort of uh, help the car run. So we're getting them, getting them involved so that we can, us dinosaurs can step back. However, however, us dinosaurs are the one that gets to step on the loud pedal with your right foot, which is the fun bit. My son's just waiting, trust me. Oh, he's right. just waiting. <laughs> just, he's just waiting. He's there. When it come, when we had the uh, incident in September, like, this time last year, I wasn't quite sure. I think my boy was actually crying because I could actually come back and he was thought he was going to get in the car, <laughs> to be honest with you. He was like, my turn. I can see him and Dave talking before he even got in the ambulance. <laughs> you should say it with, well, mate, you can have it. Go on, there you go. You have it now, yeah, when it's all burnt, yeah. Before it all goes back to bits, but Steve, it's great to see you up here and with a big smile on your face as well, because obviously a bit of a rough start to the year at the main event, but this is a lot more like it. It's where I want to be. We've got something to work with now. We've got a, we've got a hot rod. So, yeah, thank you very much. Good, Good luck the rest of the weekend, pal. Thank you very much indeed. Steve Ashdown, everybody, as you can see on the live stream at home. Thanks very much, Steve. <laughs> and the most impressive thing about that whole interview is he got dressed again so we could do it. <laughs> yeah the quiet men of drag racing, the funny car drivers. <laughs> OK, to the funny cars, we got the nostalgia version. Now Tony Betts and Tim Garlick. 626 was only last time round, and Tim Garlick's already got a 605 in the bag. Super impressive last night in the dark of these two. Little head of flames all the way up the corner. Everyone giving the Venom team a wave. Love to see it. So Apache bring, bringing brought to the line. Here comes the Venom machine, your number one and two qualifiers here. Tony Betts is currently in the number two spot. Tim Garlic in the number one spot. Can we see a five second run? Well, Tony, deep stage, Apache's long gone into the distance. He goes six, <laughs> zero, one, trying so hard for that five second pass. Tony Betts, 6.19, 239 mile an hour. Yeah, look at the speed for Tony Betts there, 239 miles an hour. That was hauling at the top end. Well, what a great side-by-side -side run. I think, actually, do you know what? I never get to interview Tim because he always goes off at the second exit. He manages to get stopped in no time. Tony Betts, however, I'm getting out of the way, has just come flying around the corner <laughs> at the top end. Uh, what was his number, sorry? Uh, Tony it was 619, 239. I mean, he has been over 240 before, but nevertheless, great run. Yeah, chipping away at it, which is what we like to see. Uh, I'll go and have a word with Tony in a minute. No doubt he'll be very, very happy indeed. I'm sure he's delighted with the way the season's gone. Mm. He's going to finish it with a five-second run, no matter what happens this weekend. Well, we still have another nostalgia funny car to come around the corner. 
And we've got one lined up straight behind us. It's the Nitro Bug. And we also have Paul Harris. That's it. Give both the teams a huge round of applause. It's a monstrous effort to get these cars out here and running for you. Yeah, Tim Garlick's team with the van. And, of course, the pickup truck, all in the venom colours. As they, uh, they head back to the snake pit to get that car ready for... And speaking of tomorrow. speaking of monstrous efforts, another one was made here with the Nitro Bug team. Uh, broke the crank on one of the runs yesterday. Well, they've got it all fixed. fumes once again <laughs> wow <laughs> never gets old oh, and in the other lane Paul Harris just a quick shout whilst these cars are just coming back uh, if you are taking photographs or videos don't forget to tag Santapod on your social media posts we'd like to see what you guys and girls see out there so uh, yeah please Tag Santapod in your social media coverage, be it on Facebook, Instagram, or whatever. So, Elena does her job. Backing up the Paul Harris funny car. A lovely bit of glamour to add to the team. But it's all about the racing now as the two challenging funny cars come up to the line. Andy Roll with a nitro bike. And Paul Harris with the Chevy Monster. Andy Raw lifts off. 641, 201 mile an hour. Sounded like it was on the limiter for Paul Harris. Uh, but that was a big old move from Andy Raw. He did a good job keeping that off the wall. Brilliant job, guys, down there. I know you can hear us. Right, I'm up the top end with uh, a very happy Tony Betts. Obviously, the car's picking up the performance a bit again today. I did have to say sorry. You still got outrun by Tim. But uh, we know there's a five-second run in there somewhere. Oh, uh, for sure. John's been working on the car all weekend. Gradually getting better and better. Yeah, and uh, but now we think we've got it sussed as far as not hurting parts. We were still in a, a ring land every run, and like now we've done that. We haven't hurt anything. Two runs on the trot, so fingers crossed for tomorrow. Now we've uh, we got a semi-final and then a final. Hopefully, we'll get through to there. Well, the thing is, I think it depends the way the, the ladder stacks up. But I think Tim is going to be against Andy Raw, and I think you're going to be about the man against the man who's just come around the corner over there. You're going to be up against Paul Harris. I do like racing an older man. So is that right? He's a lot better. I, I, <laughs> I said something really nice yesterday. I said, all the bodies on these cars were around about the 1970s and so were the drivers. And I think I was being a bit generous, wasn't I? He was generous. <laughs> Very generous. Okay, fair enough, mate. But if I had a 55 Chevy here, we'd be bang on. Oh, fair enough then. Um, but, yeah, it's nice to see you up here again. It's nice to see the car running well. And uh, just quickly, how nice was that five-second run at Drake Stalgia? Uh, it was awesome, mate. We've, uh, we've been after it for... 35 years Ever. yeah so to get it with the crew you know no nah. tony betts everybody thank you very much indeed time good luck the rest of the weekend mate thank you very much indeed fellas sorry i didn't mean to interrupt your routine but uh um, i just have to have a quick word with elaine before we go elaine if you don't mind coming over no maybe not <laughs> i'll go and have a word with paul harris in a moment too Right, as we get ready for two-wheeled action now, actually, it is our bike classes that will be going to be coming round next. 
That is a whole gaggle of machinery in the pairing lanes. Uh, the tracks are just doing a little bit of sledding. Darrell, don't worry if you've got anybody else up there you want to have a chat with, you're more than welcome as uh, we are just getting set, set for the bikes. The tractor is out there just doing a little bit of uh, track prep out there as uh, we get ready for the final session of our two wheeled warriors. After that, um, just need to double check on time constraints as well actually, but we are expecting some sportsman eliminations as well. Uh, that is still to come actually. One thing I haven't done actually done a time for time check for a while. Quarter to seven in the evening. Uh, we're obviously going to get all of our pro sessions uh, finished this evening. Uh, another glorious day. One of the well, it is the hottest day of the year. And uh, the downside to that is the hottest nights of the year as well, uh, making things a little bit uncomfortable. But there we go. It is what it is. I'll take this over any wet stuff any day of the week. So the bike's ready to go. Yeah, and uh, they're just coming around the corner now. It okay, is I'll pro try and stock bike, but try and very quickly. Seconds. Yeah, that's right. I'll really, really, really quickly uh, try and have a quick word uh, with Paul, if that's all right. He's closest. Sorry, Andy, it's a bit too far to walk over there. Uh, <laughs> Paul Harris, uh, good to see you up the top end again, my friend. Uh, that was a 6:41 that time. You got, you know, you got a bracket car this year, haven't you? Yeah, it seems that way, doesn't it? I mean, if we can keep it going and perhaps nibble away a little bit more here and there, yeah. and um, yeah, really pleased. Well, I, I was going to say, after learning to drive the car, which you had to do, because you hadn't raced anything before, is you? No, nope, nothing worth talking about. <laughs> no, nope. no, this is, uh, this is what I always wanted to do, and um, jump in at the deep end. Is it as much fun as you thought it would be? Definitely, definitely. It's definitely one of those, um, if you can, if you have the resources, do it. Because yeah. it's a lot of fun. And your team, your crew around you, I see that you actually have... Uh, members of the Crober Massive with you as well, you know. I'm going to call them that from now on anyway. Uh, but um, Dave Millam helping you out as well? We've got the magnificent Milams um, doing hell of a lot for us. Um, Dave is just invaluable. And uh, he's making it happen for us, as you can see. Well, I was going to say, I don't know whether I didn't want to say that was his influence, but no, it's, um, it's good to see you up here and enjoying yourself, most important. Yeah, it's great, Daryl. Really great. And on a... Well, the weekend like this with the weather, you know, is fantastic. It certainly is, isn't it? I think... Sorry? It's like being in Pomona, but better. Oh, it certainly is better, because we don't have to go as far. You've got that old fella over there in the morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You do give away, there might be a bit of an age gap, like. <laughs> oh, yeah, certainly, <laughs> yeah. Oh, on, on my part, yeah. Good man. Anyway, good luck tomorrow, my friend, and um, as always, great to see you. Thanks, Daryl. Paul Harris, everybody. We are on with Pro Stop Bike, I believe, fellas. You are absolutely spot on. The unmistakable sound of the Pro Stop Bikes doing their burnouts there. And it's Martin Bishop and Aswin Lenoble. Six bikes have put qualifying numbers on the boards. And this is number four with the Bish and number six with Aswin at the moment. The number one qualifier is on a 7.24. That is Patron Maurice. Jorg is number two, Martin Newbury number three, Martin Bishop number four, Jerome is number five, Aswin number six. Yeah, uh, Jerome was missing for a couple of sessions, I think actually since the first one. Hopefully he can make it back out for the second one. I don't think I can see him, unfortunately. But it is Martin Bishop and Aswin and Noble on the line. Red light doesn't matter and a lot of smoke out of Martin's car. I think he missed a shift there, you can see him banging yeah, the bang tank. The as we're under power, is going to beat him to the finish line, 893, 150 mile an hour, but issues for Martin Bishop. Uh, I think he may have missed the shift. I don't well, ignore the 60 foot of 0.87, that's not actually possible. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, Bishop, uh, you could see his, his uh, frustration there as uh, he was going down towards the stripe. He literally just let go of the handlebar with his right hand. <laughs> Slapped the tank basically, I mean, ugh, as in curses. Yeah, maybe don't uh, interview that one, Daryl. Yeah, stick clear <laughs> of the bish. <laughs> yeah, you can see it on the on the replays here. There you go. Look, it sits up on the bike, and just pure frustration. You can see as Aswin goes flying past. Um, quick check in the electrics lane. There was a puff of smoke as he um, shut the bike off out there around. 500 foot to the eighth mile, and the tractor is going out. Uh, 
just checking uh, everything out to so see. Well, we can't see any legs akimbo, which is a good thing. Can't you? Ah, well, I couldn't, and then as I turned around, <laughs> they did it. <laughs> Uh, just one of those things. So the uh, tractor just doing a, a little bit of uh, sledding at the moment. It doesn't look like it's going to be any more than that. But just to save our vocal cords just for a moment, Nitro FM, if you can just take the airwaves for a very short moment, hopefully, and we will take it back. We continue qualifying here. The last session in FIM Pro Stop Bike. So here we go, a continuation of our qualifying session. The last session for qualifying for all of our FIA and FIM classes. This is Pro Stop Bike, of course. Jerome Rougemont from France in the Kestrel Beer Lane. He has been missing in action for a couple of sessions now. It's nice to see him out for the last one against Martin Newbury with the Cycle Works machine. 8.42 so far from Jerome. Martin, no, 7.46. I would imagine Martin would be, uh, well, gunning for the one spot if everything goes well. Uh, Jerome would love to get into the sevens. Well, Martin's bike sent him straight over to yeah. the center line. He's had to roll off the throttle, but no issues at all for Jerome. He's going through. Will it be a seven? No, 8.05, only 153 mile an hour. Um, yeah. See? There was nothing Martin could do no. to bring that bike round, keeping it under power. It was just... Uh, it was going it was that game way. He <laughs> just had too much angle going over to the left. Uh, so he had to roll off the throttle. Uh, and in the end, he came off the throttle completely. He was only 86 miles an hour at the eighth. Uh, it just goes to show how early uh, the bike was heading left. But they both cleared the track. And the next pair uh, beckoned forward to fire up. So it was. it is your number one and number two qualifier is going to fight this one out to see who is going to be taking the top spot. That Buell is so loud. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's so cool, that's why. Indeed. Funny as well, because up, up the top end here, I get to catch up with everybody, and they, 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 they tend to give me a list of things that have gone wrong, and everyone, I don't think anyone's been to bed before three o'clock that I've talked to up here. It's just one of those weekends. Yeah, it just... As I said yesterday, when it's good, it's good, and when it's bad, it's bad. Um, hopefully, no issues at all for these riders as they go down the track, because that was very odd from Martin's bike. It did it earlier in the uh, in the weekend. It did send him over to the uh, center line before, but he managed to expertly wrestle it back straight again. But on the line, we have Jorg Lyman with the Buell and Bertrand Maurice, your number one qualifier. No issues at all for these riders. York leading the bike over. Bertrand's going to get there first. A 7.32 and a 7.44. No improvement for either of the riders. Yes, uh, Bertrand holds on to that number one spot. And uh, 
Congratulations to him. He's also going to be wearing the number one in the yes, FIM yes. competition next year because he is the European champion. Well, no message around. The next pair fired up already. This is the Super Twins. Uh, all three bikes have put six second runs in in qualifying, but the jaw dropping run 6.11. Uh, to take that number one spot earlier on today was just unbelievable. Yeah, the fastest run in Europe, and in fact, outside outside of North America, that is, for a naturally aspirated V-twin. On the line now, at the minute. Is another one of these naturally aspirated machines injected with nitromethane. Brings himself to the line. That is not, in fact, Martin de Haas, because he's behind. Yeah. <laughs> so, Chris away well. Seems to be laying over the top end, though. 719. Yeah, it didn't sound like it was on form at all. Um, yeah, Chris, Chris Van Nimmen there having some issues at the top end. Only 185 mile an hour. I say only. Um, yeah, he will stick in the number three spot. Well, he's still going to go home no matter what happens. He's going to go home with his first ever yeah. six second run this weekend. That was last night. Yeah, 6.98 with a five. I'm going to try and get catch a word with, no matter what happens on this pair as well, I'm going to try and catch a word with Marcus after this run too. Well, these bikes are all fired up underneath the line. Martin de Haas in the Slick Tricks lane and that man, Marcus Christensen. Just to put into perspective, I think there are only two bikes on the planet that are normally aspirated that are quicker than that one. And he's not far off being the biggest of the world. I think there's one micro VT that's been in the six zeros. Again, I'm sure someone's going to message me very quickly that's listening. <laughs> That's it, that's right. The benefit of the internet and everything going out live. Well, the uh, the weather is a lot better now than it was earlier in the heat of the day. Not too sure what the DA is, but I can feel the air is uh, a lot cooler now, which these bikes will absolutely love. Let's see if he can turn the wick up a little bit more. Martin de Haas in the other lane, 674 is his best run of the weekend. He will be looking for a little bit more than that as well. Watch for Martin to hang the wheel all the way out there to about the eighth mile. Marcus doesn't tend to have the wheel up that far, but he'll be hopefully out front. Ah, issues for both of them though. You can see a little bit of the head of flames from Marcus's bike. 687 for him and an 808 for Martin de Haas. Um, lovely launches, but they both seem to roll off the throttle about eighth mile. Well, despite rolling off the throttle, he still went 687. <laughs> that's mad. Yeah, four. I think that's what you call, you say, uh, I think the phrase is having the field covered. I think yeah. That's, uh, yeah, <laughs> that, how, that, that, how that works out. But yeah, it, uh, unbelievably impressive performance. I don't know whether they're actually, they're actually going to make it all the way down to, I'm sure Martin de Haskell actually, but I'm not sure Marcus will make it all the way down uh, to the top end. Yeah, just coming around the corner to you now. Oh, OK. Yep, there's mine. So the next bike's burning out straight away. We're into top fuel. Mark right. Smith with the warp speed machine. Uh, 6.68 for him is what he ran earlier. This bike is capable of going a little bit quicker than that, but he is chuffed with that run, I think I heard. Um, he's going to be bring it into pre-stage and up to stage, build the boost on the funny bike. The field for top fuel is so tight at the minute. What a launch that was. 108 to 60 foot. Over towards the center line. He's going to bring it back. Don't clip the block. He didn't. 653, 209 mile an hour. And about an inch from the quarter mile <laughs> block. Not only that, he moves up from five to four. Wow, that that's there. real good. That Mark Smith, wasn't it? Yes. Yep. Fabulous stuff. That may well be his quickest run ever. I'll catch a word with him when he comes around the corner in a moment. Just to give everybody a very quick rundown of uh, what's going to be happening. Uh, we are running Top Fuel Bike at the moment. Then you have Super Street Bike, Junior Drag Bike Cup. And then it's going to be the first round of eliminations for Supergas. And don't forget we still have a jet car to run this evening as well. Uh, we 
which is uh, Fire Force 5. And it's going to get a little bit darker to run that as well. Oh, yes. So a couple more of the funny bikes. Mike Ollie with the Kawasaki in the Kestrel beer lane. And Eric Richard from France with the Hayabusa in the Slick Tricks lane. Eric has gone a 658. He's just been leapfrogged by Mark Smith. Um, Mike Holly in the sixes with a 693. Hopefully, both of these riders will improve. 658 is a stout run, though, for a uh, funny bike. So, building the boost once more. They're going for it. Carrying the front wheel. He's trying to buck up Mike Ollie off the bike. But Eric Richard, 6'5", 196 mile an hour. He goes back up to the number four spot. Mike Ollie was on a bucking Bronco the whole way down the run. The front wheel was miles in the air until he'd shifted gears and it slammed him back down to the floor. The boost came back in and it picked the front wheel back up again. Well, that's kind of how they roll, to be honest with you. Well, up the top end with a very happy Mark Smith. Mark, you went 6.53, you took the number four spot, and Eric just pinched it back off you because he went 650, but uh, still a good day. Great day. Thanks, Eric. Um, yeah, fantastic day, fantastic weekend, fantastic weather, fantastic track. Absolutely amazing. Fantastic. Well, I mean, I think it was only, it's only, is it only this year or was it last year you were in the sixes for the first time? You spent a long time trying to get there. Last year into the sixes and then we just improved and improved and improved years of pro stock bike and now we've won this thing i bet it's fun amazing fun absolutely unbelievable i just did what health 209 wow yep 209 miles an hour i am ecstatic uh, as well you should be so <laughs> good luck tomorrow it'll be great fun Thank you very much, no problem at all mark smith cheers mark I have a good chat with him. All right, we now have Rene Vandenberg and Al Smith. They're just holding Al and Moe whilst Rene is backed up from his burnout. Out Smith does a short burnout, he doesn't go over the start line. So Andy's just holding him there at the moment. Now he's there to go. Yeah, rocking the tower as well as he comes underneath it. These are two nitro burning machines, both supercharged, one with four cylinders, one with three. Rene Vandenberg in the Kestrel beer lane. Al Smith with the PBR rocket in the Slick Tricks lane, both aiming for the fives. Can they do it now? When you see Al Smith shuffling around on the bike and he's got that head of flame lit most of the way, you know it's going to be a good run. 6.31, 192, just clicked it before the stripe. Yeah, issues for Rene as well. He's actually, I, think he, I think I can see the parachute dragging along behind it as well. Uh, well, I have uh, Marcus Christensen up the top end. Marcus, um, you had an issue on that run, you said, with the fuel shut off as well. But I've just got to talk to you. We're just chatting about that 6.11 that you ran earlier today. Just put into perspective how quick that is on a world basis with a V-twin. Yeah, Bob Malai in America, he has uh, done a 6.08. So, uh, yeah, that's the difference. It's really close. And uh, I thought we would have had it this run, but uh, then we have... There's always some issues at some point, so yeah, the fuel shut off came early, and uh, yeah, we'll try again tomorrow. I certainly hope so. Well, you're, you're European champion again. Um, I don't want. I do want to ask the question: How quick do you think you and your dad can make this bike go? Because you're just getting quicker all the time. Yeah, it's difficult to say, but uh, I hope that someday uh, maybe there's a five in it, maybe five nine something. I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, we still have a lot of. Uh, things we can turn up a little more ignition and fuel and everything so i believe there's a five in it but uh let's see let's start with the six zero or something <laughs> yeah i mean the six eleven's still incredibly impressive but well done sir you are number one qualifier and you've defended the european championship so Stu crane away oh, and off one zero four sixty foot r issues for him unfortunately he's rolled off the throttle there that was a lovely looking launch 
2.69 to 3.30 foot, and he was already off the throttle at the eighth mile, 4.22, only 138 mile an hour. He loaded that to go as fast as he could possibly go then. There's no shadow about that, shadow of a doubt. But, uh, yeah, Street Crane, it just didn't quite work out the way he wanted it to, but he was... What's the phrase I used to wear? Loaded for bear. Yes. I think was the uh, <laughs> term they used to use back in the day. Right. It is Super Street Bike. So 12 bikes have put numbers on the board. A couple of Kawasaki's for you. Eric Gruber and Ricardo Grauer. Both of these bikes are in the 11 and 12 position, 763 and a 765 between them. Stout runs for the Kawasaki's, obviously always looking to improve. They will be racing tomorrow no matter what. All run field is Super Street Bike, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's not, is it? Bump spot. No, it hasn't appeared. We need to double check that. Uh, yeah, bump spot for these, I'm pretty sure. Uh, only an eight bike field. 792 and a 785. Yeah, I think 13's the cutoff, actually, isn't it, for a um, seating bike field? <laughs> Al's been trying to walk away really quickly. Al, um, another 6 3 run, but I guess it's in one piece, and you'll take that after everything you've had this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, horrendous start to the season, but uh, we weren't very good start yesterday either, but uh, we got through his problems last night, found a few issues. In that pass, it was hauling. A lot better than it was on the first pass this morning. And I clicked it early because uh, I saw oil pressure dropping. So I, I don't know what we're going to. How the hell have you got time to look at oil pressure when you're going that far? No, I can. Yeah. I can look at the screen here. Yeah, I can see Good stuff. We're on with Super Street Bike. Back to you guys in the tower. Al, good luck tomorrow, man. Thank you very much. Christian Yaz away on the Super Street Bike. Ah, oh, issues. It looked like the bike just lost power there about 330 foot. Uh, good news, nothing spilling out at the bottom of it that I can see. He pulls over towards the wall. It, I think he's going to have to be pushed off the line. Yeah, 14.40 he goes, or 14.48, sorry, at 40 mile an hour. Or well, they're calling the next bikes forward. So hopefully he can make it yeah, to I the think first he's turn off. To the first exit. Can't see a problem with that. There he goes around the corner now. Off the track safely. Al Smith saying one of the most amazing things I've ever heard on the top of your bike. He's gazing at the oil pressure going 200 miles an hour just in case. <laughs> God, blimey. <laughs> To say he's cool is an understatement. Oh, dearie me. Well, the bike knows who's the boss, let's put it that way. <laughs> he does. That's true. Now he's got time to look at the gauges whilst he's <laughs> shuffling his body weight yeah. around on the bike at the same time. Goodness well, me. Well, he instantly threw his weight over to one side he of does. the crack Always of the does. Always does. So, Mark Hope in the Kestrel beer lane, qualified with a 7.24. Lovely looking run from now though. Flashes the flames as he shifts the gears. 465 to the eighth mile. 704, 202 mile an hour. That's what they've been looking for all weekend. Yeah, very, very nice run indeed. Moves them up from eight to seven as well. What was the speed, chaps? 202.5. 202. And 704. Oh, so close. I'll try and catch a quick word with him. I think it was super It's very difficult to do that. Still run so quickly. Right. Right. Where it starts to get very, very interesting indeed because we're going up to the quick machines. We've got five bikes that have run in the sixes this weekend, and here is one of them, Mogenslund. He's the number five spot at the moment. He's ran a 6.98. Ross Morrison just outside the six second zone with a 7.02 at the moment. Well, Ross, of course, has been there before. He'll be looking to do it now. Mogens will be looking to push deeper into the sixes. Mogan's huge wheelie leaning off the side of the bike. No issues for Ross. He's going to go through under power. He lifted the front wheel off the track as well. He was trying to get it to come back down. A amazing 118, 60 foot. But, uh, yeah, it just didn't work out for the rest of the run. Just trying to stabilise the bike as best as he could. And you say 12.30 for Mogan's. Uh, that's not the time that he wanted to see at all. OK, four bikes to go. Jake Michelle, currently in the number three spot with a 676. Can you believe that? Number three oh, with a 676. And Steve Venables, 693, currently holds on to number four. Yeah, a couple of weekends ago, that would have been a PB for Jake Michelle. 
Wow, look at those. 117, 60 foot for Jake wow. Michelle. He's long in the distance over the line. Oh, look Six, at the number. 66. 66. The number of the beast for Jake Michelle takes number one. Only 216 miles now, but 666. Wow. 697 for Steve Venables. He had a front row seat to watch Jake disappear. Well, I'm going to catch a word with Jake in a couple of moments. It's, uh, it's always fun up here. There's still one, mo one more pair to go. Daniel <laughs> Langston, Alan Morrison Jr. Can either of them take that number one back of Jake Michelle? Well, I'm going to have a wander around and talk to him, but in a couple of moments, because we've got that stuff going on the start line, this is what Super Street Bike's all about. <laughs> so, Danny Lentz and Al Morrison Jr. 119 60 foot for Alan Morrison Jr. He's out in front, but here comes Danny Lentz. He's going to catch him before the finish line. No, 676 and a 689. Jake Michelle is your number one qualifier, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to catch a word with him right now. Go for well, it. Well, Jake, you are officially, officially, sir, the number one qualifier. 6.66, 216 miles an hour. Fantastic 1.1760 foot. Couldn't be, could it be any better? Finally got there. Been a, been a bit of a struggle this weekend with the heat for ourselves and the bikes, the tune-ups. And uh, we got there. Please, I can't believe it. Can't. Now you need to turn around and just wave at the guys behind you because they ain't number one you are. Amazing. Oh, my God. I'll never forget this. Yeah, definitely not, sir. Um, seriously, huge congratulations. I'll try and catch you over with the other two guys in a minute. But uh, for now, Jake, the moment is yours, my friend. Thanks, Darren. No problem at all. If I'm right in saying as well, I'm pretty sure that makes him the second quickest bike in Europe Ever. with a 666. Yeah, only uh, Danny Lex has gone quicker. Wow. So, Junior Drag Bike, Anouk Bergering and Harry Isaacs, this is their last qualifier. Anouk looking for a 13.99. This is back over the eighth mile. These are the up and coming riders of FIM. Um, runs as a bit of a bracket class, so Harry is going to get there first. 13.29 and a 13.16 dial in and a, a breakout for a Nuke Burgering. Uh, she gets leapfrogged by Harry. He goes up to number seven and Nuke drops down to number eight. Right, just to remind everybody, we still have sports and racing uh, after this with uh, Super Gas. We have another qualifier coming up for Super Comp and we have round two for or Junior Dragster, and we also have Martin Hill with Fire Force 5 still to run this evening. Okay. And uh, it'll be dark when he runs. Darrell, who have you got? I have Al Morrison Jr. Well, that was the 76 on that one, Al. Um, well, no matter what happens this weekend, you've had a fantastic year. Um, you are just in the points lead, I think. What have you got to do to wrap this thing up for Britain tomorrow? I'm not entirely sure what we've got to do. Um, just keep doing what we're doing, have fun, and just keep sending it, I suppose. I get, it's got to be fun to ride as well. You also, I mean, you're the fastest bike. Jake's now, I mean, Jake went 66. I mean, that's fantastic. Is, the, is that the European record? I think it wasn't a 68. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So he's now got the record for, yeah, European. Or the FIM, so should I yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. And, um, yeah. yeah, well, you've got the speed record too. So, um, well, all the guys doing it for the UK. Best of luck tomorrow. If you can repeat what you did at the main event, you will be European champion, but it's going to be a big task, isn't it? Yeah, it's good, man. Yeah, it's going to be good. No matter what happens, it's just, just been an awesome year, so... Best of luck. Nice one. Cheers, Dal. Thank you very much indeed. Back to you guys. Yeah, well, Holly King just goes through there with an 834 and 813. Dial stage number six. Liam Morrison goes 1188 on the 83, but remarkably stays number three. And this is Ali Alesta dialing in 13.20. It's, it's, it's quite odd with Ali, actually, because every single time she dials 13.20, she either hits the number or goes too quick, and then whenever she doesn't dial 13.20, that's what she runs. <laughs> Taking on Brad Morrison. He's looking for a 15.30. He is on the JBM, so he is between 10 and 13. Same for Ali, of course. So let's see if that 1320 is hit. Oh, 1325. That is a great shot from five to three. Uh, 1518 breakout. Just a little bit too quick there. But uh, nice move. Right. This is Richard Wilcox. He is your number one qualifier. 
And he's likely to stay there unless Jackson King can get oh so close to that 1329. So I didn't see where Richard qualified in junior drag star. I don't even know if he made it through first round. They've already oh, had no. their admissions. Oh, is he out for juniors? Yeah. Okay, so Richard can focus all of his efforts now on to junior drag bike. He's drifting over towards the center line, but he leans it over. Strains up in the middle of the track. Oh, 942 with a two on the 942, darling. 1309 breakout for Jackson King, but Richard Wilcox, phenomenal riding there. 942 with a two on that 942, darling. Brilliant job. And that is a wrap for our FIM bike classes for today. Well done to all of our riders. Brilliant job from all of you. Uh, but now the fun starts again with eliminations and it is super gas round number one. Uh, we still have junior dragster round number two to run and we have one more qualifying session for super comp. And a jet car to wrap things up a little bit later on. We're just uh, checking the run order which order they're going to come around. We know it is going to be uh, super gas first, and I think I'm just about to be informed. Yeah, a little bit of a um, traffic jam at the top end, actually. <laughs> so Richard just riding his bike off. There goes Jackson off the top end as well. Uh, I think it's Brad Morrison's bike that is being pushed off. There we go. And it will be on to super gas. Yep, run order just confirmed. It is super gas eliminations, round number one. Then it will be the jet car. Then it will be a super comp, and then to wrap the thing, the evening up will be Junior Dragster eliminations of round number two. Which is rather good, because then it gives me a chance to get up to the, uh, <laughs> the caravan, get the mini PA system that I've got going, and uh, do the junior presentations. Hope you, uh, oh. hope I hope we got, uh, obviously, the number one presentations, and... Uh, so eliminations round number one uh, for Supergas this weekend. Mark White in the FX Vega taking on Dave Fulton. I've said it already and I'll say it again. Uh, they're all racing uh, in memory of John Morton this weekend who uh, left us at this meeting last year and uh, will never ever be forgotten. Big thanks to Tony Morris Carburetors and of course the UK arm of the operation RDR that is Dave Gibbons, he's tuned in. Tony will be tuned in as well. It's a green light race. Great launches from both of them. But who is going to be the bravest at the strike? It is Dave Fulton. Taking the win with a 10 flat against the loser at 10.04. They were off the line, amazing. Chalky was 0-1, Dave was 0-2. But it is Dave Fulton that takes the round win. And the battle of the Andes now. Andy Harrison and Andy Dibley. This is crucial because the winner of this gets a bye in round two. And actually that means as well, it'd be a bye first round tomorrow, which is what everyone was going to want. Oh yeah. Well, they both know how to win meetings. They both know how to run 990. Both uh, previous and, champions as yeah. well. And Andy Harrison ran a 990 in qualifying. Dibs wasn't far off. He only qualified 10th, but it was a 994. That could be one lost on the tree. Well, well they're shattering each other almost. Andy's got his nose in front, and Andy takes the oh, win. Hold shot. The staggering thing about that race were the reaction times. <laughs> 0.21 and a 0.29. That is almost unheard of in uh, super gas racing. But uh, the ETs were pretty close, but a 995 pips a 994. Didn't John Turner start the weekend in super comp? Uh, well, he's qualified in super gas. <laughs> <laughs> so it is Paul Morton and John Turner. Two of probably the heaviest cars here this weekend, all by Ricky Smith's, uh, not Ricky Smith, Ricky Hale's truck. Whoa, huge wander over to the centre line before passing, oh, and he's again. All over the shop. Yeah, he's had to back off. John Morton probably going to back off now as well. There he goes. Uh, yeah, win for John Turner. 
The interesting thing there is that Paul Marston backed out of it and realised that John Turner wasn't uh, in front. So uh, Paul Marston got back on the gas again, but the car was unstable. Uh, had to give up the run eventually, 12.20 to 74. Uh, John Turner goes through with a 10.03. But Paul Marston was 03 on the line. 0.17 for JT. But uh, it is John, John Turner we're going to see tomorrow. Yeah, spotters out there just doing a quick check in the Kestrel beer lane in case any fluid was dropped by Paul Marston. But they're all running over the wall. Cars will be called forward once again. Vic Parsons taking on Stu Doiny. Well, Stu uh, wanted to say a big shout out to uh, Will. Big to his burnout. Burn up. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Stu Doiney and the team want to say a big shout out to Williams Brothers Racing and the Speed Shop, of course, and to Top Speed Automotive. Uh, they've managed to get a throttle cable uh, between them. So uh, well done to uh, both companies for getting that all organised. That continued allows Stu to continue racing this weekend. So unbelievably out of these two, uh, Vic Parsons is the higher qualified. It's his first weekend running in Supergas. Nine nine zero he hit. Stu Doiny is a tough customer though with the Rosa. He's the toughest <laughs> customer. Let's see how it all pans out though. Different ways of going super gas racing as well. Well Vic goes over. But then Stu pulls away. It's always the way it's gonna be. And uh, a win there for Stu Doiny. Takes that with a 10 10 to lose that 10 16. Actually, Stewart lifted off the gas well before the strike. Uh, he did have over two tenths in the bag off the start line. Jasmine Tunstall and Mark Huxley. Darrell, mate, you're right, you look warm. <laughs> Darrell's just made it back to the tower from the top end. So this is your number two and number 11 qualifiers. Both away well. Got to move around a little bit. 10 flat, but a 996 takes the win there for Mark Huxley. So he's into round two. Right, interesting matchup here between John Giles and Tim more. As per usual, you can imagine the social media banter between these two <laughs> after the weekend. So is that right, Carl? we got um, Supergas and one other class to run now? Uh, yeah, we've got uh, Junior Dragster, Round Super two. Comp, okay. Qualifier and a Jet. Okay. I tell you what, though, if, you, if, if anyone out there doesn't know what Jake Michelle looks like, uh, follow the beam from his teeth, <laughs> <laughs> and you will find him in no time in the pits. I, I'm sure he's radiating from over there at the moment, and I'm not kidding either. He has every right to be absolutely overjoyed. That is a new European record as well, by the way, that one that Jake just ran. Outstanding. John Giles and Tim Moore. John, I'm retired, honestly. Giles, obviously. Oh! Tim Moore takes that one. Uh, when he had a 700 uh, reaction time advantage, did John Giles, but it was Tim Moore that gets the win. The win margin, zero, zero, seven. Oh, that, so close. That was his to lose, and... Um, yeah, I think he, he backed off a little bit too much at the top end. Right, a bye run for the number eight qualifier, Stu Morris. Uh, unfortunately, no Pete Dodd. Broke a rocker arm, I'm pretty sure it was, back on Thursday. So, a solo run for Stu Morris. Throttle stop comes off. Oh, wow. 
Even though he's on a solo, 9.91. Absolutely outstanding. Well done, Colin. Right, we've got one of the super gas cars stuck at the top end. Daryl, who's stuck up there? Uh, uh, we do need a crew to go and get someone. Wayne Hiscock and Stefan Reff. I guess we saying, Daryl, he's already back here, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> right, Wayne Hiscock and Stefan Reffeltraff. We haven't seen a huge amount of qualifying runs for Stefan. But uh, two different ways of going. Yeah, probably the shortest throttle stop you'll see. And then Wayne's probably going to lift about now. He's going to need to. Oh, wow. Yeah, 990 with a six. Very, very good run indeed for Stefan. Actually beat his qualifying time. <laughs> Not so, um, yeah. No. Yes. Yes, it did, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, changed. screen changed already. Last pair. Pete Creswell, Dave Cherritt. So nice. Dave Cherry is out in Pro ET. Uh, he went red, unfortunately. Pete Creswell with, I think, which is probably the longest throttle stop in Super Guess. And the shortest distance to get here. Where does he live? Sharnbrook. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just over the, uh, the way. He can see the wind turbines from his back garden, I think. Like drag race is what we'd like to see it being sorted out at the stripe and this one goes to a breakout a pair but by the lesser amount by a fraction pete cresswell takes that dave cherry took the stripe but pete cresswell takes the win i do love that finish line camera it's oh, i love just it added a whole for everyone watching at home as well it's added a whole new dimension to everything it really really has I have to say as well, because this is the first time there's not blazing sunshine in my face. It's the first time I can actually see the numbers on the screen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're struggling to see the reaction times and everything else. So like Colin said, we've got the jet, uh, which is under the tower now. That's Martin Hill with Fire Force 5. Well, unfortunately, I'm going to have to say goodnight, because hey, Junior Jackson are, the lean, are in the lanes. So yep. um, I'm going to have to run away, and they're the last class. So good night, everybody. Thank you for listening. Um, see you tomorrow bit presumptive to say they were listening but you know it's uh, it's always good thank you mate very much indeed thomas pleasure as always hope to see you back tomorrow sorry that's me no, making, worries, a worries. making a mess of the gaff that's the problem <laughs> right so yeah um I, I don't know how it sounded down here but that was that was fun being up there for the last couple of hours we get to do it again tomorrow yeah, I think uh, end of the day for winners I think for tomorrow we're going to do that but um yeah it was it was a lot of fun it's always nice to catch up with everybody. And like I said, I wasn't joking. It's like, everything going to plan? No, we got to bed at 3 o'clock this morning. Oh, dear. Okay, why? <laughs>
Absolutely brilliant flame show from Archie Archie glued to the monitor then, just watching that like you good folks are at home on the live stream. And it is darker here than it actually looks on the live stream. You can see the lights on in uh, Bankside VIP currently on the live stream. Well, Martin doing a good job of trying to rock the tower here. He's doing a good job of it. Okay, so Richie says to Martin, send it. Builds the turbine up to give it everything it's got. Consider that scent. <laughs> <laughs> 540, 285 miles an hour. Absolutely cracking run there for Martin Hill. Parachute Blossom is in the shutdown area. And another great jet car run here at the European Finals. Yeah, that was uh, that was certainly pretty. Uh, just want to say a very big hi to my lovely wife, who's had uh, the children for the last three days with Nana and Fudge the dog. Um, home day tomorrow. Home day tomorrow. So we've got Junior Drags to coming up. Like you said, Cole, we've got Super Comp. And uh, give Richie... And a whole team, a very, very big cheer as they go up the top end to collect Martin. So, yeah, just two classes left to run uh, this evening. Some, uh, a final round of qualifying for uh, Super Comp and round eliminations. Two, oh, sorry, round two eliminations. Get it, my words in the right order uh, for Junior Dragster. And then that will be a wrap for day three. And it'll be time to... Uh, do do my homework for tomorrow. Uh, I've got to run into the pits and do some junior dragster presentations. We've got uh, a gin and cake evening over in the super gas that's happening tonight. So there's all sorts of things going on. Uh, but don't forget tonight in Fueler's Bar, you've got Guns or Roses at nine o'clock tonight. So good live music coming up in Fueler's Bar tonight. And of course, the coaching area. And a lot of our traders are still open as well with so many people here. That moment when Facebook Messenger doesn't give you any notifications all day and you open it and go, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> so mine's clogged. That's pretty I'm good. Miss, I'm, it, sometimes it's like days before I see them because they just get clogged up. But here we go then. This is Lara Bartlett. She gets a predetermined buy uh, into round number three, so she is definitely going to be racing tomorrow. She's going to have a top hip drop in round three, whoever wins between Liam and Grace, though. Yep, so buy run for Lara. Oh, look at that. Made the most of it. 806 with a one on an 806. And light 02 reaction time. Very nicely done indeed. Right, the young lady with the least amount of runs here this weekend in uh, Junior Dragster with Chevy Check It. Uh, one qualifier to get her into the number four spot. Then she had another qualifier and then one round of elimination so far. She only had three runs, but here she is in round number two. Going but to everybody taking on Frankie Kent. I was going to say, everybody got eight or nine qualifying runs. She's hoping to get eight or nine runs with only one qualifying run. Or two. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, Chevy going against the rookiest of rookies. Frankie Kent only got his license the other day, I think, didn't he? Took his first ever round win earlier on today, ably assisted by Mum and Luke Fulton. Race to the stripe then, Frankie Kent, Chev, check it. Chev's going to get there. 
But she, but she breaks, breaks out. out. Oh. Frank is two for... He's undefeated in his junior dragster career. Yeah. He also had a 0-1 light as well. <laughs> I can barely believe it. A 0-1 light. Chev wasn't late with a 0-4. But my word, well done. Well, there was much room for Chef to win that look because she took the strike by 0 4. Okay, the next pair. All the way from Spain is our friend Mr. Kubris down there in the Kestrel Lane. Just went for the diamonds, there we go. Uh, that's Ethan Kubris against Daniel Todd. Well, Ethan's journey is over here as he goes red. Oh, goodness me, that's both cars from Spain out on a red light. Oh, yeah, but 005 red. That's going to uh, hurt. That's going to hurt, as you say, yeah. Well, Daniel Green and through to round three. Right, number one, Kai Cooper. It's his first race as he had a bye in round number one, taking on Freddie Taylor. And the tree's going to count them down. Kai's side goes first, but Kai goes red. Oh, number one qualifiers out. Freddie Taylor through to round number three. up Max Taylor Teddy Howe <laughs> that's it just uh, it's quite dark I can see the darling board uh, but can now it's a 1273 for Teddy a 963 for Max So this to play tomorrow. Twelve seventy three place nine sixty three. Three point one second difference on the tree. Teddy side's gonna run first. And Max Taylor sets off in the so That is Max Taylor taking the win there with a 9.69 to lose that 12.82. He was over the strike quite a long way first, 0.14 to a 0.47. All right, Grace Smith with the Boost Monkey Junior Drags are taking on number one in the points, Liam McDonald. Liam, we leave him first, 8.24. Grace will be the one doing the chasing here, 8.03. Light drag race and uh, Grace is shadowing. Grace actually ahead. Oh, but breakout for Grace. She goes too quick. It is Liam actually dodging a bullet there as Grace had almost a tenth off the line but took the stripe and broke out. Liam McDonald is through to race Lara Bartlett in round three. Harley Cosell and Mackenzie Love. Pairs to go. 
Holly going to be leaving first. 8.03 Darling. 0.11 of a second later. Mackenzie's loves the side of the tree will run. Good looking race this one. And it's Harley Corsell who takes that by 0 4 at the stripe. Mackenzie's performance did just drop off a tad there. But Harley Corsell, and the key thing there, Harley gets a bye in the next round. And that doesn't even take him to the semi finals. No, it's round of no. eight, isn't yeah. it? I think. Is that right? Yeah. All right, round Luke. of eight. Uh, yeah, it was a round of 16 tomorrow. The bye will take him to the round of eight, yeah. All right, Luke Mugridge, Jake Cooper. The winner of this gets Max Taylor tomorrow. Jake Cooper goes red, so unfortunately both of the Cooper lads go out on uh, red lights. So Luke Mugridge is through. All right, one more pair to go, and it's the funny car of Lena Wolf taking on Tom Peters. Yeah, it still looks like daylight on the screen, it doesn't does. it? It's if very, but then the uh, yeah. backside VIP lighting gives, gives it, it away. But it yeah, does. the cameras really do make it look a lot lighter out there than it actually is. So, Lena Wolf from Germany with the only funny car in the field against Tom Peters. Lena done a great job in qualifying. Tom Peters. They're already, I think. Oh, gets there first, but breaks out by Two. just that much. 8.51 oh. with an 8 on a 52. So it is Tom Peters. Look at the mic. Look at the win margin. Oh. Well, the first margin, as you say. It wasn't yeah. the win margin, was it? Yeah. So much to play with. Unfortunately, just broke out. Supercomp round number one. No, no, it's Two. a qualifier. Oh, sorry, is it a big yeah, one? Yeah, it's their last qualifier because it's obviously less vehicles in this class than uh, than the others. Twelve entered this weekend, I think, which is still pretty good. Last class of the day. Yep, it certainly is. You can say we've got time for many more. Actually, it's getting dark. It's uh, getting down towards quarter to eight on a lovely warm Saturday evening again. <laughs> So, Leah Kelly uh, going to be taking on Stu Doiny in the first matchup. Dragster against, I was going to say door car. It hasn't got doors, has it? Um, <laughs> Roadster, <laughs> sorry. Roadster's the phrase I was looking for. Uh, you see the Roadster out there in the Slick Tricks lane. Um, a awful lot of the modern day uh, Supercast cars and Supercomp cars in the US are built in this style. So even uh, you'll see a brand new Camaro, but it will be a Roadster. That's true. Yes, you're right, actually. It won't have a... Well, it's all about visibility, being able to see and everything like that at the finish line. And being high up, having no body around you effectively, is uh, it deemed to be a big advantage. However, when everyone's got the same sort of car, not really an advantage anymore. This was a repeat of the final, wasn't it, from the last event, I think, actually. Because Leah strapped a double O light on it. 885 and 886, both too quick. Yeah, 
of no help for either. Or possibly is help in the fact that, yep, that didn't work. <laughs> Although saying that, this qualifier is probably the coolest air conditions yeah. they've had all weekend. And I don't think I'm telling tales, but it's probably not going to be repeated tomorrow. No. So, Andy Clifford with Snake Eyes, your current number six qualifier. The one run he made the right side in the number was a nine flat. Uh, up against Warren Watts. Now, Warren does need a little bit of a shove to run the 890 number, I think. He's looking at 9.18 as a best so far. Needs a medal, actually, for the chefing that he did yesterday. He had this huge really? brisket of beef for the pro E.T. barbecue. Okay. And when I say big, it was huge. And it 10 minutes. <laughs> just like we just scoffed a lot. He had it slow cooked as well. Just be, oh, very jealous of them all. Now, is Andy Clifford going to lift? Great problem to have. He's way out in front. Nope, 883. Too quick again. 911 for Warren, though. He's quick as well on the weekend. Now, is Steve Phil going to take this chance to boot it all the way through again? What do you Oh, think? that's a good point, actually. Best conditions of not the best conditions ever to race in. But he's made the most of it and has been absolutely flying. Being in the eight O's this weekend. If he feels that opportunity is there to dip it into the sevens, he will take it. But if he feels it's not, he'll try and lift and uh, run the number. I think that's the best way to describe it. Going alongside Clement Dubois. He's already run an 8.93. So Steve Fields only run pretty much the right side. The number was a 903. Great looking launch from Steve. Oh, he heads for the 330 block. Right, is he, no, he's going to try and run the 890 now. Oh. 898 with a one. He moves up from number eight to number six. As if by magic, mate, that was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I'm sure he aimed for the block just to slow him down a little bit. <laughs> or not, as the case. Right, maybe. last pair of the day. And it's the Hudson's. No relation to each other. <laughs> so, Steve Hudson with the intravenous T. Wife Angie down there on the start line, as always. He's in the Kestrel lane, taking on on the slick trick side of the racetrack, Paul Hudson. Yeah, you look at that camera shot, it looks quite light. It really isn't. It's really quite dark. Really dark. Even though we haven't got the track lights on just yet. It's getting that way. So, last pair of what has been a fabulous Saturday. Day three of four of the European finals. Oh, it's going to be a bye run as well for Paul Hudson. Uh, not sure what the problem is for Steve. an instant throttle stop isn't it so the last run of the day will it be an 890 nope it's an 886 at 169 miles an hour ladies and gentlemen that is a wrap for day number three and the best news of all is our track crew can stand down tonight <laughs> and just take it easy getting ready for tomorrow well as easy as they ever do uh, as easy as they ever do but uh, yeah uh, thank you all so much indeed for joining us today, being on the banking, being in the grandstands, be walking around the pits, or tuned in to the live stream. I hope you had a fabulous day. It has been amazing. Some fantastic runs, some brilliant personal bests, and uh, we cannot wait to do it all again tomorrow. As we, uh, a lot of our classes, we've already crowned our European champions, but we've still got event wins, and we have still got lots of points to score for our sportsman races as well. We've still got plenty of good weather to come at you. And we've still got live action arena running tomorrow. 
There's so much still to do. Our track crew, though, they have still got a few things to do. Timing crew just taking the, the tree down. But uh, we just want to wish you a very, very good evening indeed. Don't forget live music in Fueler's Bar tonight for Guns All Roses. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously the uh, traders are still floating around as well. Josie, just a dip of the camera to say that you can hear us. Go on, I dare you. Dip oh, the it's camera. a wave. Go on. <laughs> it's a wave. That's all fine. That's okay. But, but uh, uh, yeah, sorry, Colin. There she goes. She gave us the dip of the camera. I knew that would happen. Um, but yeah, we will see you all tomorrow. We've got lots of pit walking to do tonight to catch up with various teams to find out who's doing what and get our stories ready for tomorrow. But uh, for Daryl and myself and, of course, Thomas, uh, thank you all so very much indeed. Also, thanks to Nitro FM for being in the background for us this weekend and uh, taking over when uh, we have a break in the commentary. Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>